Chapter 1 Wizard Apprentice and Magic Thirst Heat And Fatigue Under the influence of strong discomfort, Lin slowly opened his eyes. What came into view was a ceiling covered with cobwebs, and the unfamiliar sight around him made Lin's mind freeze for a moment. This is a house of less than 30 square meters, probably due to being in disrepair for a long time. The wooden walls around it look very dilapidated, and the gray frame is full of traces of dust and corrosion from insects and ants. The interior of the house was also in a mess, with many clutter and garbage piled haphazardly in the corners. Dozens of uncovered book pages were scattered on the floor, leaving only a narrow path for passage. Where am I? Could it be that he was kidnapped? Lennon rubbed his dizzy brain and sat up with difficulty, beating secretly in his heart. He was certain that this place was definitely not any place he knew. So Lin had to prepare for the worst there was a high probability that he would be kidnapped. 071. Show me my current location. Lin and asked subconsciously in his mind. But after several seconds, he didn't get any response. Has even assistive intelligence been blocked? Lin's heart suddenly sank. He subconsciously turned over and got out of bed to find a way to escape. However, he unexpectedly discovered that there was a sharp dagger placed at the head of his bed. And there was a wrinkled piece of paper in his right hand. Parchment roll. Lin In subconsciously held the dagger in his hand, finally feeling a little safer. After hesitating for a while, he opened the crumpled parchment roll. There were many ghost-like things written on it with complicated symbols, which was even more disturbing. What puzzled him was that he could actually understand the words written on it. Time is running out. The priests of the tribunal discovered our traces. Before the sun shines, we meet at the agreed place in your town. We bring seventeen Sika's copper coins and follow the signs. Just be careful, Joni. The moment he understood the words above, an unfounded fear suddenly surged into his heart. And then a memory vaguely appeared in Lennon's mind. In a wide square, a noisy crowd gathered together, looking enthusiastic and excited, shouting something constantly. A huge high platform was erected in the center of the square. The bishop in a white silk robe stood in front of the high platform, raising his scepter high amidst the fanatical shouts of the crowd. The next moment, crimson flame shot up high, and several figures could be vaguely seen twisting and struggling in the sea of fire. And the sounds of painful wailing could be heard endlessly. What's this? Making a movie? The cruel sight that came to mind made Lin shudder. But why do I have these inexplicable memories in my brain? And who is Joni at the end of the letter? Suddenly, Lennon seemed to have thought of something, and quickly rushed to the large water tank in the house. Staring at the scene reflected in the water, his pupils could not help but shrink. The fingers that trembled slightly due to excitement caused ripples on the water. But Lin Ng could still clearly see what he looked like at this time. It was a boy of about 18 or 19 years old, wearing a patched linen robe. He was slightly slender. His pale face was covered with dust. His short brown hair that was not taken care of seemed messy. And his dark eyes were full of fear. Look, could it be that I have traveled through time? Lin took a breath. This ridiculous idea came to his mind. But he couldn't find another explanation. Although before he traveled through time, the Federation had already achieved great results in brain development and neuron research. And brain chip transplantation technology had also been extremely advanced. But implanting consciousness into a second body to achieve rebirth was a complete fantasy. He also didn't feel that he was worthy of someone's troublesome deception. Realizing this, Lennon didn't take any chances anymore and sat down on the ground. While shocked, a large number of complicated memories surged up in his mind again. After spending half an hour sorting out the memories that suddenly appeared, Lin In finally understood his current situation. He traveled to a place that looked a bit like medieval Europe. There were many countries here, and they were in dispute with each other. The most powerful country among them was the Sokka's empire where he was now. And above the mortal imperial power, there is an existence called the Holy See, which believes in a god named Ella, a proper monotheistic religion, and its teachings are all based on creationism in addition to spreading faith everywhere and deceiving people. Another important proposition of the Holy See is to hunt wizards. What made Lin feel particularly bad was that the boy he traveled through time seemed to be a wizard. No, to be precise, he is a wanted wizard apprentice. Lin and looked at the crumpled parchment in his hand with a headache. What are these things? He just came across time inexplicably. He didn't give him any better treatment. He was being hunted when he came up. There is no guarantee that one day he will be tied to the stake and burned. Speaking of which, the predecessor was also quite desperate. He is the illegitimate son of a certain viscount in the Sika's empire, named Carl Sterland. Although he is not very popular on weekdays, he still has enough food and clothing. 
In this chaotic world where countries are constantly fighting, being well-fed and clothed is considered a blessing. If he still has this important identity and a relatively stable environment, coupled with the knowledge of other worlds in his mind, he will be able to prosper in a few years. It is not impossible to start an industrial revolution and overthrow the Holy See. Possible. But this kid was deceived by a wizard named Kalu. He could only live a good life. But he had to come to be his apprentice. Just four days ago, his mentor Kalu tried to abduct the duke's daughter. Unfortunately, he failed to fool him this time. So the tribunal received the news the next day and arrested Kalu before he could escape. After getting the news, Carl hid in this secret stronghold and was in fear all day long. During the more than half a year of running around with his mentor Kalu, Carl had witnessed the wizard apprentice being burned to death on the stake. He was afraid that the priests of the Inquisition would suddenly rush in and take him away. I didn't dare to sleep for several days, and finally lost consciousness in despair and fear. And then I traveled through time. This is going to be troublesome. Recalling this, Lin whispered with a headache, and even considered whether to just jump back and forget it. In addition to him, Kalu had six other disciples, none of whom should have been caught yet. And he happened to know the names and looks of these people. Perhaps being a tainted witness was also a way out. The worst case scenario is that you will regret it later if you pretend to convert. However, after thinking about it, Lin indecisively put this somewhat dark thought behind him. He really couldn't trust those guys who preached doctrine all day long and wanted to catch all the wizards and burn them to death. Even if he surrendered and was arrested, the probability of torture is not small. Forget about betraying your teammates. He is not this kind of person. Throwing away those unrealistic fantasies, Lenin calmed down and endured the shock in his heart, thinking about how to escape the pursuit of the tribunal. In the ancient world where there were no cameras and criminals were identified purely by hand drawing and impression flow, absconding in plain clothes might be a good method. As long as he left the duchy, it would be extremely difficult to catch him again. Fortunately, the original person seemed to have practiced some swordsmanship. He won the attention of the Viscount's father a few years ago, and even single-handedly solved several bandits that were harassing the territory. Of course, the premise is that you keep a low profile and don't reveal the magic you have learned at will, so as not to attract the pursuit of the Inquisition. Etc. Magic? Lin In was suddenly stunned. And then he concentrated on searching for memories in his mind. And then his expression became weirder and weirder because he discovered that he and his memory seemed to have magic. This is not a blind trick used by ancient magicians, or a random trick to fool people, but real magic. Chapter 2 Magic is Science. Could it be that I have traveled to a magical world? Lin and quickly came to his senses after a brief period of shock. After all, he had traveled through time and space, and he couldn't even be sure whether he was in the original universe. Nothing was impossible. Lin was naturally extremely interested in magical things like magic. Her strong desire to explore even briefly overcame the fear of being hunted by the Holy See. As a wizard apprentice, who had only started for more than half a year, Carl's knowledge of magic was very limited, with only five kinds. Among them, basic material deconstruction technique, water condensation technique, and mage's hand are the most basic zero-ring magics. Although they are very important, they have no offensive capabilities. The more advanced first-level magic, fireball, requires the consumption of corresponding magic materials. As for the other first-level magic, Ice Blade, Carl has not been able to master it yet. Lin lowered his head and fumbled with the bag hanging on his waist, taking out his limited assets one by one. Two pieces of red flint, three Sokka's silver coins, more than ten copper coins, seven drafts with complex magic formulas, a yellowed elemental analysis, and a small bag of gray powder this is, fireball spell, casting material, embers of red fire. Lin picked up a small amount of fine powder and felt a little anxious in his heart. Carl's memory contained the complete casting steps of fireball. First use, basic material deconstruction to analyze the casting materials. And then use mage's hand to let red fire embers vibrate at a specific frequency to activate magic. The whole process sounds cumbersome. But the most time-consuming analysis of casting materials can be completed in advance as long as you are skilled enough. Fireball only takes one second to activate. Lin couldn't wait to experience the supernatural power. But in the end, he held back. This small handful of embers of red fire is worth five Sika silver coins and is only enough to cast Fireball three times. It must not be wasted casually. It is better to choose a simpler one for the first time. After thinking for a moment, Lin chose Water Condensation as the target for his first spell as several zero-ring magics that must be learned. If, 
basic material deconstruction technique is the key to using magic materials. Mage hands is the best helper for wizards. Then, water condensation technique is the introductory course for apprentices. Got it. Because the release of this basic magic and its superior magic, Ice Blade, does not require the preparation of casting materials in advance, or the casting materials can be directly extracted from the elemental world, following the method given in his memory. Lin closed his eyes and meditated. Probably his original body. Carl had given him a good foundation. In just two or three seconds, he successfully opened the door to a new world. After closing his eyes, there is an extremely magical world under the induction of spiritual power. Lin Eng can clearly see that the entire room is filled with countless shimmering magic elements. One billion. Ten billion. One hundred billion? No. It is simply impossible to calculate their huge number using numerical values. They are as dazzling as twinkling stars in the dark universe. Most of these elements are very active, changing their position all the time. The most numerous element is called Selu, accounting for about 70% of the total and is called a useless element by his mentor Kalu. Lin In was shocked by such a spectacular sight, and it took him a long time to react and focus on the use of magic. The steps to release water condensation technique are not complicated. You need to extract two elements related to water and fuse them in a ratio of two to one. The former accounts for a large proportion in the elemental world, about 20 to 30 percent, while the latter is relatively rare and requires a lot of effort to find. However, there is also a simpler method. There is a small amount of ready-made water elements in the elemental world itself. As long as they are dispatched and reorganized using elementary material deconstruction technique, they can be used freely. Thanks to the original Carl's obsession with magic, these basic spells have been practiced hundreds of times in daily life. And the foundation is very solid. Lin quickly mastered the methods after experiencing the initial discomfort. It's just that this so-called elemental world makes him feel inexplicably familiar. When Lin and opened his eyes again, a water ball the size of a marble slowly floated in the palm of his hand under the support of the mage's hand. Very good. It worked. Lennon's mouth curled up slightly. But the brief distraction immediately caused the water mass to disintegrate and drip down the gaps between his fingers. As if a bucket of cold water had been poured on his head. Lin quickly broke away from the joy of successfully releasing magic. As a wizard apprentice, he is still facing the pursuit of the Holy Sea. How can he be complacent just because of this small achievement? Not to mention that this marble-sized water ball is of no use in battle. I'm afraid it's not enough to quench the enemy's thirst. However, he had seen the scene where his predecessor, Kalu, used water condensation technique as a prerequisite to cast the second ring magic group ice blade against the enemy. Dozens of fist-sized water masses condensed instantly and then transformed into solid diamond-shaped ice blades, which shot towards the incoming bandits like locusts. With just one strike, all incoming enemies will be defeated. Thinking of this, Lennon planned to sense the elemental world and try again, probably because of the fusion of memories after time travel. Lin's mental power is much richer than that of his original body, Carl, and he can also mobilize more magic power. The use of water condensation technique just now caused minimal damage to him, and he had a hunch that he could do more. Lennon closed his eyes and quickly entered the elemental world again. This time, he did not rush to use the water condensation technique but tried to use his mental power to influence every element he could find around him. These elements looked very different, giving Lin a vaguely familiar feeling. Some of them were so heavy that even the slightest movement would make him feel mentally exhausted. After being completely immersed, Lin suddenly noticed a strange phenomenon. The elements floating in front of him were actually sucked into his body at a strange frequency, and then expelled out, repeating the cycle. Does it turn out that a wizard's body needs to take in these magical elements on a regular basis? This doubt suddenly appeared in Lennon's mind. And after careful observation, he made a surprising discovery. Because this phenomenon was clearly caused by his own breathing. Etc. Isn't this just oxygen? Lennon was stunned for a moment and took a deep breath. In his eyes, the tall and mysterious image of the magic element suddenly collapsed. He didn't recognize them immediately before because he didn't see these elements intuitively but perceive them through mental power in a very metaphysical way, and then use magic to influence them. Moreover, the proportion of chemical elements in the air of this world is also somewhat different from that of the previous life. So Lin did not think about it at all at first. But with this argument, the previous process of capturing elements to create water flow also has a new explanation. What is water? It is an inorganic substance composed of two chemical elements, hydrogen and oxygen. 
there is indeed a small amount of water vapor in the air, which may be the water element mentioned by the wizard. So he wasn't using magic just now, but was doing a chemical experiment. Are wizards actually a group of chemists? This conclusion made Lin stunned for a moment. But he quickly shook his head. This world has a magical existence called magic. Judging from the spell cast just now, magic may be able to control matter at a microscopic level. If there are no restrictions, then the wizard is simply a god. According to the scientific research theory of the previous life, all matter in the world is composed of atoms. If magic can control matter from this level, it can create or destroy everything. Lin soon fell into a reverie and was keenly aware of the terrifying power that the chemistry and physics knowledge he had learned in his previous life would become when combined with magic. If the scientific theories of the previous life were to create various machines to transform the world, then wizards can use their magic power to directly transform these theories into magic and gather great power into themselves. Lenin stretched out his hand again, and the hydrogen and oxygen in the air around him were stripped out, turning into a small water ball floating in the palm of his hand. Then some doubts arose in my mind. The combination of hydrogen and oxygen into water usually requires a combustion reaction. Where does the high temperature and energy generated in this process go? Could it be that it was absorbed by the magic power? The unknown field of magic holds all possibilities. And Lin can't be sure. However, this is a question that can only be studied carefully after experimental conditions are obtained in the future. Lin quickly turned his attention to the rest of the magic. If his guess was correct, the point of the so-called first ring magic, ice blade, was to change the form of water from liquid to solid, thus increase lethality. To do this, the temperature of the water must be lowered. Lin and recalled that according to the physics he had learned in his previous life, temperature is a manifestation of the average kinetic energy between molecules in an object. The molecules collide with each other to create and transfer heat. In other words, he needs to slow down the movement of water molecules. As soon as Lin and thought, the extremely active water molecules in his palm became slower and slower under the influence of magic power, and they were piled together tightly, almost instantly. The small water groups condensed into transparent ice crystals. Just when Lin was pleasantly surprised that his guess came true, a notification sound suddenly rang in his mind. Special energy detected. The source is unknown, and there is no record in the database. Do you want to create relevant files? Lin was stunned at first. And then a look of disbelief suddenly appeared on his face. This voice was all too familiar to him. But didn't he travel through time? Even the body has been changed. And the auxiliary chip implanted before should no longer exist. 071. Do you know how we travel through time? Are there corresponding records in the system? Lin and asked eagerly. For unknown reasons, the system shut down and restarted, and there was no record of the entire process. Lin and frowned, feeling a little disappointed. But he quickly regained his composure and asked again. How long can the remaining energy keep you running? Now that he has come to this different world and faces the risk of being hunted down at any time, Lin and can only try his best to find a way to survive. The auxiliary intelligence that followed was undoubtedly an unexpected surprise. Although the intelligence of the auxiliary chip implanted in an individual was very limited due to the Federal Amendment Act, thanks to his identity as a data storer in his previous life, 071's internals were preserved. He has a lot of scientific and technological information from previous lives. In this strange world where science and magic are common, the importance of these data is self-evident. Energy remaining is 37.6%. Special energy has been detected and can be used to supply system operation. Special energy. Does it mean magic? Lin In was thoughtful. And he was extremely surprised by the various characteristics displayed by magic power. If he were still in his previous life, he would have fallen into the laboratory long ago. It's a pity that he is just a wizard apprentice with no money and power, and is being hunted by the Holy See. It is not certain whether he will be able to see the sun tomorrow. Lin In sighed. And then spoke solemnly. 071. Create a new file and name this special energy magic. Loading database. Taking advantage of this opportunity, Lin In turned to look at the diamond-shaped ice blade floating in the palm of his hand. Because it is mixed with magic power, this ice blade is different from the solid ice we have seen before. It constantly exudes cold air. The head is cone-shaped and the hole is streamlined. It is said to be an ice blade, but actually it is more appropriate to describe it as an ice arrow. This form is called crew configuration, and can reduce air resistance as much as possible. It can be seen that his mentor Kalu has considerable attainments in fluid mechanics. Lin In complained in his heart. And then his expression became a little weird. Because compared to the ice blade released by Kalu in his memory, 
the one in his hand, was really smaller. Although the hydrogen content in the air in this world is much higher than in the previous world. Even if all of it is collected, it will not be able to create a sufficient amount of water flow. Thinking of this, Lin couldn't help but wonder how his mentor used the second ring magic, group ice blade technique. It can't be that hydrogen. Oxygen and water vapor within a radius of several hundred meters were extracted instantly. Right? To have this ability, Kalu doesn't need to use multiple ice blades. The enemy would just be suffocated to death due to lack of oxygen. Lennon couldn't figure it out for a while. But Lennon didn't get too entangled. Looking at the ice blades suspended in front of him, a sudden thought came to his mind. 071. Call up relevant information about armor-piercing arrows and barbed arrows. Lennon said silently in his mind. The next moment, a massive stream of data flashed across the retina one by one. Lennon was overwhelmed by the countless pictures, information and simulated three-dimensional models. Replace the production material with ice and optimize and reorganize it with the goals of stability, reducing air resistance, and maximum damage. Lin and touched his chin and spoke again. The image suspended on the retina quickly faded, and after just one second, a brand new three-dimensional figure appeared in front of his eyes. Lin and firmly recorded the three-dimensional image in front of him in his mind. With his right hand holding it empty, the suspended ice blade suddenly disintegrated. Zero ring magic, elementary material deconstruction technique. The ice blade that instantly disintegrated was reduced to its most basic elements. It was tightened in the palm of the hand under the restraint of magic power. It kept changing its shape, getting closer and closer to the image in the retina, and soon stabilized. The recondensed ice blade is much narrower than before. The pointed cone-shaped head has been changed into a triangular shape that is easier to break armor and bleed. There are two long barbs below. It can be foreseen that once the ice blade is hitting the target, and piercing into the flesh will definitely make the opponent speechless with pleasure. The success of the magic improvement experiment gave Lin hope to survive. However, the power of Ice Blade was limited, and no matter how much the shape was optimized, it was difficult to obtain a large increase. So Lin quickly placed his target in Carl's hands. The second One Ring Magic Fireball is on. Unlike Ice Blade, which can extract raw materials from the air, the activation of Fireball requires the use of magical materials, embers of red fire. Lin guessed that this should be a flammable substance that could quickly expand and burn when friction and heat rise under the constraints of magic. If his guess is correct, does that mean that he can use other flammable substances to release this magic? 071. Find out about the production and use of white phosphorus. Lin and said silently in his mind. White phosphorus is a colorless or light yellow translucent waxy substance that is highly irritating and has a very low ignition point. Once it comes into contact with oxygen, it will burn violently, and the temperature can reach more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. What's even more terrifying is that this kind of white phosphorus fire is difficult to extinguish and has strong adhesion. Once it comes into contact with the human body, it will quickly burn through the skin and muscles until it penetrates deep into the bone marrow. The gas produced by the combustion is also highly toxic. In her previous life, Lin In, who was a data storage clerk, had seen the scene of the federal government launching a new type of white phosphorus bomb. It was definitely a terrifying sight that would never be forgotten. The moment the missile exploded in the air, a continuous rain of fire spread across the sky, igniting an eternal sea of fire within a few kilometers. Due to the scorching heat, immortality and terrifying toxicity, even if you hide in a bunker, you cannot escape the fate of death, precisely because white phosphorus bombs are so terrifying. They were banned as weapons against humanity as early as the last century, and federal districts only dared to study them secretly in private. However, the process of making white phosphorus is actually not complicated, and there are detailed records in the auxiliary brain. As long as he finds the materials, he can make it even without the help of instruments. While Lennon was thinking, a dull knock on the door suddenly sounded behind him. Lennon's expression suddenly changed. He is now hiding in the slums of Nordland. Normally, no one would disturb him. Unless, the witch hunting team sent by the Inquisition has arrived. Chapter 3 Witch Hunter Blaney In the evening, two uninvited guests were welcomed into the slums outside Nordland in the Sika's empire. The leading man was about 30 or so. He was wearing a tight-fitting leather armor, a long knife hanging on his waist, and his dark golden hair was spread behind his head. He looked out of place in this dilapidated and decaying slum, and naturally attracted countless malicious pairs of eyes at the first time. Gaze the hungry mob and thieves lurked in the dark, scanning the two men with their eyes as sharp as knives. After seeing the mark of holy light on the clothes of the two men, 
these targets of peeping immediately retracted their attention. In the Sika's empire, there may be some people who don't recognize the empire's flag, but there will never be anyone who doesn't know the mark of holy light. This is the symbol of the messenger of God. Apart from the clergy wearing temple robes, the only ones with the mark of holy light on their clothes are witch hunters. It is rumored that every witch hunter has been blessed by the gods and has skills far beyond ordinary people. No one is willing to provoke such a target. Noticing that the figure hiding in the dark disappeared, Andre smiled disdainfully. But the faint stench coming from the dilapidated streets soon made him frown. Sure enough, what Bishop Anjuk said is right. These wizards are like mice. They like to hide in such dark and smelly corners. Andre looked at the stains and feces remaining in the dark corners of the street and couldn't help but cover his head. He held his nose and complained. We'd better be more vigilant. Andre, the person we need to deal with this time is not an ordinary character. The leading man was somewhat dissatisfied with Andre's flamboyant posture and couldn't help but remind him. A few days ago, a big event happened in the Duke of Nordland. A wizard named Kalu tried to seduce the Duke's second daughter. Fortunately, he was discovered by the guard stationed in time, which prevented the Duke of Nordland's young daughter from being seduced by the devil. Bewitch. The brutality of that encirclement and suppression battle is still vivid in my mind. In order to capture this daring wizard, the Duke of Nordland sent two entire brigades of guards to pursue him. Even so, he still suffered heavy losses. In the end, if the Bishop of the Holy See had not arrived, the Duke of Nordland would have been disfigured. It's all going to be lost. And their target this time is the other party's apprentice, who is also a wizard. Don't worry. Blaney, Andre scoffed. What we are dealing with this time is just a wizard apprentice who has only been exposed to magic for a few months. These people usually only know one or two small tricks. Believe me, a farmer wielding a hoe is more difficult to deal with than them. In the more than half a year since he joined the witch hunting team, he has participated in several hunting operations against witches. At first, Andre could be afraid of the legendary wizards inspired by the devil. However, after actual contact, Andre discovered that those wizards were not as scary as he imagined. Most of them were not a threat. Their magic power was limited and some were not even as reliable as attack weapons and long swords. As for those apprentices who are not good at learning, they can only be described as waste. Once distracted, they cannot use magic in battle and can only be slaughtered by others. What makes Andre most satisfied is that the bounty for capturing these wizards is very high, and the Duke of Nordland is even more generous. If you capture an apprentice alive, you can get a full six Sika's gold coins, enough for them to spend extravagantly. Bid on it for a while. Of course, if killed, it would only be worth half the price. Blaney glanced at Andre and didn't refute. But he didn't let go of his guard. In his impression, those witch hunters who believed in intelligence often did not live long. The slums outside Nordland were not large. And the circulation of people was even less. With his identity as a witch hunter, Andre confirmed the target's hiding place from a homeless man with a little threat. It was a building that was difficult to describe as a house. The red brick walls were pitted with green vines and the door looked even more shaky, as if it would collapse with a slight push. The target he was looking for was right in front of him, but neither of the two people present had the intention to act immediately. Andre glanced at his partner, cursed secretly in his heart, and then stepped forward and pressed his palm on the door. He pulled the door bolt hard with his callous knuckles. The seemingly shaky door remained motionless. Obviously, someone had blocked the back of the door with something. Andre was furious and kicked the door with all his strength. There was a violent crash, and the door burst open, revealing the scene in the back room. The narrow house looked messy due to lack of maintenance, with garbage piled up in the corners. There was a candle lit on the wooden table nearby. It was probably disturbed by the sound of wind caused by the violent breaking of the door. The weak candle flickered twice and then went out. The originally bright room suddenly became very dark. Only a little light shone through the wide open window, and you could vaguely see the worn blanket on the bed being dragged to the ground and extending to the window. Blaney, who followed, scanned the room, and his eyes were quickly attracted by the note falling on the ground. Andre also noticed this when he entered first. He bent down and picked up the crumpled note. After seeing the content on it clearly, his face became very ugly. Damn it! It looks like we are late! This guy has already gone to join other apprentices, Andre said angrily, and combined with the environment in the room. He immediately figured out what happened. The target of their arrest, the wizard apprentice, had received the news before their arrival and ran away before they had time to pack up their things. However, 
judging from the unextinguished candlelight and the residual warmth on the bed. It seemed that the other party had not gone far. Thinking of this, Andre was very anxious. Even if he was about to leave, these were six Sika's gold coins, so he couldn't just run away. Once the opponent reunites with other wizard apprentices, it will be difficult to capture him. Of course, in comparison, Andre is more worried that the target will be caught first by other bounty hunters halfway. Etc. Just when Andre hurriedly wanted to climb through the window to pursue him, Blaney reached out to stop him. With a former's impatient expression, he pointed to the desk beside him. Andre turned his head and looked over. In addition to the extinguished candles, there were also a dozen copper coins and manuscript papers with strange characters and patterns scattered on the table. After thinking for a while, Andre quickly understood what his companion meant. If the wizard apprentice left after receiving the news, it would be impossible to leave behind the coins that were easy to carry, let alone these precious magic manuscripts. Andre, who had experience hunting wizards, knew very well that most wizards would rather die to protect the so-called research notes they said. In other words, the other party is probably still hiding in this room. Andre sneered. The dragging traces of the blanket on the ground, the wide open window, and the dropped note all hinted that the other party had fled. Obviously this wizard apprentice played a good trick and wanted to mislead them to other places. Maybe it was a trap, and he almost got fooled. At this moment, Lin, who was hiding in the darkness, broke into a cold sweat. His spirit became even more excited in this fatal crisis, and his divergent spirit continued to spread to the surroundings under the influence of magic. It can even affect the flow of air to a certain extent and extinguish candles, and it will not make any sound when breathing. It is thanks to this that he can hide under the eyes of the two witch hunters. Blaney ignored the awakened Andre, looking around the room, and soon looked at the dark red cabinet next to the vertical window. The cabinet was only shoulder high, and its surface was covered with dust. It was very close to the wide open window. It was inconspicuous in this dilapidated and drafty hut, but it was enough to accommodate a huddled up adult man. Chapter 4 Reckless People Die from Recklessness Blaney imagined in his mind that if he searched this cabinet without knowing it, the other party could use the cover of clothing to launch a surprise attack. If he failed, he could jump out of the window through the window. This is hands down the best hiding place in the whole house. Realizing this, Blaney drew his sword without any hesitation. The sound of the sword's blade slicing through the scabbard echoed in the room. Almost instantly, the silver sword blade pierced into the wooden cabinet like a knife piercing butter. And then with a pull of the sword, the closed wooden cabinet was cut open. Sawdust wrapped in rags were scattered in the air. But the expected bloody scene did not appear. Blaney frowned slightly. A little surprised. Was his judgment wrong? Was the gold this time simply careless and left these items in the house? Andre on the side was startled by his companion, who suddenly drew his sword. He was about to laugh at Blaney's misjudgment. In the narrow gap formed by the bookshelf and the wall, a short sword suddenly stretched out from the dark shadow and pointed towards him. He slashed Andre on the neck. It was Lin who did it. The moment Andre and Blaney discovered the coins and manuscripts on the table, Lin knew that he couldn't escape this time. The narrow gap where he hides has no obstruction, relying only on shadows and visual dislocation as means of hiding. This is undoubtedly an extremely dangerous place. But the two of them arrived too quickly. Lin In, who had just experienced the time travel, was so confused that she had no time to find a more suitable place, let alone arrange it, and even drop the sheepskin on the ground. There was no time to clean up the paper rolls. Once the two discover that there is no one hiding in the cabinet and start searching the house carefully, they soon discover themselves. So Lin took action without hesitation. Considering the lethality, Lin did not use the ice blade that he had initially mastered and improved. The lethality of the short sword within three steps was far more reliable than the magic he had mastered. The timing was right when Andre saw the flying sawdust and relaxed his mind. However, this inevitable sword missed. The moment Lin took action, a strong sense of crisis surged into Andre's heart. Before joining the witch hunting team, Andre was a well-known mercenary, walking on the edge of life and death all year round. This deep-rooted feeling Andre is all too familiar with. His keen intuition obviously saved him once again. At the moment when the dagger slashed down, Andre managed to deflect his body to avoid being separated from his head. But Lin's surprise attack came too fast. Even though Andre made an evasive action at the first moment, he couldn't completely avoid it. The sharp dagger scratched his neck and left a deep blood mark. Red blood continued to gush out from the wound. Andre was frightened and angry. The pain in his neck warned him, that he was almost dead. Bastard! 
Andre was so angry that he swung the knife with his right hand, trying to cut Lin in half. The sword was so fast and heavy that Lin almost couldn't react. But his body naturally made a movement to parry. As the swords clashed, the heart-wrenching sound of tearing continued to echo in the room. Before this, Lin had never had the experience of drawing a sword and killing someone. But fortunately, the original Carl was well-trained, and the muscle memory of his body still existed. Carl relied on this excellent swordsmanship to frighten the ill-intentioned neighbors in the slum. But this time his opponent was not a poorly trained bandit, but a ruthless witch hunter who had taken the potion of divine grace and was much more skilled than ordinary people. Andre's sword skills were completely unsystematic, but his moves were fierce. After just three collisions, Lin's jaw was sore that he could hardly hold the dagger in his hand. Death! Andre roared and swung the long sword to move the dagger away. He stretched out his left hand with thick knuckles and grasped Lin's throat tightly. Lin's face turned red as his neck was being strangled, and his consciousness soon fell into blur. Warning, the target of the agreement is under serious life threat. In accordance with Article 37 of the Federal Intelligent Management Act, the nearest law enforcement officer will be automatically contacted. The reminder sound that suddenly sounded in his mind pulled Lin's consciousness back from the abyss of sinking, and a glimmer of hope for life rose in his heart. Warn. No signal. Warn. Not connected to the network. Please go to the highest point nearby as soon as possible. Search for satellite signals. And call the Federal Emergency Hotline in time. Grass. Lin cursed secretly. And then remembered that he had traveled through time. And he couldn't even be sure whether he was in the same universe. Damn it. I should have used the money I spent on the new ship to upgrade this piece of ship with intelligence. Where can he find satellite signals now? Even if he could, would it be possible to have federal police officers come over in a spaceship to rescue him? But at this moment, Lenin couldn't care less about regrets, and the hand holding his neck tightened bit by bit like a god urging death. Warn. If there is no signal, the emergency plan will be started. The maximum survival probability analysis will be carried out, and based on the user agreement, it will connect to the neural network by itself. The prompts in his mind became more and more urgent. But Lin could no longer hear them. At this moment, he only felt as if his brain had exploded, and his soul seemed to have separated from the body. Looking at the world in a strange state, Lin and floating mental power continued to extend like ripples, and his perception of the elements became clearer. Brown hair! Black eyes! It seems you have found the wrong person! Seeing that Andre easily subdued the target, Blaney loosened his hand on the hilt of the sword and looked at Lin. You are very capable, little mouse. If you can hide like this, you might as well chop off one arm and the next leg, Andre said with a cruel smile. He didn't know if it was an illusion, but he felt vaguely that he was having trouble breathing, and his anger kept rising. If he hadn't suddenly remembered that a living person is more valuable than a dead person, Andre would have wanted to kill Lin immediately. Blaney was not surprised by his companion's cruel suggestion and just reminded him casually. It's enough to cut off one hand. Otherwise you have to find a way to carry it back by yourself. Remember to be smart and don't bleed to death on the way. Andre, who had his back to Blaney, had no time to respond at this moment. His face was purple and blue, and the long knife held in his left hand hit the ground heavily. His originally chaotic breathing became more and more rapid. At this moment, he like a dehydrated fish ashore. His heart and lungs seemed to burst. Ten years ago, when he was swallowed by a large whirlpool in the sea of mist, Andre had experienced the feeling of suffocation and dying. Breathing was a luxury. If he hadn't been lucky enough, he might have been buried at the bottom of the sea. But now we are not in the deep sea. And the attack just now clearly did not cut his trachea. Andre took a deep breath. But the situation did not improve at all. Instead, it became more serious. A pair of gray eyes almost popped out of their sockets. What kind of witchcraft is this? Andre immediately realized that the wizard apprentice in front of him was causing trouble. But his strong suffocation reaction made him miss the opportunity to fight back and the force of his palms clamping Lin's neck became weaker and weaker. At the same moment, Lin, who had his head lowered, suddenly made a move, and his closed eyes suddenly opened. At the same time, the oxygen in his body was instantly drained, and a short sword pierced Andre's chest from bottom to top. Throat. Chapter 5 Lin. Since I don't need oxygen, then everyone might as well stop taking it. A dozen breaths ago, Lin's neck was clamped, and he entered an extremely strange state. All the pain seemed to go away quickly. And instead, the brain's thinking activity increased several times. For a moment, Lin couldn't help but wonder if she had traveled to the afterlife. However, no. 
he could still clearly feel that the flow of blood and oxygen to the brain was forcibly blocked, and his body was gradually losing vitality. Before long, he will really die. Faced with such a critical situation, Lin and unexpectedly could not feel any fear. How do you fight back when someone strangles your neck and suffocates you due to lack of oxygen? Tooth for tooth. Eye for eye. Of course. Since I don't need oxygen, everyone might as well stop taking it. Lin In sensed the vast sea of elements in the void. And with a thought, he used his mental power as a net to wrap up the active oxygen molecules and pull them away instantly. What happens when a person is in a low oxygen environment but still breathing? Andre is the best example. A large amount of ineffective gas poured into the lungs. And the blood pressure rose rapidly. In just a few breaths, the symptoms of hypoxia had already appeared. Lin In was keenly aware that the palms that clamped him were showing signs of weakness. It's now. Lin opened his eyes suddenly. Based on the previous memories, the positions and reactions of everyone in the room turned into data and poured into his mind. Lin was even able to give himself based on the angle of Andre's raised arm. Do a very detailed stress analysis on the neck. Numerous complicated data were sorted out in an instant. Lennon built a 100% restored three-dimensional scene in his mind and deduced the best sword plan. Raise your hand and stab straight at a 47-degree angle. Lennon raised his arm and stabbed out the dagger simultaneously. The tower-like man in front of him completely lost his ability to resist due to the strong hypoxia reaction and could only watch helplessly as the tip of the sword penetrated his neck. The fragile neck was obviously unable to block the sharp dagger, and scarlet blood spurted out like a fountain, sprinkling onto Lin's clothes and face. Andre's eyes widened. His mouth opened and closed unconsciously, his hands tightly covering the big hole in his neck that was constantly spurting blood, and he fell down full of fear and unwillingness. Lin didn't hesitate. The moment he broke free from the restraint, he kicked Andre on the body and kicked the body to Blaney, who was stunned aside. He then used the force of the recoil to escape from the hypoxic realm. Blaney did not expect that the situation on the field would suddenly reverse. A look of shock suddenly appeared on his face. And his reaction was a beat slower. He subconsciously took Andre's body. And after seeing the other party's death clearly, his pupils could not help but shrink slightly. And a chill rushed from the soles of his feet to his heart. The bruised face, black and red lips, and dilated pupils all proved that Andre suddenly fell into suffocation and was penetrated through the neck unpreparedly. How can this be? Blaney was horrified. It was clearly Andre who was holding Lin's neck before. But he was suffocated inexplicably. Could it be that this is some kind of weird spell that can hurt both ourselves and the enemy? Lin gasped for air regularly and quickly regained the vitality of his limbs. His neck was locked for a minute. And the forced manipulation of a large amount of oxygen made his brain feel a little tingling. Although he managed to kill one of them by luck using the principle of suffocation. Lin did not dare to relax at all. The brief exchange just now made him understand the gap between the two sides. According to the memory in my mind, these witch hunters are elites with extraordinary skills. The original swordsmanship was good enough to deal with a few bandits. But it was not good enough against the witch hunters sent by the Holy See. All kinds of thoughts flashed through Lennon's mind. And then the beep sounded. Warning. In overload mode. The system energy is consumed rapidly, and it is expected to be forced to shut down in 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Lennon's body couldn't help but paused. And then he realized that his sudden increase in control over the elements was due to the help of his brain. So, just try the magic. Lennon's eyes narrowed. And he clenched the blood-stained dagger in his hand. His mental power once again spread in the air, frantically capturing the water element in the air. A ball of water emerged in the void, and then quickly condensed into shape. A ring of magic, ice blade. The ice blade braving the cold air was like an arrow leaving the string. Blaney's expression condensed and he did not choose to confront the enemy head-on. The long sword in his hand slashed out diagonally and struck the side of the ice blade, deviating from the path of magic. However, during this moment of pause, the preparations for casting the spell were completed. The gray powder was suspended in Lennon's palm, and then exploded into a ball of hot fire. That is another one-ring magic mastered by Lin, fireball technique. The temperature in the room suddenly increased. As both magics, fireball, is much more powerful than Ice Blade. The most important thing is that there is no way to escape from this small room. Blaney smelled the smell of death and slammed his foot on the broken cabinet, knocking it into the violent fireball. Then he turned Andre's body over and covered himself with it as a human shield. The next moment, the fireball hit the broken cabinet and exploded suddenly, and the hot fire suddenly filled the entire room. 
Lin stared at the smoke and dust scattered in front of him, breathing hard. He had no exact idea of the power of a ring of magic. But judging from the effect, it would not be weaker than a grenade and an incendiary bomb. If he took it head on, even if even if you don't die, you will be seriously injured. Just as he was thinking about it, a sharp long sword cut through the foggy smoke and dust, and the sword body reflected the fire light and struck directly towards Lin In. The sword was incredibly fast. By the time Lin In realized it, the sharp sword was already close at hand. Fortunately, at this moment, thanks to the connection between the neural network and the intelligent brain, Lin In's reaction speed has increased several times, and his body coordination has also been greatly improved. He holds the sword horizontally with his right hand, his left hand against the wrist of his right hand, and his stature is slightly lower. Lying down, the tip of the sword was supported on the mottled wall beside him. Dang. A sharp and unpleasant muffled sound echoed in the narrow room. When the two came into contact, Lin felt a sharp pain in the tiger's mouth. The tip of the sword pressed against the wall was deeply embedded in the wall, and a crack broke out on the sword. Elongated cracks. Good wait. This was the only feeling left in Lin's mind. Then he abandoned his sword with both hands and sank to the ground. He rolled several times and narrowly avoided the whip kicks. A sharp sound of wind passed over the head, followed by another muffled sound. Lin turned his head and looked over. A groove had been kicked out of the mottled wall. The force on the wall is about 1.75 tons, and the probability of a bison impact is 65%. A moment of data analysis flashed through his mind, and Lin's pupils shrank. If he was kicked in the front, his internal organs would definitely explode. Body modification? Cyborg? Fighting? Lin In knew very well that a normal person, even with the most scientific professional training, would never be able to kick out such a terrifying force. This completely exceeds the limits of the human body. Chapter 6 This is my last magic. Is such a character just a witch hunter? Also used to capture weak wizard apprentices like himself? Lin In was a little unbelievable. But reality is not a fighting arena and you will not be matched with opponents of equal strength. There is no meaning in begging for mercy or admitting defeat. There is only a life and death fight. Ice Blade? Lin raised his left hand flat and pointed it at Blaney. He had become more and more proficient in the use of water condensation. In the blink of an eye, another ice blade appeared in the void. However, within the reach of mental power, the water element in the nearby area has been exhausted, and the ice blade created cannot pose a sufficient threat to the enemy. Lin In knew this very well, but there was no way to change it, and a strong desire surged in her heart. He needs more water. The moment this idea came up, Lin In felt as if his brain had been hit hard by someone, stinging like countless silver needles. Then the magic power in his body was rapidly consumed and converted into a large amount of hydrogen and oxygen. Elements, before being combined, are converted into flows. At the same time, a strange rune was deeply imprinted in his mind a high-level magic multiple ice blades. In just one second, several sharp ice blades appeared in front of him, scattering like a rain of arrows. Lin's sudden outburst exceeded Blaney's expectations. In a hurry, the long sword turned from offense to defense. Even though the reaction was extremely fast, an ice blade still passed through the protection of the long sword and pierced into the abdomen. Blaney immediately felt a biting coldness, and crystal ice crystals were rapidly spreading up his abdomen. Blaney who was very aware of the strangeness of magic, did not dare to neglect it all. He held the ice blade in his right hand and pulled it out with all his strength. Due to the special structure of the ice blade, the barbs were firmly embedded in the flesh. And when they were forced to be pulled out, red blood suddenly spurted out. The severe pain made Blaney tremble uncontrollably. The wound on his abdomen was already bloody and bloody. What was even more dangerous was that the cold air was spreading rapidly, and he lost consciousness in the wound in an instant. However, Blaney's cruelty exceeded Lin's expectation. After realizing that the wound on his abdomen would affect the subsequent battle, he grabbed the flaming covered door handle and pressed it straight towards his abdomen. Ah! The hot flames intertwined with the fuzzy flesh and blood. And Blaney's veins suddenly appeared. And he couldn't help but let out a roar. Bursts of light smoke came out from the contact point. The fuzzy flesh and blood was almost half cooked. No more blood flowed out. And the biting chill disappeared as the flames roasted it. Seeing this horrific scene, Lin was frightened. Whether it was Blaney ruthlessly using the corpses of his companions to block the knife, or relying on fire to stop the bleeding, he understood that this was by no means an easy character to deal with. Taking advantage of Blaney's distraction, Lin opened the door and escaped without hesitation. 
he lost his protective dagger. In the narrow room, he had no chance of winning. Blaney glanced at Andre's charred body, then chased after him with his sword firmly in his right hand. In the evening, in the slums outside Nordland, two figures chased each other and ran through the narrow and dilapidated streets. At this time, the sky was getting darker and darker, and one ice blade whizzed by one after another, hitting the ground and walls without any order. Every time he cast a spell, Lin's brain would feel a stab of pain. But at this moment Lin couldn't care about so much anymore. Once he stopped casting the spell, the opponent would rush forward and pierce his head with a sword. In comparison, Blaney, who was chasing after him, seemed to be able to do it with ease. His sharp eyes caught the ice blades flying towards him, and he would fly to dodge from time to time, keeping a close distance and hanging behind Lin in. Blaney was so careful. After all, this wizard apprentice was so cunning that he was rarely seen in his life. Whether it was the misleading notes in the room, the sudden burst of ice blades and fireball spells that injured him, or the display of hostility, the weird witchcraft that killed Andre left a deep impression on him. Therefore, even if the opponent seemed exhausted, Blaney did not dare to take action rashly. Like the most patient hunter, he consumed Lin's energy bit by bit until the prey fell down and died. As they chased and escaped, the two of them were getting further and further away from the city. An unpleasant stench permeated the surrounding area. Only then did Blaney realize that Lin had fled to the lower city, which had been abandoned for many years. The entire Nordland territory is low in the south and high in the north, and the main city is built on the bank of the Yao River in the north. More than ten years ago, the Duke of Nordland, who returned from the holy city, was dissatisfied with the messy and smelly appearance of the main city. So he ordered craftsmen to dig a small canal to discharge all the artificial waste in the main city to the lower reaches of the Wei River. This is a hardship for the poor people living in Xiaqing district, who rely on the Wei River for water. However, the Duke of Nordland did not care about the life and death of these untouchables. So over time, the entire lower city gradually became deserted. And only a handful of scavengers would choose to stay in this place. Blaney couldn't help but worry that there were other wizard apprentices hiding here, just when he was determined to prepare for a quick victory. Lin, who had been running away, suddenly stopped in a high and low alleyway. The concentration should be enough. Lin in confirmed for the last time, and the strange runes in his mind were instantly activated, and seven ice blades appeared out of thin air, shining brightly in the sunset, forcibly converting a large amount of magic power into hydrogen and oxygen. The accompanying sequelae became more and more serious. Lin felt that his brain was about to explode. The magic power has been squeezed to the limit. This is his last magic. The next moment, these ice blades automatically divided into two groups and fired erratically, blocking all of Blaney's escape routes. Blaney's expression became a little solemn, and he stared straight into the eyes. Even he couldn't completely block such a large number. But if he tried hard, he would be injured. Fortunately, these ice blades seemed to have lost their accuracy. Most of them just passed by, and only three of them were facing him. A battle between trap beasts? There was a trace of ridicule on Blaney's face. During the previous pursuit, he discovered that Lin's spell casting was not really out of thin air. At least it caused a huge loss of spirit. Obviously the opponent has reached his limit. The corners of Blaney's mouth curled up slightly, and his long sword slashed across the incoming ice blade, one by one with precision. But he failed to notice a red ball mixed with the ice blade and flying towards it. Choking. The blade of the sword collided with the ball, creating extremely brilliant sparks. Blaney was stunned for a moment by the strange and different shock sensation. And then he realized that what he had hit was a piece of flint. Chapter 7 I will reveal the truth of this world to you. As the swords and stones clashed, brilliant sparks spread rapidly around like spider webs. A burst of unreasonable heart palpitation suddenly filled Blaney's brain. But before he could react, everything in front of him was enveloped by leaping firelight. Boom. A violent explosion sounded in the quiet lower city. Lin, who was not far away, was also knocked to the ground by the aftermath of the explosion. At the same time, Jinao's prompt tone also sounded. The energy is exhausted, and the overload mode ends. Ahem. Lin climbed up from the ground in a panic, and then felt a sense of emptiness. The successive spells had drained his magic power. Compared to Lin, who was affected, Blaney, who was in the center of the explosion, looked much miserable. After the smoke dispersed, Lin couldn't help but take a breath. Blaney, who was at the center of the explosion, looked no longer human. The right arm holding the sword was broken in half, and the exposed skin was black and red. 
The leather armor on the chest was broken and broken. And rotten flesh and white bones could be vaguely seen inside. What's even more terrifying is that the violent explosion instantly drained the surrounding oxygen. And Blaney's shrill screams lasted for more than 10 seconds before ending abruptly. Lin couldn't help but feel a little palpitated. He had heard about the power of methane explosions on TV news. But this was the first time he had truly witnessed it. Especially this time, he had made it himself. If Blaney hadn't been too far away from him, and the trajectory of Fireball was easy to judge and easily avoid it, he wouldn't have taken risks and used the principle of biogas explosion to trap and kill the opponent. Thanks to the magic of magic, he can control the flow of air to a certain extent. And there is no shortage of raw materials in the lower city. It is not easy to reach a concentration sufficient to cause an explosion. Lin picked up the long sword that fell on the ground and cautiously stepped forward to check on Blaney's condition. After suffering such a serious injury, Brian didn't die immediately. His eyes were staring at him, and his mouth made a gurgling sound. It was obvious that his vocal cords were also damaged. I'll give you a ride. You're welcome, Lenin said coldly. It was impossible not to hate Brian for breaking into the house and forcing him into a desperate situation. But he had no intention of torturing him. It's probably impossible to ask anything in this state. In this case, death is the best outcome for the opponent. Lin raised his sword and stabbed Brian's heart accurately, watching as the latter's body trembled violently, and then returned to calm, probably due to the blessing of hatred, or the influence of his original body. Carl, Lin, who took a life with his own hands, did not feel too much discomfort except for the psychological effects. On the contrary, it was the aftereffects of the previous spell that made his brain twitch from time to time. Labor pains. After confirming that Blaney was really dead, Lin's tense expression relaxed, and his figure suddenly swayed, holding the sword in his right hand to prevent him from falling to the ground. 071. Lin in shouted softly in his mind, but received no response. Thinking of the previous prompt, he immediately understood that the smart brain was probably using too much energy, so it was temporarily shut down. In this regard, Lin in had no good solution. He could only wait for 071 to replenish energy on its own. At this time, his heart was full of confusion. What exactly is the magic used by wizards? And why can they control chemical elements? There was also the strange rune that appeared in my mind for no reason just now. What surprised Lin the most was that in the overload mode of the brain, he could even directly convert magic power into hydrogen and oxygen. Does that mean that magic can also be converted into any other element? If he could, then the magic of this thing would probably far exceed his expectations. Follow me. I will reveal the truth of this world to you. Recalling what his mentor Kalu said when he met half a year ago, Lin couldn't help but feel trembling. Maybe the old wizard really didn't fool him at that time. It's no wonder that the original Carl gave up his relatively stable life of food and clothing and became a wizard's apprentice. The only pity is that the original time for learning magic was too short. In addition, Kalu had more than one apprentice. So the teaching time was limited and he was not able to access more secrets. The sequelae caused by excessive consumption of magic power also made Lin feel very palpitated. When he cast the spell for the last time, he almost thought that his brain was going to explode. His body was even more weak, as if he had been seriously ill, and he desperately wanted to lie down, come down, and have a good sleep. But Lin In knew that this was not the time to rest. Although he had eliminated two enemies, the fighting that broke out in the slums was not small. He was afraid that it would not be long before the news reached the local trial court and the other party would definitely send some troops. More hands were on hand to arrest him. The top priority is to find a place to stay as soon as possible and find a way to contact a wizard. Lin looked down at Blaney's body, poked it with his sword, cut open the damaged bag on his waist, and a small pile of coins fell out. One gold seekers coin, seven silver coins, and a dozen copper coins. Seeing that these well-made coins had not been damaged by the explosion made Lin feel a little better, as the illegitimate son of a nobleman. He was not very wealthy to begin with. In addition, he ran away from home for half a year and occasionally had to fund his mentor's research. During this time, he could not even afford to eat. With this windfall, he no longer had to take the risk of returning to that shabby house. Going back now would most likely lead to death. Eh, uh, Lennon bent down to collect the coins and picked them up. Unexpectedly, he found that a piece of parchment fell out together with the coins. Under the high temperature, most of the writing has been completely invisible and only characters such as Your Town, Moonlight Sun, Gianni, and 17 Copper Coins can be vaguely seen. You are Town? 
Lin murmured to himself. Out of caution, he did not destroy it on the spot, but put away the burned parchment. He needs someone who can answer his questions. Going to UR Town to find other apprentices might be a good choice. At least it would be more reliable than searching for the hidden wizards alone. As Lin thought about it, he reached out and grabbed Blaney's ankle, dragging him toward the rancid Piao River not far away. In this medieval world of magic and divine arts, even the dead are unreliable. If the Holy See in this world masters resurrection, then your information may be leaked. The safest way is to dispose of the body together. Chapter 8 This is Blasphemy Against God Bishop Ansiak, this is it. I just saw the wizard and the witch hunter coming out of the house from a distance and fighting all the way here. A quarter of an hour later, in the lower city, a scavenger in tattered clothes and covered in dirt looked at the Vatican priests in front of him with a stooped figure and carefully told everything he saw. Ansik was speechless. He lowered his head and looked at the marks burned by the flames on the ground. The red blood had turned into dark red after being evaporated by the high temperature. The upturned ground surface and the fragmented flesh and blood residues all showed the brutality of the battle. What caused such serious damage was most likely the second ring magic, Pyroblast. Where's the body? Ansiak suddenly asked. There were obvious signs of battle on the ground. But there was no body of Blaney. The scavenger swallowed and spoke with difficulty. After the death of the witch hunter, he was thrown into the river by the wizard. This is blasphemy. Before Ansiak could speak, a middle-aged priest behind him shouted excitedly. Over the years, thanks to the wise actions of the Duke of Nordland, the entire lower reaches of the Yao River have become a veritable filthy place. You must know that Blaney's identity is not just as simple as a witch hunter, but also a member of the Holy See's Divine Punishment Army. He even drank the Divine Grace Potion in advance, and he seemed to have become a messenger of God in the mortal world. The reason why he frequently participates in witch hunts is just to add to his resume. But the wizard who was corrupted by the devil brutally killed the other party and threw the body into the filthy Yao River. This was undoubtedly a provocation to the majesty of the Holy See. The scavenger's body couldn't help but tremble and he lowered his head in fear. Ansik's hand holding the scepter tightened a little, and his anger continued to rise. He turned to look at the slightly trembling scavenger and asked again, Did you see clearly what the wizard who killed Blaney looked like? Was there anyone else involved in the process? I just took a few glances from a distance. Sir Bishop, there shouldn't be a second wizard. The scavenger replied with a slight trembling. The man appears to be a young adult. He has brown hair and is probably as tall as you. Carl. Ansiak murmured to himself, thinking about the other party's information in his mind. Before this, he had never paid much attention to this unknown wizard apprentice. After all, judging from the information obtained, he had only been in the profession for about half a year, and he was not taken seriously by the wizard Caro on weekdays. He was the least threatening among all targets. One of. But that doesn't seem to be the case now. Release the second ring of magic, Pyroblast, and kill two witch hunters one after another. This is definitely not something that an apprentice who is new to magic can do, unless the other party possesses a powerful alchemy item. Or maybe, an official wizard just like Kelu. A few days later, at the Nordland border, in a hotel in the town of Yuar, Lin woke up from the nightmare and jumped up from the hard wooden bed, then walked to the window as fast as possible and observed the scene outside the window. Seeing that everything was normal and no one came to surround him, Lin In was relieved. Ever since he killed the two witch hunters in the slums five days ago, he had been worried about the subsequent pursuit by the tribunal. He also deliberately took a long way to UR town and even faked some traces of his escape. Perhaps his half-baked anti-reconnaissance skills really worked. Or the Inquisition had no time to pay attention to his little wizard apprentice. So far, he has not encountered any pursuers. But even so, the journey can only be described as difficult. After being accustomed to the convenience of modern life, and now suddenly coming to a place similar to the European Middle Ages. This contrast almost made Lin collapse. After all, there are no mobile phones, computers, familiar family or friends here, and you can't have a hot breakfast when you wake up in the morning. You can only eat a bite of brown bread that is hard to swallow with water. The only good thing is that he has a complete set of memories of the original Carl, understands the language and writing of this world, and is not weak in skills. He can intimidate some short-sighted thieves, so as not to die on the way. After several days of torture, Lin reluctantly accepted the fact that he had traveled through time, and this was already the second day after he arrived in UR town. Out of caution, Lin did not rush to find the whereabouts of the other wizard apprentices. After discovering the marks left by the other wizards, he returned secretly 
spent a day getting familiar with the terrain, and purchased a dozen new flints and a bag. Black bread. Lin In became a little nervous after a few days of escape, but after getting to know the town of Yuar, she immediately understood why Johnny chose this gathering place. As a trading town on the border of Nordland, the people coming and going here are mixed, and caravans often come and go. One or two unfamiliar faces will not attract too much attention. While thinking about it, Lin reached for the stone mortar on the side, placed the broken flint into pieces, and then ground it into fine powder with a small wooden stick. During the time when he entered UR town, apart from looking for markers and familiarizing himself with the terrain, Lin spent the rest of his time making white phosphorus. White phosphorus is a simple substance of phosphorus with the chemical formula P4, and its appearance is a white or light yellow translucent solid. There are two commonly used production methods. One is to mix calcium phosphate, quartz sand and carbon powder into a mixture, heated to 1400 to 1600 degrees Celsius, and then pass the generated phosphorus vapor into cold water to solidify and form white phosphorus. The second is to isolate the air, heat the red phosphorus to 416 degrees Celsius, then sublime and cool it. It's just that in this world without an industrial system, similar to ancient Europe, it is not easy to find these raw materials in a short time. Although 071 had shown him some ancient and convenient raw material extraction methods, Lin did not intend to use them unless absolutely necessary. Fortunately, Lin soon discovered a surprise. The surface of the flint he had used was partially doped with red phosphorus. This is not surprising considering that red phosphorus is an efficient flame retardant and was used in the manufacture of matches to improve their safety in the last century. It seems that the indigenous people of this world have discovered the element phosphorus. But their use is still very crude. Under the continuous grinding of the wooden stick, the flint fragments were gradually decomposed. And after removing some impurities, only clusters of red powder were left. He didn't have any professional instruments in his hands. But the magical power was much easier to use than those scientific instruments. Hand of the Mage. As soon as Lin In thought, the fine red phosphorus automatically suspended as if it was inspired by something and then decomposed into the basic molecular state under the action of Primary Material Deconstruction Technique Chapter 9 White Phosphorus Fire and Spell Positions Lin concentrated on evacuating the air around the red phosphorus as much as possible while using the principle of accelerating the movement of molecules to increase the temperature. After more than 10 seconds, wisps of white mist floated out, gathered together under the constraints of magic, and then quickly cooled down and solidified into a ball of translucent yellow powder. This is white phosphorus. Knowing the horror of this thing, Lin didn't dare to touch it with his hands. He held his breath to maintain the mage's hand throughout the whole process and put the collected white phosphorus into the bag originally containing the red fire embers. This storage bag is specially used to store magic materials. It has a very good isolation effect and can effectively prevent white phosphorus from sudden spontaneous combustion. After doing all this, fine beads of sweat appeared on Lin's forehead. Completing such a tedious process was somewhat reluctant for Lin, who was still a wizard's apprentice. If the spiritual fusion during the time travel had not greatly improved his control of magic, this attempt would have ended in failure. Fortunately, everything went as he expected. Lin placed the storage bag in place and shuddered as he recalled the horrific scene in his memory of the raging fire ignited by white phosphorus burning the earth. I just hope I don't have to use it. As an AD person who grew up in a peaceful era, Lenin still has a great respect for life. But he also knows that in this alien world where human life is like a piece of grass. In order to protect himself, he can only die as a Taoist friend rather than a poor Taoist. 071. After doing all this, Lin In shouted silently in his heart. This has become his daily routine since the brain was forced to shut down five days ago. Obviously, there was no response this time. If it weren't for the fact that the magic power in the body was slowly draining away, used to supply energy to the brain. Lennon would have doubted whether 071 had completely disappeared. The intellectual brain is an important reliance for him to survive in this strange world. Just connecting to the neural network can greatly improve the ability of thinking, which is enough to get rid of many crises. Not to mention that in that special state, he was able to convert magic into elements and complete the release of magic without preparing materials in advance. Thinking of the sight of his mentor Kalu using the second ring magic group ice blade, Lin had a vague guess in his mind. The ability to use magic to transform elements may be the key to distinguishing wizard apprentices from formal wizards. He was very sure that Carl, as an apprentice, was absolutely unable to do this. And he did not have any relevant memories in his brain. It was probably the mental fusion of 
okay, after traveling through time. And the help of the intelligent brain that allowed him to make a short breakthrough. Get rid of the shackles. Lin In pondered and entered meditation. And the extremely magical world of elements once again appeared. In front of his eyes. But at this moment, Lenin's attention has been focused on the strange runes suspended in the sea of consciousness. Inside the strange runes are countless tiny dots and lines, arranged together in a very special way, which looks exquisite and full of beauty. Lin in tentatively touched it with his spiritual power, and the runes lit up instantly. Immediately afterwards, Lin noticed that the magic power in his body was reduced by one-tenth at this moment. When he opened his eyes, a diamond-shaped ice blade appeared in his palm. That's a bit like it. Spell slot? Lin in touched his chin and quickly thought of the spell slots mentioned in the elemental analysis. This is also an ability that only formal wizards have and can greatly increase the speed of spell casting. In general, the process of constructing spell slots is a bit like the programming work in the previous life. You can set various parameters in advance and then press the confirm button when needed to export the results immediately. So the arrangement of this rune probably refers to one equal part of oxygen plus two equal parts of hydrogen plus reducing the movement speed of molecules plus special configuration equals ice blade? Well, I have to say, this is very scientific. Lenin tried several other magic spells with great interest. But surprisingly, no new spell slots were formed. After thinking about it, Lenin quickly guessed the reason. If he wanted to construct the corresponding spell slot, he would probably need to perform a complete cast of one ring magic without the help of casting materials. Thinking of this, Lin In could only temporarily give up his plan to continue solidifying the spell slots. Without the blessing of the auxiliary brain, there was still a big gap between him and the official wizard. Lin In raised his head and glanced at the sky outside. It was probably time to meet the wizard apprentices. Today is Sunday, the last day of the agreement. Drunk man, the tavern is located in the most prosperous area of your town. If he hadn't followed the secret mark all the way, Lin would never have imagined that Johnny would choose this place to meet. And 17 coppers is the price of a glass of gyro wine. Is this considered darkness under the light? Lin in complained secretly in his heart. But as soon as he opened the door, his brows furrowed involuntarily. As a gathering place for the lower class, the interior of the drunkard tavern seemed very lively. The rising stove dispersed the cold wind at night, and the space of less than 100 square meters was packed to the brim. The wooden floor was covered with wine stains and vomit and there was a strong fishy smell that almost killed Lin. On the long table at the entrance of the tavern, a drunken halfling saw Lin and coming in at a glance. Seeing that he was still young and a stranger, he yelled with ill intentions. Boy, why don't you come over and have a drink together? Lin turned his head and looked at the drunken halfling with inquiring eyes. Halflings are a species unique to this continent. They are called this name not because they are only halfling, but because they are short in size, about half the height of an adult like a dwarf. However, these people are not the product of genetic defects, but another real ethnic group. The halflings are all strong and powerful, and the muscles all over their bodies seem to be given by nature, a bit like the dwarves in the western fantasy works of the previous life. I just don't know what the physical structure and genetic makeup of these halflings are like, and how they are different from humans. Lin's instincts as a data storage clerk were kicking in. The drunken halfling couldn't help but shudder under Lin and probing eyes and felt a cold air rushing from the soles of his feet to his heart. Five years ago, in Nordland, he had a meeting with Luke, the notorious skullcutter. He was a vicious thug who loved to cut people into pieces. Lin's eyes were particularly similar to Luke's at that time. In the other's eyes, he seemed to be a corpse waiting to be dissected. Chapter 10 Carl Why did you betray us? Quack. Suddenly, a crisp crow call interrupted the two of them looking at each other. Lin looked back regretfully, and looked in the direction of the sound a palm-sized gray crow was standing on the counter. Above, he was staring at himself intently. Drunk man, the owner of the tavern is an authentic good businessman with a shrewd and philistine air. After hearing the crow, he couldn't help but stop wiping the wine glass and grinned, revealing his yellow teeth. Greeted warmly, What a rare stranger! Welcome to the Drunkard Tavern! Is there anything you need? My guest? A glass of gyro wine requires four vintages. If I heard correctly, it should be 17 Sika's copper coins. Lin walked straight to the stage and arranged the copper coins in his hand in equal parts of five, five, and seven. On the table, the owner of the tavern looked at Lin carefully, his eyes lingering on the long sword hanging at his waist. The expression on his face did not change. That's last year's standard. Now, 
it costs 21 coppers. Lennon was stunned for a moment. But before he could answer, the pretty female bartender on the side pursed her lips and said teasingly, Old Hawk, are you trying to fool the newcomers? Why didn't I know that the price of cologne here has suddenly increased? As he spoke, the female drinker looked at Lin in with interest. Although a cup of 17 coppers of cologne was not a luxury item, few people in the drunkard tavern would be so generous. In particular, that man was young and handsome, with strong muscles. He should not be the type to look at but not to use. Old Hawk didn't care about the woman's troubles and grinned. Two cargo ships have capsized at the harbor this year. The raw materials for gyro wine are scarce, so they are always more expensive. Lin frowned and spoke again. But I only have 17 Sika's copper coins. When the young female drinker heard this, her interest in Lin suddenly dropped by half. She seemed to be just another poor guy who squandered his savings just for a sip of good wine. Then I suggest you change your taste. Old Hawk shrugged. Of course, if you are interested in making some extra money, I can help you. Lame Laud is currently in need of a guy who can help him with his private work. He has always been generous and generous. Crippled Laud? Lin raised his eyebrows. During the time he stayed in UR Town to explore intelligence, he had heard this name more than once. The rumors about the other party are not good. Very good. I'm looking for a suitable job. Lennon thought about it, but nodded and agreed. Old Hawk swept the copper coins on the table into his pocket, asked the waiter in the tavern to temporarily take over his work, then looked at Lin and spoke again. Come with me. The cologne you want is in the cellar. Get it first, and then I will take you to see him. Seeing Lin leaving with Old Hawk without any precautions, the drinkers watching the excitement couldn't help but smile gloatingly. Everyone living in UR Town knows that although the lame Laud is generous, he is also famous for his black heart. It is rumored that many people who ran ships under him have disappeared inexplicably. And sometimes not even a body can be found. Arrive. You have the life to take the money. But you don't have the life to spend it. While the drinkers were gloating about their misfortune, Old Hawk led Lin through the back kitchen and into the storage room filled with wheat flour and wooden barrels and then stopped in front of a huge, dirty wine barrel. Click. Old Hawk pressed hard on the lid of the wine barrel on the side. With the sound of wine surging, the wine barrel slowly rotated half a circle, and the bottom wooden board suddenly popped out, revealing a secret passage half a man high. Follow this path. The person you want to see is inside. Old Hawk lowered his voice, stuffed the lit candlestick into Lin's arms, and warned him patiently. Be careful, and don't get me into trouble. Lin thanked him picked up the oil lamp, and stepped straight into the secret passage. The huge wooden barrel covered with wine stains behind him rotated back to its original position, followed by the sound of wine being refilled. The faint light coming from the outside world disappeared, and the dark passage was pitch black, extending to unknown places. Only the weak candlestick in the hand could barely illuminate the road ahead, and the smell of low-quality wine could still be smelled in the air. Lennon walked along the dim passage, already alert, and kept recalling the information about several fellow apprentices in his mind. Because his mentor Kalu has been running around all these years. He does not have a fixed residence. Let alone keeping every apprentice by his side. After all, too many new faces popping up suddenly in a city are really eye-catching and not conducive to hiding one's identity. Therefore, the original person's understanding of these people is very limited. Most of them have only met a few times and know their names and looks. The only one he was familiar with was Johnny who had sent him a letter before. Of course, this familiarity is one-sided. To be precise, the original Carl had subtle feelings for Johnny that were unique to teenagers. To put it in understandable terms, it is unrequited love caused by lust. As Kalu's most favored disciple, Johnny was very talented in magic and was only one step away from becoming an official wizard. He was also the apparent leader of their group of apprentices after Kalu's death. It's a pity that this one-sided and delicate relationship obviously cannot provide him with any help. While Lennon was distracted, the narrow secret passage ahead gradually became wider. Through the weak candlelight, Lennon was shocked to realize that the secret passage actually led to a dense forest outside the town of Yuar. It was already late at night, but the sky was not as dark as expected. The silver moonlight fell through the gaps in the jungle branches and leaves. The solid lust ground seemed to be covered with a layer of transparent tulle. Lin-In felt faintly inside his body. The magic power has become more and more active. Is this Sunday? Through the dense trees, Lin could vaguely see the bright stars and the huge moon in the sky. According to the memory of his predecessor, Carl, this peculiar astronomical scene only happened once a year and lasted about three to five days. However, 
there is no record in the memory that Moonlight can affect magic power. That's right. The predecessor became a wizard for only half a year. Just as Landon was thinking about it, a rapid sound of breaking through the air suddenly sounded, and a dozen condensed, magic missiles shot out from the surrounding closed woods, blocking his escape routes in front, back, left and right. Trap? This idea immediately came to Lennon's mind, and he reacted the next moment. He flipped his free left hand, and a ball of great powder was thrown out and fell into his palm. It was exactly what was left before. Casting materials, embers of red fire. Lennon threw it hard, and the dots of powder instantly ignited under the influence of magic power, forming a scorching wall of fire in front of him. However, the new type of magic used in a hurry, secondary fire wall technique, was naturally no match for the cooperation of several wizard apprentices, and the magic missile penetrated the sea of fire almost instantly. Fortunately, Lennon's goal had been achieved. The heat wave and high temperature caused by the fire wall caused these magic creations to lose their accuracy and hit the tree trunks and the less soil behind them randomly. Seeing four figures covered in black robes forming a semicircle surrounding him, Lennon silently pulled out the long sword at his waist, and at the same time untied the storage bag containing the white phosphorus, getting ready for the battle. Due to time constraints, the stock of white phosphorus he produced was limited, but now was obviously not the time to hold back. But before Lennon could take action, a cold voice came out first. Carl! Why did you betray us? Chapter 11 The Land of Wizards Grenriel the sudden question made Lin stun for a moment. After several figures gradually approached, Lin recognized the leader at a glance. It was the target he was looking for this time, Johnny. The girl wrapped in a black robe is about 20 years old, with strange long silver-gray hair, and her eyes are a bright sapphire blue, probably because he had been hiding and running around all day long. Johnny was much thinner than when they last met, and his face looked sickly pale. I don't understand what you mean. Johnny! Lin's tone was extremely firm without any wavering. With all the memories of his predecessor, he was very sure that Carl had not done anything to betray him. At most, just think about it in your heart. Otherwise, there is no need to hide in the slums in fear. Where is your sword? The gray-haired witch continued to question. Only then did Lin notice that Johnny's eyes had been fixed on the sword he was holding. As soon as he thought about it, he immediately understood what was wrong. What you have in your hand is a weapon commonly used by witch hunters. But, the tall and strong wizard apprentice at the side, said emotionally. Of course. This is my trophy. Is there any problem? Buck? Lin replied calmly, but cold sweat broke out on his back. I have been carrying such a time bomb with me these days. Of course, we can't blame him for not being cautious enough. After all, his dagger has been left in the house in the slum. It's hard to just throw away a ready-made weapon in front of you. Right? The most important thing is that there is no information in Carl's memory that which hunters are equipped with standard weapons. Judging from the fact that I haven't encountered any trouble these days, there should be very few people who know this information. But obviously I can't hide this from Old Hawk at the Drunk Tavern. No wonder when he was buying Gira wine. The other party would evade the temptation with various reasons. The information that he held the witch hunter sword should have been passed on to Johnny and the others by Old Hawk. Trophy? You mean you killed a witch hunter and took his sword? Buck said with a sneer. Carl! If I remember correctly, you can't even master the most basic magic ice blade. You might as well find a more suitable reason. As lackeys of the Holy See, those who can be selected as witch hunters are all the best among the best. Their skills are far superior to ordinary people. They usually operate in a small team of several people. Even if they are a formal wizard, they will be extremely troubled. For these apprentices, it was lucky to escape with their lives. Sometimes strength doesn't mean everything. Buck! Lin shook his head. Besides, it was four months ago when we last met. Right. As he spoke, Lin stretched out his hand, and the hydrogen and oxygen in the air around him were stripped out, and then quickly cooled and condensed into shape. Almost instantly, a diamond-shaped ice blade appeared in front of everyone's eyes, with a weird shape but full of strange beauty. Several wizard apprentices present could not help but be stunned for a moment. This was not because they were surprised by the unprecedented shape of the ice blade, but because Lin's casting speed was too fast. You must know that before becoming an official wizard, you cannot burn the corresponding spell slots in your brain. So how to quickly complete the complicated spellcasting steps and increase the spellcasting speed has become a big problem. After all, in a real battle, the enemy will not wait for you to finish casting the spell. 
An ordinary wizard apprentice can be qualified if he can complete the preparation of casting the spell within two seconds. But Link compressed the whole process to about one second, probably in order to pursue pure speed. The shape of the ice blade was not a perfect Kalu configuration, but it was enough to make everyone present look at it. Also, I don't think the Holy See will allow a wizard to become a witch hunter and issue corresponding weapons to him. Lenin retorted again before everyone came to their senses, but was completely speechless. The Holy See had always killed wizards like them without mercy. To allow a wizard who was corrupted by the devil to become a witch hunter was simply blasphemy against God. The other wizard apprentices obviously also understood this truth, and their hostility towards Lin was somewhat restrained. Johnny did not lower his guard, but looked at one of them and asked, Have you explored the area? White Pigeon! No one is surrounding this place! The person who spoke shrank his body into his black robe and replied timidly. After receiving an accurate reply, Johnny turned around and said apologetically to Lin, I'm sorry, Carl! The situation is urgent, and we have to be careful. So, you just doubted me and were preparing to kill me without any evidence? Lin asked. I assure you, the magic just now was just a test. No one would want to harm their companions, Johnny solemnly explained. Lenin stared into the girl's blue eyes and did not see any evasion or lies in them. But when he was attacked before, he really felt the danger. However, considering that his suspicions were not completely cleared and his perception was not 100% reliable, Lin In did not reveal this information in public. Compared to the other apprentices, he has followed Kalu for the shortest time and is also the least trustworthy. After a pause, Lin In suppressed his unhappiness for the time being and asked again, Did something happen? I need an explanation. Come with me first. This is not a place for chatting. The battle just now might expose our whereabouts. Johnny glanced at Lin apologetically and then asked everyone to return to the station under the cover of night. When the full moon hung high above his head, a desolate and dilapidated village appeared in front of Lin. This village was massacred and destroyed by a group of mercenaries who sneaked in during the last conquest war of the Duke of Nordland. Now apart from us, there is only a group of wild beasts left here, Johnny sighed, and then softly said to himself, These damn nobles! Damn the Holy See! Damn the war! Lin looked at Johnny with a little surprise. He was not surprised by the girl's words. It was just that everyone present was probably from a noble family. Is this really okay? Although he had an inexplicable dislike for nobles, Johnny still chose the location of his temporary residence in a noble manor. After experiencing the devastation of the war, the huge manor has long lost its former glory. The entire main house looks crumbling, with ruins and broken walls everywhere. The interior of the house wasn't much better either. The dilapidated walls were covered with cobwebs. The overturned seats were covered with thick dust and there was a smell of decay. But this is the residence of nobles after all. In order to cope with the war, the huge main residence is almost a small castle, with several sentries set up and even an independent drainage canal. In other words, at least they don't have to drink water here. Worry about problems. Entering the manor, Lin soon saw the wizard apprentice staying in the castle Barton. Compared with his burly brother Buck, Barton is almost another counterexample. He can only be described as skinny, as if he could be hung upside down by a gust of wind. Johnny and everyone carried the sundries to the door, sealed the door again, and then spoke proactively before Lin asked, Kent is dead! Who is Kent? Lin was stunned for a moment, and after rummaging through his memory, he remembered that Kent was the third disciple Kalu had accepted, and the only wizard apprentice who was not present. Unexpectedly, this guy had died. On the same day that the teacher was arrested by the Holy See, the Nordland guards raided Kent's hiding place. After that, Buck, Barton, and Will were also hunted down. Only by G's special ability evaded the attack in advance. Gianni started to explain. Special ability? Lin subconsciously looked at the wizard apprentice named by Gu. She looked a little too young. Only about 13 or 14 years old. She was not as tall as his shoulders. Her yellow face was dotted with sparse freckles, and her hair was messy. She was squatting in the corner alone feeding a few gray cats. Crow. Lin's thoughts changed, and he quickly thought of the crows he heard in the tavern, and then guessed that the other party should have some kind of magic that can control animals. I suspect that someone betrayed our information so that the Holy See could find our hiding place so accurately, Johnny said worriedly. Then how many people know where our hiding place is? Lin asked the most critical question. As wizards who were hunted down and suppressed by the Holy See, they could never disclose their whereabouts at will which meant that there must be very few people who knew about it. 
and they only needed to do the elimination method. Johnny was silent for a moment, then shook his head. Normally, only a few of us should know. Could it be the teacher? Buck on the side asked hesitantly. Absolutely impossible. Johnny's eyes narrowed, and he shouted categorically. Buck immediately shut up. Lennon didn't dwell too much on this question, but asked the second question that concerned him the most. Then what's our plan next? Lin vaguely regretted the move of finding these wizard apprentices. He originally thought that although Johnny and others were being hunted, they were at least internally stable. Even if they could not lead him to find another official wizard, they could still be a good helper. However, that doesn't seem to be the case now. If Johnny doesn't have a reliable enough plan to escape the pursuit of the Holy See, then he will only look for opportunities to break away from this group. For Lin, it is safer to act alone than to follow a group of pig teammates. Buck and Will also looked at Johnny together, and even the white dove stopped feeding the gray crow. During the period when they were being pursued by the Vatican, they had asked the same question more than once. But Johnny refused without exception, and would not reveal anything until they were all present. Johnny didn't hide anything this time and responded freely. Then we will take a boat across the Sea of Mist, and head to the land of Wizards Greenreel. Does the wizarding land really exist? Will, who had been silent, suddenly asked. But I once heard that outside the Sea of Mist, there is a land of death. Those who go to the sea will never come back. Yes, I have followed my mitter there before. It is a territory that belongs exclusively to wizards. There is no power from the Holy Sea or witch hunters. Everyone can freely study magic there, Johnny said firmly. This sounds as wonderful as Ella's holy land, Barton murmured softly. He really couldn't imagine a world where wizards were not hunted and could cast spells freely. It could only be described as a dream just like the Holy Land of Ella described in the Bible. It is a place that only the most devout believers can reach after death. There is no pain or aging there. Everyone can live in a spacious manner and enjoy the meticulous care of the dream elves. In the Holy Land, the river flows with mellow wine. The wheat fields will automatically produce full ears of wheat without having to be cultivated by themselves. And the branches of every tree are covered with plump and juicy steaks. Ella doesn't like wizards, the white pigeon squatting in the corner said weakly interrupting Barton's fantasy. Then how do we get there? Will asked eagerly. Johnny hesitated for a moment, then responded truthfully. The town of Uar is very close to the harbor in Nordland. We can take a boat there. I think. Lame Laud should be able to help us. Lauder? Lynn couldn't help but be a little surprised. Old Hawk, the owner of the Drunk Tavern, also mentioned this name to him before. It is said that the cripple Laud worked as a pirate for several years, when he was young and gained quite a reputation. It was not until his legs were broken during a robbery of a merchant ship that he escaped by pretending to be dead. However, it was this experience that changed Laud's luck. After that battle, the big boss of the pirate gang died. Laud, who was lucky enough to stay, successfully became the pirate leader. However, this guy went against the norm and did not continue his plundering business. Instead, he started a serious business. Now he controls the liquor trade in UR Town and the seaport, and can be said to be the largest local snake in the entire west of Nordland. After thinking about the various rumors in the market, Lin and immediately realized that the so-called alcohol trade operated by the other party was just a disguise, and the real main business should be to maintain the connection between the wizarding land and the outside world. In short, we must seize the time. Only on Sunday will the road to the wizard's land be temporarily opened. Johnny quickly pulled out the long sword at his waist, and simply drew the location of UR Town and the harbor on the ground, and marked the route of action with sword marks. We will set off early tomorrow morning and go around Mount Cordiso. It shouldn't attract anyone's attention. Judging from the astrological indications, this year's Sunday will last for five days. It's totally in time, Johnny told the general plan. And seeing that Lin and others had memorized it, he destroyed all the carved images with a fireball. That's it for tonight. In the light of the fire, Johnny looked around at everyone and finally added, Bye, Koo. I'll leave the night watch to you. Let Carl carry you on the road tomorrow. Why me? Lenin touched her nose when her name was called. Feeling extremely depressed. She was really bullying the newcomers. Wasn't she? Chapter 12 Lenin, I know this question. After running around all night, everyone present was exhausted. After Johnny finished speaking, they went to rest. Lenin was no exception. He chose a room that he could see through closed the broken door, and lay down on it without paying attention to the dust on the wooden bed. During the week that he traveled back in time, Lennon's mind had been tense. She even slept with half her eyes open. 
for fear that she would be killed by the guards, who rushed in the next moment. Now she could finally relax a little. Green reel. Lin muttered about the wizarding place that Johnny mentioned. Unlike Will and others who were suspicious of him, he didn't think it was strange that a group of magic wizards united to encircle a piece of land and study magic there. In other words, this seems completely normal to him. On the contrary, the Holy See, a theological sect that engages in faith, finds it strange. For Lin, going to the land of wizards is undoubtedly an excellent choice. He can better utilize his advantages in a place where magic and knowledge are respected. And he does not have to worry about being kidnapped one day. And in the Sika's empire, which is controlled by the Holy See, I am afraid that I will not even be able to find a place where I can farm and advance science and technology with peace of mind. If a divine intervention really comes to him, where can I go to reason with him? Even if he comes up with an antimatter weapon, he may not be able to survive it. After weighing the pros and cons, Lin gave up her plan to go alone for the time being. But a trace of worry always lingered in her mind. He didn't think that the sense of crisis he had noticed in the dense forest was his illusion. Johnny. Dove. Will. Buck. Barton. Figures flashed through Lennon's mind. In the six months since he became a wizard's apprentice, his friendship with these people has been very shallow. And he has no grudges. So the possibility of personal enmity can basically be ruled out. As for who did it, Lin thought for a while, and decided to rule out Johnny first. This is not because of the goodwill brought by the original body. So she is treated specially. But because she is the least suspicious. As the apparent leader of the apprentices and the proposer of the escape plan. If she surrendered, she'd better run away. Next is the white pigeon. The opponent's ability to control animals is very crucial. It can be said that he is the eyes and ears of the team. If such a person changes sides, it will definitely be a nightmare. The parchment scroll that reminded him before was also written by Johnny and was sent by the white dove controlling the gray crow. If there was a problem with one of them, Carl was afraid that he would die before he could travel through time. The remaining three people, Lin, were a little hesitant. Buck and Barton were twin brothers. It shouldn't be a problem for them to take care of each other and hide it from Johnny and others. At least Will, who was taciturn, knew even less. He only knew that the other party was the heir of a count in the Sika's empire. Lin closed his eyes and kept recalling every detail of his contact with the wizard apprentices, and then thought of the secret passage in the drunk tavern, Old Hawk, the wizarding land, and crippled Laud. Vaguely, a guess flashed through his mind. Lin opened his eyes suddenly and sat up from the bed. An inexplicable chill gradually filled his heart. Click. At the same moment, the creak of the door shaft was heard and the ajar door was pushed open. Lin In, who was already alert, subconsciously drew out the long sword from his waist and slashed towards the door. After seeing the person clearly, Lin In's movement suddenly stopped, and the sharp sword hovered in front of the girl. Gianni? Lin was somewhat surprised. The silver-haired which was raising her right hand to block the sword. Only then did Lin notice that the girl was wearing a pure black leather glove on her right hand, with many complicated and mysterious inscriptions carved on the surface. It looks like it should be some kind of alchemy tool. Did you have a nightmare? The silver gray haired which frowned slightly, not quite understanding why Lin and had such a sudden reaction. After a pause, she explained again. I knocked on the door just now, but you didn't respond. Lin and nodded, took back the sword, and asked doubtfully, It's so late. What's wrong? My teacher told me before that when you master a ring of magic, blade of ice, I will hand it over to you. Johnny said lonelyly taking out a two-finger-thick book from his arms. It was handed to Lin In, with the words, Basic Magic Common, scrawled on the cover. Lin took it curiously. The entire book was made of rough papyrus. He turned to the first page of the book. The first witchcraft recorded on it was called Magic Missile. Like, Elementary Material Deconstruction. Magic Missile is also a special type of zero-ring magic. Its power is much weaker than Ice Blade and Fireball. The advantage is that Magic Missile is a pure magical creation. There is no need to prepare casting materials in advance. And there is no upper limit for control. Theoretically, as long as the magic power is enough, it is not impossible to create hundreds of magic missiles at one time. Of course, quantity alone is of no use. The energy of any wizard is limited. A wizard apprentice can create and control two or three missiles at the same time to attack, which is already the limit. Otherwise, it will be easy to get distracted in the battle. But there is no solution. Lin turned the pages of the book. There were a lot of curves drawn on the second page of Basic Magic. 
and there were many harem formulas, like ghost drawings below. After careful study, Lin In roughly understood what the other party wanted to express. If you want to break through the control limit of magic missile, you need to establish a three-dimensional coordinate in your mind with yourself as the center, and then preset the flight path of magic missile in advance. The flight trajectory can not only be a straight line, but also a curve, which means that the caster can create a large number of magic missiles to form an overwhelming and irresistible barrage attack from different directions and angles. This requires equations of straight lines and curves in three-dimensional space. Lin and touched his chin. This question didn't seem to be difficult, since magic missile is a pure magic creation. It is very little affected by gravity and only needs to consider inertial force and wind speed. Seeing Lin staring at the pages of the book studying with interest, Johnny couldn't help but remind him, This is a magic formula created by the great wizard Haram. It can further increase the power of magic missiles, but it is still too difficult for us now. You'd better not waste too much energy on it. I'll pay attention. Lenin glanced at it a few more times, and after confirming that his thoughts were accurate, he covered the page and replied calmly. Johnny saw Lin's perfunctory attitude and shook her head helplessly. When she first came into contact with magic, she also liked to study these complicated formulas like Lin. It was not until she hit a wall that she became self-aware. Chapter 13 The Opportunity is Tonight You'd better go to bed early tonight. It will take many days for us to ferry to the Wizarding City. There is still a lot of time to learn new magic. Seeing that Lin couldn't be persuaded, Johnny had to remind him. One sentence, and then turned around and left. Wait a minute. Johnny! Lin put basic magic in general into his arms, suddenly thought of his previous guess, and stopped him. What's wrong? Is there anything else? The silver-haired witch stopped. Are you sure that no one else knows the location of the hiding place except us? Lin asked again. Do you suspect that one of us may have defected to the Holy See? Johnny's expression became very serious. She naturally understood what Lin meant and had the same guess in her heart. But after hesitating for a moment, she still shook her head and said, This is impossible. Before you arrived in UR town, we had been in this village for a whole week. The dangerous missions of going out to detect intelligence and purchase supplies were all carried out by lottery. She has also taken this opportunity to test everyone. The best proof is that they have not been pursued by the Holy See so far. Lin In was not surprised by this, but asked directly, Have you ever thought about what if the Holy See's first target is not us? Lin In knew very well that as an internal agent, there was only one possibility of holding back, and that was to achieve greater benefits. Johnny was stunned for a moment, with a puzzled look on his face. Lame Lauder. The waterway leading to Green Reel. This is the real goal of the Holy See, Lin said word by word. He didn't know what kind of relationship the old hawk of the drunk tavern had with Kalu, so that he would be willing to help them, wizard apprentices. But one thing was certain. It is so secret that the secret passage leading directly to the outside of the city cannot be specially built for them. In other words, old hawk is most likely the wizard spy in Nordland, and Lauder is undoubtedly a more important figure who can help them sail out to sea. Lin could imagine how many wizards had entered the Sika's empire through this channel over the years, and how many large ships filled with materials had departed from the ports of Nordland and arrived at the wizarding city. In comparison, the arrest of these wizard apprentices was not important at all. It was just a matter of course to appease the Duke of Nordland. This may be why they were constantly being hunted by the Holy See in the outside world. But they were safe and sound when they entered the town of Uar. Reason. After Lin's prompting, Johnny immediately figured this out and his expression suddenly changed. In this way, the Holy See is probably aware of their movements, but has just kept silent, waiting for them to take action, and then catch everyone in one go. Thinking of this, a chill ran down Johnny's spine. At this moment, they were like birds stepping into a trap, waiting for the hunter to raise the butcher's knife in his hand. Johnny pursed his lips and was silent for a long time, but he couldn't think of a way to break the situation. So what do we do? After asking this question, the girl did not expect Lin In to give any answer. In this end situation of internal and external difficulties, she was almost desperate. How can a group of apprentices, who cannot even trust each other be able to escape from the cage carefully woven by the Holy See? However, Lin spoke. It's easy. Wait. Wait. Lin's answer surprised Johnny. You just revealed to them the fairy plan and Lauder's information. And we are preparing to set off tomorrow. By then everyone will be under mutual surveillance. Then, Lin said decisively, Tonight is the best opportunity to deliver the message. Gigi! When the light of the full moon passed over the thirteenth star, 
Will woke up to the sound of mice. And the dry straw on the hardwood bed behind him stung his back like sharp needles and scrapers. Will struggled to sit up. And then he saw three or two mice gathering around the robe he had taken off. Gnawing half a piece of black bread. Their slender tongues lolling around their mouths. And their dark toes on the blue there were marks on his robe. Damn it! You bunch of beasts in mud! Will was furious. He kicked the dirty black bread aside and cursed fiercely. It took several minutes before he calmed down and felt disgusted. He picked up his robe and put it on himself. And cautiously opened the door. The side hall was dark. And no one could be seen. At this time, everyone should have rested except by Gu, who was responsible for keeping watch. Will didn't dare to stay for a moment. Walked quickly through the corridor. Walked into a remote storage room. Turned around and closed the door. The old wooden door made a heartbreaking sound. Thanks to the group of mercenaries who broke in. All the door locks in the manor had been violently broken. And the entire storage room was turned over and messy. The floor was covered in dust. And several chairs and cabinets were tilted to the ground. Will nervously leaned down and moved away the debris piled in the corner. A strange diamond-shaped pattern was carved on the dusty floor. When the apprentices were taking advanced electives, Johnny chose elements. Beige chose psychic powers. And what he mastered was alchemy. Boat. Port. Loud. Will burn characters one by one in the center of the magic circle. And then place the magic stones on the four rings inside the magic circle. A glimmer of light gradually emerged. Extending along the lines of the magic circle. Just when the radiant light was about to cover the entire magic circle. A sharp sound broke through the air in the silent room. And an ice blade was nailed to the corner of the magic circle. And the gorgeous spiritual light dimmed instantly. Go down. Who? Will was startled and sat down on the ground. Looking in the direction he came from in horror. The half-hidden room had been opened at some point. And Johnny's eyes were full of disappointment and confusion. Why betrayed us? Will? The grumpy buck strode forward. Grabbed Will's collar. And punched him in the face. Answer me! Why? Will sneered. Pushed Buck away suddenly. Wiped the blood from the corner of his mouth. And said excitedly, You ask me why? I am Will Aske. The second son of the Earl of the Empire. If it weren't for that idiot Kalu, I should have lived in the manor in Iskland. Attended luxurious high-class parties. Enjoyed delicious food and the service of servants. And could inherit part of my father's territory in the future and become a member of the Sika's Empire. Lord Baron. But what now? We can only eat the black bread that the untouchables eat every day. And sleep in the ruins filled with dirty pits and rats. Well cursed hysterically. I've had enough. Kalu is a madman and a devil. What he taught us is the knowledge of the devil. He turned us from a noble noble to a group of bed bugs who can only hide in dark corners. Chapter 14 Cage Bird Have you all forgotten your identities? Before we became wizards. We were all noble children of the Sika's empire. Will shouted loudly. Buck and the others looked at each other and couldn't help but fell into silence. They also understood Will's experience. This feeling of falling from heaven to age. I was indeed uncomfortable. In the silence, Lin suddenly spoke. You should understand, Will, that the Holy See will never change its treatment of us because of our status. As a monotheistic religion, what is the most important claim of the Holy See? Creationism, of course. The legendary Lord, Ella, created everything in the world and dropped the nectar of life, which brought life to the originally dead and barren land. Because of this, everyone should obey the rule of the Holy See. Wizards who try to analyze the laws of the world and gain power from it naturally become the mortal enemies of the Holy See. After all, this is shaking the foundation of theocratic rule. This time is different, Will said excitedly, looking at everyone present, looking like a crazy person. Johnny, Carl, Buck, the Holy See's primary target is not us. As long as we repent with all our heart, Bishop Anjuk and the Duke of Nordland will definitely forgive our sins. You're crazy. Will, Johnny sighed. From the moment we choose to become wizards, there is no way out. Once they choose to become a wizard, magic will flow in their body forever, which is a symbol of devil and shame in the Zika's empire. If Count Ayasuke knew that his second son had become a wizard, his first reaction would definitely be to cut off the relationship as much as possible and expel Will from the family. That means they can never go back to their old life. I'm not crazy. I know what I'm doing, Will said with a sneer turning his head to look at Baigu, who had been silent, and took out a few pieces from the hidden pocket of his robe with his right hand behind his back. The magic stone suddenly scattered towards Johnny and the others without any warning. Gianni, be careful. Baigu screamed loudly, 
From her psychic perspective, she could clearly see a hidden root engraved on each magic stone. At the same time as the white dove's voice sounded, several pieces of magic stone exploded in midair, and sharp gravel fell down like locusts. The gray-haired witch's expression remained unchanged. She raised her right hand and tapped her fingers as if playing a piano. The runes on the gloves wrapping her long knuckles lit up one after another. A weak flame suddenly appeared at the fingertips. And then the spark expanded rapidly, and the hot tongue of fire covered everything in front of him in just one second. This is exactly the first level of magic touch of fire. Will had already planned his escape route the moment he threw the magic stone. He rolled in an extremely embarrassed manner to avoid being roasted by the scorching tongues of fire. And then he was about to jump out of the wide open window. But Lin moved faster than him. A diamond-shaped ice blade came first and pierced Will's ankle. The body that jumped up in the air instantly lost its balance and fell to the ground. A biting chill spread down his ankles. Will suddenly felt that his right leg had lost all feeling. He leaned against the wall and was about to say something in panic. A slender, magic missile shot straight towards him. It flew past and exploded in the eye socket. Scarlet blood mixed with brain spilled down. Staining the wooden floor with blood, Lin immediately turned his head and looked in the opposite direction. And Johnny questioned in disbelief. What are you doing? Beige? When she used the touch of fire, she deliberately reduced the power in order to stay alive so that she could interrogate some information. It's too late. I have to kill him first. By good held his head in his hands and shouted in fear. Outside? There are at least a hundred guards outside. And we are surrounded. Upon hearing this, Johnny immediately ran to the window and lit up the dim night with a fireball. In the light of the explosion, Lennon saw from a distance groups of guards wearing armor and carrying crossbows. Silently crossing the dense forest and galloping towards here, the leader, holding a scepter and wearing a white gilt robe, looked at Lin in under the light of the fire from a distance of several hundred meters. It's Bishop Antioch of Nordland. It's over. We are dead. Barton recognized it at a glance and fell into despair. He did not expect that in order to arrest several wizard apprentices, the Bishop of Nordland would personally go out. Lenin glanced at the dim alchemy circle on the ground. They should have stopped the activation of magic just now. That is to say, the eyes of everyone present turned to Baigu in unison. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. The 13 or 14 year old girl shook her head crazily. With a look of horror and uncertainty on her face. The chaotic situation on the field and the intimidating Vatican pursuers made Johnny, who was already nervous, feel dizzy. He bit his lip gently, forced himself to calm down, and spoke in a deep voice. Listen, it's not that bad. There is a wide drainage channel in the basement of this manor that leads directly to the river outside. We can escape from there. As she spoke, Johnny turned her head and asked Lynn to keep an eye on the white pigeon with pleading eyes. She no longer knew who else she could trust. A minute ago, in the dense forest outside the town of Uar, hundreds of uniformly dressed guards were walking slowly forward under the cover of the trees. Pastor Aaron, who was accompanying the army, looked at the towering castle in the distance and asked in confusion, Bishop Antioch, according to the previously formulated plan, shouldn't we wait for these wizard apprentices to arrive in Harbor Town before taking action? For this caged bird plan, they mobilized a large number of manpower to monitor the entire town of Uar, intending to use this group of wizard apprentices to follow the clues and send sinners throughout Nordland who have betrayed the faith of the Lord H. L. Now that they are taking the initiative, they will undoubtedly destroy all their previous efforts. Aaron, a qualified hunter not only needs to learn how to lay elaborate traps, but also knows how to grasp the timing of closing the net. Antioch responded in a deep voice. A strong iron cage may be able to contain a clumsy ostrich, but once a griffin is mixed into it, it can break out of the cage and tear the hunter to pieces. Remember, excessive greed will only make you lose everything in your hands. The essence of the implementation of the caged bird plan is that they have absolute control. No matter how much these wizard apprentices jump around, they cannot escape the trap they have set. However, Blaney's death made Antioch smell a hint of uneasiness. There was actually an official wizard among Kalu's apprentices, which completely disrupted his arrangement. Antioch, who has dealt with these devil believers countless times, knows very well how difficult formal wizards are. The witchcraft they master is all kinds of strange. And if you are not careful, you may die on the spot. In the battle in Nordland, if Kalu hadn't taken the initiative to stay behind in order to cover the escape of an apprentice, it would not have been an easy task to capture him. Chapter 15 The Battle in the Castle In contrast, 
It is undoubtedly a wiser move to take the initiative, while the situation is still under control. If one or two key figures can be captured, it may not be impossible to torture the intelligence. Thank you for your teaching, Master Ansiak. Pastor Aaron thought carefully and saluted respectfully. Everything is the Lord's instruction, Ansiak said freely, and then suddenly seemed to notice something. Without any movement, several bright arrows of light appeared in the void, and in an instant, four arrows were shot. The gray crow, which was about to fly, was nailed to the tree. Three seconds later, a dazzling fireball shot out from the manor not far away, and the exploding firelight illuminated the sky. Ansik raised his head, and his vision, strengthened by divine magic, traveled hundreds of meters. Through the open window on the third floor, he saw Lin In and others looking out. Brown hair, medium build, handsome features. That was the wizard named Carl who killed Blaney. Everyone, move forward at full speed, Ansiak ordered without hesitation. Now that they have been discovered, there is no need to hide anymore. The guards who were walking slowly immediately turned to sprinting. The sound of the collision of their armors was continuous, like a wave of waves rushing towards the central fortress from all directions. After seven years, the gate of the manor was violently opened again. Guards holding swords and shields formed a team of ten and surrounded the entire castle in an orderly manner. Aaron took the lead and led several guards, entering straight from the main hall and attacking in the direction where Lin In and others were. After passing through the long and wide corridor, the guards in the front row just entered the front hall. And then, they retreated one by one with frightened expressions. It's a pity that they were still a step too late. And several hot fireballs fell from the sky like meteorites and smashed into the crowd. Then, there was a violent explosion. The fireball expanded and exploded rapidly. And the originally orderly and tight formation instantly turned into a chaotic sea of people. Ah! Uh, along with the shrill screams. Countless blood splattered. Corpses flew everywhere, and the strong smell of blood filled the air. Even though the people who participated in this roundup operation were all elites selected from the Nordland army, and everyone was fully armed, they were still in disarray in the face of powerful witchcraft. Everyone retreat, form a formation, and fire with bows and crossbows. Aaron, the only calm man on the field, raised his scepter high and shouted loudly, Don't panic! Ella is with me! The chaotic team immediately calmed down and regained order. Everyone's eyes lit up with white fluorescence. The fear gradually faded away. An inexplicable courage filled everyone's mind. This is exactly the magic of a ring. Eliminate fear. Under Aaron's command, the shield-bearing guards placed their strong shields in front of them and strode forward. The guards behind them took out their crossbows in a uniform manner. Long-distance volleys have always been the only way to deal with wizard apprentices. The Turtle S.H. L-like shield greatly reduced the power of ordinary witchcraft. Magic missiles could not break through the defense at all. And even the powerful fireball spell could not produce good results. The dense rain of arrows caused all the wizard apprentices to retreat again and again. And they were forced to hide behind the wall. Barton, who was the slowest to react, was accidentally stabbed in the back by a crossbow arrow. And he fell to the ground in embarrassment. Barton! Buck called his brother's name anxiously. And rushed forward trying hard to help Barton up. Aaron, who had been waiting for the opportunity for a long time, gave the order again, and dozens of powerful crossbows were pointed at the two of them. As the crossbow machine was triggered, densely packed arrows poured out like a meteor shower. A ring of superior magic, ice curtain. Johnny stood in front of the two of them without hesitation, raised his hand, and a transparent curtain of water appeared in the void in front of him, and then condensed instantly to form a wall of ice crystals. Bang, bang, bang. Intense collision sounds were heard one after another, and ice crystal fragments flying in the cold air were scattered on the ground. In just two seconds, a continuous rain of arrows penetrated the ice curtain, and three of them shot directly at Johnny. Johnny, who had just completed an overclocking spell with the help of Magic Hand, had no time to create a second wall of ice, and behind her were the two brothers Buck and Barton. Can't hide! Johnny bit her lip tightly, forced to stop her body's evasive movements and held the hilt of the sword in her right hand without any confidence to stop all the arrows that were fired at her. At this moment, three magic missiles flew over from the side, and shot down the arrows very accurately. Johnny was startled for a moment. Before he could appreciate the joy of surviving the disaster, he saw seven magic missiles passing by him again. What was strange was that the flight trajectories of these magic missiles were not pure straight lines, but weird arcs, easily overcoming the protection of the shield wall and directly attacking the guards, holding crossbows in the rear. 
The brief chaos temporarily stopped the continuous rain of arrows. Johnny. Buck and Barton took the opportunity to hide behind a low wall. They looked at Lin in and by Goose standing aside in surprise. And their minds couldn't help but jump up. Got an idea. When did Beige become so powerful? However, they soon discovered that the person who did it was not by Goo. Because the next moment, a dozen magic missiles condensed in the void and suspended beside Lin in. Magic barrage! With a thought in Lin's mind, dozens of missiles flew towards a group of guards. After witnessing this strange magic, Aaron quickly directed the guards holding shields to gather together and build up the shields layer by layer without leaving any gaps, forming a semicircle to protect the crossbowmen behind them. However, to everyone's expectation, these dozens of missiles bypassed the shield wall and flew further back. Missed? Aaron thought to himself, but quickly rejected this possibility. If only one or two magic missiles failed, then there is still a possibility. If they all deviate from the track, it only means that the opponent's original target was not here. Aaron turned his head suddenly, and twelve missiles hit the model pillar at the rear almost at the same time. Amidst the smoke and dust, the seven-meter-high pillar fell straight down. Spread out! Spread out! Aaron shouted hoarsely, raising the scepter in his hand high and using the only protective magic he had holy word shield. But it was obvious that this was just a mantis acting as a chariot. The white light shield was instantly crushed by the huge stone pillar as soon as it was formed. More than ten shield soldiers and crossbowmen gathered together, and those who had no time to disperse were buried under the pillar. When Aaron looked back, Lin En and others had already disappeared. After hesitating again and again, and looking at the bloody and bloody guards, who were pressed under the pillar and constantly calling for help, Aaron gritted his teeth and said, Leave half of your men to save people. The rest come with me. Chapter 16 Fire Magic is never used like this. At the same time, Lin En and others were walking around from the other side to the underground of the castle. Everyone knew how tight time was. The injured Barton directly refused Buck's help. After pulling on his clothes and doing a simple binding and bandaging, he endured the pain in his back and followed everyone. At this moment, Lin was still recalling the details of the previous spell casting in his mind. Magic Missile as a basic zero-level spell. It is not difficult to learn and use it. The real trouble lies in presetting the trajectory of each missile. Lin did not participate in the first wave of counterattack by Johnny and others, but was preparing to cast the spell, unless 071 is allowed to assist him in positioning, controlling 12 magic missiles at the same time as his limit, and the power is roughly equivalent to the upper-level magic. Are you really Carl? In the silence, but couldn't help but asked. Of course. Lin nodded. But when did you master Harem's formula? Johnny was also very curious. She had just handed basic magic, into Lin's hands more than an hour ago. It was impossible for him to read it a few times and read it. Have you learned it? Just now! Lin and responded casually, and then suddenly remembered that he had only been studying magic for half a year, and it seemed too high profile to say so. So he quickly explained, The teacher has explained the principle of this formula to me before, and it doesn't seem to be difficult. Isn't it difficult? Johnny's delicate and pretty face showed a confused look. So why couldn't he master it after studying it for several months? Buck and Barton agreed that it must be because their mentor Kalu secretly opened a small stove for Carl. White Pigeon! Report the enemy's position and distance! Lin In changed the topic and looked at the silent girl beside him. Although the other party's behavior of killing Will was very suspicious. He had to rely on her ability at such a critical moment. There are enemies everywhere! And they are preparing to surround us! Bai Gu said timidly as his body continued to tremble. Where is Bishop Ansik? Where is he? Johnny suddenly asked. I don't know. My psychic sense can't see him. Baigu was almost crying. In that case, then find a place to gather as many enemies as possible and deal with some of them first. Lin and analyzed calmly. In addition to the Archbishop, who has not yet taken action, the biggest threat to them now is the rain of arrows caused by the crossbowmen's volleys. If it is in a wide area, at least half of their people will die after several rounds of volleys. Are you serious? Carl? Buck's eyes almost popped out of his head in shock. It was too late for them to escape, and Lin In was still thinking of gathering the enemies to fight back. This was simply a fantasy. Lin didn't reply, but glanced at Barton, who was gritting his teeth and holding on with blood oozing from his back. Only then did Buck realize that they were still carrying a wounded man who was unable to move. It would not be long before the enemy would catch up with them from all directions. Once they were surrounded, they might not even be able to escape. How sure are you? Johnny asked directly. 
Then it depends on how many kinds of magic you have mastered, Lenin said decisively, thanks to Bai Ji's perception and Lin Un's mobilization. The guards who surrounded them from several directions arrived at almost the same time and surrounded a group of wizard apprentices in a side hall on the first floor of the castle. A total of six guards, except for the mysterious Archbishop Enziak, the personnel stationed at the entrance and the ones treating the wounded, all have arrived. Even though he had a large number of people, Aaron, who had just suffered a big loss at the hands of Lin In, did not dare to be negligent at all. He ordered the guards to advance with shield walls and crossbow arrays, and then used auxiliary magic with the other priests who arrived. Eliminate fear. Holy blessing. Two white lights lit up in succession. And the shield soldiers, who had gained courage and vitality, once again stacked up the thick shield wall and strode forward. Ahead, Buck stood alone in front of many shield soldiers and lifted up the counter that weighed hundreds of kilograms from the ground. His already thick arms expanded again to the point where they could exceed the weight of the counter. The extreme strength of the human body threw the heavy counter forward. You all die! The heavy counter collided with the dense shields, causing a huge muffled sound. Then the hard stone ground beneath everyone's feet suddenly sank. This is exactly the magic spell jointly performed by Johnny and Barton hiding in the dark. Fossils turned into mud. The strong armor was no longer a protection at this moment, but became the biggest burden. After the impact, the legs stepping on the fine sand immediately lost their balance. And the shield soldiers, who were originally standing neatly, fell down. One place. Although two wizard apprentices jointly cast the spell, the scope of the impact was limited after all. The crossbowmen at the rear had already raised their crossbows, and more than 40 sharp crossbow arrows were pointed at Buck. Please, hurry up. White Dove. A drop of cold sweat slipped from his forehead, and Buck kept praying in his heart. This second is the difference between life and death. Fortunately, the White Dove did not disappoint him this time. Just before the crossbow was clicked, an indescribable scream resounded in the castle. Soul scream. Everyone present invariably felt as if their brains had been hit with a heavy hammer and at that moment, they completely lost control of their bodies. Both the enemy and ourselves are injured, and the weirdness of psychic magic is undoubtedly revealed. The range of the soul scream's influence was extremely wide, and the consumption of magic power was extremely intense. It only lasted for two seconds before it was forced to stop. Beige swayed and almost fell to the ground. Johnny and others felt uneasy in their hearts. They had done everything they could, gained a total of five seconds, and gathered all the enemies together. This was enough for Lin. The light yellow white phosphorus powder had been suspended in the palm of his hand and quickly expanded into a huge fireball, half a meter high. The yellow white flame didn't seem to have anything special. But the wizard apprentices and priests present all felt a tremor from the bottom of their hearts. However, this huge fireball did not point at Aaron and others. Instead, it flew into the air and disintegrated under the surprised eyes of everyone. The sparks dragged white smoke. Like gorgeous fireworks, falling from the sky. Buck's face turned pale, and he couldn't help but begin to wonder if by GE's soul scream had interfered with Lin's spellcasting. You must know that fire magic is always concentrated and used. Chapter 17 This must be the power of the devil. The fire from H. L. Is it possible that all the efforts of myself and others have been in vain? Under Buck's gaze, sparks in the sky soon fell across the entire place. Holy word shield. After getting rid of the influence of soul scream, Aaron immediately cast the protective magic. The white light shield appeared in the void in a semi-ring shape, and little sparks fell on it, immediately corroding the light shield into holes. Does the mere remnant of magic that has been weakened a hundred times possess such power? If the previous giant fireball hit him directly, Aaron was sure that he would not be able to stop it, just as he was surprised. A series of extremely sad screams resounded in the castle. Aaron turned his head and looked over, and his whole body was stunned on the spot compared to the priests who practiced divine arts. The guards had not recovered from the impact of soul scream, and little sparks were already attached to their armor, shields, crossbows, and exposed weapons. Body and face. The horror of the white phosphorus fire appeared in the next second. The weak flames began to spread quickly after contacting the substance. Big holes were burned out of the leather shoulder pads and gloves, and the yellow-white flame seemed to be attracted by flesh and blood, penetrated directly into the skin below. Ah! A shield soldier beat his chest desperately, trying to put out the white phosphorus flames that were gradually spreading. However, the result of doing so was that his arms were also ignited. In a few breaths, half of his body was lit up. Group torch. The companion next to him was even more miserable. 
Dots of flames fell directly into the gaps in the armor. The temperature of over a thousand degrees made him scream in agony. He tore off the armor with both hands and then stuffed his right hand into his body and actually took out a bloody piece of meat burning with flames. Flesh and corpses are the best nourishment for white phosphorus flames. And the fire spreads quickly. The sea of burning fire, billowing white smoke, and soldiers twisted and dead in horrible shapes. This scene seems like H. L has descended on the world. Devil. This must be the power of the devil. The fire from H. L. Such a terrifying sight caused the elite Nordland guards to completely collapse. And the first ring magic, eliminating fear, had completely lost its effect. A priest who was lucky enough to escape the flame shouted at the top of his lungs, threw away the scepter in his hand, and ran away without looking back. Also stunned were Johnny and others, who almost forgot that Lin had told them to hold their breath and use magic to get oxygen from the air. What kind of magic is this? But shuddered deeply. He only needed to get a little closer to feel the pain, as if his bone marrow was being burned. This is the fireball technique. Don't you know it too? I just improved it a little. Lenin also noticed everyone's shocked looks and explained. Is this called slightly? Buck's face became very strange. He felt that Lin's understanding of this term might be different from his own. Johnny was somewhat skeptical that Lin would have broken through that barrier and become an official wizard. But Lin has been exposed to magic for only half a year. So this is a bit too exaggerated. Moreover, their teacher Kalu has always been poor. And how can he have so much money to buy a source of magic power? Compared to Johnny and Buck, who have complicated thoughts. Barton's idea is very simple. It turns out that they, wizard apprentices, can be so powerful together. Barton even felt that as long as everyone worked together, it would not be difficult to deal with the pursuit of the Holy See. Just as he was thinking about it, a dazzling white light lit up from a distance, breaking through the flames and attacking the wizard apprentices. Distracted, Barton only saw his brother Buck opening his mouth anxiously and saying something to him. Then he felt as if his body was knocked out by a powerful impact and his thin body was torn apart in midair. The whole person rolled several times in the air, and then fell to the ground like a rag doll, making no sound in an instant. The sudden change made the expressions on the faces of Johnny and others freeze. Buck's expression gradually became distorted, and he shouted at the top of his lungs. No! Patton! Lenin took action the moment the white light appeared. Twelve magic missiles surrounded him, drawing strange arcs in midair and shooting towards the end of the corridor. In the end, more than ten magic missiles were blocked by an invisible wall, and only ripples could be seen when they collided. Lennon's heart suddenly sank, and he stared at the other side of the sea of fire. He understood that the person he had been waiting for finally appeared, and his strength was far more terrifying than he imagined. Suddenly, a melodious hymn sounded in the castle. Invisible power gradually enveloped the whole place, and it started to rain lightly in the closed room. This is the three-ring magic hymn of life. The green raindrops contained extremely powerful divine power and the terrifying flames that seemed to come from H, L were gradually suppressed. The continuous white phosphorus fire that almost burned everything was fading quickly. And Ansiac, wearing a white guild robe, walked in slowly. Your Majesty Bishop! Aaron, who had the fastest reaction on the field, and was also lucky enough to escape the coverage of Spark, shouted excitedly, but there was a hint of resentment and hatred hidden in his words. The timing of Ansiac's appearance was so clever. How could Aaron not guess that the bishop had been paying attention to this place? Obviously, he and the elite guards from Nordland are just tools to test the opponent's strength and trump cards. Aaron's heart felt cold. He understood that after this incident was over, he, as the on-the-spot commander, would definitely be severely punished. Ansiak ignored Aaron and looked around at the nearly half-dead and injured guards on the ground, whose will was completely defeated. Then his pupil shrank because the flames that had been extinguished suddenly turned around immediately after the magic, hymn of life, ended. There are signs of resurgence. This is white phosphorus fire. As long as the oxygen in the air is not exhausted, and there are still objects that can burn, it will never stop. Stop fighting. Retreat. After the magic missile, faint failed. Lin made his choice without hesitation. The giant fireball spell that lasted for more than five seconds had already consumed seven or eighty-eight percent of the white phosphorus he had created. And what was left was not enough to defeat the bishop, who was casting a powerful divine spell in front of him. Johnny and Baigu were also very aware of the horror of Anjuk. Even though they were extremely sad about Barden's death, they also knew that the only way to survive now was to escape. However, Buck, who had lost his brother at this moment, went crazy. He opened his mouth and let out an angry roar. 
he grabbed a still intact body of a guard on the ground as a shield and rushed towards Antioch. Chapter 18 Prays to Ella, Light of the Holy Spirit. Don't be impulsive. Come back. Buck. Johnny shouted loudly. Buck ignored him and pounced on him with a ferocious expression. Praise to Ella, Holy Light Impact. Antic spoke slowly and used the second ring magic as soon as he shot it. The dazzling white light lit up again. Arriving first, the corpse lying in front of him as a shield was directly beaten into a ball of blood mist. The terrifying impact caused by the aftermath easily blew Buck away. And Juck raised his staff and was about to continue casting spells to kill him. At the critical moment, Buck opened his mouth again. The sharp, ear-piercing scream was like the sound of death coming from H. L. Anseok's movements paused. But only for a moment. Touch of fire. White phosphorus fireball. Lin and Johnny, who had covered their ears in advance, took this opportunity to come to the rescue at the same time. They used the most powerful magic at their disposal. Two hot flames rushed towards Antioch at the same time, forcing the archbishop to stop. The attack action was replaced by protective magic. Three-ring magic, sacred barrier. An invisible barrier stood in front of Antioch, easily resisting the fire attack. But the white phosphorus flames adhered to it, corroding the surface of the invisible barrier very slowly but firmly. Roar! Buck, who had just been severely injured and fell to the ground, stood up again his eyes full of bloodshot eyes, and the animalistic qualities of his body became more and more obvious. At this moment, Buck was like a giant bear standing up, rushing straight into the burning sea of fire. The hair and clothes on his body were soon stained with white phosphorus flames. The pain of being burned by thousands of degrees of heat was enough to make people collapse. But Buck didn't care. The moment he used the magic transformation technique with the ability of a wizard apprentice, the process of animal transformation was irreversible and he wanted to break through it. It is absolutely impossible to activate Antioch's protective magic by relying on your own strength. Johnny! Carl! You go first. I want to stay to avenge Barton! Buck roared and slapped the sacred barrier in front of him. Ripples appeared on the invisible barrier, and Antioch blasted Buck away with a magical spell. Let's go! Lin took a deep look at Buck and said without hesitation. He was covered in white phosphorus fire, and there was no way he could be saved. After knocking Buck away, Antioch blocked the only exit and lost so many men. Naturally, he would not let Lin and others go easily. Repent to the great lord, believer of the devil. Antioch raised the bishop's scepter in his hand and sang loudly. Praise to Ella, light of the Holy Spirit. The dazzling light waves spread out in a semicircular shape with the scepter as the base. They could not be resisted or avoided because the range of the magic covered most of the side hall. However, Lin is by no means a person who leaves no room for retreat. In fact, before entering the side hall, he had already prepared an escape strategy in case of crisis. Lin, Beige and Johnny pressed their hands on the ground almost at the same time. Zero ring magic, primary material deconstruction technique. The solid floor cracked instantly, and three fine cracks spread like spider webs, and finally connected together, before the terrifying white light arrived. The ground beneath their feet had already collapsed. The failed, light of the Holy Spirit passed over the collapsed cavity and hit the wall behind. A series of explosions soon sounded in the castle. After the smoke, dust and gravel fell. Antioch's expression became very ugly as he looked at the hollow space in the side hall. Roar! A horse roar came from the side. Due to being knocked out before, Buck was not within the range of the light of the Holy Spirit. But at this moment, he had long lost his human appearance and turned into a strong giant bear. With his skin covered with white phosphorus, under the fierce fire, the white bones could be vaguely seen under the dried flesh and blood. Even so, Buck still rushed forward with his obsession for revenge. Ansik frowned. He had no time to waste on a dying sorcerer's apprentice. He stretched out his hand, and the collapsed sand and stones quickly collapsed, and together with the broken armor on the ground. They formed two three-meter-long bodies. Tall huge stone statue. This is the second ring magic summoned spirit world guard. After the two stone statues were assembled, they separated. One of the stone statues waved its fist and knocked over the giant bear buck, while the other stone statue jumped directly into the cavity where the ground collapsed. Fortunately, this place is not high. Then the falling rocks acted as a buffer, and Lin successfully penetrated the ground with a basic material deconstruction technique jointly performed by the three of them, and directly reached the basement of the castle. Lin and looked around. It looked like an armory. There were a large number of weapons, and swords piled on the stands around it. In addition, 
There were many empty boxes. They were probably where the treasures were placed before. But they were obviously occupied. The owner of the castle took it with him when he fled. After confirming the surrounding environment, Lin immediately focused on his two companions. Johnny's condition was still intact. But her magic power consumption was severe. But Baigu was different. She used Soul Scream twice in a row. Even though she was an extremely rare psyker, she couldn't even stand still. Johnny! How far is it from the underground water canal? Lin asked. Follow this road and keep walking. You can reach it in three minutes at most. Johnny stretched out his hand to help the white pigeon up, hesitated for a moment, and soon made up his mind. Next, we can split up. You will take the white pigeon, and I will lure Ansiak away. Johnny knew very well that they couldn't run faster than Ansiak, and they would be caught sooner or later if they continued like this. Although she had consumed a lot of magic power in the previous battle, relying on the magic hand, she was able to cast the upper level magic twice more, which could delay her for some time. The silver gray haired witch lowered her head, and her red lips were bitten with traces of blood. She had promised her mentor Kalu that she would bring everyone safely back to the wizarding land. But now Ken is dead. Will is dead. Buck and Barton fall in front of her. But she can't do anything. I'm afraid you said it too late. Lin looked up. In just this moment, a violent explosion sounded from above. And then a huge stone statue three meters high and clad in armor crashed down from the hollow above. Let's go! Lin said loudly as he grabbed Johnny and by G's arms and pulled them out of the rocky area. In order to rescue Buck, he was forced to use the white phosphorus fire originally used to break the queen. And more than half of the magic power in his body had been consumed. Facing the archbishop again, he had no chance of winning. The huge and heavy spirit world guard fell to the ground. And the whole ground seemed to shake. Then he stretched out his stone arms and rushed towards the three of them. Lin In looked tense and was about to avoid it when a notification sound suddenly sounded in his mind. Warn. It was detected that the target of the agreement had committed serious violations and was suspected of using chemical weapons to cause mass killings, which was extremely evil in nature. The facts of the crime have been recorded and you will have an opportunity to make your statement online before the federal police arrive. Chapter 19 It's time for closure. Warn. No signal. Warn. Not connected to the network. Please find the signal source in time. Lennon's face suddenly showed a look of surprise and joy. After seeing the content clearly, the corners of his mouth twitched involuntarily. This artificial retardation. I don't need online narration. Turn off the warning sound and report the remaining energy. Lin thought silently in her heart. The remaining energy is 19.5%. A significant increase in the surrounding energy density has been detected. And the energy reserve is expected to increase by 1% per hour. Lin was a little surprised at how fast it was. If it increased by 1% per hour, wouldn't it take about 4 days to fully charge the energy? But it has been 5 days since the system was shut down. Lin and looked at Jinao's prompt again. Has energy density increased significantly? This is of course unlikely to have anything to do with the castle beneath your feet. Then, it can only be the influence of the Sunday. Carl! Just as Lin and was thinking about it, he was interrupted by Johnny's shout in his ears. The 3 meter tall spirit world guard stepped in front of him, and raised a stone hammer to hit him. Enter overload mode for three seconds. Lin and didn't look back, but instead said silently in her heart. The next moment, a large amount of data flowed into his mind. Lin pushed hard. Under the astonished eyes of the two witches, he jumped into the air with the help of the reaction force, dodged the heavy stone hammer, and then stepped on it. The spirit world guard pulled out the sharp witch hunter sword from his thick stone arm, inserted it along the crack in the stone statue's neck, and nailed it to the wall behind. However, this blow obviously could not completely defeat the stone statue, and Lin did not force it. After temporarily restricting the movement of the spirit world guards, he released the overload mode, grabbed Johnny who had not yet reacted, and continued to run away. Less than 20% of the energy of the intellectual brain is left, and it must be used in more critical places. Several people ran all the way. After more than 10 seconds, the sound of the giant stone statue shaking the floor was heard again. The white dove holding Johnny's arm continued to tremble and sobbed softly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Johnny Carl. You knew from the beginning that will betray us. Right. Lin glanced at Beige and said with certainty. When tracking Will tonight, Lin had already noticed something was wrong because Will acted so strangely when he went to the storage room. You must know that the white doves that keep watch may be driving the gray crows to monitor the entire castle. But Will has no vigilance at all and he has not even raised his head to glance in front of the window 
or behind the house. This is obviously not common sense. Unless, Will was sure that there would be no problem even if he was discovered by these gray crows. Can you tell me the reason? Johnny held by G's slender hand tightly. She really couldn't believe that the other party would betray him. By G's nose twitched. And he explained in a choked tone with a cry. Three nights ago, Will was on duty at the night. But to be on the safe side, she let the gray crow out for patrol as usual, but unexpectedly discovered that Will was secretly reporting the situation here through the alchemy circle. Holy C. Then why didn't you tell me about this? Johnny asked. But Will. Will discovered me first. He said that the Holy C already knew my identity. If I dared to tell you about this, my parents, brother and sisters would be tied to the stake and burned to death. By Gu said with a frightened look on his face and sobbed. Johnny was silent. For displaced wizard apprentices like them, the safety of their families was indeed a big problem. Because of this, it has always been taboo to ask each other's identities. And they can't even confirm whether each other is using a fake name. Obviously, he lied to you. Maybe Will doesn't know your true identity. Or maybe he plans to take the credit alone. Lin said calmly. From Will's personal performance in doing everything, it can be seen that the other party's words are most likely to deceive people. Otherwise it can be used to blackmail by Gu into doing more things. Of course, it is also possible that Will intends to take the credit alone. After all, the more he does, the more likely the Vatican will see his sincerity and forgive him as a devil's follower. Do you want to live? Beige? I have a way that may be able to deal with Antioch. Lenin suddenly asked. Before Johnny could speak, the white pigeon beside him had already nodded with tears in his eyes. Think. She doesn't want to die. Then now tell me all the magic you know. I need to know their principles and methods of use. Lin said straightforwardly. What do you want to do? Johnny asked in shock. I think it's not too late to start learning now. Isn't it? Lin said seriously. Now that 071 has been restarted, it's time to come to an end. After being chased all the way and witnessing the deaths of Buck and Barton with his own eyes, Lin was furious at this moment. But is it really too late? Johnny looked at Lin in disbelief. But after hesitating for a while, he still explained to him. Touch of fire. Fossils to mud. Curtain of ice. Secondary hand of the Balrog. As the most valued disciple of the wizard Karu, Johnny masters more than ten kinds of first-level magic, while by Gun knows very few. There are only two extremely special psychic spells. It is said that only a few apprentices with psychic talents can do so. Master, considering the time was tight, Linen did not want to be greedy for more, but selectively memorized a few and carried out simulation exercises in his mind with the help of his brain. Lin's calm and composed appearance also infected Johnny and Baigu, and they became more confident in defeating Antioch. As the three of them were walking, the sound of surging water came from the front, and the breeze was slightly moist. What you see is a rapidly surging underground river. The rapid water spurts out from the ground, passes through a long tunnel, and leads directly to the outside of the castle. Holy light impact. Before Lin and Johnny reached the river, a ray of white light flew from behind. Ice curtain, asterisk two. Johnny and Lin looked at each other, then raised their hands at the same time, and two shield walls made of ice crystals rose from the ground. Working together to resist the second ring magic, the two ice crystal walls also disintegrated instantly, and the fragments fell like hailstones. What should we do now? Johnny looked at Lin anxiously. The exit channel was right in front of them. But once they were involved in the rapid water and attacked by Ansic, they would not even be able to resist. None. It's very simple. Lin glanced at Johnny, reached out and took off the girl's sword without any warning. And then, with Johnny's surprised, horrified and uneasy expression, he pushed her directly into the rushing water. The cold river water flooded his mouth and nose and soon soaked through his whole body. Johnny clearly felt that the huge inertial force formed by the rapids was forcibly pulling him towards the exit. Through the blurry water curtain, Johnny vaguely saw Lin's mouth opening and closing, as if he was saying his final goodbyes. And then a heavy object was thrown over by the other party, which was the panic by Gu, looking at the two people being swept away by the current. Lin was not worried about the safety of the two witches. A wizard who could control oxygen would not drown in the water. So he just added the second half of the sentence silently in his heart. It's very simple. Just don't get in my way here. Chapter 20 Deconstructing Record Mimicry What a touching scene. Antioch's figure appeared at the other end of the passage, followed closely by a huge spiritual guard, looking at Johnny and White Pigeon, who were being carried by the rapids towards the exit. Antioch had no intention of stopping them. After all, 
the wizard standing in front of him would never let him succeed. If there wasn't something wrong with the scene, this would almost be a replica of the Battle of Nordland. I think you may have misunderstood something. Lin In turned around, his eyes like a torch, staring at Ansiak, who was standing at the end of the passage. He stretched out his right hand, and the little white phosphorus remaining on the surface of the storage bag was in, Mage's hand, was stripped out under the influence. First you need to record. Lin recalled what Johnny had just said, and instantly entered overload mode, casting the zero ring magic, basic material deconstruction technique. The fine white phosphorus powder disintegrates quickly and returns to its basic molecular state. Then, there's magic mimicry. A large amount of magic power poured into his palm, just like cells dividing. The white phosphorus suspended in his hand became more and more, and then suddenly jumped up and turned into a huge fireball, deconstructing and recording an element, and then using magic to imitate it. This is the essence of how a formal wizard can cast spells without materials. Normally, it would take weeks or even months to record and master an element. But with a huge computing power brought by the intelligent brain, Lin shortened his time to less than three seconds. A new rune was quickly engraved in his mind it was, White Phosphorus Fireball. Looking at the fireball ignited in Lin's hand, Anziuk stopped moving forward. Having seen the horror of White Phosphorus Fire, he naturally did not dare to neglect it. So he used the most powerful protective magic, Sacred Barrier. The invisible light curtain was like a solid city wall lying in front of him. But the white phosphorus fire thrown by Lin and went around it, and hit the entrance at the rear. A violent explosion sounded the next moment, accompanied by a leaping fire, and the entrance behind him was already shrouded in terrifying white phosphorus flames. Ansiak was startled for a moment, but after he understood what Lin In meant, his expression immediately turned extremely ugly. Obviously, the wizard in front of him is not simply trying to cover his companion's escape, the other party has blocked his escape route, which means that he is preparing to kill him here. Very good! Realizing this, the anger in Ansiak's heart also ignited, and the huge spiritual guard beside him rushed over with heavy steps. The body made of boulders was extremely heavy, and it stepped on the broken floor tiles, leaving obvious marks. Standing in front of the spirit world guard, Lin In was like the praying mantis trying to block the flow of traffic, but Lin In's face remained calm, with no intention of evading at all. He was just counting silently in his heart. Three, two, one. Fossils turn into mud. At the moment when the spirit world guard rushed in front of him and punched hard, Lenin ducked and pressed his palms to the ground. The solid ground turned into soft sand in an instant, and the heavy giant stone statue immediately lost its center of gravity when it stepped on it and rolled directly into the rushing water behind it. The huge splash of water that exploded was broken down into its most basic elements before it even hit the ground and was then infused with magic power, condensing into dozens of crystal clear ice blades that sped away at an indescribable speed. With the help of favorable ground, Lin used the second ring magic for the first time, Group Ice Blade. The offensive and defensive reversal took place in an instant. Ansiak was completely unable to react. The spiritual guard sank to the bottom of the water, and the locust-like ice blade hit the holy barrier directly. How can a second level offensive magic defeat a third level defensive magic? Lin and quickly gave the answer. Dozens of ice blades hit three fixed points with incomparable precision. Ripples spread on the surface of the invisible barrier, getting faster and faster. First, a crack appeared, and then the cracks expanded rapidly, and the invisible barrier collapsed. This is Idian Arankar. Ansik's expression changed completely, and he couldn't help but take a step back, raised his scepter, and used the second three-ring magic, Light of the Holy Spirit. The dazzling light wave exuded the aura of death and spread forward in a semicircle. Just five minutes ago, Lin In had fled in panic under this move. But at this moment, he was no longer what he was before. White phosphorus hand of the fire demon. Lennon raised his hand, and the terrifying white phosphorus flame ignited again, turning into an ancient demon hand several meters high, and collided with the dazzling light waves. This ordinary one ring high level magic exploded with unimaginable power in Lennon's hands. Hot fire shot into the sky, and the whole castle shook violently. In the white smoke and rubble fire, Anjub vaguely saw something shining in midair. When he got closer, he realized that it was a sword. And Lin In, who was holding the sword, was already close in front of him. Dang. The sharp long sword and the golden laid scepter collided together, making a sharp and unpleasant muffled sound. What's the best way to deal with a priest who can use divine magic? Of course, it's close combat. However, Lin soon discovered that the experience he had accumulated in games and novels was ineffective this time. Because Ansiak blocked his full blow 
with only one hand holding the staff. Could this be the legendary melee priest? Cold sweat broke out on Lennon's forehead, and he lowered his head to avoid Antioch's heavy blow, feeling the piercing sound caused by the scepter passing over his head. Lin roughly calculated that the impact of this blow was at least 1.5 tons. This reminded Lin in of the witch hunter he met before. Are all the people in the Holy Sea humanoid tyrannosaurs? Fortunately, because he has been pampered for many years, even though he has taken the Divine Grace Potion, Ansik's melee combat skills are still unsatisfactory. And fighting is not just about strength. After three or two exchanges, Lin Ng calculated the landing point of the scepter in an instant. The long sword in his hand stabbed in at a tricky angle, drawing a hideous blood mark on Ansiak's chest. Ansiak was shocked and angry, and immediately ignored the extremely close distance between the two of them, and used his backhand to cast a second ring divine spell, Holy Light Impact. A dazzling white light lit up, and Lin Ng and Ansiak, who were extremely close, were blasted away by a huge impact at the same time. Lin In, who was slightly weaker, was knocked back more than 10 meters. Fortunately, at the moment when the magic was released, he temporarily created a layer of ice shield outside his body to alleviate most of the impact, preventing him from falling into the rapid river behind him. Ansiak, on the other side, had eaten the magic he released head-on. The gorgeous gilt robe on his body became tattered, and the long and hideous wound on his chest burst open again. Holy word shield. Holy blessing. Eliminate fear. Holy barrier. Ashless wall. Faced with successive threats to his life, Ansik, who was still in shock, did not even heal his injuries first, but instead used protective magic one after another, almost turning himself into a turtle sh. L. Chapter 21 If you can't beat me, then shake your head. Warning. There is only 3% energy left, and the system will be forced to shut down automatically after 15 seconds. Release overload mode! Listening to the prompt sound in his mind, Lin said without hesitation. There had been no news for five days since the last time the brain was shut down. Lin and didn't want to experience it again. The previous battles had also consumed nearly 90% of the magic power in the body. However, under such a gap, Lin's lips curled up into a smile, because he had already gained the initiative in the battle. As a taboo in modern warfare, the horror of white phosphorus is not only the property of burning everything and being difficult to extinguish, but the most important thing is its terrible toxicity. Because of this, he specially sent Baigu and Johnny away, and told everyone to hold their breath during the battle, just to prevent them from being poisoned and dying. It was different when fighting against Anjuk. The large-scale, white phosphorus fireball technique and Hand of the Fire Demon were used to fill the closed space with toxic gas. Closed combat consumes Ansik's physical strength directs the airflow, and forces the opponent to inhale the poisonous gas more violently. Calculating the time. It should be almost time. Even for a real humanoid Tyrannosaurus. It is not easy to hold on until now. Just as Lennon thought. Ansiak, who was hiding in the Turtle SH. L at this moment, had noticed the weakness coming from all parts of his body. His head was dizzy, and his vision gradually became blurred. The originally abundant strength seemed to be draining away from him. His body was peeled off bit by bit. What kind of witchcraft is this? In an instant, Ansiak thought of the four-ring magic called Death Harvest. This terrifying witchcraft can turn an area into a forbidden land for the living in just a few seconds. But if the opponent is a great wizard and can cast four-ring magic, then he will be dead the moment they fight. Then it can only be poison. Ansiak immediately thought of this possibility. For example, the three-ring magic Toxic Domain can create a large yellow-green poisonous mist which has extremely obvious characteristics. It is obviously too late to cast the magical spell to eliminate poison now. Lin will not let go of the enemy's weakest moment, and will use all the remaining magic power to suppress it. Magic Barrage! In an instant, a total of 36 magic missiles were suspended in the air. Lin even turned on the overload mode for three seconds again and quickly adjusted the trajectory. Facing Ansix. Tortoise SH. L Tactics. Lin In had no intention of going head to head. Instead, he chose to use the flexibility of magic missile to avoid the most difficult, sacred barrier to attack. Attacking from the weak point. In one breath, send the Bishop of Nordland to H. L. After 25 years, Ansiak once again experienced the feeling of approaching death. At this critical moment of life and death, Ansiak seemed extremely calm. He had no doubt that he would die here today. But before that he could do the next thing to kill the young but already mature man in front of him. The devil's believers who became three ring wizards were sent to H. L. Great Lord of the Stars. Goddess of the Moon. 
creator of the earth and life. Your humble servant prays here and offers his body here to implore the projection of the Supreme Lord to come to this place. Ansiak chanted piously and loudly. With each sentence he chanted, his face became a year older. His skin began to become wrinkled. His white hair hung down from his forehead to the corners of his eyes. And his voice became deeper and hoarse. In a daze, it was as if a hymn was resounding in the closed underground space, gradually overshadowing Ansik's voice. Not long after, the entire space shook violently. God! Subjugation! Technique! Lenin's soul was filled with fear, and he almost squeezed out the word through the gaps between his teeth. After arriving in this different world and learning that the priests of the Holy See had real magical powers, what he was most worried about and least willing to face was the divine magic. The existence that can be called a god cannot be overestimated. Even if it is just a projection that cannot carry much power, it is enough to kill himself with one finger. If you can't beat it, shake your head. Is this still a human being? Lin In cursed secretly in his heart and launched the magic missile that had already preset the trajectory. He didn't even dare to look back to check whether Antioch was alive or alive. So he jumped into the rushing underground river behind him without hesitation. More than 30 magic missiles followed the original route, bypassing the solid, holy barrier and directly hit Antioch's body, colliding with a mysterious force. The successive explosions are like the last straw that breaks the camel's back. The underground space that has gone through countless hardships is rapidly dismembering. Huge rocks weighing several tons continue to fall from the ceiling, hitting the ground and the river, bringing with them billowing smoke and dust, swallowing up everything around them. At this moment, Lin was already involved in the rapid current. As a landlubber who lived in the central region of the Federation all year round, Lin did not have any swimming experience. The nearly dry magic power and physical strength deprived him of any possibility of struggle, and he could only let the rapids drag his body downwards. But Lin's face still showed no trace of worry. As a data storage clerk in his previous life, he knew very well how a person who couldn't swim could survive in the rapids. First you have to stay calm, which is the basis of everything. And then, you need to make full use of the buoyancy of the water itself. As we all know, the density of the human body is greater than that of water, and the gravity it experiences is greater than the buoyancy of water. This is also the reason why people will gradually sink when they fall into the water. However, Lin In had already taken a deep breath before diving, and then relaxed her whole body as much as possible, adjusted her center of gravity, and lay on her back to increase the contact area between her body and the water. In this way, as long as he holds his breath and reaches slightly calmer water, he will naturally float on the water. Based on this theory, Lin In very calmly assumed the most standard supine position. Although his body was slowly sinking, he ignored it and thought it was the influence of the water flow. But as the sinking became deeper and deeper, Lin In's heart was slightly panicked. Could it be that my backstroke posture is not standard enough? 071? What's going on? Lin couldn't help shouting in his head. Jinao's prompt sounded the next moment. According to Article 7, Paragraph 32 of the Federal Diving Safety Instructions. Novices should not carry heavy objects when practicing diving. Sir. Lin lowered his head and glanced at the steel sword hanging on his waist. And then sank all the way to the bottom of the water. Chapter 22 Sorry. Aliens have no human rights. In the evening, when the afterglow of the setting sun was about to dissipate, Lin had been drifting on the sea for almost a day. Since the long sword that was getting in the way was borrowed from Johnny, Lin did not throw it away despite much hesitation. Instead, he spent two hours learning to backstroke and swim in the water under the simulated guidance of Jinao. Paddle the dog. 071. Next time you encounter this situation, you should alert me in advance. Lin paddled hard to avoid hitting the bulging rocks ahead. In accordance with the order of the agreement target 17 hours, 23 minutes and 50 seconds ago, the warning sound has been turned off. Then drive it now, Lin In said subconsciously, and then immediately regretted it. You have an outstanding criminal record. Do you want to make an online defense statement? Lin inside helplessly. He almost faced the projection of a god. But he hoped that the federal police could drive a spaceship to take him away from this evil medieval world. Maybe I can get a large reward or something for being the first to discover a planet with extraterrestrial life. Unfortunately, this fantasy is destined to fail to come true. Before his time travel, the federal spacecraft's travel range was limited to the solar system and it did not have the ability to travel across the galaxy at all. And I can't even find a signal. So there's something wrong with this. Lin In, who was very familiar with the operating logic of the intelligent brain, suddenly spoke after thinking about it. 071. 
Based on the existing information, locate the current planet. It has been detected that the planet possesses an unknown energy called magic and is beyond the coverage of the Uranus signal tower. It is predicted that the current location is in an unknown galaxy outside the Milky Way Ryan Cantilever Solar System. It is impossible to determine whether it is the same universe. Then please describe the definition of protecting alien life forms in the Intelligent Management Act. Lynn said again. The Intelligent Management Law does not provide protection regulations for extraterrestrial life forms. 071's answer was very concise. Since the Federation has not been able to discover extraterrestrial civilizations in the process of exploring the universe, it naturally will not specifically add any regulations to protect extraterrestrial life forms in the Intelligent Management Act. So aliens don't have human rights. Right. In fact, I didn't commit a crime, Lynn said seriously. The high-speed brain seemed to be stuck for a moment. And after consuming one thousandth of the energy for calculations, it gave the answer. The logical chain is established and the criminal record has been eliminated. After hearing this, Lin finally breathed a sigh of relief. He knew that no matter what he did in the future, there would no longer be annoying warning sounds. After all, federal laws cannot control other worlds. Lin N secretly made up his mind that when he became an official wizard and could use magic freely, he would study whether this artificial retarded man could be transformed. Just as Lin was thinking, a patch of fire appeared on the endless water in the distance. As he got closer, a tall city wall appeared in front of him. The fire he saw before was just a bonfire used for lighting on the battlements. After floating on the water for a day, he finally saw something different. Lin In was also a little excited, but he did not approach it rashly. Instead, he decided to go ashore nearby and wait until tomorrow to explore where this place is. The previous battle outside UR town caused quite a stir, and it was not possible to wipe out all the people. The news may have spread. Lin had no doubt that the entire Nordland territory was under full martial law. His hair color, age, and figure were all very obvious signs. If he didn't make some disguise, he would be arrested as soon as he entered. Realizing this, Lin changed his posture from the unskilled backstroke to the unskilled dog paddle, preparing to go ashore for shelter first. At this moment, something heavy fell from the towering city wall in front. With a dull sound, a burst of water splashed high, and then the ripples on the water surface gradually expanded, as if something was struggling under the water. Human? Lennon's pupil shrank. He hesitated, and then swam over extremely quickly. Although it looked like a murder scene, he just needed someone to answer some questions. Water splashed everywhere, and the clear lake surface had already been dyed blood. Lennon became more and more certain of his previous suspicion. After approaching, before he had time to rescue him, a hand stretched out from the bottom of the lake and dragged him down desperately. This is a common stress reaction for drowning people. And sometimes it will even drag the rescuer into the bottom of the water. Fortunately, Lin does not need to worry about oxygen issues. So he pulls the other person's collar and swims to the shore. An hour later, in a natural cave outside the city, a blazing flame gradually ignited, illuminating and dispelling the chill of the night. Taking advantage of the break of drying clothes, Lin In turned to look at the boy he had rescued. This was a young man about 18 or 19 years old, with an ordinary face and a hair color very similar to his. What made Lin sigh was that a deep scar appeared on the man's chest. It must have been someone who had used it. The dagger pierced the heart. If he had known this, he would have left it alone. And after so much effort, he actually rescued a body. Lin In shook his head helplessly. But he still carried out the work of touching the corpse as usual. After all, he looked like a son of a noble. And he might be able to find some good things. Three gold coins. More than ten silver coins. A few exquisite hangings. And a water-soaked book with no name on the cover were all the property of the young man in front of him. For a child of a noble family, this is undoubtedly a bit shabby. But for Lin In, it is already a windfall. You must know that in the Sika's empire, a copper coin can buy a piece of black bread. And just water can solve the problem of food and clothing for a meal. The exchange rate between silver coins and copper coins is uncertain, generally floating around 1 hours 80 minutes, while the exchange rate between gold and silver is above 100, and it can be even higher if there is a war. After all, gold is considered a rare element in the entire universe, and its reserves are very limited. But since these things are still there, the possibility of killing someone for ordinary money can basically be ruled out. Lin tossed the coins in his hand. He was not a professional detective. But after carefully looking at the wound on the chest of the corpse, his expression suddenly paused. Then he held his right hand to simulate holding a dagger. 
and tried to use a similar expression. The angle pierced his chest. The angle of the wound was exactly the same. This is suicide? Lin En immediately discovered this possibility. After thinking about it, he reached out and picked up the book he had missed and gently opened the water-soaked pages with his nails. The words on it were very scrawled, but the pen was very deep. The handwriting looks like it was carved on it. Maybe everything will be fine without me. Chapter 23 Diary of a Useless Man Training Training again No matter how many times I fail to do it There is no way I will pass this election Why are you looking at me with that expectant look? Father At this time again In July of the 824th year of the Holy Calendar The third night selection was held Fighting Tyrell Defeated in 27 seconds Again Do you hate me? Ivina? I can understand how you feel a useless person has robbed you of the opportunity that belongs to you. It would be nice if it could be the other way around. Why not? Maybe I shouldn't exist. Time passed bit by bit. And the bonfire that surged in the cave slowly burned out after using up the last trace of dry wood. The sudden darkness broke Lin's thoughts. He waved his hand. And the branches and fallen leaves piled aside floated on their own. Filling the pile of wood with twinkling sparks. The next moment, the crimson flames jumped up again and Lin flipped through the diary in his hand again. No. In fact, diary may not be an appropriate description. This is an ordinary aristocratic boy with no extraordinary talent. He has recorded on the page his cowardice, inferiority, resentment, and pain that he cannot express to outsiders. Lot Pedral. Lin read out the boy's name. There is no doubt that this is a case of being driven crazy by too much expectation. But what he saw was more complicated than that. Lot's father was a baron in the Sika's empire. He was just the kind of landless nobleman who had long since declined. He had only an empty name. He could only maintain the dignity of a nobleman by constantly squandering his savings. Like every parent who hopes for a successful son, Baron Pedro pinned all his hopes on reviving the family on his son. If aristocratic children like them can pass the night assessment before the age of 20 and have a firm faith, they will be qualified to become a priest or priest. This is undoubtedly the best way to change the family's fortunes. Because of this, Lot received the most rigorous training since he was a child. With the goal of passing the night examination and becoming a clergyman of the Holy See, Baron Pedral even spent a lot of money to hire formal knights to hone Lot's fighting skills. However, Lot's talent is not very good, and no matter how hard he trains, it will not help. There are only three quotas for priests and priests in the entire Nordland territory every year, but there are countless people who have the same idea. Among them, there are many who are more dedicated more talented, and even more powerful than Lot. So from the time he took the exam at the age of 16, he was met with disappointment again and again, under the impact of his family's expectations and reality. Lot gradually became dull, talkative, and introverted to the extreme. His sister Ivina is another counterexample. She has a good talent. She has mastered a strong swordsmanship just by repeatedly observing Lot's daily sparring with formal knights. But for Baron Pedral, Ivina's talent was just a small surprise. In the Sika's empire, there was no precedent for women becoming nobles. But that was only when men were forced to die. Otherwise, daughters were usually used as tools for political marriages to increase family influence. Spending a lot of resources on training is not something worth doing. After all, the continuation of the bloodline is the foundation of the nobility. If a woman is chosen as the successor, all the wealth accumulated by the family will be at risk of being swallowed up and disappeared. Lot, who couldn't bear the pressure and expectations, probably planned to use his own death to force Baron Pedral to make a choice. In Lin's view, Lot's choice was undoubtedly a foolish move. He also has some understanding of the character of these nobles, judging from the character description of Baron Pedral in the diary. After learning about Lot's death, the other party would only consider whether he could have a second son, or adopt an outstanding heir from a side branch. Ivina will always be the last option. It is even worse for illegitimate children like the predecessor Carl. Unless the family is completely extinct, they will get nothing. A diary of more than a hundred pages soon turned to the last page. Lin In was somewhat touched by the experience of this noble boy. But what really made him care was a word mentioned in the diary. Useless? Lin In murmured to himself. He thought he would never hear this title after arriving in another world. After all, even a farmer here has the value of being exploited. Lin In exhaled slowly, reorganized his messy thoughts and turned to look at Lot's body. Since he had accepted the other person's belongings, he might as well bury him properly later. 071. How much energy reserve does it have now? Lin asked in his mind. 
The remaining energy is 12.3%, and the energy concentration is detected to be declining. It is expected to increase the energy reserve by 1% every 10 hours. Really? Lenin glanced at the bright sky and was not surprised by this. As he had guessed, the Sunday would affect the activity of magic power. After a night's rest, the physical strength and magic power consumed in the previous battle had been almost recovered. In Lot's diary, Lin also obtained a very important piece of information, he was in the harbor town of Nordland. In other words, the hidden underground river in the castle actually flows directly to the Sea of Mist. It was a pity that in order to deal with Bishop Angiak, he had already sent away the troublesome Johnny and Baigu. Lin couldn't tell where the two witches had drifted to. If the water was good enough, they could have landed anywhere instead of just drifting with the current and slowly learning to swim like him. When communication is lost, it is not easy to find two living people in the entire Nordland territory. How to avoid being tracked by the Holy See is also a big problem. Lin pondered for a long time, and a name suddenly popped into his mind lame water. No matter where Johnny and White Dove are, as long as they are preparing to go to the Wizarding Land, they will inevitably come to Harbor Town and find a way to contact the lame Maud. Then all you need to do is find this person first. Lin stood up and looked at the tall city wall in the distance. There was only one question left now. How to enter the harbor town safely. 071. Get me some information on disguise and cross-dressing techniques. It's best to use simple materials. Lin glanced at Lot, whose figure and hair color were very close to his own. Maybe he could temporarily borrow his identity to hide it from the guards in harbor town. If he remembered correctly, in addition to the plainclothes disguise technique, there was also a spell in basic magic that could deal with this situation. Chapter 24, Boat Gang, and High Gang Town. Seaport Town is located to the east of the entire Sika's empire, and is famous for its proximity to the vast Sea of Mists. Due to the impact of Sunday, the maelstrom known as the Eye of Death briefly subsided, and countless merchant ships containing spices and ores were able to be transported directly to Vecner, the capital of the Sika's empire, by sea and land. This is also the port's busiest time. However, the situation this year is a little different. In order to catch the devil believers who have sneaked into Nordland to cause chaos, a guard post was added at the entrance of Harbor Town. The caravans coming and going had to line up in long lines and be inspected amidst complaints. It shouldn't be a problem. Right. Lin In, who had put on a good disguise, was a little nervous and was constantly adjusting the sound line, trying to be consistent with the struggles and shouts heard during the rescue last night. This is not something difficult to do. The essence of sound is nothing more than the vibration of the eardrum caused by the wave source propagating through media such as air and reaching the ear. 071 has already recorded Lot's sound characteristics, and all he needs to do is imitate it. And then it's time to test your mentality. Lin In, with the most complex emotions, crossed the long line of caravans in the most natural manner. He did not stop after entering the sentry post, nodded to the guards, and stepped into the harbor town. Several guards stationed there hesitated, and did not dare to intercept. Who was the person who passed by just now? Pastor Adrian stationed at the pass noticed Lin and's leading figure, and asked with a frown. That is Lord Lot, the son of Baron Pedral. The guard answered truthfully. Adrian thought about it, and immediately remembered that in recent years, in order to enable Lot to successfully pass the night examination, Baron Pedral had donated a lot to the church, and he still had some impressions. On the other side, Lin, who had successfully entered Harbor Town, was already covered in cold sweat. The moment he passed the sentry post, he was even ready to take action. Fortunately, everything was as he thought. His current status is that of the son of a genuine hereditary baron, which may not mean much in the entire Nordland territory, but in a small seaport town, this status can still provide a lot of conveniences. After passing the most difficult stage, Lin and finally felt relieved. However, the unfamiliarity with Harbor Town soon gave him a headache again, and he had to spend a lot of time walking back and forth in the port, silently recording every location in my heart. I still had to pretend to be familiar with everything. The tour continued until noon, when Lin incautiously entered a shop with a circular sign. If he was not mistaken, this was the symbol of the ship gang to which Lame Maud belonged. The owner of the harbor shop was an old halfling. When Lin stepped through the door, he was busy moving a large barrel of heavy yellow and black or to the other end of the house. But because he was too short, the heavy iron bucket stuck tightly to the halfling's face, shaking constantly as he walked, and the fine or above was quickly shaken off. Seeing this scene, Lennon stepped forward to lend a hand, and together they piled the large bucket of or into the corner. 
Thank you so much. Guest, the old halfling said with a thick nasal voice. He put his dusty hands on his pants and wiped them hard. Then turned to look at Lin. Okay, let's talk business now. Welcome to Bill's shop. No, I mean, do you need anything? Lord Lot. After seeing Lin Un's appearance clearly, halfling Bill's original casual attitude immediately became flattering. He almost flew directly to the counter and took out several beautifully decorated boxes from the drawer, which contained some red and blue gems. You can take a look at these. They are all the best products this year. There is also a whole boat of high-quality spices, which are treasures that cannot be bought elsewhere. Bill, the halfling, introduced gushingly. Lin in on the side waved his hand with no interest, interrupting the other party's words. I didn't come here to buy anything. On the contrary, I have a precious cargo in my hand that I want to reach Fechner through the Sea of Mist. I heard that you have the ability to arrange a ship for a long voyage and protect the safety of materials. Right. Lin asked tentatively. Of course. Everyone in Harbor Town knows the name of the ship gang. Even those foul-smelling pirates will never dare to intercept our ship. Bill raised his messy beard and patted his chest in assurance. But renting an entire ship to transport goods requires a lot of manpower and escorts. Bill carefully watched Lin's reaction, preparing to decide the price based on the other person's expression. This is a huge profit. Good opportunity. Money is not a problem. Lin threw out the pie without hesitation and then changed his tone when Bill's ecstatic expression appeared and continued. But this batch of goods is very important. I need to meet Loudy in person. Preferably face to face. Bill's expression suddenly became hesitant. What? Do you think I'm not qualified to meet with a lame lotter? Lin frowned, and his tone couldn't help but become more serious. No. 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 Bill shook his head crazily. He didn't dare to say that. After hesitating for a moment, Bill looked around and then said cautiously. In fact, few people in the entire boat gang know that Mr. Lauder is not currently in Harbor Town. What a coincidence! Lin paused, obviously, and looked at the halfling in front of him carefully, suspecting that the other party was fooling him. He asked again, Do you know what he went to do? Bill smacked his lips and said helplessly, That's not clear. In previous years, Mr. Lauder would stay in the port around Sunday, but this year is indeed an exception. Lin stared at the halfling in front of him for a long time, and then suddenly spoke. Forget it. Since Mr. Lauder is not here, I'd better find someone else for help. The old halfling immediately became anxious. Sir Lot, you might as well think about it again. Although Mr. Lauder is not in Harbor Town at the moment, I can help you contact Labor. He is Mr. Lauder's most capable subordinate and can be fully responsible for all affairs of the boat gang. I should have said that this batch of goods is very precious. I need to interview Lauder in person. Please notify me when he comes back. Lin ignored Bill, who was still shouting behind him, and walked out without stopping. Shop. Outside the door. Dozens of huge sailing ships were docked on the flat pier. Dock workers in gray clothes were busy moving boxes filled with goods from the deck to the wooden rafts beside the pier. The crowd was noisy. There was a constant stream of shouts, and shouts from the overseers. Lennon looked around at the bustling scene of Harbor Town. Filled with doubts. In recent days, it has been the busiest time for the port. According to Johnny's description, the channel to the Wizarding Land will also be open briefly. This is the only opportunity to transport materials to the Wizarding Land once a year. If something goes wrong, decades of accumulation will be wiped out. At such a critical moment, it stands to reason that Lauder would never leave. Chapter 25 Son You must learn moderation. What exactly went wrong? Lennon kept thinking. Using his status as a noble as a stepping stone to meet Lauder through trade was the fastest and safest way he thought of. But he unexpectedly hit a wall at the first step. This made Lin somewhat embarrassed. He even suspected that Lauder might have received some bad news. So he hit on purpose. If this is the case, it will be troublesome. It is not easy to find someone who wants to hide. Just as Lin was thinking about it, the dense crowd at the port suddenly became extremely chaotic. Amidst bursts of screams, a beautifully decorated carriage drove through the narrow road and sped towards the side. Which noble family is so arrogant? Lin frowned and was about to withdraw. But the carriage stopped directly in front of him. Not long after, a well-dressed, tall and thin middle-aged man stepped out of the car and bowed deeply. I finally found you. Master Lot, please come back with me as soon as possible. Lord Pedral has something very important to see you for. Faced with a sudden invitation, Lin and almost didn't react. Fortunately, he recalled Lot's diary and quickly judged that the person in front of him 
was the housekeeper of Pedro's house. Then a drop of cold sweat fell on Lennon's forehead. Emerge. He just wanted to borrow this identity temporarily, as a stepping stone to enter Harbor Town and meet the lame lauder. But he didn't expect that the real owner would come to visit him now. And it was much faster than he expected. To go or not to go. Countless possibilities flashed through Lynn's mind. After a second or two of pause, under the respectful but firm gaze of the housekeeper, Lynn nodded, opened the curtain, and got into the carriage. Tap, 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 tap. The stalled carriage started slowly and moved forward on the muddy road at the dock. The carriage kept swaying, which made Lynn, who was sitting on it, feel uncomfortable. Before entering the mansion later, you'd better take care of yourself. Lord Pedro will definitely be very unhappy if he sees it. The car curtain was opened again, and the tall and thin housekeeper glanced at Lynn in hands. Reminding, Lynn lowered his head and realized that his hands were stained with a lot of yellow-black powder, which must have been accidentally stuck on when he helped the halfling Bill carry the bucket, etc. Lynn suddenly raised his hand, lowered his head, and smelled it. It tastes like this. Sulfur? Pedral's mansion is located in the northwest of Harbor Town. On the busiest street, the dark black iron gate stands majestically. When the carriage slowly entered the gate, Lynn quickly noticed what was hidden under the surface. As things, then we'd stretched out from the gaps in the floor tiles. And half of the flowers planted on both sides of the road had withered due to lack of care. But it's normal to think about it. The Pedral Mansion hasn't hired a gardener who specializes in pruning flowers for a long time. After a simple wash, Lynn was led by a servant to the front hall of the mansion. Baron Pedral was already sitting at the dining table covered with a crimson tablecloth and waiting. Also sitting at the table was a girl with brown hair, about 16 or 17 years old, staring at him with an indescribable look. She was probably the sister Ivina mentioned by Lot. Lynn had observed silently and sat down on the only empty seat. On the dining table in front of him was a plate of hot steak and two or three unknown vegetable leaves. Obviously, this was what he wanted to eat today. Dinner. Compared to eating black bread with water, it is already extremely rich. Where have you been? My son, I wanted to look for you last night, but you were not in the mansion. After Baron Pedral sat down in Lynn, he asked with a dissatisfied expression. But his eyes couldn't help but he looked at the tall and thin butler who came in together. I found the young master at the dock of the port. The butler replied without blinking. Baron Pedral's face immediately darkened, and he said in a deep voice, I should have warned you, Lot, that it's okay to relax properly, but never spend the night in a low-class place. Hanging out with dirty prostitutes. Lin In was speechless. You thought I went to whore. Right? What made him even more uncomfortable was that he couldn't refute it verbally. You couldn't say that your son didn't come back last night, and he jumped into the sea and committed suicide. Right? Lin and expected Lot's reaction, and finally lowered his head and said nothing. I don't want it to happen again. Baron Pedral's tone was very stern. After a pause, he continued to speak. In addition, you should pay more attention to me in the next few days. Harbor Town has not been peaceful recently. I heard that Bishop Anziat brought a large number of people to UR Town to arrest those devil believers a few days ago. As a result, he suffered heavy losses. Only a dozen of the 100 elite guards came back alive. Not only that, but even in Bishop Sook was also hit hard. Are these wizards really that powerful? Ivina looked away from Lin and asked in shock. You must know that although the entire Sika's empire is ruled by kings and lords, it is the Holy See that truly controls everything. In other words, he is the messenger of the great lord of the stars and the goddess of creation, Ella, in the mortal world and an archbishop like Ansiak is undoubtedly the spokesperson of God in Nordland. Such a big man who is usually unimaginable actually lost in the process of rounding up wizards. Such a contrast made it difficult for Ivina to accept for a while. These wizards have been corrupted by the devil and possess witchcraft that is unimaginable to ordinary people. They are not that easy to deal with. At this point, Baron Pedral couldn't help but shudder. A year ago, he had met with Bishop Ansiak. The other person seemed to be about the same age as him or even younger. But when he met again tonight, he saw a man in his 80s or 90s. As an old man, he really couldn't imagine what kind of witchcraft could make a powerful bishop look like this. What Baron Pedral couldn't even imagine was that the other protagonist in his words was sitting quietly beside him, slowly and orderly cutting the steak with a knife and fork. Lin In was somewhat surprised by the information that Ansiak was still alive. He originally thought that in that case, the bishop would only have three endings. Either he will be poisoned to death, or he will be killed by falling rocks. 
or he will die in order to complete the divine descending technique. Or maybe the so-called, Ella, projection saved him again. But obviously the rescue was not complete. Otherwise Pedro would not have said that the other party had been seriously injured. Chapter 26 of Prison Devil Believers Baron Pedro saw that Lin In and Ivina were frightened and did not reply for a long time. After thinking about it, he spoke to comfort them. You don't have to worry too much. According to Bishop Anziak, most of the devil believers have been killed. The Holy See has secretly mobilized a guard of 3,000 people to station in Haiyang Town. 3,000 people? Lenin's brows furrowed involuntarily. This was too many. Generally speaking, during non-war periods, small cities like Harbor Town only have a few hundred garrison troops. Now the Holy See secretly mobilizes so many troops to enter here. And it is definitely not without reason. Lin couldn't help but wonder if the identity of the lame lauder was exposed. And the Holy See planned to wipe out the entire ship gang. Father! What does Bishop Antioch mean? Is there going to be a war? Lin asked tentatively. Baron Pedral shook his head. It shouldn't have anything to do with the war. But I don't know much about it. I just heard that Bishop Anziak captured the wizard apprentice who escaped before on his way back to Harbor Town and is now imprisoning him in Harbor Town, preparing to execute him in public on Sunday. Hearing this, Lin-un's expression immediately became very solemn. Could it be that Johnny and Baigu were arrested? Lin-un couldn't help but think of this possibility. When he sent away the two witches before, their condition was not generally bad. It was not even sure whether the two were forced to separate in the rushing water. If the Holy See had organized a large number of manpower to search immediately after the battle, it might be possible to catch them. Father! Do you know who those devil believers who are imprisoned are? Lin couldn't help but ask. After finishing speaking, Lin In immediately realized that he was too anxious and quickly added. I heard that witches are usually very beautiful. I don't know if it's the same as the rumors. Absurd. Who told you this? Baron Pedro reprimanded with great dissatisfaction. They are just rumors. Listen to me. Under no circumstances can you have any connection with these devil's believers. In the Sika's empire, wizards are an absolute taboo. These devil believers master many weird witchcrafts and cause chaos everywhere. They are simply a living disaster. Amid Pedro's angry rebuke, Lin could only temporarily suppress the doubts in his heart. Now was obviously not the time to ask. After a few harsh reprimands, Baron Pedro started talking about business again. This time, in order to deal with those devil believers, two priests died in the battle. Although this is worthy of sadness, it is also an opportunity for us. In other words, there will be at least five places in this year's night assessment. Having said this, Baron Pedro looked at Lin with great expectation. In two months' time, the formal assessment will be held. If he can successfully pass, the Pedro family may not have a chance to revive again. After eating, you and Ivina will spar again. Let me see your progress in the past few months, Pedro said straightforwardly. Sparring? Lin couldn't help but turn his head to look at Ivina sitting across the dining table. The girl was wearing a black slim-fitting dress with a slightly open neckline revealing her fair neck and collarbones. Her shoulder-length hair was pulled back, leaving only a red ribbon hanging down her shoulders. She looked very capable, but only those eyes were extremely cold, and their gaze was as sharp as a sharp knife. It would be better to keep his subordinates for a while. Lin In thought silently in his heart. After all, in Lot's diary, except for the absolute advantage in strength and physical strength a few years ago, he had never defeated Ivina once. On the contrary, this gap is widening rapidly. The best record so far is defeat within 23 moves. Let's stay here. After dinner, Pedro led the two of them to the practice field in the backyard of the manor, and then signaled that they could start. Lenin put on a wooden training sword and assumed a standard sword-holding posture. However, Ivina rushed over quickly the moment Pedro spoke. So fast, Lin's pupils shrank slightly, and he only had time to hold his sword horizontally to resist. When the wooden sword in Ivina's hand was already chopped down in the air. Dang. The wooden swords collided with each other, but unexpectedly made a sound like gold and iron intersecting. The girl turned her body, and while her skirt was swinging, a whip kick came over her. Lin ducked sideways, but Ivina was faster. With a spinning sword, Lin Shuriken was thrown away directly, and then without stopping, she slashed the sword from top to bottom toward the top of her head. The sharp sound of wind in his ears made Lin and feel a hint of danger which also meant that the girl's attack had no mercy. Being hit is not as simple as being injured. Raise your right hand up at a 37-degree angle. Grasp your wrist and seize the sword with your backhand. Lennon's eyes became very serious. Under Jinao's analysis, 
He could see the flaw in the sword's power almost instantly. Facing the vertical slash from top to bottom. He faced it head-on without dodging or dodging. Enough! Pedral shouted, interrupting the competition between Lin and Ivina. The two people on the field stopped at the same time. Lin stretched his right hand forward, and the wooden sword was already hanging above his head. Pedral first glared at Ivina fiercely, and then looked at Lin very annoyed. Lot! What's going on with you? Please pay attention during the battle. If you are still in this state two months later, you may not even be able to pass the first round of the night assessment. Lin in silently withdrew his hand, knowing that he had underestimated the opponent's strength. Although Lot called himself useless in his diary. In fact, after more than ten years of hard training, Ivina, who could easily defeat him, would only be stronger. Stand back to your original position and continue, Baron Pedral said gloomily, his expression extremely ugly. Ivina stood still, as if she didn't hear Pedral's words, while Lin took a few steps back and took the initiative to distance himself. At the same time, she now's notification sound also rang in his mind. Do I need to activate overload mode? No. Lin refused without thinking. This was not a life and life battle. And there was no need to waste energy here. Moreover, although the analytical function of intelligent brain is easy to use, its real effectiveness still depends on its own ability. Ivina is also far less powerful than Antioch and the witch hunter she met before. Just the right whetstone. The battle soon started again, relying on the foundation laid by the original Carl and the experience of many life and death duels. Lin successfully blocked Ivina's surprise attack this time. Chapter 27 Are you finally planning to attack me? My brother? Dang dang. In the evening, in the backyard of Pedral Manor, Lin held a wooden sword and struggled to resist the girl's continuous attacks. Although she had been mentally prepared, Ivina's ruthlessness was still beyond Lin's expectation. She never hesitated with every move and slashed at the vital points. Compared to practice, it was more like a battle of life and death. After the 21st move, the brown-haired girl knocked the long sword in Lin and's hand to the ground with another horizontal slash. After fighting several times, the battle lasted for nearly an hour. Both Lin and Ivina had reached their limit. Their arms and shoulders hidden under their clothes were covered in green and red from slashes. And their physical strength was almost exhausted. Lin, who was not good at melee combat, failed to break Lot's record after all. Pedral, who was watching, didn't care much. He could see that Ivina's swordsmanship had improved a little. So it was normal for her to lose. What made him even more happy was that Lin and finally listened to what he said. During the battle, he was no longer as constrained as before and fought with more vigor. Stop it. That's it for today. Baron Pedro waved his hand and stopped the fighting. And a smile finally appeared on his gloomy face. Very good. My son, you finally have some enlightenment. If you follow this style of play and continue to practice diligently, you are 70% sure of passing the assessment. There are two more places in this year's night assessment, and the standard will definitely be lowered a lot. In addition, I often donate money to the church pastor, so I should be able to be accommodating by then. Thinking of this, Pedro felt better, then turned to look at Ivina and said, Ivina, your swordsmanship is great, but you can stop practicing in the future and spend your time on other things. The son of the Duke of Nordland is indeed obsessed with swordsmanship, but if you show too much strength, you will easily make others unhappy. Pedro carefully taught Ivina how to use the same interests to gain the attention of the Duke's son and maintain the other person's poor self-esteem. Pedro is still very satisfied with his daughter. Not only is she very good-looking, but she also has excellent swordsmanship talent. If he can use this as an opportunity to marry the eldest son of the Duke of Nordland, then the family will have something in their own right. The possibility of revival in hand. Listening to Pedro's words, Ivina clenched her silver teeth, her delicate face full of unwillingness and resentment. However, Pedro failed to notice the girl's expression. And after some guidance, he did not stay any longer. In view of the commotion caused by those devil believers, many big figures who would not normally meet appeared in Harbor Town. This is a very good opportunity to show their faces. After the Baron left, Lin looked at the brown-haired girl in front of him with some pity. To be able to possess such a strong level of swordsmanship at the age of 16, Ivina must have worked hard perhaps because she wanted to win her father's approval and change her destiny. It is a pity that Pedro has always only regarded his daughter as a tool to curry favor with the powerful. Maybe after he leaves, Ivina's situation will be better. Lenin thought for a while, put away the wooden sword in his hand, considered his words, and prepared to say a few words of comfort, fulfilling his responsibility as an elder brother. 
He remembered that in the diary. La was still very concerned about this sister. But before Len could speak, Ivina raised her head and said coldly, Are you finally planning to take action against me? My brother? When the light of the full moon illuminated the night sky again, Len In, who was confused, returned to his room under the leadership of his servant. After thinking for a whole time, he could not figure out what the girl's last words meant. I didn't expect that the relationship in a small baronial palace could be so complicated. Forget it. This is not my business. Lenin shook his head helplessly. Fortunately, he only temporarily borrowed Lot's identity and was not a family mediator. Otherwise, he would definitely have a headache. In comparison, he was more concerned about what Pedro mentioned about the devil believers caught by the Holy See on the way back. Len couldn't be sure whether that person was Johnny or Baiku, or whether both of them were caught by the Holy See. But one thing is certain, Ansik, who has suffered huge losses in his own hands, has made complete preparations. A total of 3,000 guards are secretly stationed in and around Highgang Town, most likely targeting him. It is estimated that in a few days, the Holy See will spread the news of the public execution of devil believers after Sunday, attracting him to rescue people. Lennon couldn't help but shudder when she thought about how she had plunged into the Holy See's trap without any preparation. If nothing else, a single volley from a thousand crossbowmen will turn you into a hedgehog immediately. It would be a good idea to rob the prison in advance. After all, he could use transformation magic and make up skills to sneak in. As long as he knew exactly who the arrested person was and which cell in the prison he was in, Lin would be confident that he could rescue the person. Then there is the question of how to escape Harbor Town. The more Lin thought about it, the more confused he became. He was not the real Carl, and he had no emotional basis for Johnny and others. However, they had experienced life and death together. If possible, he still planned to save him. 071. Is there anything that can help me fight against 3,000 elite soldiers? Lin asked in his mind. The next moment, a whole list appeared in his eyes. Dongfeng 180 missiles, plasma rail guns, antimatter bombs, high energy rays, galaxy class long distance warships. I only have a few days. Give me something reliable. Lin was speechless. If he could come up with these things, he would have kicked the Pope out of office and transformed this dark alien world into a bright medieval world. Under such a request, the dozens of meters long list was immediately reduced to a few lines. Lin was quickly attracted by a picture above, and his mind immediately thought of what he had seen in the harbor shop before. He actually forgot about this thing. After thinking for a moment, Lin In immediately had a plan in mind, but it was obviously impossible for him to do everything on his own. It was best to find some reliable allies. Lame Lord, the familiar name once again jumped into Lin In's mind. This was the easiest helper for him to win over in Harbor Town. The other party was deeply involved with the wizard and the probability of betrayal was extremely low. Then the remaining question is how to uncover this old fox from hiding. Chapter 28 Empty Box Trap The next day, Lin In, who hadn't slept all night, got up early, randomly found an empty box with a gorgeous appearance, stuffed it into his arms, and walked out of the room. In the spacious training ground outside the door, crisp knocking sounds could be heard incessantly. Lin turned around and saw that his sister, Ivina, had been here for a long time. The girl held a wooden sword in her hand and struck at the critical position of the target quickly and fiercely, without any sloppiness, and drops of sweat were sliding down her forehead and into her neck. Really hard work. Lin inside secretly, in view of the unpleasant experience last night. He walked straight over without saying age, low. He did not notice that Ivina, who was training hard behind him, stopped and looked at him with a very complicated expression. Why? Why can he still be so ordinary after seeing himself after experiencing something like that? There was a blank look on Ivina's face. But after remembering Pedro's words last night, her eyes became firm again. She held the sword in her right hand and slashed horizontally again, smashing the solid wooden rake in front of her. Lin In, who had already walked out of the mansion, was not aware of what happened in the mansion. After purchasing some necessary supplies in the market, he returned to the port shop where he had been yesterday. Welcome to Bill's. Ah, it's Lord Lot. The old halfling greeted him as usual. But after recognizing Lin, he immediately gathered around him excitedly and said enthusiastically, We can discuss the shipment you mentioned yesterday. There is absolutely no one in the whole harbor town who is more suitable to cooperate with the ship gang. Lin In was not in a hurry to reply. He looked around the shop leisurely and said with regret, What? Mr. Lauder still doesn't want to see me? 
Bill quickly explained. No, no, no. I believe Mr. Lauder must really want to see you. Unfortunately, he is not in Harbor Town now. Even with the fastest messenger crow, it will take several days to deliver the message. If Lord Lott is worried about safety issues, ship gang can give goods of corresponding value as pledge. The old Bill beat his chest like a drum. Lin and pretended to hesitate for a moment, then waved his hand and said, Well, if that's the case, it's not unacceptable. Who has the final say in the boat gang now? Of course it's labor. Please wait a moment. I'll have someone call him right now. Halfling Bill said, hurriedly ran out the door, called a boatman who was moving goods, and whispered a few instructions. Then he came back and stood on the small stool diligently pouring fruit wine for Lin In. Lin In took the cup and put it aside without intending to drink it. Instead, he pointed at the iron buckets piled in the corner of the shop and asked, What are these things? They are all worthless yellow ore. A group of gold prospectors dug it out from a barren mountain in Harbor Town. They made a whole boatload of it. Halfling Bill said very depressedly, Usually only herbalists are willing to buy this stuff. But this year the yellow or market in Vecner has been saturated. Which means they have to stock up on these things until next year before they can sell them. Master Lot, if you are interested in these yellow ores, I can give you a cost price. Such a large bucket only costs 19 copper plates. I heard it is very effective in repelling insects. Halfling Bill rubbed it. Hands. Eager sales pitch. No. I just haven't seen it. I'm just curious. Lenin shook his head and replied calmly. While the two were chatting, a tall, strong man came in from the door with several helpers. What an honor. Mr. Lott, I heard from Bill that you have something very important to discuss with me in person. Labor pushed open the door and entered. A genuine smile suddenly appeared on his face. Yes, I am preparing to rent a large ship to transport a batch of very important supplies. Lenin said solemnly taking out a beautiful box from his sleeve and placing it on the table. This is a sample. I need a private place to talk to you alone. Several people present invariably focused their attention on this exquisite, palm-sized box. Halfling Bill secretly guessed whether there might be some kind of extremely rare gem inside, but thought that Lin would need a big ship to carry it, and quickly dismissed this idea. Labor's expression on the side was very solemn. Unlike Bill, he had been a member of the ship gang for more than ten years and occasionally helped the nobles deal with some shady things. For example, the Duke of Nordland has been secretly selling an addictive soul-destroying herb. If the Vatican catches him, then most of their pawns will be dragged out to take the blame. Of course, risks and benefits coexist. If the goods are delivered smoothly, the profit from this ship will be enough for the entire ship gang to work for more than half a year. No problem. We can go to the side room and talk slowly. Labor's thoughts were changing but the smile on his face became even bigger. Lin put away the box and followed Labor out of the shop, crossing most of the street, and finally stopped in an ordinary-looking private house. Labor, who was very aware of the importance of confidentiality, asked several helpers to guard the door and led Lin alone to a well-hidden basement. The place is very empty, with only a few simple tables and chairs, but it is very clean. Seeing that Lin In had been looking at the surrounding environment since he entered the door, Labor became more and more sure of his guess. So he promised with a smile. Please sit down. Mr. Lot, it's safe and quiet here. No outsiders will disturb you. If that's the case, then I'm relieved. Lin also laughed, pushing the box in his hand towards Labor, and gestured. You can see us first, and then we can talk. Labor put his hand on the box with anxiety and excitement, and was very curious about what kind of contraband would be inside. Soul-destroying grass? Helmstone? It can't be a statue of some evil god. Right? I heard that the nobles in the west of the Sika's empire are very fond of those evil things. However, after he actually opened it, Labor's expression instantly froze. Because the box is empty. There is nothing. Being fooled, Labor immediately realized something was wrong, and subconsciously reached for the dagger hanging on his waist with his left hand. But it was already too late. The moment he opened the box, Len entered a brief overload mode. His right hand quickly and accurately grabbed Labor's elbow, bending the entire arm at the most precise angle, along with a muffled sound of dislocation. Heartbreaking pain suddenly filled Labor's mind. But before he could cry out, his whole body was grabbed by the neck and hit hard to the ground. Chapter 29 This is simply a devil. The sudden attack was completely beyond Labor's expectation. He was stunned for a moment. It took him a long time to react. And he asked with anger and fear, Mr. Lott, 
What are you doing? The boat gang should have never provoked the Pedral family. Don't forget, the port is our home ground. I advise you the best. Labor threatened in a stern voice. But before he could finish his words, Lin snapped his other arm with a backhand. And then threw the strong man curled up into a shrimp shape on the ground. I ask. You answer. Do you understand? A little cooperation is a good thing for us. Lin squatted down, stared at Labor, and said directly, The tall, strong man was already sweating in pain, but he gritted his teeth and resisted making a sound. He stared at Lin in as if he wanted to eat him alive. His mind was full of thoughts. But he couldn't think of pay. The reason why Baron Droll's son attacked him. Could it be that one of the shrewd helpers in the boat gang accidentally angered the other party? Just as he was thinking about it, Lenin's voice came over. First question. Name. Labor stared, feeling insulted. Isn't it obvious? Answer. Lin's voice was very cold. After waiting for two seconds, he suddenly pulled out the dagger from the opponent's waist and stabbed Labor's right hand quickly and decisively. Law Labor. The tall, strong man shouted at the top of his lungs. He didn't want to lose his precious right hand over a very stupid question. Lin's movements continued. And under Labor's horrified gaze, the dagger penetrated his palm from top to bottom. Labor's back was soaked, but the expected pain did not come. Looking down, Labor realized that the dagger was inserted directly between his fingers. You only have one second to answer each question. There will be no next time, Lin In said indifferently, and then asked the next question. Gender! Male! Labor replied through gritted teeth, completely treating the man in front of him as a lunatic. Nation place! Well, that's where you were born. Lin In continued to ask Labor various questions. At first, he could answer them without thinking. And then the questions became more and more tricky. From the various small things he did every day to the ship gang, as trade goods and roots. Once Labor hesitated for a moment, he broke off one of his fingers. In just a few minutes, Labor's fingers had been broken six times. And the pain was so painful that he was in a daze. Well, since you forgot which foot stepped out of the door first three days ago, let me ask you a simple question. Lin inside helplessly. And then his voice changed and suddenly asked. Where is Lame Laud? Yes. Labor was about to speak subconsciously. But he paused the next moment and shook his head in horror. I, I don't know. I said, if you can cooperate, it will be a good thing for everyone. Lin inside helplessly. In fact, he is not good at interrogation. The inventory in his mind is from last night. Taken overnight. But Labor obviously didn't intend to talk properly. So he had to use more radical methods. Lin's eyes narrowed. The entire ship gang was originally formed by a group of pirates who had become good, according to Labor's confession, in addition to running ships and transporting goods. They also organized various illegal activities in private. For example, pretending to be pirates to rob ships, human trafficking, transporting contraband, murder and fights, etc. If it were in his previous life, those things that Labor had done, even death a hundred times would not be enough to anger the common people. I wonder if you have ever heard of skinning? Lin asked slowly. Peel? Labor shuddered, and then heard Lin continue. First cut the knife from the spine and divide the skin on the back into two halves. Then slowly use the knife to cut along the texture of the muscles. The action must be fast to complete it before the target bleeds to death. Lin and kept talking to Labor about the ancient torture of a certain country. The description was very vivid and detailed even down to how the knife should be cut and how much blood would be shed. Each step needed to be completed within a few minutes. Labor was so frightened that he collapsed on the ground. He had no doubt that the madman in front of him would peel off his skin. And he spoke tremblingly. Lord, Lord, I really don't know the whereabouts of Leader Laud. Really? But I heard that you are Lame Laud's most trusted subordinate, Lin said with a sneer. In fact, Mr. Lauder never trusts anyone, Labor explained in panic. I only know that he left Harbor Town three days ago. It doesn't matter if you don't want to say it. We have a lot of time to play slowly. Lin stood up and patted the dust on his trouser legs. When he was looking for interrogation techniques last night, he saw many interesting and harmless criminal laws. Now is the perfect time to give it a try. Half an hour later, Labor was paralyzed on the ground, nearly collapsed under the double torture of both mind and body. When faced with Lin and questioning, he knew everything even that he had swallowed an entire ship, goods and disguised as a shipwreck. But Labor had no idea about Lauder's whereabouts. After trying several methods of mental torture, Lin had to admit 
that the other party was probably not faking it. According to the information provided by Labor, the time when Lauder left was two days ago, which was also the day after Antioch led his men to raid the town of Yuar. At the same time, the drunkard tavern he had visited was also on the same day. It was confiscated by the Holy See, and Old Hawk's whereabouts are still unknown. It was probably at that time that Lame Maud received the news and hid in fear. Only a few senior officials in the entire boat gang knew that the other party was not in Harbor Town. It seems that your most capable assistant is just a cover. Lennon looked at Labor, who was lying limp on the ground, and shook his head helplessly. Labor does know a lot of secrets about that ship gang, but he has very limited information about someone secretly transporting supplies to the wizarding land. He only knows that on Sundays every year, Lauder will personally be responsible for the transportation of several large ships. Labor didn't know where these ships were headed. Lynn pondered for a long time. The other party's caution and cunning were completely beyond his expectation. I am afraid that Lauder had already prepared for the possibility that the top brass of the ship gang would betray or be captured. However, it is impossible for Lauder alone to sail across the sea, which means that there must be some more core personnel within the boat gang responsible for this matter. The other peripheral personnel served as cover, obeyed Labor's orders, and were abandoned as abandoned characters at critical moments. Len recalled what he learned from Labor, the names and experiences of the leaders of the boat gang. Everyone seems to be a possible trap set by Lauder. While thinking about it, an idea suddenly popped up in Lin's mind. Since he can't find it himself, it's better to let Lauder take the initiative to find him. Chapter 30 Conflict and City Guards Thinking of this, Lin looked down at Labor and asked, who do you have the worst relationship with in Harbor Town? It's Black Hand, Bob. Labor didn't understand why Lin asked. But he still explained the conflict between the two of them like beans from a bamboo tube. Very good. Let me borrow your clothes. Lin moved his hands without hesitation. Stepped forward and took off Labor's clothes. The tall and strong man subconsciously thought that the demon in front of him was going to use cruel skinning methods on him. So he pressed his body to the ground desperately. Like a little girl being raped. In the end, Lin had no choice but to knock him out. After changing his clothes, he stared at Labor's face and activated his magical transformation. This was before he learned shaping magic from basic magic, which can change the wizard's external body. Buck, who died in the hands of Antioch, once used this magic to transform into a giant bear, briefly delaying the opponent's actions. However, this kind of magic is not omnipotent. Not only does it require a thorough understanding of deformed creatures, it also requires facing various risks. Basic magic records many examples of wizards who failed to learn shaping magic. Some of them transformed incorrectly. Some could not change back. And some died of magical backlash. It can be said that wizards who dare to learn shaping magic are brave guys who are not afraid of death. Fortunately, Lennon's biology level has always been good. And 071's database even has a complete three-dimensional model of the human body. The skin. Muscles blood, internal organs, and even internal cells are all clear, which can greatly avoid some surprises. Condition. Of course, compared to Lot, who was very similar to him in body shape, age, and hair color, he was only about 90% similar when he pretended to be rabble. It's enough to deal with some emergencies. Lin casually wiped some dust on his face, tied up the unconscious labor, stuffed him into a utility bag in the basement, and then walked outside. Damn it, Bob! Lennon cursed and walked out of the room. Several boatmen on guard saw Lennon's angry look and cautiously asked, Boss Labor, did the negotiation fail? For a large shipload of goods. The other party is only willing to offer 60 Sika's gold coins. Lin was very angry. It's all Bob's fault. He has already contacted the Peveril family in order to snatch our business. Bob is willing to help the other party transport the goods at a very low price. Hearing this, the helpers present were filled with indignation. You must know that the cost of a big ship to go back and forth is 50 Sika's gold coins. This does not include the crew's expenses at sea. Wouldn't this amount of money make everyone go in vain? Trip? Black Hand, Bob and his workers have never dealt with a boat gang. But usually they just make trouble secretly. But unexpectedly this time they went too far. They would rather lose money than get money from them. Grab business in hand. This is just plain disgusting. Let's go. Take someone with you to find him. Lenin waved his hand and shouted loudly, gathering dozens of people and walking towards the dock with great fanfare. At the same time, on a huge sailboat, Blackhand, Bob was waving his whip and scolding several workers who wanted to be lazy. 
When he saw Lin rushing and angrily, he frowned and said dissatisfied. Labor, why did you bring so many people here? Lin didn't bother to talk nonsense with him. So he punched him and knocked the confused Bob to the ground. The workers on the sailboat were stunned on the spot. But the manpower brought by Lin N had already rushed forward, followed by a stick attack. The originally peaceful dock suddenly turned into chaos, with shouts and smashing sounds coming incessantly. Until a few minutes later, a sharp shout came over. City guards! City guards are here! Lin N, who was taking action, and all the workers on the ship stopped involuntarily, because more than a dozen guards holding sharp blades and wearing armor had surrounded the ship. Lin N raised his hands to signal everyone to give up resistance without a trace of worry on his face. This is because Tyrus, the captain of the guard in Harbor Town, is an old acquaintance of labor. The last time he embezzled ship cargo, the other party reaped a lot of benefits. What on earth is going on? Tyrus strode onto the sailing ship, looked around at the goods scattered on the ground and the workers lying on the ground, and then looked at Lin. Very surprised, he asked dissatisfiedly. Lord Tyrus, these people broke in for no reason. Knocked over the goods stored here without any reason. And even attacked us. Bob, who had a broken tooth, shouted angrily. I felt very aggrieved. And I still haven't figured out why I was beaten. It's just some minor conflicts. Lord Tyrus. And many people present can testify that it was Bob who made the first move. Lin took a few steps forward with a smile on his face. And stuffed a small bag of coins into his backpack casually. Reese's hands. The hundreds of boatmen on the dock also started to boo, drowning out the feeble rebuttals of Bob and others. In Harbor Town, the power of the Black Hand is far different from that of the Boat Gang. If Bob hadn't had an Imperial Earl as his backer, which made the crippled Law have some scruples, he would have been kicked out of the dock long ago. Catch them all! Tyrus naturally knew all about the secret conflicts and frictions between the two major gangs in Harbor Town. After Wang Lin on sincerity, he quickly characterized the conflict as a mutual one. Assault incident. According to the laws of the Sika's empire, those who gather to cause trouble will be whipped ten times. Hiss this bastard really beats me. Half an hour later, Lin walked out of the dock with a frown on his face. Feeling very depressed, he overestimated the emotion between Labor and Tyrus. The other party showed no mercy at all when he attacked, and the ten lashes did not retain any power at all. Lin only hoped that the whipping was not in vain. He had done everything he could, based on Lane Law's cautious and cunning character. He guessed that the other party's hiding place must not be too far away. And he was always paying attention to the movements in the harbor town. What Laud was most worried about was attracting the attention of the Holy See. So he planned this conflict, attracted the city guards, controlled the intensity, and maintained the cause of the conflict on the differences and in interests between the gangs. If nothing else happened, this matter would soon reach Lauder's ears. Inside, as the number one figure in the ship gang. No one can control him except Lauder himself. So it is easy to guess what the other party will do next. It is possible that one of Laud's true confidants would come forward to deliver the other party's reprimand. But the most likely possibility is that. Lord Labor, Mr. Lauder has something important to ask you. Please come with me. A few minutes later, an ordinary looking boatman suddenly came to his ear and whispered softly. Okay, I'll go right away. A smile appeared on Lin's lips. Sure enough. Here it comes. Chapter 31 I came here specially to save you. Mr. Lauder, under the leadership of the boatman, Lin left the noisy dock, walked through several streets, and stopped in front of a long abandoned shabby house in the north of the city. Please come in. Lord Labor, Mr. Lauder is waiting for you inside. The boatman extended his hand to signal. Lin nodded, opened the door and walked in. Only then did he realize that the dilapidated scene outside was just a disguise and there was a hidden world inside the house. The surrounding walls are all made of heavy stones. Many precious oil paintings and sculptures are hung on the smooth, mirror-like walls, and the air is filled with an elegant scent of perfume. In stark contrast to this elegant environment, there were strong men holding large axes standing on both sides of the room. They stared at Lin-In who entered the door, like looking at a lamb waiting to be slaughtered. Lame Maud was standing in front of the long table at this moment. He looked about 50 years old, with white hair and a thin and stooped figure. The most eye-catching thing was naturally his wooden prosthetic leg. The moment he saw Lin in, the anger in Lauder's heart suddenly surged, and he scolded him angrily. Rabur, are you crazy? I should have told you not to cause any trouble for me recently, but you actually fought with Bob at the port today over a ship of goods. 
Do you know that the Holy See may have noticed us now? Two batches of ships have been detained in the past three days. Lauder cursed bitterly, but soon discovered that something was wrong with labor in front of him. Under his own accusation, he did not show any fear or panic at all, but was still approaching him step by step. Wait! You're not labor! Lauder's mind was racing with thoughts, and he immediately realized this. He took a few steps back with a look of horror, looked at the guards around him, and ordered loudly, Stop him! Those who could enter this room were all Lauder's chosen confidants. So after hearing the order, the strong men guarding the surroundings didn't hesitate at all, raised the axe in their hands, and chopped down. Start overdrive mode. Time is three seconds. Just before the axe blade approached, Lin in silently thought in his mind. In an instant, all the positions and movements in the room were turned into data and presented in his mind. Lin in casually sidestepped the attack of a strong man, snatched the axe from the other man's hand, kicked it away, then turned around, swung the axe handle, and hit a man with the back of the axe hard. On the stomach of the unlucky guy, he then rushed forward with the axe and quickly knocked all the remaining guards to the ground. Taking advantage of this moment, Lauder had already turned over and crossed the long table blocking the road. The wooden prosthetic leg on the right was simply more agile than the real leg. With the sound of wind blowing, he crossed a distance of more than 10 meters in a few steps. Lame Laud. He ran so fast. Such a strange sight made Lin and stunned for a moment. But fortunately, he reacted immediately, raised his hand, and several crystal ice blades appeared in the air. At the same time, Lauder also felt the intimidation coming from behind him. But he ignored it because the secret passage was right in front of him and he only needed to reach out to touch it. However, the speed of the ice blade was faster, and it hit his right leg prosthesis first. Lauder lost his balance and fell to the ground in a panic. And then another ice blade flew away, came and nailed it to his robe. Keep running! Lin approached step by step and said coldly, in order to see Lauder. He had worked hard in the past few days, so naturally he could not let him escape. However, Lenin soon realized that his words were somewhat like the speech of a villain. And then he changed his tone and explained. Actually, I'm here to save you, Mr. Loud. Lame Laud felt the cold air coming from his whole body, glanced at the kind-faced Lenin, and swallowed hard. Okay, he believed it for now. After a friendly exchange between the two parties, the previous small misunderstanding was resolved. Lauder called a few men to tidy up the messy cabin, and then invited Lin in to sit down. Master Wizard, you came to me specifically. Do you have any orders? Lauder asked cautiously. Of course I'm here to save you, Lin said without hesitation. As far as I know, the Holy See has sent 3,000 guards to secretly enter the harbor town. They should be targeting the boat gang. That's not necessarily the case. Lauder shook his head. Of course he also received the news, but he did not agree with Lin's judgment. Just three days ago, Archbishop Anthic of Nordland led a raid on the town of Uar. As a result, they encountered a powerful wizard. After paying a heavy price, they were able to repel the opponent. These 3,000 people the guards should be used to guard against that wizard. Speaking of this, Lauder suddenly looked at Lin In, and a vague guess emerged in his heart. Yes, I was the one who fought against the Archbishop before. Lin nodded, not hiding anything, seeing Lin and admitting it. Lauder couldn't help but secretly dumbfounded. Judging from the intelligence he had received before, although Bishop Antioch succeeded in repelling the wizard in the end, he himself also suffered serious injuries that could not be healed. Rumor has it that the place where the two sides fought was burned to ashes, and the terrifying fire has not been extinguished to this day. This shows how powerful and weird this magic is. Could it be that the person sitting in front of him was a great wizard? No, not likely. Lauder quickly rejected this conjecture. He had seen the power of the great wizard. He could even temporarily freeze the maelstrom known as the natural disaster, Eye of Death, by casting spells with all his strength. If he had such power, then it was the one who escaped in the first place. Bishop Sook. In view of this, Lauder immediately determined that the opponent should be a powerful three-ring wizard. Lin didn't know what Lauder was thinking. So he continued to explain. If you think that the Holy See's fanfare is just to target me, that's too stupid. Ansiak's real goal is to find a channel to the wizard's land. Otherwise the Archbishop would not have to go to the harbor come to town. In addition, I also got news that Ansia captured several wizard apprentices on the way to harbor town. They are all disciples of Kalu. And they all know that this route is related to the ship gang. The Holy See hasn't taken action yet. 
It's probably just that they haven't been able to get enough information from them. I don't have much time left for you. Lenin said solemnly. Chapter 32 apart from this. You and I have no choice. Listening to Lin's words, Lauder's expression suddenly changed, and he cursed Kalu secretly in his heart for revealing such important news to several apprentices, so that he was implicated. He did not think that Lin En was deceiving him. After all, the movements of the Holy See in the past few days were an extremely obvious signal. It was precisely because he was worried about this that he chose to hide behind the scenes and observe the situation, ready to run away anytime and anywhere. But he didn't want to be caught out anyway. The boat gang has been operating in Harbor Town for many years, so they should be well informed. Do you know who the person arrested by the Holy See is? Lin En asked expectantly. Lauder shook his head hesitantly and replied helplessly. The ship gang is being watched very closely now, and what I know is very limited. I'm afraid the Archbishop has blocked the information. Now only the priests in Harbor Town have the right to access such confidential information. It is not an easy task to corrupt and control a priest. These people master powerful divine arts, usually have firm beliefs, and are not short of money. They are all very hardcore. So even though the boat gang has been operating in Harbor Town for decades, he usually avoids these people and tries not to have any contact with the clergy of the Holy See. Lennon's brows couldn't help but frown. He originally wanted to get enough information from Lauder, but he didn't expect that even the other party didn't know about it. This was completely beyond his expectation. Master Wizard, are you planning to rescue the arrested wizard apprentices? Lauder asked tentatively. Yes, this is also very important to you. Isn't it? Lin said comfortably. I'm afraid this will be difficult. There are guards everywhere in Harbor Town now, and they may not be imprisoned in the prison at the port. Even if they are lucky enough to rescue people, it is impossible for them to escape from Harbor Town. Lauder shook. He shook his head and retorted. Rather than taking this risk, it's better to find a way to kill them, which will make it much easier. Since the other party knows the secret of Boat Gang, it is enough to make this person disappear. Generally speaking, it is easier to kill than to save. Lin was not surprised by Lauder's ruthlessness. In this dark and different world, a human life really didn't count. Not to mention that it also involved the secret of the wizarding land. However, Lenin did not agree with the other party's view and said with a sneer, Mr. Lauder, are you still imagining that after this matter is over, the boat gang can live in peace and continue to stay in Harbor Town to make money? Since Anjuk chose Harbor Town as his base, it must mean that the other party has found some clues. Even if Baigu and Johnny are dead now, sooner or later, Lauder will be found. After all, most of the cargo transportation in the entire harbor town is related to the ship gang. Lauder's face became very ugly. He could naturally think of this, but he had been unwilling to admit this fact. All in all, he has been in harbor town for 20 years. It can be said that all his hard work for the rest of his life has been here. You are a smart man. Mr. Lauder, our only way to survive now is to take a boat across the foggy sea and go to the land of wizards. Otherwise, with what you have done, you will be found out by the Holy Sea no matter where you hide, Lin said bluntly. Now you can take a boat across the sea and take away some of the money you have accumulated. But if Ansik takes action first, you may not even be able to survive. Lauder looked deeply at Lin in and opened his mouth as if he wanted to say something. But in the end, he sighed helplessly. It's too late to go to sea now. Harbor Town has begun to strictly control incoming and outgoing cargo ships. Today, there were two large ships transporting goods to the Imperial capital, but they were both detained. So fast? Lin paused for a moment. It seemed that the situation was worse than he thought. But he quickly calmed down and asked, But you always have a way to solve it, don't you? In the past few days in Harbor Town, in order to find this old fox, he was almost confused by all kinds of true or false news. If it weren't for the horror of shaping magic that allowed him to disguise himself as the leader of the boat gang, there would really be no way to find him out. For such a cautious person, Lin didn't believe that Lauder would not have expected the day when he would be blocked in the town, let alone not make any preparations. Lin and quickly thought about all the information he had learned these days. Since the seaport is in a semi-blockade state, the only ones who can leave the port freely during this period are those warships responsible for patrolling the sea area. Holy Spirit! Sky Dome! Watcher! Which ship has your people on board? Lin asked curiously. Lauder's face twitched. He didn't expect that Lin Eng could even guess this. He even wondered if someone among his close confidants had betrayed him. So he had no choice but to admit it immediately. Yes! 
Sky Vault. That's good enough. Lin In was surprised that Lauder's methods were really sure to seize control of a warship. He just wanted to deceive the other party. Lauder said angrily. Things are not as easy as you think. Although the captain of the Sky Dome is mine. The ship needs to be reported and verified every time it leaves and departs from the port. Once it deviates from the route. I am afraid it will be discovered by the sentries soon. On the Sea of Mist. Their warships can rely on bows and arrows to shoot from a distance or engage in close combat. But there are priests on the other side's ship. With a few magical spells, even the strongest ship will be torn into pieces. And large-scale transfer of personnel and materials is not an easy task. You don't need to worry about this. When we cross the sea, they have no time to pay attention to us anymore. Lin In said confidently. I have a plan. If it goes well, no matter how many troops there are, they will no longer be a threat. But this will require the assistance of the ship gang. Lin looked at Lauder, waiting for the other party's response. The entire boat gang had thousands of boatmen. Even if it was just a ragtag group, if they could be utilized, they would be an extremely huge force. You'd better not rely on them to fight against the Holy Seas guards. Lauder sighed. Although the ship gang has many people, most of them are just making a living under his hands. It's okay to engage in gang wars on weekdays. But if they were really dragged out to fight with the regular army, half of them would betray them on the spot before the fight even started. Don't worry. I just need you to do some small things. Lin took out a piece of parchment from his sleeve and pushed it in front of Lauder. Can these things be collected? The more, the better. Chapter 33 Have you ever seen fireworks bloom? Lauder curiously took the parchment and looked at it for a few times, with a look of surprise on his face. This is not to say that what Lin In is looking for is very precious. On the contrary, what is written on the parchment is some raw materials that are very easy to collect, or even waste that cannot be sold. Can you tell me what's the use of these things? Lauder asked in confusion. Lin did not answer directly, but suddenly asked, Have you ever seen fireworks going off? Mr. Lauder? What is that? Lauder was stunned for a moment and shook his head in confusion. A thing that can send the entire city guard to the sky. I guarantee. It will also be the most gorgeous scenery you have ever seen. Lin In said with a smile. The expression on Lauder's face paused for a moment. With a look of disbelief on his face. Harbor Town originally had a guard team of 800 people. Later, Bishop Ansiak transferred 3,000 elite guards from Nordland. He really couldn't imagine what kind of power could bring such a force in such a short period of time. The huge army was destroyed. Could it be that they are the materials needed to set up some kind of powerful alchemy circle? Lauder immediately thought of this possibility. He had heard from Kalu that some wizards, who were proficient in alchemy could multiply the power of a certain magic through the magic circle. If this is the case, they have no chance of winning. Thinking of this, Lauder lost the intention to continue to find out. Because for wizards, the secrets of magic are usually not disclosed to the outside world. In addition to these raw materials, I also need the map of Harbor Town, the patrol route of the city guard, and the most important thing. Lin paused and said solemnly, I want to know the appearance, personality, and daily habits of every clergyman in Harbor Town. The more detail the better. The lame Lauder pondered for a while and didn't reply for a long time. The map and the patrol routes of the city guards were easy to get, but it was not easy to find out the background of those priests. Sometimes you have to pay some price if you want to survive. Right? Lin reminded. Okay, I can give you everything you said, but I want to know how you plan to rescue the wizard apprentice. Lauder gritted his teeth. Now that the port has been blocked by the Holy Sea, if you want to escape smoothly, you must just create enough chaos. And rescue is also a matter of course. Lin and stopped trying to be pretentious and gave an overview of the entire plan. With the part that the boat gang was responsible for being the most detailed. After listening to Lin's story, cold sweat broke out on Lauder's back. However, he was relieved that Lin N was personally responsible for the most dangerous rescue operation in the entire plan. The ship gang was only responsible for the response work. The most important thing was that he did not need to personally do it from beginning to end. In other words, there was absolutely no need for him to do it personally. Most of the time, you are in a safe zone. Then I wish us a happy cooperation. Lennon stretched out his hand freely, and Lauder on the side was no exception. The palms of the two people quickly held each other tightly. A slight tingling sensation suddenly surged into his heart. Lauder subconsciously pulled his arm back and glanced down. There was already a flame mark on the back of his hand. What do you mean? Lauder asked sternly. 
covering the back of his hand. Lennon retracted his hand slowly and said with a smile on his face, I heard Rabble say before that you never trust anyone around you. This is a very good habit. It just so happens that I am the same way. Lennon looked like he was meeting someone of the same kind. Lauder's face turned dark, and he had already scratched the skin and bones of that bastard labor. This flame mark reminded him of the tragic situation outside the town of UR. An intelligence officer he said accidentally caught some flames because he was too close and was sentenced to death. Even if he jumped into the river, there is no way to avoid the fate of being swallowed up by the fire of H. L. By the way, I left your subordinate labor in a side room in the port. This is the internal affairs of the ship gang. So I won't interfere. As Lenin said, Sher Shiran stood up and did say goodbye. After someone left, Laud's suppressed emotions burst out, and he angrily swept all the expensive vases and utensils on the table to the ground. The guards who heard the commotion outside immediately rushed in, and then stood there at a loss as they watched their leader getting nervous in the room. After venting for several minutes, Lauder panted and sat down in his seat, looking at the guards in front of him. You guys, go and bring labor back to me immediately. I'm going to skin him myself, Lame Maud said through gritted teeth, by the time Lin and walked out of the broken house. The scorching sun at noon was already high above his head. After successfully persuading the Lame Lauder and having the assistance of the entire boat gang, Lin was secretly relieved. At least now, he no longer had to fight alone. And he was 60 to 70 percent sure of rescuing by Gu and Johnny. As for the magic mark, he left on Lauder's hand. It was actually just a cover and had no effect. But Lin knew that the previous battle outside UR town had already demonstrated part of his strength, which was undoubtedly a deterrent. For a person like Lauder, even if he tells the truth, the other party will never believe him. Instead, he will think that his life is in his hands. This is exactly what Lin wants to achieve. After all, when it comes to actual action, for the sake of safety, the most core part needs to be solved by him personally. But Lauder can always stay behind the scenes. The risks between the two sides are not equal. This this is a big no-no in collaboration. So some balancing measures are naturally necessary. In the next two days, the news that the Inquisition will publicly execute the devil's followers after Sunday has spread throughout Harbor Town. And almost everyone is discussing this topic. Lennon confirmed his previous judgment again. Apart from practicing swordsmanship with Ivina, the rest of his time was spent on processing the delivered raw materials. Within 72 hours, the basic substance deconstruction technique was released thousands of times, and the whole person was almost exhausted. Every time he returned to the mansion, Pedrol's housekeeper looked at him a little strangely. Once, he couldn't bear it anymore and persuaded him earnestly not to empty his body at a young age. Lin and just excused himself casually, and he couldn't find another suitable reason to explain why he always stayed away all night. Anyway, it was Lot who died in disgrace in the end. So what does it have to do with him? Things went so smoothly thanks to the fact that Baron Pedral was often away from the mansion. He was busy attending various noble banquets so that he could show his face in front of these big shots. Amid such orderly busyness, Harbor Town ushered in the last night of Sunday. Chapter 34 My brother, you are an obstacle to my progress. When night falls completely, the noisy and lively port town has been immersed in silence and tranquility. The bright full moon rises from the sea level, and its faint light spreads down as if it has cast a fine silver gauze over the entire harbor town. At this moment, Lin was sitting on the top floor of Pedrol's house, gazing down at the entire town. He didn't know if it was an illusion, but the port seemed to be exceptionally quiet today, and he couldn't hear the slightest sound of insects. This abnormality made him smell it. A hint of danger. 071 Report Energy Reserve After putting the diary away, Lin and asked silently in his mind, energy remaining 40.2%. It's a pity that there is still a little less. Lenin thought silently in his mind that the four-month night allowed 071 to increase its energy reserve by about 30%. This was already extremely fast, but it could only maintain the overload mode for about 200 seconds. Only in this state can he exert all the power of white phosphorus fire. Although he felt uneasy for no reason, Lin was not ready to change his plan. He wanted to rescue Beige and Johnny. Tonight was their only chance. After all, the channel to the wizard's land will only be open on Sunday. And tomorrow is the time for public execution. Lin took out the diary belonging to Lot from his arms and placed it on the corner of the table. After today, no matter whether he succeeds or fails, he will no longer be able to stay in Harbor Town. So Lot's identity will naturally have nothing to do with him. This diary will be left to Baron Pedral and Ivina 
as Lot's last suicide note. Although he doesn't expect to change anything. It is the only thing he can do. After packing his things, Lin walked out of the room alone, recalling the intelligence collected by the boat gang in his mind. Adrian, the serving priest who has just been transferred to Harbor Town, the right-hand man of Bishop Anjuk, comes from a noble family, was the champion of the last Nordland Knight assessment, and possesses a strong swordsmanship. The most important thing is that the other party has a very regular schedule. He will definitely go out at this time every night, and his whereabouts are unknown. He is suspected of going to attend a dinner party for a certain noble. As for the rescue plan, Lin thought of several plans, the most successful of which was to directly capture and replace Adrian. Not only could this directly reveal who the arrested person was, where he was being held, and other information, but Adrian's status as the bishop's right-hand man was also extremely useful. When the full moon hangs high in the sky, the boat gang men will cause chaos at the dock, drive out all irrelevant personnel, and use the white phosphorus powder he prepared in advance to set fires everywhere. Once this unquenchable H. L. fire spreads, it cannot be solved by hundreds of garrison troops, but also by his signature magic. At that time, whether it is to quell the flames or to capture himself, Ansik will most likely go out in person, or even mobilize the elite guards hiding in the dark. The large amount of cargo accumulated on the dock has been quietly replaced by the special black powder by the ship gang. Once detonated, both the warships docked at the dock and the supporting guards will be blown up to the sky in an instant. It would be best if Ansiak could be killed together with him. Even if not, the archbishop would not be able to come back for a while. At the same time, he could use Adrian's identity to enter the place where Johnny and others were imprisoned, and use the chaotic situation in Harbor Town as an excuse to pass on the archbishop's instructions to move the prisoners to a safer place. After coming out, Lot's confidants will be responsible for taking care of him. Of course, this is information that everything goes well, and there may be countless emergencies along the way. For example, if he is directly discovered when he disguises himself as Adrian to enter the detention place, or if the guard is simply unwilling to obey his orders, then he can only rely on his own strength to solve the problem. The worst case scenario is that Ansiak chooses to stand still and watch the H. L. fire at the dock spread rapidly. Then he will have to take action to quell the flames and avoid involving a large number of ordinary residents. If this thing is not controlled, the entire harbor town will be reduced to a sea of fire. Lennon kept deducing what might happen in his mind. And an unpleasant, creaking sound came from the corridor in front of him from far to near. The alert Lin immediately stopped and raised his head and soon saw the figure at the end of the corridor. The brown-haired girl stood upright in the shadows, holding a thin blade that was as long as the ground in her hand. As she moved around, her red and black outfit looked weird under the light of the silver moon. Ivina, what are you doing here? Lin asked in confusion, and at the same time put his hand on the hilt of the sword. The other party's room should be on the second floor. Why? The brown-haired girl asked in a low voice. Why no matter how good I am or how hard I work, my father will never approve of me. And you can't even pass the night test. You fail again and again. But you can always get everything I want easily. Ivina lowered her head, with a kind of irrepressible anger in her words. She clenched her teeth and seemed to be trying her best to restrain her anger. But soon, the girl's expression became calm again, and her tone was very cold. My brother, you are an obstacle to my progress. Lennon's pupil shrank. And just as the words fell, Ivina had already rushed up with a thin blade in hand. Dang. With a crisp sound of iron weapons clashing, Lenin pulled out the steel sword from his waist and held Rinku's thin blade. However, he clearly felt that the girl's strength and speed were much stronger than during the sparring. It was obvious that this was if the opponent's true strength. Ivina's dark golden eyes flashed with coldness and murderous intent. And the thin blade turned into a cold light and cut through the air. Slashing towards Lin in again. You always look so indifferent. Tell me, why didn't you tell father about this? You clearly know that I have always wanted to kill you. With every word Ivina said, she wielded the thin blade faster and stared at her brother with a complicated expression. Chapter 35 Too Small Ivina Lin resisted Ivina's attack with a backhand, but still did not answer the other party's question, because he was already confused by the complicated relationship between the brother and sister. Lot did not mention this in his diary. The sound of swords clashing continuously sounded in the silent manner. Normally, it would have attracted the attention of the housekeeper and servants. But now there was no sign of anyone. This is also the reason why Lin didn't rush to use overload mode or use magic again. 
Is it weird? My brother and father are not in the mansion tonight. All the servants have been lured away by me. They will only know that the devil believer wanted by the holy seed broke into the manor tonight. Ivy now looked like a madman. And her sword blade struck Lin and soared like the wind continuously. As if she wanted to vent all her accumulated resentment and unwillingness. Lin Un's face looked a little strange. Because the devil believer wanted by the Vatican in the girl's mouth seemed to be him. Boom. Just as the two were fighting. A sudden explosion sounded from a distance. Through the windowsill on the third floor. There was a faint light of fire emerging from the west side of Harbor Town. How could it be so fast? Lin Un's expression suddenly changed. It was clearly not time to take action yet. Could it be that the boat gang people couldn't help but take action first? Where are you looking? My brother? Taking advantage of Lin Un's distraction. Ivina knocked the long sword out of his hand with a roundabout slash. And stuck it straight into the gap in the wall. Then the brown-haired girl raised her sword again and struck down from top to bottom. Die! Ivina murmured to herself, her dark golden eyes staring at Lin. But not a trace of fear could be seen on his face. Why? Why not be afraid of death? There was a look of hesitation and hesitation on the brown-haired girl's face. No matter how bad his attitude was over the years, the man in front of him would only look at him with a particularly pitiful look. But she never needed charity. She will take what she wants. All kinds of thoughts flashed through the girl's mind. And Lin In, who felt threatened on the other side, had already stretched out his arm. This moment seemed to be a replay of the first battle. But this time, no one said anything to stop him. With a sharp wind, the slender blade reached Lenin's head. However, Lenin's movements were faster. The outstretched right hand came first and grasped Ivina's knife-holding wrist at a strange angle. Then he twisted hard. And a slight sound of dislocated hand bones echoed in the silent corridor. Outside the window, the bright moonlight intertwined with the rising flames. Forming a devilish picture, Lin took advantage of the situation and raised his leg to kick Ivina in the abdomen. Bang! With a dull impact, the girl's body leaned back and hit the wall heavily. How can it be? Ivina struggled to stand up again. A trace of blood slowly spilled from the corner of her mouth. She didn't care about the pain coming from her right wrist and abdomen. She looked at Lin with an expression of disbelief. Having already used all his strength, he was knocked down so easily. Ivina couldn't accept this fact and rushed over again with the sword in her left hand, which was still intact. Sorry, my time is limited. Ivina. Lin sided to avoid Ivina's horizontal slash, grabbed the thin blade with his backhand, knocked the girl to the ground again with an elbow, and finally swung the blade towards the girl the white neck was stabbed. Ivina's pupil shrank, and she could only watch the silver sword getting closer and closer to her, her mind going blank. Am I going to die? The girl slowly closed her eyes thinking back on the fate that I had worked so hard, but in the end had to risk everything to please the son of a duke. I felt particularly ridiculous. Maybe if I could just be relieved, it would no longer be painful. Right? Ding. The soft sound of the sword tip touching the floor rang in her ears. Ivina opened her eyes blankly and saw Lin in taking out a cowhide rope from behind and binding her hands and feet. Aren't you going to kill me? Ivina stared blankly at the familiar yet unfamiliar brother in front of her and asked in confusion. There is no need to do this. You will never see me again after today. I think this should suit your needs. Lin explained casually, tugging on the rope originally prepared for Adrian, throwing Ivina into his room. He is not the real Lot, and he cannot handle such a complicated brother-sister relationship. But since Lot is willing to commit suicide to end the relationship, Lin naturally does not intend to interfere. He also understood where Ivina's resentment came from. She tried hard, but could not resist the destiny. She was destined to become a victim of the Pedral family's revival from the moment she was born. However, the other party obviously found the wrong target of resentment. What really caused the two of them pain was Baron Pedral's stubbornness and the ignorant feudal system of the Sika's empire. Since she was smart enough to transfer the housekeeper and servants in the mansion, she should stay here and reflect on it. After tonight, everything about the Pedral family has nothing to do with him. Lin turned around to leave, but Ivina's voice sounded again behind him. Why? You have such power. But you can't pass the night test. And you can't even compete with me. Are you pitying me? Ivina asked angrily, maintaining her remaining self-esteem. Too small. Ivina. Lin turned his head and looked at the lost girl lying on the ground in a panic and said with emotion, Your swordsmanship talent is very good. Much better than anyone I have ever seen. But your vision is only limited to the small seaport town. A baron ship that cannot even inherit the territory. 
Beyond the harbor town is the Nordland Territory. And outside the Nordland Territory is the Sika's Empire. And there is a wider world outside the Empire. Lenin whispered to himself softly. There is magic and magic in this world. And there are countless secrets waiting for someone to explore. Forget it. You may not understand. Lin shook his head without waiting for Ivina's reply. For most residents of this world, a town, a village, and a family are everything. And this matter has nothing to do with them. Can't understand? Ivina stared at Lin and's leaving back with a complicated expression until the door was tightly closed. The girl was silent for a while, then suddenly lowered her head, biting the cowhide rope that bound her hands, and tore at it with all her strength. But this kind of rope made of special materials is very tough and the teeth alone are of no help at all. During the struggle, the girl's legs hit the table leg next to her. The black book placed on the table was knocked to the ground and rolled all the way to Ivina's side. The brown-haired girl paused on the spot. The words on the page were very scrawled, but Ivina recognized at a glance that it was her brother Lot's handwriting. Maybe everything will be fine without me. Chapter 36 Battle of Harbor Town At midnight, in Harbor Town, the people who had been sleeping peacefully were awakened by the fierce light of fire and the noisy crows. Fire! It's on fire! Help! Someone help me! After more than ten years of peace, the residents of Harbor Town, who were suddenly attacked, immediately fell into chaos. The streets were in chaos, and screams and shouts resounded in every corner of the town. At this moment, Lin In was standing on the roof of a private house, looking at the direction of the fire like an eagle's eyes. This is exactly one ring of magic, Tick's farsightedness. Allows a wizard to have the precision of a griffin for a short period of time. During the few days, he stayed in Harbor Town. In addition to collecting intelligence and making black powder, Lin also did not stop learning new magic. He had already torn through the basic magic. Are they Johnny and White Dove? Lin murmured to himself as he stared at the flocks of gray crows in the distance and the figures leaping in the firelight. Did they escape first? Etc. Lin quickly noticed something was wrong. The two witches did not look like they had been tortured. Perhaps. It's not like they escaped. But he was preparing to enter the harbor town prison to save people. Lin In immediately thought of this possibility and frowned involuntarily. Before taking action tonight, he had thought about dozens of possible emergencies and even predicted that the Holy See would set up traps in harbor town tonight waiting for him to fall into a trap. But what I didn't expect was that Antioch would dare to publicize it in such a big way without arresting anyone. The archbishop was undoubtedly making a huge bet, betting that the wizard apprentices would not be able to join each other. Otherwise tomorrow's public ceremony would become a complete joke. You must know that there is a true god in this world. If the other party dares to find a few prisoners to pretend to be witches in a witch hunting ceremony held in public like this, it is no different from blasphemy. Obviously the archbishop made the right bet. Although he failed to step into the trap, Johnny and by good took advantage of it for him. But since neither of the two witches were caught, who was the person who leaked the ship gang information? Ansik personally visited High Gang Town. And the implementation of the port closure and various measures against the boat gang could not be faked. This was one of the reasons why he believed that the two of them might be arrested. As they pondered, the crows above Harbor Town became weaker and weaker, which meant that Johnny and White Dove could no longer hold on. Lin was not in a hurry to act, because there were only a few hundred guards surrounding the two witches. And Archbishop Anziuk and the 3,000 elite guards did not appear. This is also a bait. And he is the big fish Ansik wants to catch. 071. With the current form, if we face a head-on confrontation, what chance do we have of winning? Lin En asked silently in his heart. His biggest trump card is the large amount of black powder placed on the dock. As long as he uses the information gap and the convenience brought by magic shaping to attract Ansiak and others, he can directly blow them up into the sky. But now it seems that this goal I'm afraid it will be difficult to achieve. The estimated winning rate is lower than the safety threshold. According to what the agreement target said before, aliens should not be included in the protection targets. According to the Federal Citizen Life Safety Act, you should put your own safety as the first priority. Lin In was silent for a while and then asked again. Then can you analyze why Johnny and by good risk their lives to enter Harbor Town? 97% probability. They're here to save you. Sir. So you know what? 071? Lin looked at the fire in the distance and said to himself in his mind, Sometimes aliens are people too. At the same time, in the church of Harbor Town, Archbishop Anziuk was gazing at the chaos in Harbor Town. The faint screams and wails that came from the ears made the priests present change their expressions. But Anziuk seemed not to hear it. 
turned to look at Adrian aside, and asked, How's it going? Have you yielded any useful clues during the interrogation in the past few days? Reporting to the bishop, Hawk's brain has been programmed with some kind of powerful psychic magic. I have tried several methods, but I have not been able to break through this restriction. Adrian explained with shame. A few days ago, when the archbishop personally led the elite guards to hunt down those devil believers, he led a manpower assault on the town of Yuar. Based on the intelligence he had previously received from Will, the people who went to the drunkard tavern would not be able to escape before they had time to escape. Old Hawk was arrested. However, what disappointed Adrian was that the other party's brain was protected by some kind of psychic magic. When he released the magic to detect information, he almost made the other party mentally retarded. The only gain was that I found some information about Harbor Town in a secret room in the Drunk Tavern. It doesn't matter. We will have a new source of information soon, Ansiak said calmly, without any intention of blaming Adrian. Master Bishop, do we need to continue to increase our manpower? If this continues, these two wizard apprentices may escape our control. Adrian looked at the commotion in the west of Harbor Town and asked cautiously, because someone controlled the Grey Crows to set fire to the granary in Harbor Town. Most of the station guards were dispatched to put out the fire. Only two priests and three hundred guards were responsible for the pursuit. If this continues, more and more civilians may be affected. Adrian swallowed the second half of the sentence silently. He had always disagreed with the bishop's move to set up the battlefield in the harbor town, which would only put the defenseless townspeople in danger. Now is not the time to take action. Adrian! Ansik's haggard face was a bit stern. He stared at the priest in front of him and spoke again. Momentary kindness will only cause more terrible disasters. The fire of H, L burning outside the town of UR has not been extinguished to this day. If the wizard named Carl cannot be caught this time, such a terrible scene may be repeated in every corner of Nordland. The merciful Lord will forgive you and my faults. And Juck looked back at the firelight over Harbor Town and sang in an extremely hoarse tone. May their souls return to the Holy Land and receive eternal protection. And may their true spirits not fall into the abyss of the devil. The priests in the church also showed pity on their faces, and soon sang melodious hymns together, wishing that the townspeople who died in this conflict and endured endless suffering during their lives would be happy in the holy land of the Lord. Get New Life Chapter 37 Offensive and Defensive Reversal The melodious hymns resounded above the church, intertwined with the chaotic scene in the harbor town, which looked particularly strange. Being in it, Adrian seemed to be cleansed in the hymn and remembered the teachings in the Bible. Life and death are actually not important. Everywhere is the Lord's pasture. These sacrificed townspeople just returned to the Lord's embrace and advance. After the hymn ended, Ansiak looked around at everyone and said softly, The great eternal God, Ella, will be with you and me. Perhaps the archbishop's words had an effect. Or perhaps, Ella's, brilliance had already shown on this border town. Outside the church, the chaotic scene was quickly calming down. Quite unexpectedly, Ansiak walked to the window and stared down at the northwest side of the entire harbor town. The fire that had been burning above the granary had been extinguished, and the townspeople were being led away from the fighting area in an orderly manner. He could not directly see the figures of the two wizard apprentices, but based on the trajectory of the gray crows in the sky, Ansik quickly determined that the two were in trouble and were being driven away from the densely populated area. The route seems to end at the pier in harbor town? Who is taking command on the front line now? Ansik asked in surprise. It should be Danny and Pastor Albert, Adrian replied. The archbishop thought about the daily performance of the two priests. He did not remember that the other party had such outstanding commanding skills. Could it be that a certain guard captain in Harbor Town made the judgment? Thinking of this, Ansia couldn't help but have a love for talents. So he asked the guard guarding the door to inquire. Three or two minutes later, a guard opened the door and walked in. He glanced at Adrian vaguely and responded with a strange expression. Reporting to your Lord Bishop. According to the militiamen responsible for the evacuation, it is now. Reverend Adrian is giving the order now. Hearing this, everyone present looked at Adrian, who was also confused. He had always stayed in the church and never went out. Ansiak's face immediately turned ugly. During the more than ten years he had been the Bishop of Nordland, he had not encountered wizards who were proficient in shaping magic, and he knew very well how much trouble these people could cause. Under the questioning gaze of everyone, Adrian seemed a little flustered and took a step back, but he quickly reacted and stretched out his hand to cast a divine spell, holy word, shield, witnessing with their own eyes the holy shield exuding the radiance of divine magic condensing in the void. The priests present immediately dispelled their doubts, 
but then a chill shot up from the soles of his feet to his brain. Since Adrian is really here, who is in charge of commanding on the front line now? The commander whom all the priests longed for was currently sitting in a temporary stronghold in the north of Harbor Town, sipping tea and listening to the reports of his men. Master Adrian, according to your instructions, the temporarily formed militia group is already evacuating the townspeople. It will not take long to clear an open area. The fire in the granary has also been controlled. The isolation you taught the law is very effective. Pastor Danny spoke very quickly about the current situation in Harbor Town and looked at Lynn with an expression of admiration. Those damn devil believers set fires everywhere, wandered through the dense alleys, and burned down the granary, making them miserable. You must know that Bishop Anjuk only sent them a garrison of 800 people. These people were not only responsible for rounding up the two witches, but also responsible for evacuating the townspeople and putting out the fire. There was a serious shortage of manpower. After several attempts to mobilize elite guards were rejected by Enziuk, Danny could only continue to allocate the manpower originally used to put out fires and rescue townspeople to hunt down the devil's believers to prevent them from escaping. However, such a chaotic situation changed immediately after the arrival of Lord Adian. First, he commanded them to use divine magic to appease a group of fleeing townspeople and then forcibly extracted strong men from them. Then he dispersed a small group of regular soldiers and formed a temporary militia guard as the commander. In an instant, the available manpower was expanded several times. If these poorly trained militiamen were used to fight, they would probably collapse at the drop of a hat. But they were still barely competent at firefighting and rescue work. The isolation method and sand fire extinguishing method mentioned by the other party are also very effective. Thinking of this, Pastor Danny felt a little ashamed. Before, he complained that Bishop Antioch had given him too few manpower, which was not enough to deal with the complex situation. Now I don't think so. Because Adian, who holds the same resources, easily calmed down the chaos. I can only say that he is worthy of being Adian, the bishop's right-hand man, Lin, who was sitting on the chair, listened to the pastor's words with a smile and spoke with appreciation. You did a good job, Pastor Danny. After tonight, I will commend your achievements to Lord Antioch. Thank you, Lord Adrian. I just did some small things that I could do. This is all your credit. Pastor Danny responded very excitedly. Lin waved his hand, ignored the topic, and turned to ask, Okay, let's not talk about this for now. Have you conveyed all the instructions I gave you before? Danny nodded. According to Master Adrian's plan, what they have to do now is to force the two witches to the open area of the harbor dock. The Holy See has already ambushed thousands of crossbowmen there. One round of volley can turn the opponent into a hedgehog. Doing so can minimize casualties. In view of Adian's previous excellent command, Danny did not have the slightest doubt about this plan. So, Danny, your mission has been completed perfectly. Lin stood up, patted Danny's shoulder with his right hand, and said with emotion, Now it's time to send you to see Pastor Albert. Albert? What's up with him? Danny paused. Before he could understand, a dazzling silver light flashed across his neck, and bright red blood spurted out from the wound. The young priest covered his open neck, his face full of dissatisfaction, with a look of disbelief. He fell heavily to the ground. Lennon looked at the corpse in front of him, shook his head helplessly, picked up the rag on the table, and wiped the mottled blood on the dagger. At this point, he had eliminated all the two minions sent by Anjuk to fish. But there was not much joy on Lin's face. After all, his opponent is not a fool. If he uses Adrian's identity to give orders, Ansik will soon notice that something is wrong and judge that he has the ability to pretend to be someone else. Fortunately, this is exactly what Lin wants to achieve. Because ordinary priests can't break this kind of magic at all. Then Ansiak. I have no choice but to end it in person. Although he made a 180 degree detour. Lin finally drew out the archbishop with the help of the enemy's power. And moved the next battlefield back to the dock of Harbor Town. Chapter 38 I'm afraid it's me who has to say sorry to you this time. Multi-ice blade. In a street in the northern part of Harbor Town. Johnny opened his hand and dense diamond-shaped ice blades soon appeared in the void, shooting towards the guards blocking the road like locusts. Following a burst of wailing, several guards who were unable to dodge died, but more soldiers holding shields surrounded them behind them. Johnny gritted his silver teeth, drew his sword and swung away a guard's halberd, taking advantage of the situation. He rushed forward and cut off the opponent's neck with a sharp blade in his hand. Blood spurted out, but at the same moment, another guard was already waving his sword. The long knife struck. The sharp sword light appeared in front of her eyes. 
but the continuous fighting for more than half an hour had already exhausted the girl's physical energy and magic power. And she no longer had the ability to turn around and resist the incoming long sword. Fortunately, at this moment, a ferocious camel beast rushed out and instantly knocked the guard to the ground. Then the white pigeon sitting on the camel beast immediately blew the wooden flute in his hand. The flock of gray crows hovering over Harbor Town immediately seemed to be guided and pounced on the shield soldiers like crazy. The shark claws and beak scratched and bit at the unprotected face and neck. But after all, they were just palm-sized birds. No matter how hard they tried, it was difficult to cause fatal injuries. Taking advantage of this gap, the two of them had turned to the other direction. Bai Ji's face became paler and paler. His hands were weakly supporting the body of a camel beast, relying on the other person to lead him forward. Johnny glanced at her very worriedly and sighed silently. I'm afraid it's me who has to apologize to you this time. Baiku, I didn't expect that not only did we fail to rescue Carl, we also fell into the trap of the Holy Sea. Johnny condensed a ball of fire to temporarily repel the pursuing guards, but he already regretted it in his heart. It's not that she regretted her actions to save Lin In. She just regretted that she actually involved Baiku in it. A few days ago, after learning that the Holy See had arrested a devil believer and planned to execute him after Sunday, Johnny had the idea of breaking the prison. However, her power alone is too weak to win. And by G's psychic magic is very useful in this situation. She can use her ability to control living creatures to detect intelligence, create chaos, or involve others. Enemy. Johnny also formulated the entire rescue plan based on this. First, he asked the white pigeon to send the gray crow to carry fire to light important places such as the granary to attract the attention of the guards and create chaos, and then break into the prison to rescue the people. However, after he actually started taking action, Johnny realized how wrong he was. The guards in Harbor Town were already on standby and responded very quickly. They ran into a trap set by the Holy See. No, it's me. I came here on my own. Although the white pigeon lying on the camel beast was trembling with fear. He still gritted his teeth and said. She was extremely afraid of death. But she also knew that it was Lan In who took the initiative to sacrifice his own queen. So that they could escape from the castle and survive. So after learning that Johnny planned to take the risk to rescue Lin. Bai Gu resolutely followed him. The two young witches looked at each other. And saw the determination in each other's eyes. Johnny's wrist holding the sword tightened a little more and encouraged. Their offensive has begun to weaken. And we may still have a chance to escape. Bai Gu nodded crystal tears welling up in his eyes. But he immediately put the wooden flute to his mouth and played it again. The gray crows, which were originally so dark that they could cover the sky, have been reduced to a hundred or so after several rounds of offenses. They can only barely undertake the task of spying on intelligence and can no longer even contain the opponent. Almost all the pressure of frontal combat fell on Johnny. As if her prayers had worked, the number of guards rounding up the two gradually decreased and the intensity also decreased significantly. No one tried to rush up and fight them. However, the expression on Johnny's face became more and more serious. Judging from the intelligence detected by Baigu, the surrounding soldiers had surrounded them, leaving only one way out. Once they deviate from this path, they will be greeted by a continuous shield wall and sword array, which even the most explosive fireball technique will be difficult to break through. Is the enemy planning to play a trick on them? Or is he planning to encircle them? Johnny didn't know it. But she knew that if she stopped, she would die. If she continued running, there might be a way to survive. No matter how weak the hope was. At least, at least the white pigeon must be given away. Just as the girl was thinking about it, the white pigeon riding on the camel beast suddenly began to tremble violently and shouted in horror. It's Ansik, the Archbishop of Nordland. He's here in person. Right on our right. Johnny paused for a moment, turned around, and saw a dazzling white light rushing towards him. That is the second ring magic, holy light impact. Ice curtain! Johnny only had time to raise his right hand to create a wall of ice crystals in front of him. And the terrifying white light was already in front of him. The hastily released ring of protective magic was particularly fragile, under the power of divine magic. It only took a second or two for it to explode. The huge impact instantly hit Johnny, and the white pigeon sitting on the camel beast. Fly out. Johnny's heart ached after she hit the ground hard. And a trace of blood flowed down the corner of her mouth. However, she ignored the pain in her body and climbed up from the ground in embarrassment. She stood in front of Baigu and stared at her intently, looking in the direction of the white light. A steady sound of footsteps came from far away, and among the scattered ice crystals and smoke, an old figure wearing a gilt robe appeared in front of the two of them. 
guarded by a group of priests. Just standing there brought an indescribable sense of oppression. Joni's pupils shrank. Although the appearance of the man in front of her had changed greatly from before, and his age was completely different, she could still recognize him instantly from his identity, clothing, and the clues from the white dove. The person in front of him is the Archbishop. Ansik, the scene of being chased in your town is still vivid in my mind. The opponent's power and terror need no description. It is simply not something that these wizard apprentices can resist. What made Joni even more desperate was that several figures also appeared on their left. The leading man was young and had a solemn face. Judging from his clothing, he should be a priest from the Holy See. The forces from both sides soon formed a ring and surrounded the two people. At this moment, Johnny and the white pigeon were like birds trapped in a cage, completely cut off from the possibility of escape. Chapter 39 Aren't I right by your side? Considering that the two witches were going to be used as bait to lure out powerful enemies, the priests did not take action immediately. Instead, they looked at the priest Danny opposite and asked impatiently, Danny, where is Pastor Adrian now? What do you mean? Isn't Lord Adrian by your side? The leader stepped forward carelessly and asked in confusion. Let me explain it. According to the bishop's speculation, the devil's follower just pretended to be me and was responsible for directing your every move, Adrian explained. And when he was about to continue speaking, a withered arm blocked him. Master Bishop? Adrian was stunned for a moment and asked in confusion. Ansik did not reply or hesitate and directly raised the scepter in his hand. Three ring magic, light of the Holy Spirit. A dazzling light spot lit up from the top of the scepter and then turned into a vibrating light wave that spread forward in a semicircle, covering Johnny, White Dove, Pastor Danny, and even the guards at the rear. The mottled road cracked layer by layer under the erosion of powerful energy waves, and both witches invariably felt that the god of death was rapidly approaching. A dozen kinds of magic flashed through Joni's mind one by one, but she couldn't think of any kind of magic that could resist this terrifying three-ring magic. It seems that waiting for death has become their only choice. Dimly, Johnny saw that the young priest on his left also raised his hand. Then a huge demonic hand made of endless flames rushed out from the ground. The palm formed a semicircle, protecting them like a shield wall. This is exactly the improved magic, white phosphorus hand of the Balrog. Powerful magic and magic collided together, and with a violent explosion, the mottled road exploded directly, and the scorching air waves overturned the surrounding vegetation. Countless dust and gravel flew up, and the burning. H. L. Fire! formed a solid wall of fire, forcibly separating the two witches from Ansiak and others. Stop standing there and let's go! Before Johnny could react to this sudden turn of events, the young priest had already cut the throats of several guards beside him, grabbed their arms, exploded the wall of the alley, and grabbed the two of them along the way. Gallop. What is going on? Who are you? Johnny was subconsciously led by Lynn and ran away. But his mind was full of doubts. Why did a priest from the Holy See know witchcraft? And why did he want to save them? Suddenly, Johnny thought of the words of the previous priests. Could it be shaping magic? Why? It's only been a few days, and you don't recognize me anymore? Lennon's face quickly changed to what it was before. And he said jokingly, Carl? By G's face immediately showed a look of surprise and shock. Looking a little cute. But when did you learn shaping magic? Then before Lynn could reply, Johnny on the side asked eagerly, No. Haven't you been caught by the Holy See? It just so happens that before tonight, I thought you were being tortured by the Holy See. Lin and shrugged helplessly. They all seemed to have underestimated the power of their companions. So, we have all been deceived. Johnny also reacted at this time. The power of the Balrog's hand that Lin just used can only be described as terrifying. The opponent is indeed capable of chasing Antioch all by himself. Survive. Where have you been hiding these days? Didn't you go find Lauder and the boat gang? Lin asked with a hint of confusion. After entering the harbor town, he tried his best to find the old fox. In addition to getting a boat to cross the sea, the most important thing was to get information about the two witches. According to his knowledge, if the two of them had not been captured by the Holy See, they would have sought help from each other. Johnny shook his head helplessly. Harbor town was heavily guarded, with priests from the Holy See guarding the gates. They had no way of sneaking in. So they spent these days catching gray crows in the mountains and forests relying on these unobtrusive birds, class to obtain information. The three of them were explaining. Behind them, dozens of sharp light arrows were already galloping towards them. Obviously, in just a few seconds, Ansiak found a way to break through the fire wall. Lin and glanced back. 
with the blessing of overload mode. The flight trajectory of each light arrow was turned into data and presented in his mind. Magic Barrage. While thinking, a total of 36 missiles composed of pure magic power were suspended in the air. And then they fired very accurately at fixed points, detonating a large number of light arrows one by one in midair. Johnny and Baiku, who were about to cast a spell to defend themselves, stopped and looked at Lin, feeling an inexplicable sense of security in their hearts. Where are we going now? Johnny asked very quickly. There is a ship of ours on the pier of Harbor Town. If you get there, you will have a chance to escape. Lin and explained very concisely, and looked back casually again. Antioch and others were already chasing after him. In appearance, the archbishop looked almost like an old man about to be buried, with gray hair and sunken eyes, but his movements were faster than those of several priests around him. When he was disguised as Adrian, Lenin had learned a piece of information. The senior clergy of the Holy See had received blessings from the gods, and their physical fitness was far beyond that of ordinary people. It was never a good idea to fight head-on. He was originally going to appear as Pastor Danny to see if he could deceive him again and conduct a sneak attack from behind. But unexpectedly, the archbishop recognized him at a glance. Is it because you don't have the brilliance of God in you? Lenin thought to herself. The sound of waves hitting the rocks was heard one after another, and the pier of the harbor was already in sight. At this moment, Baigu suddenly held his wrist tightly. His lips trembled violently, and he screamed with a hint of crying. I saw a lot of soldiers in armor. Too many. At least. Thousands of them at least. Through the perspective of the gray crows, White Pigeon's heart has been filled with fear. Countless guards wearing armor and holding giant shields are sweeping toward them like a black ocean current. A chill ran down Johnny's back. She didn't expect that in addition to the Archbishop Ansick. Harbor Town actually hit an elite guard of thousands of people. However, at such a critical moment, Lin and laughed. Very good. After waiting for so long, they are finally willing to move. Chapter 40 Harbor Town Everything is turned upside down. Johnny and Baigu looked at Lin and who suddenly became happy and were confused. They really didn't understand why the other party could still laugh. Let's go. We have to hurry up. Lin didn't mean to explain. He couldn't guarantee whether the priests would have some kind of magic to hear what they were saying at this moment. In the entire harbor town, Lin In is most afraid of Ansuk and the 3,000 hidden elite guards. Now that these two troubles are together, it is naturally the best. Praise to Ella Apocalyptic Storm. Behind him, the archbishop's horse chanting sounded again, and the invisible storm carried a large amount of gravel and dust, sweeping towards several people. A group of priests from the Holy See also cast spells one after another, blocking the retreat of several people with several one-ring magic spells. Gianni! White Dove! Lin winked at the two witches, then used all his strength, even giving up correcting his aim, and in an instant created dozens of magic missiles that flew towards him on the watchtower that guides ships. At the same moment, Johnny and Baigu, who knew each other, squeezed out the little magic power left in their bodies and used fossils to mud, and the solid base of the sentry tower turned into sand under the influence of magic, accompanied by dozens of violent collisions. The watchtower that had been erected at the pier for nearly a century and provided direction for countless ships collapsed. The falling boulders and wooden frames not only blocked the invisible storm, but also pinned down the two priests who had no time to dodge. Taking this opportunity, Lin In and others had opened a distance of nearly 100 meters. The anger in Antioch's heart had accumulated to the extreme. After several holy light impacts, swept away the ruins blocking the road. He was about to take action again. At this time, the ground in Harbor Town suddenly shook slightly. Not only Antioch, but Lin In and others also felt the same way. But it was not magic and magic that caused all this. Dressed in black armor, lined up neatly, and holding huge shields, the elite Nordland guards soon appeared in everyone's sight. The crossbows on their waists and the chilling air filling the air made people feel frightened. Compared to the happy-looking priests of the Holy See, the bodies of the two witches couldn't help but tremble. How can we fight with such a quantity? You must know that such elite guards wearing full armor are rare in the entire empire. It can be said that the Duke of Nordland even put money on his own money to hunt down wizards like them. Ahead, thousands of soldiers had raised their crossbows, and the dense rain of arrows flew out like a storm with a sharp sound of breaking through the air, leaving almost no gaps. Lin En had already picked up the white pigeon the moment the guard raised his hand, rolled and hid behind a broken high wall. The sharp rain of arrows hit the earthen wall, exploding and exploding a large amount of earth debris. What should we do now? Johnny asked eagerly. 
Lin and didn't reply. He held his palm empty, and a huge fireball condensed in his palm, and then he threw it into the air regardless. From a perspective hundreds of meters away, it looked like a ball of fireworks rising over the harbor town. Ansiak almost instantly thought of the terrifying witchcraft that Lin and had used to annihilate dozens of elite guards, and he shouted without hesitation. Everyone, defend yourself. The dense rain of arrows stopped immediately, and the 3,000 soldiers uniformly raised their giant shields to the sky. The priests present did not dare to neglect, and a large number of protective magics were blessed around them, under everyone's attention. The fireball that rose to the sky suddenly exploded, bursting out countless brilliant sparks, and then gradually dissipated in the night sky. The expectant expressions of the two witches immediately stopped. Only Lin looked at the sky and said calmly, No problem. Let the fireball fly for a while. How to fly? Isn't this magic over? Johnny raised his head blankly, and then noticed that there seemed to be little bits of light flying over from the other side of the sea. When the dim light came closer, the witch was shocked to realize that it was not light at all. It's hundreds of flaming arrows. Is it support? Adrian and others also noticed this. Almost instantly, they analyzed that the fireball technique just now was not aimed at them, but only existed as a signal source. However, this reinforcement is a bit too weak, probably because the distance was too far and the vision was unclear at night. The flaming arrows in the air were simply inaccurate. Even if they stood there without defending, they would not be hit. That's it? That's it? Several pastors felt extremely disappointed. They felt that it was a bit ridiculous to be so worried and scared. They were actually frightened by a few believers of the devil. Only Ansiak noticed something was wrong. The dark and turbid pupils gradually turned into bright dark gold. Unknown things are often the most terrifying. But it was too late to stop it now. The fire arrow wrapped in oilcloth was so helpless. Shooting regularly to every corner of the harbor pier. An indescribable sense of crisis gradually enveloped everyone's brain without direction or source, in the uneasy, confused, and frightened expressions of everyone. The endless fire and light flooded the entire harbor dock, as if the end of the world was coming, and the entire city shook violently. It was a roar that was a thousand times louder than thunder. The flames and shock waves rolled up instantly flattened the surrounding low-rise houses. The air was boiling violently, and a large amount of water vapor rose up together with a thick smoke. A huge dust cloud. Houses collapsed, boulders splashed, and the tide rolled back under the terrifying impact, bringing even bigger waves to the shore. A few yellow-white sparks drifted down from the sea of clouds, and it seemed like there was a rain of fire in the dock. The entire sea area was illuminated translucently. This was the white phosphorus mixed with the black gunpowder. All this happened in the blink of an eye. Almost in the blink of an eye, the entire harbor terminal was turned upside down and turned into a devastated ruin. The only place that was relatively good was at the feet of Johnny and others. When setting up the trap, every place where the explosives were placed was carefully designed. But even so, the powerful impact still blew the earthen bunker into pieces, and Lin had to use several protective magics in succession to block the aftermath. The two witches behind the wall fell dazed for a moment, and then fell into persistent tinnitus. By the time the explosion ended, thousands of elite black armored guards and those pursuing Vatican priests had disappeared without a trace. All that was left in front of them were wreckage on the ground and a blazing sea of fire. What's this? Is this H.L.? The two witches froze on the spot, unable to react for a long time. Chapter 41 Praise Judgment in Heaven Several minutes later, when the brief tinnitus gradually recovered, the two witches came back to their senses at the sound of a familiar shout. Hold your breath! Use your magic to filter the oxygen! Johnny suddenly came back to his senses and turned around to look over. Lin was standing in front of the burning sea of fire, staring ahead, and the rolling heat waves made his robes rustle. The two witches didn't know what oxygen was, but they could still hold their breath. But what kind of magic is this? Johnny was so surprised that he couldn't describe it. The white pigeon on the side was huddled beside the collapsed earth wall. He was so frightened by the stumps and flesh and blood on the ground that he couldn't even stand up. Lennon didn't pay much attention to the status of the two witches, and was looking solemnly at the ruins of the harbor dock. Logically speaking, no one should be able to survive such an explosion. However, the reality is exactly the opposite. A figure stands in the middle of the burning sea of fire. It may not be appropriate to say that it is a human figure. Because at this time, Ansiak no longer looked like a human being. His original gorgeous gilt robes were torn to pieces. And his whole body was ignited by thousands of degrees of white phosphorus fire. No matter from which point of view, Ansiak should be dead. In fact, this is the case. 
He should have died in the battle outside the town of Yuar a few days ago. However, his humble prayer inspired the eternal greatness. The presence brought a trace of mercy. A ray of divine power forcibly maintained his vitality. The moment he sensed the danger, Ansik took the initiative to activate this ray of divine power and used the four-ring divine technique, Sacred Barrier. Abruptly withstood the extremely terrifying explosion. However, the power of the four-ring magic was limited after all, and it could not block out the subsequent aftermath. Thousands of degrees of high temperature continued to bake his flesh and five internal organs, and his life had entered the final countdown. At this moment, Ansia could no longer feel the pain in his mind. Only the purest faith remained. Death and pain are just the trials and tribulations we need to go through to reach the kingdom of heaven. Ansiak is not afraid of death. But if he can send the wizard in front of him to H.L., then the Lord will definitely give him more awards in heaven. Praise heavenly judgment! Ansiak's vocal cords had long been destroyed. But as his mouth trembled, a gleam of light flashed across his burning fingertips. It was the purest light of death. And the light expanded rapidly. The flames gave way. The rubble disintegrated and everything in the way quickly dissipated under such power. Ice curtain. Lenin stretched out his hand, and strong ice crystal walls were erected one after another. However, it was of no avail. He was defeated almost instantly. However, Lenin still used this less than a second of obstruction to sidestep and avoid this death. Light. Behind him, the pure light hit the turbulent sea and exploded into a ball of waves more than ten meters high. Ansik refused to give up and cast the spell again. This time it was a wider range and an unavoidable apocalypse storm. At this moment, Baigus spoke. Sharp sound waves swept across the entire place instantly. Ansiak's movements paused for a moment. And the storm that had just condensed dissipated. But soon the archbishop turned his head. His pupils flashed with dark golden fluorescence. And without any movement, the white pigeon seemed to be grabbed by the throat. And the sharp sound waves suddenly stopped. The terrifying backlash instantly penetrated the witch's mental defense and the girl's body immediately collapsed, and she fell to the ground vomiting blood. White dove! Johnny quickly stepped forward to help the little witch up and checked her condition. Lennon's face also became a bit more angry. Dozens of magic missiles appeared in the air, and then quickly ignited, turning into countless miniature white phosphorus fireballs, speeding towards Ansiak. Three-ring magic, sacred barrier. Facing the swarms of fireballs, Ansiak did not dare to take a hard hit and immediately switched from offense to defense. Even though there was a trace of divine power in his body, his current state did not allow him to continuously use higher-level divine spells. Kim respond with two holy barriers. The invisible barrier collided with the exploding fireball, and soon couldn't hold on and shattered. But the second, sacred barrier, behind it remained strong, blocking all the remaining white phosphorus fireballs. At this moment, Lin stretched his right hand forward and shook it hard. The flame scattered around Ansiak, and attached to the invisible barrier seemed to be guided by some kind of guidance. They quickly gathered together, and condensed into a devil's hand made of flames, holding Ansiak horizontally. Palm. Click. The sudden change was beyond the archbishop's expectation. The originally battered, holy barrier, was crushed to pieces by the giant flame hands in an instant. As a last resort, Ansiak directly burst out with the brilliance of divine magic in his body, and the terrifying of white phosphorus fire. Lin In and Ansiak coincidentally bet on the remaining strength in their bodies. And this blow will determine the outcome. The dazzling divine light and the raging fire were intertwined, canceling each other out. At the same moment, Johnny, who was holding the white dove, shouted angrily, Magic missile! Several magic balls appeared around the girl, spinning and shooting towards the archbishop. If it were normal times, Ansiak would not pay attention to such a weak magic. However, the magic missile flying towards him at this moment became the last straw that broke the camel's back. The originally stalemate balance was immediately broken. The huge flaming palm slowly penetrated the dazzling brilliance of divine magic, pinching the archbishop who looked unwilling to burst. It was not until the moment of death that Ansiak suddenly realized that the two witches he had always ignored were not as useless as he thought. Seeing Ansiak's body being crushed to pieces by the hands of the fire demon, Lin couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, and then looked around very vigilantly extremely worried that her act of killing Ansiak would arouse the wrath of the gods. Fortunately, his worries did not come true, and the terrifying pressure in the air gradually disappeared. It is finally over. Lennon's body swayed, and he almost fell to the ground. After a whole night of continuous fighting, his magic power and physical strength had been exhausted, and his spirit was extremely exhausted. 
Overload mode ends. Energy remaining is 2.1%. The prompt from Jino rang loudly in his mind. Lin In supported his body, looked at Bai Gu, who was lying unconscious in Joni's arms, and asked, How is the white pigeon doing? I don't know. Her condition is very bad, and she needs immediate treatment. Johnny said very worriedly. Lenin glanced at the surging sea level. Since Lauder could receive the signal he gave and act according to the plan. The time should have come by now. But why can't I even see the shadow of the ship now? Chapter 42 Return Return to me immediately. A few minutes ago, on the Sea of Mist, a strong man held a long knife in his hand tightly and slashed at Lauder fiercely. However, the moment the blade fell, it suddenly stopped and the fierce expression on his face gradually became extremely tangled. He asked cautiously, Mr. Lauder, do you really want to chop it down? Stop talking nonsense. Chop! Lame Lauder said through gritted teeth, stretching his right hand straight, revealing the very obvious flame mark on the back of his hand. At the same time as he spoke, Lauder's heart also twitched fiercely, but this was also an extremely helpless choice. From the beginning, he didn't have much confidence in a certain wizard's bold and outrageous rescue operation. So after discovering that there was a sudden chaos in Harbor Town, and all the plans he had made before had ended before they even started, Lauder immediately made the decision to stay in Harbor Town. All the wizards in this town will soon be dead. Because of this, Lauder made a prompt decision and took advantage of the chaotic situation in Harbor Town to organize his men to run away. Thanks to the fact that the Holy See put most of its energy into dealing with Lin An and others. They took control of the ship without much effort, then packed up the easily portable finances and sailed away. Harbor Town. The only thing that worries Lauder now is the flame mark he carries on his hand. If the wizard finds out that he has run away when facing danger, he may drag himself into H, L before dying. He didn't know much about magic, so he could think of a way to deal with it, which was to cut off the hand. The strong man with ferocious muscles was holding the knife tangledly and didn't dare to make a move. Lauder's mood kept fluctuating, and finally he snatched the long knife away in anger. He might as well have done it himself after grinding and grinding. Boss! Signal! It's a signal! At the bow of the ship, a sailor suddenly shouted. Lauder subconsciously looked up and saw a ball of fire rising from the pier of the port and exploding in the night sky. Lauder was quite surprised. He thought that the cunning and ruthless wizard was probably dead. Unexpectedly, he actually fought back to the harbor dock. Thinking of this, he couldn't help but look at the first mate holding the alchemy goggles. I saw a lot of black armored guards. They were all dispatched. And Archbishop Anziuk was also there. Those wizards seemed to be surrounded. The deputy swallowed involuntarily and said with difficulty. Lauder suddenly understood that he was being chased all the way here. After thinking about it, he said straightforwardly, Launch a rocket as planned. And then we will sail across the sea immediately. Since the other party has successfully led Anziuk and others to the agreed place he will naturally not be so ruthless. It doesn't take much to set off a round of fire from a distance. But it is better to go to the shore to meet them. Lauder didn't think that the other party could do anything in such a predicament. You can't be promoted to a great wizard on the spot. And then wipe out all these thousands of elite guards with a few magic spells. Right? This is no longer outrageous to describe. More than 300 sailors and guards immediately took out the oilcloth they had prepared and wrapped it around the arrows. They lit it with torches, set their bows and arrows, and shot the arrows far away using the projectile method. They didn't care about accuracy at all. Anyway, the wizard my lord's order is that it is enough to shoot into the harbor pier. Lauder glanced at it and didn't look at it again, holding the long knife in his hand and gesticulating back and forth. To cut or not to cut? How much should be cut? This is a question worth pondering. Just when Lauder made up his mind and was about to take action, the entire ship suddenly shook violently and he heard a violent roar in his ears, followed by a huge impact that knocked him to the ground. The body rolled all the way to the bottom of the mast, and his head hit the crossbar hard. Lauder's head was buzzing, and his clothes were soaked by the rolling waves. After a while, he covered his waist and abdomen that had been hurt by the fall and reluctantly sat down. He raised his head and asked the first mate next to him, What's going on? Are we? Did you encounter a storm? However, under his questioning, the first mate did not reply. He looked dully in the direction of the harbor pier and murmured to himself. It's over. It's all over. What's over? Lauder frowned dissatisfied. Could it be that the battle at the dock has already been decided and the wizards are finished? Lauder turned his head and looked over. And after seeing the scene in front of him clearly, 
He couldn't help but take a deep breath. Only then did I realize that it was not the wizards who were doomed. But the entire harbor town. A huge dust cloud was floating over the city. At some point, the originally dark night sky was illuminated into a dazzling fiery red. As if something had torn the darkness apart. The originally prosperous and beautiful pier has now been reduced to ruins. Thick smoke is rising. A raging heat wave is sweeping up. Burning the sky red. And dense fire rain is falling from the huge dust cloud. Forming a a h lish scene. Lauder swallowed hard. His legs were shaking faintly. Even though he couldn't see clearly what was happening on the dock from a distance. He understood that under such power, the so-called black armor the guards and the curia chaplains are not worth mentioning. Could it be that I really misjudged him? And that the other party was actually a great wizard who was hiding deeply? The magic that was hailed as fireworks by the other party was actually so terrifying. Lauder wiped the cold sweat from his head. The fall of a seaport city was indeed the most gorgeous sight he had ever seen. Mr. Lauder, do we want to go back now? A sailor asked stammeringly. Then, before Lauder could reply, a brilliant light of death flew over from the dock and hit the sea a hundred meters away, exploding into a wave of tens of meters high. The sail worship once again violently after shaking for a moment. Lauder immediately jumped up and shouted in panic. Return! Return to me immediately! The sailors on the ship hurriedly pulled the sails and adjusted the course without delaying for a moment. In the eyes of everyone, this was undoubtedly a naked warning from the wizard. If we don't return, the next spell of magic will probably hit the ship directly. Lauder quickly changed into a set of decent clothes and straightened his appearance. Although his legs were still a little weak, he put the most friendly smile on his face and prepared to greet the cruel wizard. There was no mention of chopping. It's a matter of hands. The strong man on the side pulled the rope of the boat hard and was very grateful for his previous judgment. Fortunately, he didn't chop it down just now. Otherwise, he would be the one who was hacked to death now. Chapter 43 God's Projection Under the hard work of a group of sailors, the sailing ship sailed through the rough sea and stopped at a pier that was not completely destroyed, feeling the rolling heat wave in the air, even though he had been prepared for it, but looking at the port that had been turned into ruins at close range. Lauder could not help but tremble in his heart, and the smile on his face was even brighter than before. Eager. Mr. Lauder, you are finally here. I thought you had successfully crossed the sea by boat. Lynn took Johnny and the unconscious white pigeon and boarded the sailing battleship along the heavily lowered planks. Ha ha ha. Master Wizard is joking. How is this possible? It's just that the plan has changed temporarily. And we haven't received your follow-up order. So we can only wait on the sea. Lauder laughed a few times. He explained very calmly. Len N had no intention of exposing the other party. He and the boat gang had no friendship in the first place. The two sides only cooperated temporarily based on the threat of the Holy Sea and the goal of crossing the sea to the wizarding land. So even if he guessed that the other party was suspected of abandoning him and running away, Len N was not angry. Mr. Lauder, is there a doctor on this ship? Johnny interrupted the conversation between the two and asked eagerly. Lauder glanced at the unconscious white pigeon and immediately realized the seriousness of the matter. He immediately asked his deputy to call the doctor on board the ship. In order to deal with possible emergencies during this crossing, he still prepared various medicinal herbs. Very complete. However, the doctor on board the ship shook his head helplessly after examining it. The trauma suffered by this lady which is not serious. The reason why she is like this is maybe. Maybe it is other problems. Hearing this, Johnny immediately thought of the scene in which Beige used Soul Scream to attack Anjuk, but suffered the backlash himself. This was probably a trauma at the soul level. Seeing that the doctor on the ship had nothing to do, the silver-haired which could only look at Lin with the last glimmer of hope. 071 Lin shouted silently in his mind. It is initially determined that the target has suffered severe mental damage. It is recommended to go to the Federal Medical Center immediately to receive a professional brain examination. Lin In was quite helpless. He had to go back. Moreover, although the Federation's technology was advanced, its research on consciousness and soul was very limited. Most of the information was in top secret files, which was definitely not available to people like him. Right to contact and tune in. So under the witch's earnest gaze, Lin In could only shake her head cruelly. Johnny's beautiful sapphire eyes dimmed immediately. But soon, he felt the little witch in his arms tremble. White dove. Johnny shouted in surprise. It's so cold. My head hurts. The 13-year-old girl curled her body together, closed her eyes tightly, opened her lips slightly, and her breathing became more and more rapid. 
Her lips moved slightly, and she murmured as if she was dreaming, and finally became unconscious. He shouted the names of his family members, his voice getting weaker and weaker, and his hands kept shaking, as if he was trying to grasp something illusory and ethereal. Johnny hugged by Dove tightly. Crystal tears kept falling from his eyes, and he was already sobbing. Lennon couldn't help but sigh when he saw this scene. He wasn't able to do everything, so he could only step forward slowly and hold by G's trembling palm, giving him a trace of relief. Unknown energy detected. Extract or not. A system prompt sounded suddenly in his mind. Lennon paused, obviously. Seeing the girl's vitality gradually dissipating, he hesitated for a long time and finally muttered silently in his mind. Yes. Under the perceptive line of sight, a fluorescent light that was difficult to see with the naked, I was passing along by G's arm and into his body. It stopped after about half a minute. The special energy body has been absorbed and is expected to be converted into 12% of the energy reserve. Do you want to use it immediately? No. Lin immediately responded in his mind. Although he didn't know what the fluorescence absorbed by the brain was, he was certain that the magic power had been recorded before. So if he could rule it out directly, then the remaining possibility was... Soul? Inexplicable speculations flashed through Lin's mind. But these days, there were not a few people who died in front of him. And even more people committed suicide himself. This was the first time that she now gave a hint. Is there anything special about Beige? While Lennon was feeling sad, her heart was also full of doubts. Then her expression changed again. Because Johnny, who was holding the white dove in his arms, swayed and fell down with him. Everyone present was shocked. And Lauder glared at the doctor fiercely, telling him to do something quickly. If the wizard got angry, they would all be dead. After a hectic inspection, everyone was relieved by the final results. Johnny was just too tired and too sad to pass out. Lauder immediately ordered several maids to take Johnny down to rest, then glanced at the white dove lying on the ground, and asked cautiously, What should this witch do? Lin and didn't reply. He squatted down and pressed his hand on Bai Ji's abdomen. Extremely cold ice crystals emerged around the girl, eventually forming a huge ice coffin, sealing the person in the center. Although he has no way to save the other party now. In the land of wizards, those wizards, who are proficient in various mysterious magics may have some ideas. Look! The fire in Harbor Town seems to be out. A sailor suddenly shouted loudly. Lauder and others immediately turned around and looked over. During this moment of delay, the sailing warship had already sailed out of the port and entered the scope of the Sea of Mist. However, they could clearly see the sky above the Harbor Town from a long distance away. The red firelight was slowly fading. The support from the Holy Sea must have arrived. Lenin quickly thought of this. Previously, Archbishop Anziuk had no way to use white phosphorus fire. So the one who can solve the crisis in Harbor Town must be a higher level clergy. The next moment, a goddess figure huge enough to cover the entire city appeared in the sky above Harbor Town. Her crystal clear body reflected the dazzling light under the silver moon, making people unable to help but think. Get close. Kneel down. Prostrate yourself in front of him and tell him your sins. Ella? Lin In suppressed the shock in his heart while Lauder and others on the side were even more frightened and lay on the deck with their heads in their hands. The phantom of the goddess, whose face could not be seen clearly, gradually cast her sight over. Fortunately, at this time, the surrounding thick fog had surged in, and the entire sail warship disappeared on the sea in an instant. Chapter 44 Cardinal Edwell Hell, this is H. Al coming. Great Lord, please save your believers. After that doomsday-like scene came, the entire harbor town suddenly became chaotic. The temporarily organized militia guards were unable to maintain order. Figures running in a hurry could be seen everywhere in the streets and alleys. The raging fire that ignited from the dock continued to expand in the direction of the wind, seeming to encompass the entire harbor town. Move away the things that ignited the fire and create an open area. Where is the firefighting team? Get moving! Tyrus, the temporary guard captain, yelled at the top of his lungs. Trying to use the former 80 in the isolation method taught will stop the spreading fire. It's a pity that the morale of the entire guard team has almost collapsed. Many people abandoned their weapons and fled outside the harbor town like crazy, ignoring his orders at all. Seeing the raging tongues of fire getting closer and closer, Tyrus was in despair. At this moment, a loud voice like thunder rang in his ears. Praise to Ella, the kingdom of heaven has come. At this moment, the extremely chaotic harbor town seemed to have stopped in time. All the people who were fleeing in panic stopped and stopped in unison. 
looking up at the night sky. The dust cloud that originally shrouded the city was torn into pieces by some powerful force. Then, a dazzling white light fell from the sky and spread over every corner of the harbor town. Under the sweep of white light, everyone felt that their tired bodies were re-energized, and the despair and fear in their hearts were quickly fading away. A man whose leg was broken by a falling rock in the disaster was surprised to find that his broken leg had recovered again, and his face suddenly showed extremely fanatical piety. The raging fire that covered half of the city, known as the flames of H, L, and the incarnation of the devil, was quickly extinguished by such power and disappeared without a trace. Then, the pure and flawless white light gradually gathered and turned into the shadow of a holy and noble goddess. She looked down at all living beings, with stars twinkling in her eyes, full of mystery and majesty. Lord, you have not abandoned your most devout believer after all. Devil, the devil is dead. Great Lord of the stars, Ella, thank you for your salvation. Lord, I want to repent of my sins. Tens of thousands of residents in Harbor Town knelt on the ground, praying constantly, expressing their gratitude for the Lord's grace. Many people even kissed the land enthusiastically, showing their piety. Of all the people present, the only one who could still maintain some sanity was Tyrus. After being exposed to the white light, a fanatical piety arose in his heart, but he did not kneel down on the spot, as if some magical power stopped his actions. At some point, a middle-aged man wearing a red and gold robe and an iron mask appeared next to him. Your Majesty Cardinal! Tyrus immediately recognized the identity of the visitor from his clothes and saluted with great respect. Where's Antioch? Why did Harbor Town become like this? And well looked around at the townspeople who were kneeling on the ground and praying devoutly, and asked directly, If I'm not mistaken, the witch hunting ceremony should start at noon tomorrow. As early as two days ago, the holy city received a request for help from Anjuk. The Archbishop of Nordland led an elite guard and was almost wiped out while rounding up several wizards. The surrender technique also failed to keep the opponent behind. According to the procedures of the tribunal, no matter how troublesome the official wizard is, it is not worth letting him take action personally. However, Antioch specifically mentioned in the letter that the other party looks very young and will probably become a threat to the Holy See in the future. What's even more terrifying is that this wizard can use a very strange kind of age, fire. If it spreads, it will burn down a town in a short time. But Antioch has no way to deal with it. It was with this in mind, and in order to ensure nothing went wrong, that he decided to go to Highgang Town in person. After noticing the fluctuations caused by the explosion of divine power, he left the accompanying priest behind and rushed over as quickly as possible alone. It's a pity that it's still a step too late. The thing is like this. Lord Cardinal, earlier tonight, two devil's believers broke into Harbor Town and set the granary on fire. Tyrus told the whole story as concisely as possible. Again, when he heard that the wizard who destroyed the harbor dock was the wizard that Anziuk was chasing, Edwell's expression suddenly became serious. A great wizard actually hid his power and lurked in the territory of Nordland in disguise. It didn't take much to know that the other party must be planning some kind of conspiracy to subvert the empire and the Holy See. Thinking of this, Edwell saw the sail warship sailing into the fog through the sight of the projection of God. Across the ruins of the harbor dock and the vast sea. After roughly calculating the distance, Adwell quickly gave up the idea of taking action. Even if he used the most powerful magic he had, it would not be enough to pose a threat to a great wizard at such a long distance. You did a good job this time. At least you didn't cause the Empire to suffer greater losses. From Edwell's point of view, it was a matter of great honor to have uncovered a deeply hidden great wizard at the cost of only half a seaport town. Before, he thought that Anzweig was a waste and he was made so embarrassed by an official wizard. He was preparing to remove the other party's identity as archbishop after this incident. But now it seems that it was a crime other than war, and Anzweig's defeat is entirely because the enemy is too powerful. Moreover, the casualties in Harbor Town were far lower than he expected. Edwell originally thought that in such a huge disaster, at least half of the tens of thousands of townspeople would be killed or injured. But judging from the number of souls taken into the Holy Land, only one died. There were less than 5,000 people, including 3,000 black armored guards. This is nothing short of a miracle. These are all orders from Lord Adrian. Tyrus had no intention of taking credit, and his face was full of resentment. But Lord Adrian has followed Bishop Anziak into the port, and now I'm afraid it's over. What a pity, Edwell said regretfully. He was able to calm down the chaos in Harbor Town in a short period of time and organize the militia guards to quickly evacuate the townspeople. This is definitely a rare commanding talent. 
Has Ansia collected any information about the Great Wizard in so many days? Adwell asked again. Tyrus hesitated for a moment. These things were not something that he, the captain of the guard, could touch. Fortunately, Merc, the lord of Harbor Town, had already rushed over. After learning about the cardinal's request, he immediately asked someone to take it out. He received the information that Ansiak had given him before. However, after Adwell took the parchment roll and looked at it for a few times, his expression quickly froze. Carl, the illegitimate son of the imperial noble Viscount Sterland, who was only 17 years old this year, disappeared half a year ago, and the wizard Kalu captured by them had arrived in the Sterland territory at the same time. It is speculated that the wizard named Carl may be one of Kalu's apprentices. Which idiot collected this information? Adwell scolded with great dissatisfaction. This is complete nonsense. A new apprentice of a formal wizard, who has only been employed for less than half a year can use magic that destroys half of the harbor town? The intelligence officers in Nordland may have gone crazy. The lord of Harbor Town was trembling and did not dare to reply. Adwell ignored Merc, but took out the golden book from his waist and turned to the latest page, using his finger as a pen to write new information into it. Name, Carl, real name not confirmed. Extremely dangerous, great wizard. Crime, killing Archbishop Anziuk, destroying 3,000 black armored guards, and destroying half of the Harbor Town. Reward amount, seek his gold coins. 50,000. Chapter 45 How long has it been since you experienced combat? Father? At midnight. In Pedral's mansion. Continuous explosions and roars came from the outside world. Ivina, who was leaning against the corner at the moment, seemed not to hear it. The cowhide ropes, cut by sharp wooden thorns, were scattered nearby. The white jade fingers trembled slightly as they turned over the yellow diary in their hands. In November of the year 708 of the Holy Calendar, Pedral added a new baby. He looked small white and tender. And his name was Ivina? Am I a brother? It's another day of training. As Pedril's eldest son, I have to work harder. Are you watching me practice my sword? Ivina? Then I need to work harder. Sparring. I really miss it. I picked up the sword back then. But this time, it was me who was in charge of being the teacher. Ten moves. Let me save you some face. But there's no need to cry if you lose. Right? So cute. Ivina. 37 moves. It's only been four months. No. I must not have used all my strength. I'd better be more serious next time. Lost. I actually lost. How is this possible? It's really embarrassing in front of you. As a brother, I have to work hard to win it back next time. Ivina. Why can you always easily learn skills that I cannot master? Is it because I don't work hard enough? July. 722 of the Holy Calendar. The first night assessment. If you can pass, you can become a priest. Right? The Pedral family can also improve. Fail. 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 Second night selection. Third round. Is this my limit? From morning to night. It's nothing but training. It's meaningless. I'm afraid I'll never pass the night assessment. Father, why are you looking at me with that expectant look? Why don't you want to give up on me? That look again. Do you hate me? Ivina? I can understand how you feel. A useless person has robbed you of the opportunity that belongs to you. If it were you, you could definitely do it. My sister? Maybe everything will be fine without me. Ivina? I will give you everything you want. This is the only way. The brown-haired girl flipped through the diary in her hand page after page. And through the cold words. She learned about the brother she envied so much and was highly anticipated by her father. But could not do anything well. She had resented such injustice. All her efforts and her proud swordsmanship were just tools to attract the attention of the Duke of Nordland's son in her father's eyes. If he had the chance, he would definitely pass the night test. He would definitely be able to revive the Pedral family. And he would definitely make his father see him clearly. So for my brother, who has all the resources of the family and can receive formal night instruction at any time, but fails again and again, Ivina is extremely annoying. Even hating her. So cute. Ivina. She ran her fingers across the wrinkled page and looked at the pages of text on it. The girl's body couldn't help but tremble. And crystal tears streaked across her cheeks and fell continuously on the page. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Ivina murmured to herself. Her mind went blank. But the tears in her eyes could not be stopped. And her heart was filled with strong regret. Ivina had never hated herself so much. She thought she had forgotten how to cry. Which was a privilege reserved only for those who attracted much attention. Outside the mansion, 
continuous flames jumped up. But the room fell into a deathly silence, with only the suppressed and intermittent sobs echoing continuously. It wasn't until the door to the room was slammed open that the girl turned her head blankly. Baron Pedral, who rushed through the door, looked around at the messy scene in the room. When he saw Ivina, who was frightened and dared to hide silently in the corner and cry, he suddenly lost his temper and asked angrily, Do you know how much trouble there is in the outside world? Ivina, why are you still sitting here alone? Where is Lot? Where is he now? While he was talking, another blast came from outside the mansion. Did something happen outside? Ivina held the diary wet with tears in her arms and asked with her head lowered. Those damn wizards were wreaking havoc in Harbor Town, blowing up the entire dock with a terrible witchcraft. Pastor Adrian died. Pastor Danny died. Sir Sirk, and even Archbishop Ansick I couldn't escape either, Baron Pedral said in horror. In order to brush up his resume, he had proposed to the Archbishop of Nordland to participate in this witch hunt. Now he thought that if Ansiak had nodded in agreement, he would have died in the harbor dock, listening to the unattainable names being pronounced death sentences one after another in her ears. The brown-haired girl's mind was shaken, and she couldn't help but think of Lot's words that echoed in her ears before she left. So small, Ivina, becoming a wizard. Is this your choice, elder brother? According to rumors, as long as you sacrifice your soul to the devil, you can become a wizard with forbidden power. But as a price, that person's personality will often change drastically and his soul will gradually fall into the abyss. And this is all for yourself. Where is your brother? You haven't answered me yet. Where is Lot? We have to leave here right away. Baron Pedral squeezed the girl's wrist hard and asked loudly. Dead, Ivina whispered, knowing very well that at the information that her brother became a wizard was revealed, the entire Pedral family would be destroyed immediately. Baron Pedral paused, with a terrifying look on his face. You'd better stop playing tricks on me. Ivina! Let me tell you, even if your brother really dies, the position of Baron will never be your turn. Never imagine what you can't get. Baron Pedral said with great annoyance that no matter what the circumstances, he would never let an outsider take over the Pedral family, no matter how good he was. In that case, I'm leaving. Ivina broke free from the big hand that restrained her, put the diary into her arms, turned around and walked out of the room without hesitation. Stop. Tell me clearly. Baron Pedral never expected that Ivina, who usually never dared to resist, would dare to disobey him like this. Strong anger suddenly surged into his heart, and his waist the long sword was drawn out of its sheath and swiped towards Ivina fiercely. Dang. The sheathed long sword came out of his hand, spinning and falling to the ground, making a low muffled sound. Baron Pedral's body was frozen in place, and a three-finger long extremely sharp wooden thorn was already lying across his neck. How long has it been since you experienced a battle? Father? Ivina looked at Pedral with a complicated expression and asked. Baron Pedral sat down on the ground with a cold sweat on his head. Only then did he realize that Ivina's swordsmanship was far better than he knew, and had even completely surpassed himself. Ivina dropped the wooden thorn in her hand and stepped out of the room without looking back. Where are you going? Ivina? Where is Lot? Tell me where he is. Baron Pedral came back to his senses and roared loudly. My brother is dead. Just think that he was killed by me. Father! Ivina said softly. And I want to leave Harbor Town and see the world. Chapter 46 Lin. I smell a smell called Black Pot. Ta 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 ta. Continuous raindrops fell on the deck, emitting a clear low whistle. Lin, who was inside the cabin, woke up from the continuous nightmare. After seeing clearly the situation he was in, Lin and couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. The sudden appearance of the goddess last night put a lot of psychological pressure on him. Fortunately, the other party had no intention of catching up. They should be safe now. Lin straightened up, rolled down the hard wooden bed, picked up a cloak hanging at the door, then opened the hatch and walked onto the deck. The slow sea breeze carried bits of sea water towards my face, bringing with it the salty taste and moisture, blowing away the filthy air in the cabin. Lin and looked up into the distance. Thick fog filled the sea and enveloped the entire sailboat. He could only barely see about three to five meters outside the boat. This miss seems to have some mysterious power. Even if he uses a ring of magic, ticks farsightedness. He cannot penetrate the white mist and see farther. The danger of sailing under such conditions is self-evident. Not only is it difficult to distinguish the direction, but there is also the possibility of hitting a rock. Master Wizard, are you awake? Did you rest well last night? A familiar voice sounded behind him, and Lin turned around to look over. 
The person who came was none other than the lame lauder. However, compared to last night, the other party seemed a little depressed. And he was obviously very frightened. Lin did not answer Lauder's inquiry, but spoke directly. Is this the Sea of Mist? How did you identify the direction in the past? And how long did it take to reach the wizard's land? Normally speaking, it takes more than half a month to sail from Harbor Town. As for the method of identifying the direction, Lauder took out a compass very carefully. Lin In came closer curiously. The compass was circular in shape and made of wood. There were many complicated runes and patterns drawn on the surface. The most eye-catching thing was the pointer above, which pointed motionlessly at the navigation of the ship. Direction. Could it be a compass? Lin In guessed secretly, and then heard Lauder explain. This compass is an alchemical creation made by the great wizard Haram. No matter where you are, it will always point in the direction of the wizard's land. This is what enables them to cross the Sea of Mist. No matter where they start, they only need to follow the direction guided by the compass. And they could always find the wizard's land. It's amazing. Lin picked up the compass and looked at it carefully. He became slightly interested in the great wizard named Hiram. This was the second time he heard this name. It seems that Ansiak spent so much effort to deal with several wizard apprentices and lured Lot out just to get this compass. As long as this thing is handed over to the Holy See, it will definitely be a great achievement. Since he couldn't understand the runes on the compass, Lin just made a note of it secretly and handed the things back. Lauder reached out and took it, then looked a little confused. After a long time, he cautiously asked, Are you a great wizard? Of course not. Lenin shook his head, not daring to admit this. He is just a wizard apprentice who has just come into contact with magic. It doesn't matter if he was mistaken for a formal wizard before. After all, with the help of his brain, he can indeed do many things that a formal wizard can do. But he is still too far away from the level of a great wizard. Far away. Without the help of more than a thousand people from the boat gang, he would not have been able to set up a trap that could destroy the entire harbor terminal. What destroyed Ansiak and others was not so much magic as the power of science. Seeing Lin shaking his head in denial, Lauder seemed a little doubtful. He had seen the terrifying explosion with his own eyes last night. It was definitely a power only possessed by advanced magic. But thinking that the other party had asked him to collect a large amount of raw materials, Lauder secretly guessed that this witchcraft called fireworks was probably a powerful magic that required some special rituals to be prepared in advance before it could be used in an exceptional way. If this is the case, I'm afraid you will be criticized when we arrive at the wizard's land. Lauder couldn't help but sigh. Lin's expression suddenly changed. There was a dangerous look in his eyes as he looked at Lauder. He vaguely smelled the smell called black pot. Under someone's kind gaze, Lauder hurriedly explained. Although he has been operating this waterway from the seaport town to the land of wizards, the person who created this route was the great wizard Haram. To put it bluntly, the entire ship gang is just a tool in the opponent's hands. Whether they are willing or not, they need to transport some scarce supplies to the wizarding land every year because they have always been very secretive. They have never made any major mistakes in more than 10 years. But now because of Johnny and others, this transportation line has been directly destroyed. If Lin is also a great wizard, then you don't have to worry too much. If not, you need to be prepared to be held accountable. This is why he specifically confirmed it. Under Lauder's explanation, Lin quickly figured this out. And he couldn't help but feel a little confused. He could naturally think of the importance of this waterway. This blame should be placed on his mentor Kalu. If the other party hadn't been so bold and attempted to abduct the duke's second daughter and was caught on the spot, how could the Holy See follow the clues and trace her all the way to Harbor Town? Is this the only way to go from the Wizarding Land to the Sika's Empire? Lin asked. There should be more than one. The Sea of Mist is also connected to another important port Vecner. The capital of the Sika's Empire. Lauder said hesitantly. Although he couldn't be 100% sure, he guessed that Vic near most people in the city were doing the same thing as him. I understand. Lin nodded. It seemed that things had not reached the worst point yet. But he was not going to take the blame and had to find a way to get rid of it. While Lennon was thinking about it, he asked Lauder for various information about the Wizarding Land. He was too unfamiliar with this place and would easily suffer without enough information. After several inquiries, Lin finally learned that the Wizarding Land was different from what he had expected. It was not a refuge established by a group of wizards who were persecuted by the Holy See, but had already existed hundreds of years ago. With cities, port and a huge island with a population of 600,000, the interior can almost be regarded as a small kingdom. It's just that there are no kings and nobles here. 
Instead, there are wizards and various schools of thought. The one who holds the highest power is the wizard's council composed of several legendary wizards. Chapter 47 Eyes of Death The advanced, political system in the wizarding land made Lin speechless. And he quickly stepped into the democratic parliamentary system. But after thinking about it, I felt that it was normal. High-level wizards alone were an army. If they were not given corresponding rights, they would be creating chaos in vain. So there, the status of wizards is almost equal to that of nobles. When you get to the port, you will definitely be shocked by the scene there, Lauder said with emotion. Over the years, he has visited the wizarding land several times. It was like a farmer who had been living in the village suddenly arrived in Vicnir. The shocking feeling was simply indescribable. Then I'm really looking forward to seeing such a scene, Lin said with a smile. While the two were chatting, a sailor suddenly came over and whispered a few words in Lauder's ear. Lauder waved the sailor away and asked respectfully, The witch has woken up. Do you plan to go and have a look? Lin nodded. He happened to have a lot of questions to ask Johnny. So he walked quickly towards the cabin, looking at Lin's leaving back. Lauder had no intention of following him. Instead, he looked up at the foggy sky. Drops of rain were falling on the deck through the white mist. Although the wind and rain did not affect the navigation, Lauder felt a little uneasy. This year, in order to escape the pursuit of the Holy Sea, they left the port a little too late. Hopefully it will be a little quieter before crossing the sea. Lin followed the sailor all the way to the interior of the cabin. The wooden boat kept shaking, and there was a faint rotten smell in the air. Fortunately, he had already adapted to the poor sanitary conditions of the Middle Ages over the past few days, and this situation was already fine. At least Lauder arranged for them to be in separate cabins, so they did not have to be crowded with the rest of the crew. Master Wizard, this is it! The sailor who was leading the way stopped in front of a hatch and looked at Lin. He couldn't help but think of the tragic scene in the harbor town, and there was a look of fear in his eyes. Lin didn't pay attention, opened the door and walked in. This is a cabin with only a few square meters in size. The silver gray haired which is leaning on the wooden bedside. Looking out the window at the ocean covered by fog. The dim light falls on the girl's pale cheeks through the window. Revealing a kind of morbid beauty. Probably hearing the sound of pushing the door open. Johnny turned her head. Her delicate profile half covered by shadow. And looked at Lynn who walked through the door and walked to the bed. The girl was silent for a long time. And then suddenly spoke. The white dove is dead. Lynn paused for a moment, then replied softly, I have frozen her body. Maybe the big shots in the wizarding land will do something about it. Although he said this, Lin In knew in his heart that this hope was slim, not to mention whether those powerful wizards had disability. Even if they did, it was unlikely to save a little wizard apprentice. The reason why he did this was that Baigu, who was usually extremely afraid of death, dared to enter Harbor Town to rescue himself when faced with a near certain death situation which moved Lin in somewhat. Secondly, the unknown energy absorbed by Zhinao last night also made him very concerned. Johnny didn't seem to hear Lin's words and continued to repeat them in a low voice. Lin sighed secretly, with the mental state of a young girl. He probably couldn't ask anything, just as he was about to let Johnny take a good rest. A soft, slightly warm body crashed into his arms. Lin paused for a moment, and before he could react, the girl's sobs could be heard in his ears. White Pigeon is dead. The teacher is also dead. And Kent. Will. Buck. And Button. Every time he called out a name, Johnny's voice was choked up. Her shoulders were shaking. And crystal tears ran down her cheeks. Soaking Lynn's robe. The girl's voice was choked. And she spoke intermittently in Nordland's collar. Everything that happened. After being discovered by members of the Holy See, Carabin had the opportunity to escape. But for his own sake, he chose to stay and break up the aftermath. Because of this, she escaped with her life. Before leaving, she promised her teacher that she would bring every apprentice safely back to the wizarding land. As a result, except for the two of them, everyone died. Lin In stood quietly, not disturbing the girl's confession. He understood that what Johnny needed now was just a way to vent. To vent all the fear, sadness, and despair that had accumulated for more than ten days and could not be expressed to outsiders. The intermittent crying lasted for more than 10 minutes before Joni's mood gradually calmed down. Only then did he realize that he was holding Lin in. And his clothes were soaked with tears. The girl opened her arms in embarrassment. And the atmosphere in the cabin suddenly became a little weird. Johnny wiped the tears from the corners of his eyes in a panic and whispered, If the teacher had chosen to take you to the main city of Nordland, maybe everything would have been different. You think too highly of me. Johnny. 
Lin shook his head. He had not yet traveled through time at that time. With the level of his original body, Carl, he would probably be caught together. And you have done enough and done well enough, Lin said seriously. Johnny was not a master tactician. Nor was he a cunning person like Lauder. In Carl's memory, the other party was just a girl with a talent for magic who liked to sit under the shade tree and read a book. It is unrealistic for Kalu to pin the lives of their wizard apprentices on Johnny's efforts. Johnny did not respond to Lin's comfort, but pursed his lips and asked, When you were in UR town, why did you stay alone to face the archbishop? This confusion has been lingering in her mind. Although they are both Kalu's apprentices, they have no friendship on weekdays. But when they were in UR town, Lin In was willing to face danger alone and leave their way of survival to them. Of course, it's because you standing there really affects the performance. Lin In's words came to her lips. But she swallowed them down and spoke in a more tactful tone. Facing Antioch, I am not completely sure. And I cannot possibly distract you from protecting you. Johnny looked at Lin in awe and was about to say something when the originally relatively stable cabin suddenly shook heavily and the unprepared two people almost hit the wooden wall. Then, before Lin could stand still, waves of frightened screams came from the deck above. The eyes of death. It's the eyes of death. Chapter 48 Rushing Towards the Maelstrom The shaking of the cabin and the constant screams from above interrupted the conversation between the two. After Lin and Johnny looked at each other, they rushed forward in unison. Opening the cabin door, the cold wind howled, and icy raindrops poured on the deck like a dense rain of bullets, which was the prelude to the storm. The originally calm sea surface became turbulent at this moment, and the sea water continued to slap the hull, causing the sail warship to keep shaking. Due to the continuous strong wind, the originally thick fog became much thinner, and the visual range increased by about twice. However, the fog was no longer pure white, but turned into an extremely strange gray. Tighten the sail! Everyone, take action. We must escape from this sea as soon as possible. There was chaos on the deck. Hundreds of ship gang sailors were in a mess. Lauder's face was extremely ugly, and he shouted loudly, but to no avail. Many people were kneeling on the ground in despair, with expressions of despair on their faces. He kept shouting something. Mr. Lauder, did it hit the rocks? Or was it the impact of the storm? Len quickly stepped forward and asked. No, it's the maelstrom. It's the eye of death! Lauder shouted in horror. Maelstrom? Lin immediately remembered the information he had inquired about in Harbor Town before, and looked at the rough sea again. Only then did he realize what he had just ignored. The rolling sea water was surging in the same direction, and the man under him was a large sailing ship is being pulled towards the center of the vortex bit by bit. It's just that the diameter of this vortex is too large, and the sea is full of fog, so he can't find any reference objects which actually gives him the illusion that the ship has been sailing normally. His how big is this thing? Lennon couldn't help but break out in a cold sweat, while Lauder on the side seemed to have suddenly thought of something. He looked at Lin in with an extremely earnest look and asked excitedly, Master Wizard, do you have a way to freeze the entire maelstrom? Are you kidding? Lin frowned. The diameter of this large whirlpool must be at least several kilometers to cause such a visual error. What kind of force can freeze such a huge ocean? Then we are doomed. It's too late to escape now. The fire of hope flickering in Lauder's eyes was extinguished instantly, and his whole body seemed to have no bones. He slumped on the ground, muttering to himself. The reason why the sea of mist is so terrifying is that in addition to the thick fog that covers the entire sea and can completely disorient people, what is even more important is the large whirlpool called the Eye of Death. This is an existence that makes countless voyagers extremely fearful. It is like the god of death wandering in the vast sea of mist. It may appear in any corner of this sea at any time without warning and without any rules. Once encountered, the sailor will be pronounced dead, because the terrifying suction of the maelstrom is far greater than the speed of any sailing ship. It is said that those who are eventually sucked into the whirlpool will not only be unable to escape death, but their souls will also fall into the abyss. This is the origin of the name Eye of Death. The only way to pass through this sea of mist is to wait until Sunday, when the Eye of Death whirlpool will temporarily subside. Taking advantage of this period, the ship should try its best to sail away from the sea area where the eye of death frequently occurs. The rest is leave it to luck. Therefore, when transporting goods in previous years, they would try their best to go to sea in the first few days on Sunday to avoid directly colliding with the maelstrom. But this year was different. The holy sea blocked the harbor town, causing them to leave the harbor a little too late. Lin ignored it and walked quickly to the goods stacked on the deck. He picked up a few wooden barrels, shook the weight, 
and dropped the barrels in different directions and angles. Then he stretched his right hand flat and began to measure relative distance of these objects. Personally speaking, it is completely impossible to calculate the diameter and flow rate of a large whirlpool just by relying on a few drifting wooden barrels as reference objects. But this level of computing power is child's play for Gnau. The diameter of the large whirlpool is 7 kilometers. And the escape speed is 20 knots. If you want to avoid being sucked into the vortex, you need a speed of at least 20. Len and quickly received the analysis results of Gnau. And he couldn't help but frown. Got up. In the previous life, any small boat could reach a speed of just 20 knots. After the energy reform, these old antiques could only pile up in warehouses and eat dust. However, he is now in a different world of evil. And the sailing battleship under their feet seems to have a maximum speed of only 100,000. Seventh festival? This is impossible. Even the best alchemy ship in the wizarding land can never reach a speed of 20 knots. Lauder also heard Lin's words and shouted desperately. Although he didn't understand what escape velocity was, he knew what 20 knots was. No, it's possible. Lin said seriously, throwing aside the helmsman who was lying limp on the ground and looked at everyone present. I'll take the helm. Everyone, please return to your posts. Follow my instructions and raise all the sails. Do you know anything about ships? With such a big wind and waves, once all the sails are raised, the ship will capsize soon and all of us will die by then. The helmsman who had been pushed away by Lin immediately jumped. He stood up and shouted at the top of his lungs. Under the current situation, he didn't care whether he was a wizard or not. But the next moment, he swallowed the words on his lips again, because a huge fireball was condensing in Lennon's palm. Do as you are told, or you will die now. Lennon's tone was very cold. The yellow-white phosphorus flames made all the sailors on the deck tremble, and the helmsman was so frightened that he sat on the ground. However, it was a certain death situation. In despair, not many people obeyed orders at all. Some even thought that dying under witchcraft would be better than having their souls swallowed into a maelstrom. At this moment, the sound of the winch rotating violently came over. Lin and others turned their heads and looked over. The person who did it was actually Johnny. At this moment, the girl was holding a sail rope tightly and putting it on the winch. Continuous raindrops fell from the top of her head, flowing through the ends of her hair and her delicate profile, making her clothes wet. But Xiongbut and I didn't care and pulled harder and harder until the last circle of rope was firmly fixed on the winch. Since we have no other option, then sitting here is just waiting for death. Johnny stared at everyone present with his sapphire-like eyes and said resolutely. Lauder quickly cheered up, took out the long whip from his waist, and whipped a sailor who was kneeling on the ground to pray, and shouted in annoyance. Do it. Do it for me. Raise all the sails. Chapter 49 Conquer, Eye of Death Under the command of the long whip in Lauder's hand. The sailors took action with the last glimmer of hope. The sail ropes were tightened. The nooses kept turning. And the canvases made of camel leather were raised. The canvas made of camel leather is very tough and can withstand heavy rain and wind. The remaining people threw all the cargo piled on the deck overboard to reduce some of the weight of the sailboat. Lauder watched the ship full of cargo being thrown into the water one by one. His heart was bleeding. But there was nothing he could do. His life was always more important. The roaring and violent winds and the rolling water made the huge sail battleship look like a fallen leaf that could capsize at any time. The hull kept shaking, as if it would sink to the bottom of the sea in the next second. Lin's method of coping was also very simple. He relied on adjusting the angle of the sail, and using strong winds to balance the hull. This was an extremely precise operation. Fortunately, although the sailors on the ship did not understand aerodynamics, they all had decades of experience in sailing. With experience, the situation was barely maintained. The warship slowly turned under Lin's control and moved forward at full speed in the direction of the water flow. Master Wizard, are you mistaken? That's the big whirlpool over there. Lauder, who had just asked the sailors to take action, turned his head and looked at the heading. And he was frightened out of his wits. Are they trying to escape the maelstrom? Or are they rushing to die? He now believed the words of the helmsman, who didn't understand ships at all. Of course I know there is a maelstrom there. What we need to borrow is the power of the Eye of Death. Lin said solemnly. The sailing speed of the sailing warship is only seven knots. It is almost impossible to escape the suction of the vortex. The only way is to make the warship's forward direction parallel to the direction of the water flow. Circle half a circle around the large whirlpool. 
and finally use the help of the powerful centrifugal force accelerates and rushes out. In fact, Lin did not have any experience with ships, but he had taken the test of starship driving and knew how to use the gravity of the planet to accelerate in reverse. The principles of both parties were similar. In short, you rush in first and then get thrown out. Lin and explained it very briefly, but Lauder didn't understand a word, but he just vaguely felt that it made sense. We must be crazy! Lauder murmured to himself. He never thought that one day he would sail his boat directly into the maelstrom. Except for Lauder. The rest of the sailors soon discovered that there was a problem with the ship's course. But they did not even have time to despair. Because several sail ropes on the deck could not withstand the strong wind and broke directly. In such a critical situation, the only way to temporarily rely on manpower is to forcibly tighten the sail rope to avoid affecting the navigation of the warship. Lin kept adjusting the rudder. Following a violent but brief shock, the hull suddenly tilted to the right, and then stabilized again. The surging seawater drove the sailboat forward rapidly, rushing towards the maelstrom very firmly. Go! There was a deafening muffled sound from the distance of the sea, like thunder rising from the ground. In the thin black mist, a corner of the large whirlpool soon appeared in front of everyone. It looks like there is a huge, numbing funnel in the sea. Huge amounts of seawater are constantly rotating into the bottomless abyss. But at the bottom of the whirlpool, there is a darkness and darkness. It was cold and exuded a palpitating aura. And it was impossible to see what was hidden in it. Looking at the terrifying maelstrom, Lauder's face turned pale. The sailors' reactions were even worse. And many of them started talking nonsense. Mom, I'm here to find you. It's a star. I saw a star. Lin and vaguely sensed something was wrong. This large whirlpool called the Eye of Death seemed to be able to affect people's minds. It seemed that this thing was not a natural phenomenon caused by ocean currents or gravitational tides. We must drive away from here as soon as possible. But the current speed seems to be a little worse. Use fireball. Seven o'clock direction. Lin shouted loudly. But Johnny didn't understand. So he pointed out the direction specifically. The silver gray haired girl immediately understood and activated the magic hand. A huge fireball immediately condensed in the palm of her hand and was thrown towards the side and rear of the sailing battleship. Lenin also made the same move at this time. Two huge fireballs collided together. The violent shock wave made the hull of the ship creak. But the impact also caused the warship's speed to increase again. The constantly swaying sail warship scraped against the edge of the maelstrom in a thrilling manner and rushed out at a sailing speed several times faster than usual under the influence of powerful centrifugal phenomena. At the same time, the violent sound also woke up Lauder and others, allowing them to get rid of the mental influence of the maelstrom. Seeing the extremely terrifying Ma the Abyss moving away from them, everyone's faces showed a look of relief. Expression. After a brief calm, eager shouts suddenly erupted on the deck, everyone venting their joy of escaping death. It's amazing! We actually escaped the maelstrom! This must be a miracle! When we get ashore, we will get married immediately! We can't wait any longer. All the crew members celebrated excitedly. And the two unshaven uncles even hugged each other. First mate, when we get through this sea area, take out all the wine I have collected so that everyone can celebrate. Laud's hands and feet were trembling. But seeing such a hilarious scene, he's still speaking generously. But, boss Lauder, the first mate on the side hesitated. Then said cautiously, we just threw your box of wine away. Lauder's expression immediately froze and endless grief surged into his heart. Most of the rare treasures he had accumulated over the years were stored in wooden boxes on the deck. And now they are all gone. Lauder even had the idea of rushing into the maelstrom and salvaging all his money. But this is just a delusion after all. While feeling heartbroken, Lauder did not forget the man who had contributed a lot to conquering the Eye of Death. Thank you so much. Lord Wizard, you saved us all. If you have any errands in the future, please feel free to give me your orders. Lauder looked at Lin, reached out and took off his hat, put it on his chest, and bowed. The originally noisy deck suddenly became extremely quiet. The sailors and boatmen present all made the same action as Lauder. This is the highest respect for a sailor. After saying that after the battle of the harbor, they were extremely afraid of Lin, the wizard, but now they respect him from the bottom of their hearts. Everyone had just experienced the power and terror of the Eye of Death, and they were naturally extremely grateful and convinced to Lin In, who led them to escape the pursuit of death. Please continue to give instructions on what to do next. Chapter 50 The Current Situation in the Wizarding Land Lin In looked around at the crew members waiting for his instructions, and spoke freely. 
In this case, please continue to work hard. We are not safe until we completely leave this sea area. Under Lennon's command, the sailors present temporarily suppressed their excitement and returned to their posts. But the difference from before was that they no longer looked worried when facing the vast sea of fog. I never thought that I would be able to escape the eye of death twice in my lifetime, Lauder said with emotion. Last time, was it because of the help of the great wizard? Lin En asked curiously. He had already guessed when Lauder mentioned the frozen maelstrom before. And the other party must have faced such danger more than once. Territory. Lauder nodded. And then recounted his experience that year with some emotion. That was more than ten years ago. At that time, he was still an ordinary pirate. Living a life of killing and plundering at sea every day. Since their activity range is close to the Sea of Mist. They don't have to worry about being pursued by the Imperial fleet. At worst, they can hide in the mist as long as they wander around the outermost periphery and don't go too deep. They won't be able to find their way back at all. Until one time, his pirate group encountered a large ship sailing out of the Sea of Mist. At first, they thought it was a cargo ship that strayed into the foggy sea and luckily found its return route. Taking advantage of the large number of people, they made the ship the target of robbery. Unexpectedly, they actually bumped into an iron plate. It was not Helram who took action at that time, but the two official wizards who accompanied him. But even so, hundreds of their entire pirate group were still beaten to death. And Lauder was also blown up by the aftermath of a fireball. Right leg. If the other party hadn't wanted to leave someone for questioning, I'm afraid he would have died long ago. But it was through this opportunity that he was able to completely change his destiny and become the spokesperson of the great wizard Haram in Harbor Town. Hearing this, Lin couldn't help but glance at Lauder, wondering what he had done to get rid of his status as a prisoner and win the favor of the great wizard. He has seen this old fox's integrity before. So it can't be said that he doesn't have it at all. That is also very limited. If it were him, he would never trust such a person so much. Was he caught for something? Although thinking this way, Lin did not interrupt Lauder's words. Anyway, after arranging the affairs of Harbor Town, I had the honor to accompany Master Helram to the Land of Wizards. It was when I was crossing the sea that I encountered the Great Whirlpool, Lauder said with great nostalgia. Of course, the Eye of Death, Maelstrom that time was not as terrifying as this time. The coverage area was only about one kilometer. And Helram's response was very simple. That is, to freeze the entire Maelstrom. But even so, this was enough to surprise Lin. It seemed that the power of the Great Wizard was far more powerful than he imagined. By the way, the destination of our ship this time is Master Helram's territory I had a harbor. Lauder added. Lin nodded. It seemed that he would have to deal with this Great Wizard soon but he still has no idea how to respond to Helram's accusation. While the two were chatting, the sailing warship under their feet had completely sailed away from the scope of the maelstrom, and the sailors on the ship cheered loudly. Although he suffered heavy losses when he passed through the Eye of Death, Lauder still showed a rare act of magnanimity and let everyone eat and drink, allowing everyone to celebrate tonight. However, life at sea is indeed a bit boring. The so-called celebration is just that everyone sits together, drinks tons of beer with a bucket of beer, each brags about the heroic deeds of the year, and catches sea fish by the way. Probably their luck began to improve. Nothing bad happened in the next few days. The whole sea was white mist except for white mist. If they hadn't been following the compass pointer, Lin would have thought that they had never been there. Leave the same place. This is also the terrifying part of the sea of mist. If a great wizard like Halram can't find his direction, even if he has a way to deal with the maelstrom, he will be completely lost in this sea. During these few days of crossing the sea, Lin was not idle. In addition to practicing magic as usual, he would ask Johnny every day for information about the wizard's land. He soon had a general idea of this wizard's holy land. Learn. The first is the attitude towards the outside world, which is roughly divided into two factions. One is the self-proclaimed conservatives. This is also the choice of most wizards in the wizarding land. They completely ignore the outside world and only concentrate on studying magic in their own territories. They even think that outside the wizarding land, those who are controlled by the Holy See are extremely stupid. The wizard himself pursues the use of magic to analyze the mysteries of things and explore the truth of the world, rather than competing for power and territory like the so-called kings and nobles. So the study of magic is the same everywhere. Anyway, there are extremely rich reserves of magic minerals in the wizarding land. Coupled with the blockade of the Sea of Mist, the Holy See cannot get in. It is not easy for them to get out. It is better to concentrate on developing various magic theories and wait for the future. Crush the enemy directly to death. 
The second is the enterprising faction, like the great wizard Haram, who advocates demonstrating the power of witchcraft to the outside world. They believe that although the wizarding land is a super large island, many scarce materials cannot be self-sufficient, and the population is too small and needs to be obtained from the outside world, continuously absorb new blood to replenish it. But the disadvantages are also very obvious. The more contact with the outside world, the more dangerous it is. The power accumulated in the wizarding land alone is not enough to compete with the Holy See. Once the position is completely exposed, the wizarding land may cause catastrophe. This this is the fundamental reason why most wizards are more conservative. It is worth mentioning that their mentor Kalu is a member of the enterprising faction and belongs to the school founded by the great wizard Haram. In other words, it is very difficult for news to spread between the wizarding land and the outside world. Right? Lin and asked thoughtfully. Probably. Johnny nodded. In the past four years, she had only been to the wizarding land once. And most of her knowledge of it came from Kalu's daily stories. If that's the case, Lin looked at the porthole thoughtfully, as if he wanted to see the wizarding land standing deep in the sea through the white fog. He had already thought of how to deal with the great wizard's accusation. Chapter 51, Secret Society From the moment he boarded the sailing battleship, Lin had been thinking about how he should enter the wizarding land. Kalu's disciple? A wizard apprentice who has practiced magic for only half a year? If you take on this identity, it is obvious that you will encounter countless troubles. You must know that everyone on the sailing warship has seen himself casting spells. Not to mention the explosion in Harbor Town. This is definitely not something that a young apprentice can do. As the saying goes, no one is innocent, but the one who possesses the treasure is guilty. A weak person with a big secret will usually become the target of those who are interested. Their identity at the moment was also very embarrassing. They were hunted down by the Holy See. They fled to the land of wizards, like bereaved dogs. They also destroyed a very important shipping route. It was not surprising that they were directly imprisoned and interrogated after arriving at the port of Ida. So if you want to break the situation, you have to make changes. Thinking of this, Lin looked at Johnny and asked, Do you know why teacher took the risk of being arrested and went to the capital of the Duke of Nordland? The teacher said that the second daughter of the Duke of Nordland has a good talent for magic. Johnny paused for a moment and then said confidently, And we don't have enough money. The corner of Lin and his mouth twitched involuntarily. He knew that Kara must have some agenda in recruiting aristocratic children like them. And it was because he wanted to get research funds. Of course, in addition to this, there is a second reason. That is, the nobles are basically literate and have good qualities. So they do not need to teach everything from scratch. Learning magic itself is also a very expensive thing. For example, a red fire ember that releases fireballs costs 1 silver and 37 coppers which is enough for a poor family to live frugally for a month. Magic is something that poor people cannot afford. Maybe Kalu still has the idea of training one or two noble wizards in his heart. Although these apprentices are not the first successors, they have no chance to create their own. Lin did not continue to think deeply, but shook his head and retorted. These are just cover-ups. Have you heard of the secret society? What is that? Johnny looked confused. This is a very secret wizard organization in Asika's empire. It brings together many important people. When the teacher took me to learn magic, I was fortunate enough to have contact with people from the Secret Magic Society for a period of time. Lenin said nonsense. The process of Kalu teaching apprentices is very casual. He basically takes each apprentice with him for a period of time and then throws them to a safer place to let them practice magic on their own. In other words, during the time when Kalu taught him alone, only the two of them knew everything that happened and Johnny had no way of revealing his words. After I came into contact with the Arcane Society, my teacher once told me that many of the research theories in the Wizarding Land have long been outdated outside and have completely failed to keep up with the times. Therefore, the teacher compiled a secret research manuscript in private and planned to go to the capital of Nordland to meet with a colleague of the Arcane Society. If this operation fails, let me take this precious research manuscript at all costs research the manuscript and bring it back to the wizarding land. In just a few words, Lin In changed their identity from a homeless dog who fled to the land of wizards to avoid being pursued by the Holy See and accidentally destroyed an important shipping route. He became a hero who followed the instructions of his mentor Kalu, went through great hardships, escaped the heavy siege of the Holy See, and delivered a research manuscript containing important information to the land of wizards. As long as this research manuscript is important enough, and the news it brings is explosive enough. Then instead of being blamed, they may be rewarded. Is this actually the case? 
Joni looked confused. Kalu had never told her about the Arcane Society. And Lin's expression didn't look like he was joking. So you got the method to be promoted to a formal wizard through the Arcane Society? Johnny said thoughtfully. You can say that. But my situation is a bit more special. And this method does not apply to others. Lin nodded. But did not correct the misunderstanding. In the land of wizards, only formal wizards have a certain status and the ability to protect themselves. This is also in line with the lowest evaluation of his strength by everyone on the entire ship. If he didn't want to cause trouble, he had to be an official wizard whether he wanted to or not. While replying, Lin was also thinking about the contents of the research manuscript in his mind. According to Johnny's descriptions these days, the wizarding land's understanding of the world is roughly equivalent to the level of the Renaissance in Western Europe. As long as he comes up with a slightly cutting-edge theory, it is enough to make these wizards drop their jaws. Due to the existence of magic, wizards are very biased. Although they have made great achievements in the microscopic field, learned about the existence of gravity early, and built a steam-powered alchemy ship, most wizards still believe in the flat earth theory and believe that the continent under their feet is the entire universe. Center of. Even using this continent as a reference, the trajectory of every planet in this galaxy was mapped, forming a unique star theory. Lin had seen the so-called star movement chart in Kalu's research manuscript. The entire continent was suspended in the void, surrounded by a solid magic barrier. Then the sun and the moon move in a circle around the continent, and the other celestial bodies move in specific trajectories forming an extremely complex geometric pattern, which is also consistent with the description of the Holy See in the creation of the Bible. However, he has talked with Lauder and others in the past few days. This world also has a solar eclipse phenomenon. When sailing on the sea, you will first see towering peaks and towers. In addition, as long as the movement of the celestial bodies in the star chart is slightly changed and the stars are placed in the center, everything becomes familiar again. It can be seen that the creationism of the Holy See is complete nonsense. Ella can't even figure out whether he created a continent or a ball. Right. Of course, this kind of misunderstanding is a pitfall that almost every civilization has to step on. To put it bluntly, it means that the mind is bound by so-called common sense. When people are just born, they always think that they are the protagonist, and everything needs to exist around them. The continent under their feet must also be a very special existence in the vast universe and is the center of the entire universe. However, after in-death research, you will find an extremely cruel thing, let alone planets. Even the entire galaxy is insignificant compared to the vast universe. Attacking the flatter theory as an entry point is undoubtedly a good choice. Not only is it shocking enough, but there is also too much evidence to prove the error of this argument. You only need to tear off the shackles of common sense, and there is no need for him to say anything. Those wizards you will naturally realize what is right. Lin In is also preparing to use this to test the scientific research atmosphere in the wizarding land. When faced with doubts, whether he will carefully seek verification and accept the truth, or whether he will try his best to suppress those voices that are not in line with the mainstream, will determine his future actions. Chapter 52 This is probably just a farce. After finalizing the follow-up action plan, Lin looked at Johnny again and spoke. Although we successfully escaped the pursuit of the Holy See this time, we also destroyed a very important shipping route. When we arrive at the port of Ida, we may be criticized. I will explain it then. Only then did Joni realize that they seemed to have gotten into a big trouble, and he suddenly felt uneasy. However, seeing that Lin was extremely calm, he felt a little more at ease. Next, the two of them thought about the troubles they might encounter after entering the Aida harbor, and roughly discussed the countermeasures, until finally Lin hesitated and spoke again. That's right. From now on, you can still call me Lin. This is my new pseudonym. Now that I have become a wizard, it is best not to continue to use my past identity so as not to be implicated in anything in the future. To the family, the huge sail warship drifted on the sea for a full half a month before finally breaking away from the fog. The outline of a huge island at the end of the site has appeared. Hurry up. Work harder, we are almost there. And ahead is the port of Yenna. Lauder shouted loudly and the sailors on the ship also worked hard. No one wanted to stay there any longer. In the mist, at this moment, Lin was standing on the deck and looking into the distance. As the ship gradually approached, the port city ahead was clearly visible. However, several patrol ships cruising nearby on the sea quickly surrounded them. The appearance of these ships is very strange. They look relatively flat overall, 
There is no booby pole on the hull. And there are no big and tall sails. Instead, there is a tube-like object standing on the cabin of the hull. Smoke billows out. Steamboat? Lennon looked at it with interest. And Lauder on the side saw that he was interested and explained. These alchemy ships are a unique product of the wizarding land. They are much faster than the sail warships at our feet. And they are not easily affected by strong winds. As he spoke, the sail warship slowly docked under the escort of several alchemy ships. The sailors put down the rudder and plank very skillfully. And a wizard in a blue robe was already standing at the dock waiting. Long time no see. Theodore, my old friend. Lauder strode off the boat, hugged the wizard enthusiastically, then turned a point to the two people behind him and introduced. This is Mr. Lynn and Miss Johnny. It's really rare. No outside wizard has set foot here for several days. Theodore's scrutinizing eyes stayed on the two of them for a while. And then he spoke. However, welcome to Ieta Harbor. I believe it won't be long before you completely fall in love with it. Thank you for your kind words. Mr. Theodore. Lynn responded in a neither humble nor condescending manner, while Johnny respectfully saluted to the other party. Theodore said a few simple words of courtesy, then looked at Lauder again. By the way, old cripple, why are you here in person this year? You're also driving a sailing warship. Did something happen? If he hadn't used the alchemy eyepiece to discover Lauder standing on the deck, the magic crystal cannon placed in the port would have been activated long ago. I'm afraid things are more complicated than you think. We need to meet Master Helram to explain the situation in person, Lauder said solemnly. After hearing what Lauder said so solemnly, Theodore's smile immediately shrank, and he frowned. Master Helram is not in the academy now, so I'll take you to find him. Lauder was also aware of the process. And before leaving, he specifically asked all sailors to stay on the ship and wait for review. Since the distance was not that far, a few people did not take the bus, but followed Theodore on foot towards the city. The inner city of Ida Harbor is completely different from the scene in the Empire. The black roads are clean and smooth. The streets are wide enough to accommodate three carriages running at the same time. Rows of white-walled and red roof buildings are well-proportioned, connecting the streets. The trees and flowers on the side are all trimmed to a very standard, showing a strong Western classical style. Although Johnny and Lauder had also reached the wizarding land, they were still very shocked when they revisited it again. Lin almost thought that he had traveled through time again. If the people of the Sika's empire were still living in the evil Middle Ages, then the wizarding land had jumped to the 17th and 18th centuries. Oh, look over there. How do you like it? Isn't it beautiful? Walking on a stone road leading to the depths of the city, Theodore pointed to a large fountain and a group of sculptures of various shapes in the city. It was very interesting. He introduced himself proudly. The entire Yetta Harbor was designed by Master Raphael, who is also the most famous master of architecture and sculpture in the entire wizarding land. Then he must be obsessive compulsive. Len and complained secretly in his heart. All the buildings in the entire Yetta Harbor are neatly arranged, and there is no difference at all between the left and right sides. If a decorative flower bed is placed on one side, an identical flower bed will inevitably be placed on the other side. However, after seeing the scene in the city, Lenin finally understood why most wizards would rather live in the wizarding land. No one who has experienced such an environment would be willing to return to a dirty, messy, and smelly environment, the mighty Sika's empire. Along the way, Theodore used a show-off tone to introduce everything about Yetta Harbor to several people from the road surface to the architectural design, and even the details used to make each sculpture. Then he admired the surprise and shock on everyone's faces. Expression. Whenever someone from outside the wizarding land arrives here, a strong sense of superiority will always arise in his heart. Lennon looked around this unique seaport city with great interest, scanning every building. He had only seen such an ancient architectural style in black and white photos in the database. And at the same time, he couldn't help but feel a little bit in his heart. I wonder, there are too few people on this street, right? After entering the inner city, they saw no more than a hundred people in total. Just as he was thinking about it, bursts of noise and noise suddenly came from ahead. Lin and looked ahead and realized that the huge square in the center of the city was already crowded with people, and it seemed that there was a tendency for more and more people to gather. Is there any celebration today? Lin asked slightly curiously. Theodore opened his mouth, hesitated to speak, and finally shook his head and spoke rather helplessly. No, it's probably just a farce. Chapter 53 The Girl Who Longs to Fly to the Sky That group of halflings must be up to something new. Theodore sighed, and then led a few people through the dense crowd, 
Lin In soon realized the noble status of the wizard. After seeing the badge on Theodore's chest, the extremely crowded harbor residents spontaneously gave way to an aisle. A few people quickly squeezed into the front row to see clear the scene in the center of the square. Placed on the flat and smooth stone pavement was a huge aircraft about two meters tall and with a wingspan of nearly seven meters. No, it would be inappropriate to describe it as an aircraft because it looks a bit too crude. It is just a frame made of wood and steel. The joints are tightly tied with cowhide rope. And then a layer of leather is laid on the frame. Canvas made of layered camel leather. It looked like a monster hovering on the ground, waving its wings, causing the onlookers to scream in surprise. It's so big! Johnny looked at the aircraft in astonishment. His whole body shot beyond words. Is this a newly invented alchemical device in the wizard's land? Of course not! Theodore patted his forehead and turned his face away, not daring to look at it. He just hoped that this time, he wouldn't be too embarrassed in front of outsiders. Lenin found it very interesting. He didn't expect to encounter such a strange sight just after entering the Aida Harbor. Is this a test flight? Lin saw the propeller hanging on the double-layered wing at a glance. But if only steam is used as power, I'm afraid the results will be disastrous. Although he thought so, Lin still looked at the aircraft intently. Every attempt by humans to fly is worthy of bragging. Not to mention that this world has the existence of magic. So nothing is impossible. Hey, just as he was thinking about it, Lin saw a young figure climbing neatly onto the top of the aircraft, tying the last connection point with a cowhide rope, and then sat directly in the cabin. She looked to be only eight or nine years old, wearing a dirty and dusty exquisite short robe. Her hair was messy in the wind. Her face was stained with dusty mud, and her sleeves and trouser legs were covered with dust. I tied up, wearing big windproof goggles on my head, and my whole body was full of energy and enthusiasm. So small! Why did you choose to let a child fly this aircraft? Lin asked in surprise. No, you are mistaken. Lydia is a halfling. In fact, she is already 16 years old, Theodore explained. Is that so? Lennon took a closer look and realized that the girl's ears were slightly pointed, and her pupils and hair color were also a little special. It was actually difficult to distinguish between halflings and ordinary humans in childhood. In addition, the other person's face looked very young so he didn't recognize it at all. Lydia, otherwise let's forget it. In the square at this time, several halflings were gathered around the aircraft doing final maintenance work. One of them, an old-looking halfling, put his hands on the fuselage of the aircraft and shook it vigorously a few times. It's testing the sturdiness of this thing. Of course, it would be better if it fell apart, so that the other party would have no choice but to give up this unrealistic fantasy. Don't worry, Uncle Darren. I've made all the preparations this time. I'll definitely make it happen. The girl named Lydia slapped away the other person's troublesome hand, pulled the goggles on her head hard, and pulled the goggles on her head. He placed his hand on the controller and said confidently, Okay, I'm leaving. You all should disperse. But you said the same thing last time. A group of halflings complained silently in their hearts, but still hid, mainly because they also felt that gathering here was a very embarrassing thing and it was likely to be even more embarrassing later. And although the wizards didn't say it on the surface, they definitely had objections to them occupying the city square and causing such a big mess. Chug tug tug. As bursts of smoke continued to pour out from the top of the fuselage, the steam power drove the propellers on both sides to begin to rotate. After everyone in front dispersed to make way for a passage, Lydia pulled the wrench. Using the straight street as a runway, the huge aircraft rushed straight ahead. Can this thing really fly? Johnny was extremely curious. Of course she also saw that this thing was used to lift into the air. From the appearance, it looked like a very big bird. It should be possible. But there is a high probability that it can only fly a little bit. Lin In did not sense the magic power fluctuations during the whole process. He had already met the fate of this thing. Johnny was completely confused. What does it mean to only be able to fly a little? Theodore shook his head. He felt that this thing couldn't fly at all. Independent flight is the patent of high-level wizards. Except for the Griffin Knights trained by the Sika's Empire, no one can soar freely in the sky. Under everyone's attention, the huge aircraft sped faster and faster. Rushing across the city square, a large and long slope was erected on the opposite street to provide a height difference. Lydia was extremely nervous, and her eyes under the windshield were staring straight ahead. When the aircraft under her reached the top of the slope, the girl pressed the controller hard. The aircraft vibrated its huge wings like a bird and flew directly over the slope with the final lift. It actually really flew. 
Theodore was in a mess. With a look of disbelief on his face. The civilians who were also watching this scene were also shocked. Oh my god! She really did it! Lydia is indeed a handy. She is really amazing. I even bought those gadgets she made. Which are as magical as the wizard's magic tools. She will definitely pass the selection this year. The halflings below were all crazy with joy. Dancing and cheering loudly. Lydia is the pride of halflings. She will definitely become the first halfling wizard. However, they celebrated too early. After the aircraft took off with the help of thrust, countless problems were exposed. Just as she was happy that she had successfully launched into the air, Lydia adjusted her course and planned to fly around the Aida Harbor. However, within just a few seconds, she discovered that her aircraft had lost its balance and was falling rapidly. Lydia hurriedly pulled the wrench, trying to control the wings to swing up and down, imitating the flight of a bird to provide lift. Unfortunately, it only made things worse, and the flight path of the aircraft immediately became skewed, like a sub-dragon hit by magic, spinning and falling from the air. Chapter 54 The Great Wizard Haram I knew it would be like this. Seeing the aircraft falling from the sky, Theodore couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief, and then complained softly. Master Haram shouldn't have indulged her like this. Lynn stared at the sky. The huge aircraft was shaking in midair, and the direction of its fall was this square. However, the people gathered in the square did not show any panic on their faces. So Lin and gave up his plan to take action. It seemed that there should be someone dedicated to clean up this mess. Sure enough, just when the aircraft was about to fall to the ground, several wizards in the square took action, and they all released the slow landing technique, allowing the midair aircraft to land smoothly in the center of the square. But the battered wings it had long since fallen apart, and the camel animal leather covering it had long been blown away by the wind. You can really only fly a little bit. Johnny watched the aircraft take off and land, then turned to look at Lynn, very curious as to how he knew so clearly. Steam as power alone is not enough to maintain flight, and the design of the entire aircraft body is not very aerodynamic. Falling is inevitable. Lynn shook his head and replied softly. He naturally saw this at a glance. The problem with flying an aircraft. However, this halfling girl named Lydia was able to make this aircraft using such simple materials and make it run. This was definitely an engineering genius. It is also a good idea to imitate the flapping of birds' wings to provide lift. But it is too taken for granted. It only stays on the most basic morphological learning. Only knowing it but not knowing why. In general, history has proven that there is no future in building steam airplanes. They lack power and cannot fly high or far. You mean? By changing the power source and redesigning the structure, this aircraft will be able to fly freely in the sky without relying on the power of magic at all? While the two were chatting, a gentle voice sounded from behind them. Lin turned around and looked over, and found that the speaker was an old man wearing a black robe and a round hat. He looked about 60 or 70 years old. His beard was trimmed very neatly, and there was an inexplicable glimmer in his pupils. Theodore bowed quickly when he saw the man. Master Hiram, the person coming is none other than the controller of Aida Harbor. Haram, as an extremely noble wizard. The other party was so plainly dressed that even the residents of Harbor Town around him failed to recognize him immediately. It's a great honor to meet you, Lord Haram. Lin bowed his head and saluted, expressing respect for the great wizard according to the custom here. Then he did not directly answer the other party's question, but asked instead, Alchemy ships that also use steam as power can still sail on the sea without relying on magic? Why can't they fly? Helram raised his eyebrows, finding this question very interesting while Theodore on the side spoke impatiently. Who told you that those alchemy ships have nothing to do with magic? It seems that your alchemy skills must not be very good. While talking, Theodore introduced the two methods of operating the alchemy ship to Lin. A foreign bumpkin. Either a formal wizard is responsible for controlling the alchemy machine, or magic stones are used as energy to activate the corresponding alchemy circle. Does that mean using magic to create steam? Lin In felt ashamed. He really didn't expect that those alchemy ships were not coal-burning. Is this the legendary 100 kilometers that consumes a wizard? Magic? Helram glanced at Lin in surprise. More than 20 years ago, when the steam engine was first created, it did not need to consume any magic power. After that, it was just more convenient to use magic stone as energy source. In fact, the steam engine Lydia installed on the aircraft did not use any magic. But there are few new generation wizards in Yetta Harbor, who are willing to study the basic principles of these alchemical formulas. Master Helram! While several people were chatting, Lydia had already escaped from the deformed cabin with the help of a group of halflings. 
a hole was torn in the sleeve of her robe. But the girl didn't care and hurriedly he ran up to Helram and asked with great anticipation. Am I successful? I really flew just now. You should have seen it. Right. This can't be considered a success. I can only say it is. Helram paused and jokingly repeated Lin's words. Flying a little bit. Lydia's little face immediately collapsed. Like an ostrich that had lost a fight. And then she quickly said that she had made great progress this time. And as long as she made a few more changes. This thing would definitely be successful. Flying. Helram listened patiently to Lydia's story and complaints. And then turned to look at Lynn and others. It seems that you guys have something to talk to me about. So, Theodore, you take a few guests to the academy first. I'll be there in a while. Theodore nodded. This was indeed not the place to talk. But before he could turn around and leave, Helram's voice rang out again. Besides, Theodore, if you have any dissatisfaction with me, you can tell me in person. Obviously, Haran not only heard Lin's comments about the aircraft, but also heard the other party's complaints. No, Master, what I mean is that Lydia is doing flight experiments in the square. This is too dangerous. If there is an accident, it will not only easily hurt the townspeople, but also... Theodore's expression changed. Z then paused and hurriedly explained. But Haram waved his hand and interrupted his words. Okay, I understand what you mean. Next time I will arrange a magic barrier. Your consideration is not entirely unreasonable. As the aircraft fell to the ground, the farce in the square ended. The townspeople who had satisfied their novel desires gradually dispersed amidst a burst of noise and gossip. Theodore was quite depressed and took a few people to the nearby Aida Magic Academy. It is a huge building complex standing in the center of the city, with towering spires, thick black walls, and the most conspicuous landmark building that can be seen even from outside the harbor, the Screaming Tower. Is it so difficult to become a wizard apprentice in Ida Harbor? Stepping into the gate of the academy, Lennon couldn't help but ask after thinking about the flight experiment he just saw. He had also heard it before. It seemed that the girl named Lydia had to complete this experiment in order to be qualified to join the Magic Academy. This was a bit too difficult. Doesn't everyone need to go through such trouble to get into school? No. That's just a test for Lydia. Theodore explained. Actually, Master Helam also has good intentions. None of these halflings have any magical talent. Letting her enter the academy is a complete waste of time. Chapter 55 My name is Lin In, and I am a scholar. Theodore seemed to have an extraordinary desire for expression. Seeing that Lin In and others were interested, he started to complain slightly. In recent years, Lydia has been a well-known figure in the entire Aida Harbor. This halfling kid is very keen on studying some weird things. For example, last year, we made a gadget called a fan that imitated the propellers on the alchemy ship. It can be driven by the alchemy steam device to bring a cool breeze, which is very useful in the hot summer. But who would put such a large and expensive alchemy machine at home just to blow a gust of wind? For a wizard, it is much more convenient to cast a wind-controlling magic. Of course, it is not impossible to rely on human power. So some townspeople who pursue novelty are willing to buy these gadgets, which is also the source of funds for Lydia to manufacture aircraft. If you join any alchemy workshop with Lydia's talent, you can get a good salary as an assistant. But she wants to become a wizard. This is completely asking for trouble. Theodore shook his head. Even he had to admit that this little halfling girl did have many fantastic ideas. But in the land of wizards, no halfling could successfully become a wizard. Listening to Theodore's story, Lin vaguely understood why the technology tree in the wizard's land was so messy. It was because magic was so convenient. It wasn't that many things couldn't be obtained, but that wizard simply couldn't use them. Several people walked all the way into the front hall of the academy, and apprentices in plain clothes kept bowing to Theodore halfway through. The ages of these apprentices vary. The youngest looks to be only 11 or 12 years old, and the oldest is no more than 30 years old. In other words, if they are over this age and have not yet become an official wizard, they will be judged as having no talent and will be expelled. Academy. This is it. Please wait for a moment. I will inform the other instructors in the college. Theodore arranged a few people in a large lounge, asked his apprentice assistant to serve tea, and then he walked out the door quickly. Lin sat down in a seat at the back. There were several magic books scattered on the mahogany table in front of him. They should have been taken away by a wizard who had not had time to take them away after reading them. There was also a piece of paper thrown aside casually. Lin opened the folded page curiously and immediately discovered that it was a newspaper called Magic Weekly. I didn't expect that the wizard's land even had such a thing. 
The contents on the front are all interesting things that happened in the land of wizards, while on the back are the latest theories about magic. And the author's signature is also marked below. Are the magical reactions of electricity and magnetism the same? Experiments on 24 basic elements. He's forced the power to hold up the world. The relationship between the movement of objects and gravity. Lynn flipped through Magic Weekly a few times and quickly became immersed in it. This unique perspective of analyzing the world through magic made him feel very novel. Johnny on the side was sitting upright, extremely nervous, not as casual as Lynn. Not long after, the door opened again, and Hal Ram, whom he had met before, walked in with several instructors from the academy. After sitting down on the main seat, Hal Ram did not show any politeness, but looked at Lauder and asked directly, I heard from Theodore that you have something very important to report to me personally. Did something happen in Harbor Town? I'm afraid the matter is more serious than you imagine. The entire dock in Harbor Town has been destroyed. And even the boat gang has been destroyed. Lauder spoke carefully. But before he finished speaking, a hoarse voice rang out. Could it be that the boat gang made some mistake while transporting supplies and was caught by the Holy See? The person who spoke was none other than Kevin, the professor of shaping at Aida Magic Academy. He looked about 40, tall and thin, wearing a gray robe, with a shining badge on his chest. With the words three mysterious stripes are the symbol of the three-ring wizard. Lauder quickly shook his head. He didn't want to take the blame. So he quickly explained, but from his perspective, the information he knew was very limited. He only knew that the beginning of all events was when Bishop Ansia caught Kalu, who was trying to abduct the Duke's daughter in Nordland, and then traced it all the way to the seaport. Town! I knew that this guy Kalu would definitely cause trouble. We shouldn't have let him leave the wizarding land in the first place. Philip, the elemental professor on the side, complained with dissatisfaction. Of course he knew Kalu. Before leaving the wizarding land, Kalu had been holding the position of professor of psionic science at the Aida Magic Academy. And he had also made good achievements in elements. Alchemy and shaping magic. If you continue to concentrate on studying magic, you may very well reach the realm of a great wizard in the future. However, just a few years ago, this guy didn't know why he went crazy. He suddenly left everything behind and prepared to cross the Sea of Mist and head to the Sika's Empire. This is completely like a lunatic's move compared to the land of wizards who live comfortably and can freely study magic. The Empire is completely on the other extreme. I heard that the people there live in smelly rotten wooden houses and accept the ignorant rule of the Holy See. Even the elements are do not know anything. Philip was about to continue talking but was stopped by his colleague beside him. You must know that Kara's move to go to the Sokka's empire was approved by Master Halram. Lauder did not dare to have any objections to the frequent interruptions of his words by the wizards and adults. He could only tell the whole story as fast as possible while no one was speaking. Dare to hide even a little bit. After hearing that Lin and used an extremely powerful magic to kill an archbishop, annihilate 3,000 elite guards in armor, and even raised half the city to the ground, all the professors showed confusion on their faces. The expression of belief made even Haram a little moved. Theodore even wondered if it was Lauder who messed up the matter himself, and then teamed up with a wizard named Lin to make up a random excuse to hide his fault. With various thoughts, all the wizards present looked at the two people who had never spoken. Joni and the others knew each other. For years ago, when Kalu returned to the wizarding land, Johnny followed him. But they had no impression of Lin. I haven't introduced you just now. I am Lin, a scholar of the Arcane Society in the Sika's Empire, and a good friend of Kalu. Under the attention of everyone, Lin put down the Magic Weekly in his hand. He spoke freely. This was an identity that was agreed upon with Johnny on the ship. Chapter 56 With all due respect, the theory of magic in the Land of Wizards has long been out of date. Kalu's friend, a scholar of the Arcane Society, and an official wizard. These are the three identities that Lin N has blessed himself with, which can eliminate most of the troubles he may encounter. It is not easy to expose these lies. For people in the Wizarding Land, Kara's experience after going to the Sika's Empire is completely blank. Even if he can use magic to communicate, it is impossible to cover everything. It is said that he only recently communicated with the other party. It makes perfect sense to get acquainted. Anyway, his mentor has been captured by the Holy See and taken to the Holy City counting the time. He is either being tortured or going through the trial process. It is hard to say how many days he will survive. In short, he will definitely not be able to jump out and correct him. Discourse. The only insider. Johnny. 
had been saved twice by him. And he could be regarded as having some life and death friendship. More importantly, they could both prosper and suffer, even in order not to be held accountable. The other party the only option is to shut up, as long as he can confirm his identity during this period of time. Who will believe the words of a wizard apprentice? The truth is sometimes not as true as a lie. No one wants to believe that an apprentice who has been exposed to magic for only half a year can kill an archbishop, destroy half of the seaport town, and possess extremely profound knowledge. After Lin and gave a brief introduction, all the professors present looked at each other. Theodore was the first to speak, questioningly asking, You are not a great wizard. Right. In Theodore's impression, witchcraft that can cause such large-scale destruction is at least five ring magic, and only a great wizard can defeat an enemy with one person. But Lin looked too young, probably only about twenty years old. This is obviously unreasonable. You must know that the most talented wizard in the wizarding land, August, known as the Magic Star, only became a great wizard at the age of 24. Now he is even regarded as a great wizard. He is the hope of the entire wizarding world, and the person most likely to touch the realm of legendary wizards in the future. He didn't believe that this guy who appeared out of nowhere could be more talented than Magic Star. Of course I'm not a great wizard. Being able to destroy Harbor Town was just a trick. Thanks to Mr. Lauder's help. Lin's tone did not waver at all. And he explained casually, Tricks? Theodore was stunned for a moment. And then he remembered that Lauder had said that before the conflict with the Holy See broke out. Lin had ordered him to collect a lot of basic raw materials. Is it the blessing of some powerful alchemical array? The professors of the academy were thinking hard. But they did not think of any powerful alchemical formation that required these basic raw materials. Finally, they looked at the great wizard Haram. The latter pondered for a while before speaking. I heard that a few years ago, the alchemist in the wizarding city discovered a unique alchemy formula. It doesn't even require the use of magic. As long as the amount is large enough, the power it unleashes can be comparable to some high-level magic. Lennon's face showed a slightly surprised expression. Did the alchemist in the wizarding land actually use gunpowder technology? But it's normal when you think about it. Black gunpowder is not an advanced thing. It was discovered at the end of the 9th century in its previous life. And its power is average. When he was in Harbor Town before, it was mainly because the quantity was large enough and he mixed white phosphorus into it to increase the strength that it had such a good effect. In fact, if time were not too limited, he would have to give these natives a whole big job. After Harem's testimony, Theodore and others couldn't help but heave a sigh of relief. It turned out to be some kind of alchemy product. It required hiring thousands of people and spending several days to prepare before it could exert its power. This thing could only as a trap. It will definitely not be used during battle. No matter what these college professors thought. Lin continued to talk. Kalu's trip to the capital of Nordland this time is actually to prepare to meet with another scholar from the Arcane Society to demonstrate a very important magic theory. As for abduction, cough. As for accepting disciples, it is just a cover. I didn't expect that the Vatican staff would find out the clues. Just before leaving, Kara had asked me to compile a manuscript of the Arcane Society. He had already anticipated that this meeting would probably not be that easy. If he could not come back this time, he would ask me to put these together at all costs. The precious manuscript is delivered to the seaport of Yetta. Having said this, Lin inside with regret, looked at the professors in the surrounding academy, and said in a low tone, Kara told me that the wizarding land is too closed, and there are many magic theories. I'm afraid it has long been over. Out of date. This new knowledge may bring changes to the wizarding land. Ridiculous. How dare he say that? Kevin stood up immediately after hearing this. His eyes widened. And he almost started to spray. What is the land of wizards? This is the birthplace of countless top schools. It is the center of the development of magic and the temple of wizards. They spent hundreds of years transforming this wild island into a paradise of magic. Here, every wizard strives to pursue the truth. And new elements or magic theories are discovered almost every week. Now the other party dares to say that their magic holy land is outdated and cannot keep up with the times. This is simply ridiculous. Kalu must have been away from the land of wizards for too long. And he doesn't have a thorough understanding of today's magic theory. Kevin said sarcastically. He felt that Kalu's thoughts must still be stuck on his first trip to Sika. When he was in the Sri Lankan Empire, he would be shocked when he saw one or two novel theories. Little did they know that over the years, those great wizards and legendary wizards had developed enough magic theories to fill a bookshelf. The other professors also accused Kalu of talking nonsense and tarnishing the reputation of the wizarding land. Lin didn't explain too much, 
but took out the research manuscript he had prepared before and put it on the table. Kevin took a manuscript immediately. He wanted to see what kind of novel theory could make Kalu have such unrealistic ideas. The law of free fall? The formula of kinetic energy? Huh? I knew that Kara must not have read Master Yard's magic book when he was at Aida College. As early as 200 years ago, he had already proposed the relationship between the falling speed of objects and other factors. Weight is directly proportional, which is the basis of the gravity formula. Kevin just turned the first page and read the title. He couldn't help shaking his head and sighing. But after taking a closer look at the content, he froze on the spot. Because the law of free fall in the manuscript is completely opposite to Master Yade's theory. The other party believes that when two objects with different weights are in free fall, their acceleration will be the same and they will land at the same time. False? What a fallacy! Theodore laughed angrily. Could it be that if Mount Kogel and a stone were thrown into the air, they would not land at the same time? That's ridiculous. Chapter 57 The water polo in my hand is this continent. Theodore's irritable words immediately attracted everyone's attention. Facing everyone's surprised looks, Theodore handed over the so-called research manuscript without saying anything. Kevin and others took it and looked at it one by one, with mocking looks on their faces. When the manuscript was passed to Helram, the great wizard did not laugh, because he found that the manuscript mentioned something called air resistance. Lenin just took a sip of tea and did not rush to explain. Instead, he waited for the professors of the college to read all his research materials. Although he didn't know much about the level of magic in the wizard's land, Kalu had left him two basic books, Elemental Analysis and Basic Magic. These manuscripts he wrote were all written in the wizard's land. The existing theory has been extended, and it is very easy to verify. In just five or six minutes, these dozen pages of manuscripts were read by a group of wizards. Since the so-called law of free fall was too unreliable, they only scanned the remaining content very roughly. And then I was surprised to find that there was an even more outrageous argument in the manuscript than this one. Listen. Your name is Lin. Right. I don't know what Carrie's intentions are in letting you give this ridiculous manuscript to the wizarding land. But with all due respect to the arcane society, the theory of magic is simply riddled with holes. Kevin threw the paper in his hand casually on the table and said rather speechlessly, And you actually think that the continent under your feet is a round ball? This is really ridiculous. Why can't the world be spherical? No one has verified it yet. Lennon put down the teacup in his hand leisurely. Although due to ability issues, he has not been able to fly into space to completely confirm this. The fact that he can stand here can already explain a lot of problems. For example, the mass and gravity of the planet under his feet must be very close to that of the Earth. Because there is almost no difference in the gravity he feels. The changes of the four seasons, and the sun, and the moon can also be used as evidence of the rotation of the planet, and its revolution around the stars. After leaving the Sea of Mist, the first thing he saw when he looked at the port was the top of the screaming tower. And then it's the tower. The most critical thing is the star map. As long as the stars are placed in the center, a perfect galaxy movement map can be constructed. This is the most direct evidence. If it weren't for the fact that the star map showed that there were only five planets orbiting this star, Lin would have begun to wonder if this was the Earth in another parallel world. Because they are so similar. Since yet a harbor faces the sea, I don't know if I have ever used farsighted magic or alchemy goggles to look at the sea on weekdays. If so, I think you should be able to notice that when the sailboat gradually approaches from the distance, it must be you see the sail first, then the hull. As he spoke, Lin and opened his hand. Under the surge of magic power, a huge and turbid water ball appeared in front of everyone. And then he inserted a feather straight into the water. Then the water began to surge. And the quill rotated straight from the bottom to the top. The first thing you saw was the tip of the top of the feather. The wizards present immediately understood what Lenin meant. The entire huge water ball was like the continent under their feet. And the quill was the ship. If the continent was flat, then they would see the entire hull from far to near. That's right. Only when the surface forms an arc will the sails be visible first. That seems to be the case. Theodore frowned. Every year on Sunday, he would go to the port terminal to receive new visitors. Sometimes he needed to use far-sighted magic. It was indeed the same as Len said. Every time the first thing I saw was the sail appearing on the sea level. This theory seemed to make some sense. But Theodore always felt that something was wrong. This does not mean that this continent is a sphere. It is probably a semi-arc. This makes sense, doesn't it? Another college professor eagerly retorted. And according to what you said, under the influence of gravity, the seawater above should have flowed downwards long ago. While talking, 
The college professor also followed Lennon's example and directly made a soil ball to simulate the continent and then attached a layer of water flow to the surface. Then he released the mage's hand and the water immediately flowed downwards, breaking away from the earth ball, forming a puddle on the table. Look, it's like this. This is totally not going to work, the college professor said proudly. And Theodore and the others nodded. Doesn't it mean that the water won't fall downwards if the continent is a semi-arc? Lin and asked speechlessly. All the college professors were immediately stunned. The far-sighted phenomenon of ships at sea showed that the seawater was most likely attached to the arc-shaped land. So the water would inevitably flow downward and would never stay in place. This is totally inconsistent with common sense. Before they could think clearly, Lin continued to speak. Also, how do we determine which side is down? Does that need to be said? Of course the sky is up and the land is down. This is guided by gravity. Theodore frowned and said. He didn't understand why the other party asked such a stupid question. Really? What about this? Lennon raised his eyebrows. Remove the water ball. Put his hand on the earth ball made by the college professor. Activated Mage's hand. And the originally soft earth ball slowly compressed inward. And finally turned into a solid ball. If the force given by Mage's hand is regarded as gravity. For the center of the earth ball. Which side is up and which side is down? Theodore was completely stunned. Lennon's metaphor of the continent using an earth ball was very simple and easy to understand. He naturally understood it very well. But it was precisely because he could understand it that he couldn't hide the shock in his heart. For the center of the sphere, there is gravity on all sides. So the top, front, rear, left, right, and bottom are located at the center of the sphere. So the water flow will inevitably adhere to the sphere. The professors present also saw this and started a heated discussion. Kevin was completely unwilling to believe in this so-called planet theory and insisted that the continent was flat and that the farsightedness of the sailboat was a coincidence and could not be used as a direct result. Evidence of Philip and others hold the opposite opinion. They believe that Lynn's words may not be unreasonable. At least it is a reasonable theory that can be used for reference research to confirm its authenticity. While everyone was arguing with each other, Theodore looked at Lennon and asked again, You mean there is a force compressing everything toward the center of the continent? That's why the water can stay on the surface of the continent. Before Lin could answer, Helram, who had been flipping through the manuscript, finally spoke. The truth should be exactly the opposite. There is some kind of force in the center of the continent that spreads to all sides, forming a gravitational field. Dragging everything to collapse inwards is what you want to express. Right. Chapter 58 Truth Can Withstand Any Form of Test Yes, that's exactly what I meant. Master Helram. Lennon nodded looked around at everyone present, then spun the newspaper in front of him half a circle and pushed it in front of everyone. I don't know if you have read this week's Magic Weekly. The legendary wizard Hera proposed that gravity may exist widely in any object, not just the continent under your feet. Speaking of this, Lennon also felt a little emotional. After reading the other party's paper published in Magic Weekly, he was shocked to realize that this was not the preliminary idea of gravity. I just don't know how far this legendary wizard has gone in his research. Have you figured out the law of universal gravitation? And do you know what the nature of gravity is? In any case, this just proves his theory. Because in the description of this paper, gravity is not just a downward pulling force, but will affect the whole body, and may even affect and distort space. Master Hera's argument is indeed very exciting and cannot be refuted. But just using it as an argument to completely reject the flat earth theory lacks some persuasiveness. Haram said thoughtfully. In fact, after reading the manuscript, he is also more inclined to believe that the flat earth theory is wrong. But Helram also knew that this was a theory that could shake the entire wizarding land's understanding of the world. Once it was published in Magic Weekly, you can imagine how much controversy it would cause. So he had no choice but to be cautious. I have read your star map. And the theory of rotation and revolution mentioned above is also very interesting. Well, I will send this theory to several great wizards who have made achievements in gravity research. If I can get there if you agree, it won't be too late to publish it in Magic Weekly, Helram said solemnly. Of course, there is no problem. The truth can withstand any form of testing. Lin nodded. What he wrote on the manuscript were the purest theories. It would be great to have professionals confirm it. Then let's end the topic of flat earth theory and planet theory. Helram skipped this topic, then took out another manuscript and continued. This law of free fall is also very interesting. Can you explain it to me in detail? If I am not mistaken, it should also be related to gravity. 
I think a direct experiment can better illustrate the problem. Lenin shrugged. Practice is the only criterion for testing truth. Then according to this law, the falling speed of a feather and this earth ball should be exactly the same. Kevin, who had been listening to the conversation between the two before, but couldn't find a chance to interrupt, couldn't wait to speak. He admitted that the planetary theory developed by the arcane society could indeed be a school of its own. But this so-called law of falling bodies was pure nonsense. Kevin directly activated Mage's hand to lift the solid earth ball on the table and used the same method to shoot the quill high into the sky and then directly canceled the casting and the two at the same height fell together. In just two seconds, the earthen ball hit the ground heavily and broke into several pieces. It took more than ten seconds for the quill to fall to the ground. Seeing this result, the wizards present looked at Lin together with sarcastic or playful expressions on their faces. This is just the effect of air resistance. Why not try to conduct the experiment in a vacuum? Lin In said very calmly. During the half month of wandering in the sea of mist, he had already made a simple version in advance. The small ball experiment naturally does not worry about the possibility of overturning. Vacuum? A group of college professors pondered this new term. And under Lin Un's explanation, they quickly understood its meaning. Helrim thought for a moment and asked everyone to step back, then slowly stretched out his hand and tapped it lightly. Lin and immediately clearly sensed that the elements in front of him were being stripped away at an extremely fast speed under some inexplicable force. After a moment, a rectangular vacuum field four meters long, wide, and seven meters high appeared, appeared in front of everyone. Seeing how easily Helram created and maintained a large vacuum field, Lin couldn't help but feel a little surprised. Don't look at the fact that when he was in the slums, he sucked away the oxygen around him and tricked the witch hunter. But in fact the air was constantly circulating. And what he created was just a small temporary low oxygen zone. The power of the great wizard is much stronger than that of the official wizard. Lenin then spoke to test. But he did not expect that the other party could do this so easily. Helrim took the quill and used magic to create a solid iron ball, placing both in the vacuum field at the same time. Two objects whose weights differ by a thousand times fall simultaneously. The expressions of Theodore and others gradually changed from casual to frightened at this moment. Their eyes were widened, and they stared at this scene, because the quill pin and the solid iron ball actually fell at the same speed. Really? This is actually true? Philip murmured in shock. This is impossible! Master Hellram! Could it be that you accelerated the falling speed of the quill? Kevin stood up suddenly, looked at Hellram, and couldn't help but ask. These words were undoubtedly offensive. But Kevin obviously didn't care anymore. Hellram ignored him and continued to experiment, replacing the iron balls and feathers with other materials, such as wood, stones, and water droplets. The results of the experiments are also exactly the same. Seeing this, no matter what the mood of the professors present was, they had to admit that the law of free fall in the manuscript was a fact. Is Master Yade's theory completely wrong? The puzzlement on Kevin's face never faded from beginning to end. No, there is nothing wrong with this theory. It is an interpretation of air resistance. Lin shook his head and said calmly, The reason why Yard's theory can prevail and be recognized by most wizards must be because this theory explains some natural phenomena. For example, the knowledge of fluid mechanics used by his teacher Kalu when improving Ice Blade was based on the extension of Yade's theory. When Lin In was looking through Magic Weekly, he even discovered that some wizards integrated air resistance into the influence of gravity and believe that the reason why the air and elements are constantly moving is because of the effect of gravity. This is undoubtedly a very confusing hypothesis. However, Lin In will never laugh at or look down on the other party because of this. In the process of exploring the truth of the world, there are always countless fallacies. Whether in history or in modern times, scholars from all walks of life can often put forward many different hypotheses for the same physical phenomenon, each of which sounds reasonable and can explain part of the phenomenon. It's just that with the passage of time and continuous verification, the truth finally defeated the fallacy. The reason why he can sit here and talk is not because he is smarter than everyone present but because he stands on the shoulders of giants. Chapter 59 Forbidden Psychic Magic The free fall experiment ended soon. When Helram withdrew the vacuum field, the professors could not recover from the previous shock. It seems Kalu is right. Some of the theories in the wizarding land are indeed out of date compared to the outside world, Helram said with emotion. In addition to planetary theory and kinetic energy formulas, Lin's research manuscript also contains several unverified theories which were proved using many symbols that he could not understand at all. 
they were definitely different from the existing calculation methods in the wizarding land. When Theodore, Kevin and others heard this, they all looked awkward, but they did not say anything to refute. The population of the wizarding land is still too small. Philip on the side couldn't help but sigh. Although after hundreds of years of development, the refuge of a small group of escaped wizards has developed into today's magic holy land. But even so, the wizarding land only has a population of 600,000. And the official wizards are only about 7,000. And the great wizards are even more there are only 7 legendary wizards. Outside the land of wizards, the Sika's empire alone has a population of 20 million. Even if it is pursued by the Holy See, the number of official wizards must be several times that here. It is not impossible to develop some theories before them. Matter. Mr. Lin, thank you for taking the risk to bring this precious research manuscript to the wizarding land. At this point, Halrem paused and then spoke again. I have a merciless request. I want to hire you as a teaching professor at Aida College to open a separate subject and teach you some novel knowledge about the secret society. It can be seen from the operation symbols in the manuscript that he cannot understand. The knowledge of the arcane society is definitely systematic, and special study is required to know the meaning of these symbols. If Len N agrees, then when these theories are published in the future, Aida College will naturally become famous, facing the olive branch thrown by Hiram. Lin's mind was full of thoughts. Thinking about the pros and cons, there are many benefits to joining Ida Academy. First of all, all his identity problems can be solved easily. And he also has a backer. Secondly, he can use the name of the professor to read the magic books in the academy to make up for his lack of magic knowledge. The disadvantage is that Ida Academy is not a top institution with legendary wizards. And it is hard to say how well it can withstand pressure. If he comes up with a more subversive theory next time, Helrem may not be able to handle it. After thinking for a long time, Lin nodded and agreed. Judging from the contact with the great wizard after entering the port, Herlam was not an arrogant and stubborn person. He could tolerate a group of halflings conducting flight experiments in the square. And he was not eager to speak out about the various theories he proposed. Question. It should be a very suitable partner. Reliability always comes first. If you meet a guy like a famous inventor who likes to take other people's research results as his own, then you are really screwed. After Lin and agreed to take up the professorship, the atmosphere on the court immediately relaxed. Even Kevin, who was the most opposed before, was no longer as tit-for-tat as before. After all, if this knowledge could be verified, the entire Iata College all can benefit from this. As for the explosion in Harbor Town and the destruction of important transportation routes, no one mentioned it anymore. After all, even if they wanted to be held accountable, they didn't know who should be held accountable. Blame Lin? Are you kidding me? As Kalu's friend, the other party took the risk of being arrested by the Holy See and took great pains to send back the novel knowledge of the Arcane Society and Kalu's apprentices, and then put the blame on the other party. Is this appropriate? This is inappropriate. On the contrary, the entire Ayata Academy owed the other party a favor. As for Johnny and Lauder, one is a wizard apprentice who was brought back without knowing anything, and the other has worked in Nordland for decades as a wizarding land. They have no credit but hard work, and it is not easy to hold them accountable. In view of these points, they had no choice but to accept that the wizarding land had lost an important transportation route. By the way, Master Helram, when we fought against Bishop Antioch in the seaport town, one of Kalu's apprentices suffered a magical backlash. I wonder if there is any chance of treatment. Lin and suddenly thought of it. Knowing this, he spoke out. Then let's go take a look. Helram stood up and walked towards the reception room with several professors who were also interested. Ten minutes later, Lin and others returned to the dock. The sailors of the ship gang were still detained here. After Lauder calmed the emotions of these people, he entered the bottom of the cabin of the sailing battleship with everyone. A huge ice coffin appeared in front of everyone, and a girl of 13 or 14 years old lay quietly in it, her face as pale as paper, her eyes closed tightly, making it difficult to determine whether she was unconscious or already dead. Using freezing to maintain the lowest body functions? Kevin, a professor of plastic surgery, nodded. In this way, there might be a possibility of treatment. However, after melting the ice and inspecting it carefully, Kevin became a little confused again. There's nothing serious about her body, but she must have suffered a serious mental injury. Can you tell me what kind of magic she suffered the backlash when she released it? It's Soul Scream, Lin explained. She is a psychic? Philip's brows immediately wrinkled and he asked abruptly, Is there anything wrong? 
Lin asked in confusion. There's nothing wrong with this. But there are no working psychic wizards in Ayata Harbor now. Philip sighed. And then explained to Lin. Three years ago, a tragic event occurred in the Land of Wizards. The psionic school founded by the great wizard Mott caused the death of thousands of people in the entire village during a special psychic experiment. This incident made the entire wizard council furious. After sending three great wizards to directly destroy this school, they suddenly banned each school from studying psychic magic in private. Those psychic wizards, who are recorded in the policy, and want to continue to learn witchcraft must join the newly established psychic academy in the wizard city and accept corresponding controls. There are rumors that those evil mages have developed a forbidden spiritual magic. But I'm afraid only the legendary wizards know the specific reason, Philip said helplessly. Because of this, after Kalu left, Ayata College did not recruit the next professor of psionic science. Because there was no need for it. Hearing this, Lin was also a little shocked. What kind of forbidden magic could actually allow the wizards' council to impose such strict restrictions on an entire genre? Chapter 63 Elements to Become an Official Wizard I'm afraid that only by going to the wizarding city and finding wizards who are proficient in psychic powers can we have some hope of treatment. Philip shook his head inside and told Lin not to have too much hope. Although the girl's body is frozen, it seems that there is no change. It has been more than half a month now, and her soul may have dissipated long ago. Hearing what Philip said, Lin was a little disappointed. He didn't have much friendship with Baigu, but the other party only used Soul Scream to help him defeat Anjuk so he always tried his best to save Baiku. And four. Let's freeze it first. I happen to know a master of psionic science who may be able to help. If he is free, Helram said suddenly. Kevin. Philip and others looked at Helram in surprise. In order to treat a wizard apprentice who was probably dead, it would be a bit of a fuss to ask a master of psionic science. Only Orlando's face showed a look of helplessness. And he knew it would be like this. Thank you very much. Master Helram. Johnny bowed with great emotion. Lin was also slightly surprised and expressed his gratitude to the great wizard. At Helram's suggestion, the refrozen white pigeon was moved to the medical room of Aida College, while Lin and Johnny were taken to the professor's and student's residences respectively. Professor Lin, this will be your residence from now on. Theodore led Lin into a room. Lin has been looking at the surrounding environment since he entered the door. The whole room looks very spacious. It is not just a bedroom for rest. It is also equipped with a small alchemy table, experimental vessels for grinding herbs, bookcases, and beds. Tables and chairs are also very complete, which is already considered luxurious in this era. This is how people should live. Lin inside secretly in his heart. In comparison, when he was hiding from the Holy See in the Sika's empire, he slept on a wooden bed made of thatch, ate unpalatable black bread, and lived like a refugee. Same. Sure enough, Taking the risk to go to the wizard's land was an extremely correct decision. If there is anything missing, you can apply to Master Helram again, Theodore added, but preferably something related to teaching. Okay, I'll remember it, if necessary. Lennon nodded. He would not let go of the opportunity to have sex for free. By the way, Mr. Theodore, can the coins of the Sika's empire still be used here? Lin continued to ask. Theodore shook his head. Of course not but you can go to the gold exchange at the port and exchange these gold coins for the currency here. The ratio is about two Sika's gold coins for one magic gold coin. In addition, as a professor in the college, you can receive three magic gold coins as a basic salary at the beginning of each month, as well as an uncertain amount of research funding. The amount of funding depends on the number of students taking new courses. Theodore briefly explained the professor's salary, the currency exchange process, and the currency system of the wizarding land. Seeing that Lin had no other questions, he took his leave. The moment the door was completely closed, the calm expression on Lin's face suddenly stopped, and he turned to sit on the chair next to him, with a vague expression of fear on his face. It is of course impossible to say that you are not worried at all when you lie in front of a great wizard who is far more powerful than yourself. Any lie has the possibility of being exposed. If things in Harbor Town hadn't been too big, Lin would never have come up with this idea. Fortunately, the result was as he expected. Now the most difficult stage was finally over. And the situation was better than he expected. Not only did they not receive any punishment, but they also received a certain degree of preferential treatment. Then the most important thing next is to fix the last flaw and become an official wizard. Lin tapped her index finger on the armrest of the chair, thinking constantly in her mind. Just now, when Theodore told him about the professor's responsibilities, 
He also mentioned in detail the methods for the admission and subsequent promotion of residents of this seaport city. Generally speaking, at the beginning of each year, children in the harbor city who have reached the age of 12 will have an opportunity to test their magical talents. If they pass successfully, they will pay a tuition fee and be charged by Yetta Academy. Becoming Glorious Wizard Apprentice After several years of training, when the growth of magic power stagnated, the final bottleneck was broken by taking a potion called Source of Magic Power. Of course, this kind of magic potion is not easy to obtain. It is distributed directly by the Wizard City. According to the rules of Eda College, apprentices need to complete one or two subjects and then obtain the recognition and recommendation from the professors of the relevant colleges. Lennon could tell at a glance that these were major colleges. And even the Wizards Council wanted to monopolize the rights of civilians to be promoted to wizards. Of course, on the surface, the reason given by the Wizards Council is very high-sounding, which is to prevent some apprentices with evil intentions from obtaining more powerful magic power. He now has the status of a professor at the academy, and theoretically has the qualification to apply to the parliament for promotion of potions for a certain apprentice. However, doing so means that he needs to intercept this bottle of source of magic in private, and not only needs to go through the process. And there is also the risk of being reported. The second channel is to bypass the academy and wizard's council and obtain potion through other methods. For example, buy from the black market. Wherever there is demand, there will be sales. It just depends on whether the price is enough. Since source of magic is a magic potion, there must be a potion master who knows how to make it. If you can find a way to obtain the formula of this potion, it is of course the safest to make it yourself. Thinking of this, Lin and gathered his complicated thoughts and began his daily routine of meditation. The endless sea of elements once again appeared in front of him. In any case, before he could obtain the promotion potion, he must make his total magic and spiritual power reach perfection. The original Carl was just an ordinary wizard apprentice and had only been exposed to magic for about half a year. Fortunately, during the time travel, the fusion of souls gave him a surge in mental power and the amount of magic power his body could hold also increased. According to the marginal theory of magic power growth in basic magic, in about two to three months, he you can reach that bottleneck, the money that may be needed to purchase the source of magic power, the information about the magic potion, and the time required to increase the magic power. These are the three factors that prevent him from becoming an official wizard. Chapter 61 Olympiad Subjects Early the next morning, after meditating all night, Lennon opened the door and walked out after a simple wash. He happened to bump into Philip, the professor of elemental science, who was going out. Professor Lin, did you have a good rest last night? Philip greeted with a smile. It's very good. The conditions here are much more comfortable than those in the Sika's empire. Lennon also had a smile on his face. From today on, he no longer has to worry about the threat of the Holy See all day long. Of course. I heard that the poor people there live in houses made of thatch and stone bricks. Is that true? Philip asked curiously. For Philip, who was born in the land of wizards, all he knew about the Sika's empire came from rumors. Every Sunday, he liked to go to the tavern on the dock and listen to the sailors tell interesting stories about the outside world. As far as the poor are concerned, this is true. But the nobles and priests also live a very luxurious life. Lin In saw Philip's interest so he gave him a general introduction to the empire based on the memory of his original body. Carl. And the Holy See. Since you have fought against the Archbishop. Do you know how these people use magic? Do they also need to learn knowledge about elements? Shaping or alchemy? Philip asked again. I think it shouldn't be necessary. Lin shook his head. Judging from Nordland's priest selection process. Clergy only need to be able to fight and have a strong belief in gods. This is also a question that he has never understood. Is it possible that besides exploring the truth, there are other ways to obtain power? Philip did not delve too deeply into this point. After satisfying some curiosity, he took the initiative to introduce every area of Aida College to Lin. Aida Academy covers an area of more than 20,000 square meters. The iconic Screaming Tower is located in the center of the academy. Behind it are the residences of students and professors. The Magic Library and Combat Training Venue are set up on the right side of the academy. The remaining areas are convenient. It is the teaching area for each subject. Elements. Shaping. Alchemy. Potions. These are the four major disciplines of Eda College now. In addition, in the City of Wizards, some top academies also offer special courses such as Prophecy and Force Fields. There used to be a place for psychic studies, but it's abandoned now. 
It will be your teaching place in the future. Philip pointed to the independent building next to the screaming tower and said, The entire psychic academy looks a bit gloomy and is covered by thick gray walls. Probably because no one has visited it for too long. The walls are covered with moss and look a bit dilapidated. I'll find some goblins to come and clean this place later. It should be ready for normal use in the afternoon. Those psychic wizards are chattering away all day long. It's really a big deal that the council banned them. Good thing, Philip said with some gloating, and then told Lynn about the course arrangements. As a professor, you can freely arrange your class time, but it is best to fix it and try not to conflict with other professors' teaching time. Otherwise, the apprentices will have to choose between two courses. However, after Philip finished talking about the time schedule of the four existing courses, Lynn immediately discovered that what he had said before was all nonsense. Because almost every day was full of various courses. And the new course he opened must be in line with the schedule. Other subjects take up time. Elements is the subject with the most elected students at Yetta College. Classes usually start from 10 to 12 in the morning and from 7 to 9 in the evening. Philip reminded him kindly. The meaning was obvious. During these two periods, Lennon would don't think about it. Not many people will come to listen to his new class. Lynn nodded noncommittally, and Philip asked again, Have you already thought of a name for the new subject? Why don't we just call it Mathematical Olympiad? Lynn said thoughtfully. After accepting the position of professor, Lynn has been thinking about what she should teach. Magic definitely won't work. The total amount of magic he has mastered so far is less than 10, and maybe not as many as some students. Teaching them will only make people laugh, unless he is willing to teach the method of making white phosphorus. However, this thing is one of the few trump cards he has. Lin In is not prepared to spread this thing. So he can only choose the subjects from his previous life. Chinese, geography, and biology are influenced by the world and are not suitable as teaching content. Chemistry is very good, but it conflicts with the elemental subject. He can't just compete with Philip when he comes here. Right? This is a bit unorthodox. And maybe there are some novel elements in this different world that he doesn't know about. So it's better not to teach them randomly. As for physics, he scribbled down a formula and the other party had to understand the arithmetic symbols. The only option is math. Whether the world is round or square, the basic calculation rules must be universal. Mathematics is the foundation of all science and technology and the most important tool for humans to understand and transform the world. It can be said that most scientific theories can be expressed in the form of mathematical formulas. This subject is always at the forefront of the times. Many cutting-edge scientific research results are completely derived using mathematics. Those magic theories should be no exception. For example, the Harem's formula he used when learning magic missile, and Kayla's research on fluid mechanics all involve a lot of knowledge of mathematical operations. It can be seen that wizards have begun to study mathematics early, but they have not yet formed a specialized discipline. The reason is very simple. Wizards cannot directly obtain power from mathematics. They all benefit from it indirectly, and use it in some kind of magic. This also leads to the fact that all mathematical formulas are explained in various disciplines. And sometimes even the operation methods and symbols cannot be unified. After Lynn briefly described the meaning of the Olympiad, Philip's expression became a little strange. He thought that Lynn would specifically talk about the novel theories from the arcane society in the new course. But he did not expect that it would be some simple calculation method. Are there really students dedicated to learning this kind of thing? Philip opened his mouth, but hesitated. He felt that if Lynn only taught these things, he might not even be able to recruit an apprentice. However, it is the freedom of every professor to choose what to teach. And it is not easy for Philip to give any suggestions. He secretly thought that he would mention this new course to the students during class later, so that Lynn would not be alone when teaching the course. None. It's embarrassing. Chapter 62 Currency Exchange and the First Lesson This is the money exchange! On the west side of Ida Harbor. Philip led Lynn into a sparkling and luxuriously decorated shop. The floor was paved with pure white marble, as smooth as a mirror, and two majestic hangings hung on the wall, the head of a griffin, its sharp eagle eyes fixed on every guest coming in and out. In the center of the hall is a large incandescent mushroom lamp. This strange, self-illuminating magical plant usually only exists in the darkest caves, mixed with dirty and dangerous creatures such as rats and corpses. Together, the price usually ranges from 12 to 30 magic gold coins. In addition to exchanging currency, you can also store excess coins here. As long as you show the voucher, you can exchange for the corresponding magic gold coins in any city in the wizarding land. But you will have to pay a certain additional storage fee. Philip continued to speak. 
Isn't this the prototype of a bank? You already have the storage function of a bank. But depositing money here not only earns no interest, but also requires additional payments. In this aspect alone, it is more similar to a bank. Lennon was thinking this way, and soon discovered that the gold exchange was extremely lively today. Hundreds of people were crowded in the hall, seemingly arguing about something. Moreover, he actually knew these people. They were none other than Lauder and his sailors. Take all your garbage away. We don't accept black we're here, and we don't accept copper coins either. A middle-aged man in a gray robe with a copper badge on his chest shouted impatiently at Lauder and others. When he saw Philip walking in, his face immediately changed. With a heartwarming smile on his face, he pushed away the sailors blocking the way and greeted happily. Ah, oh, it's Professor Philip. It's really rare. Why are you free to come here today? I haven't seen you for a while. Albert, it seems that you found a very good job after graduation. Philip introduced the two of them with a smile. Albert, a graduate of the ninth batch of students from Yetta Harbor, is an official wizard who specializes in elements and shaping. As for this one, he is the new Olympiad professor of Iata College, Your Excellency Lin. Philip pointed at Lin and said, Good morning, Professor Lin. I heard from the sailors in the tavern last night that you led them to defeat the whirlpool called Eye of Death in the Sea of Mist. That must be a very profound magic, Bert boasted, not looking down upon Lin just because he looked young. The professors at Iata Academy are usually three-ring wizards with profound knowledge in a certain field. The younger they are, the higher their magical talent is and the more likely they are to become a noble wizard in the future. Good morning, Mr. Albert. I am here to exchange some coins, Lenin said politely, and then took out 12 Sika's gold coins, 27 silver, and 11 coppers. All the property he had was looted from the two bishops who were killed in Harbor Town. Copper coins can't be redeemed. Right. Lenin thought about what the other party had said before, and then took away the dozen copper coins. Ahem. Of course this is not the case. It's just that it would be more troublesome to convert the value of copper coins. Albert shook his head in embarrassment and used Mage's hand to take away the coins without waiting for Lin to move, hand it to the assistant on the side, and asked the other party to get the corresponding magic gold coins. Immediately afterwards, Albert complained and explained a few words. Many of these copper coins from the Sika's empire were of different sizes, and even the copper content was inconsistent. It was obvious that some imperial nobles had secretly minted them on their own and the conversion was too much. Trouble. More than ten seconds later, the apprentice assistant came back with an exquisite money bag in his hand. Please keep it. Professor Lin. Albert put the money bag into Lin's hand with a smile. Lennon opened it and took a look. His expression became a little surprised, because the amount inside was quite a lot. Exactly twelve gold, twenty-seven silver, and eleven copper. Didn't you say that the currency exchange ratio is two to one? Lennon held the money bag in his hand and asked in confusion. That's just the crafting fee for recasting. Since you are a professor at the college, it seems inappropriate to charge this fee, Albert said with a little flattery. Lin did not reply but picked up a magic gold coin and looked at it. Compared with the currency of the Sika's empire, the workmanship was much more exquisite. There was a gold, symbol engraved on the front and the unique mark of the wizard's council on the back. Not only that, he also vaguely felt the slight fluctuation of magic power. This is not just a simple recasting. Lin looked at Albert. Without a suitable reason, he was not prepared to accept such a good offer for nothing. My son Alok is currently studying magic at Aida College. If possible, please take care of him, Albert said sheepishly. So that's it. Lin nodded and then put the money bag away. Since the other party works in a gold exchange office, there may be opportunities to deal with the other party again in the future. Sometimes accepting good intentions can also bring the relationship closer. If Alok chooses this course, I will pay attention to it. But first, my mathematical Olympiad class is very difficult. Lin reminded kindly. It doesn't matter. My son is never afraid to do difficult things. Albert said confidently, not paying attention to Lin's vigilance. That's good. Lin and nodded assuredly. Seeing a few people talking seemed to be very happy. And Lauder on the side couldn't help it at this time seized the opportunity, and asked, Sir Albert, look at these copper coins in our hands. Then let's change them all. Albert waved his hands helplessly. He naturally knew that Lauder and Lin crossed the sea together. Now that Lin N is standing here, this bit of face must still be given. But the relevant handling fees cannot be less. Under the influence of magic, more than 5,000 copper coins were quickly counted out. 
As for the copper content, we could only randomly select a few and measure them and calculate based on the lowest. About two or three minutes later, Lauder received 2,000 exchanged magic copper coins and distributed them immediately. The expressions of all the sailors and boatmen were about to cry. They looked like migrant workers who had worked hard for a whole year to get reduced wages. They looked pitiful. Thank you, Mr. Lenin. If we hadn't happened to meet here, many brothers in the ship gang would have been hungry and cold, Lauder said with emotion. When he was in Harbor Town, he was a prominent figure. But when he arrived in the Wizarding Land, his identity and status plummeted, especially since most of the belongings he had accumulated over the years were thrown into the maelstrom. Although he would not become a pauper, but it also cut off the possibility of him living a comfortable life. The sailors of the ship gang were even worse. Some of them only had a few dozen copper coins left on their bodies, and the gold exchange station would not exchange them. This was the reason why he insisted on blocking here and wanted Albert to be accommodating. There's no need to thank me. Mr. Albert is just following the rules. Lynn shook his head, paused, and then asked again. Have you guys thought about what you want to do in the future? Sundays are only a few days a year. It would be impossible for Lauder and others to go back in a short time. Hellram would probably not let these people who know the Wizarding Land leave easily. It is very likely that they would have to ask for help. Been here all my life. I'll probably find some transportation work next, Lauder said hesitantly, then looked at Lin and asked again tentatively. Your Excellency Lin In, if there is anything you can do to use us, please feel free to give us your instructions. If we have the chance to talk, Lin neither agreed nor refused. After a simple reply, he and Philip walked out of the money exchange. Lauder lowered his head and glanced at the flame-shaped mark carved on the back of his right hand, his mind racing with thoughts. Before on the Sea of Mist, he originally wanted to remind Lin indirectly to eliminate the magic mark that might endanger his life. But after experiencing the Maelstrom incident, the thoughts in Lauder's mind changed 180 times. Degree of change. Without the route from the seaport town to the wizarding land, the entire ship gang has no value to the great wizard Haram. After losing a large amount of treasure, Lauder knew that they urgently needed to find a new backer. Otherwise, all 300 members of the ship gang would starve to death. And Lin is undoubtedly the best choice. Although the contact lasted only half a month, the ability, talent and method shown by the other party were enough to frighten Lauder. Not only did he easily find himself hiding in the dark, but he also relied on his own strength to the force destroyed half of the harbor town. Lauder has no doubt about the possibility of the other party becoming a great wizard or even a legendary wizard. Now is the time to make the most profit by placing a bet. It was with this idea in mind that Lauder kept the flame mark on his right hand. His past experience told him that sometimes life in the hands of others can gain more benefits, and the other party will feel more confident in using it. However, what he didn't expect was that after arriving at the Wizarding Land, Lin directly joined Aida College and became an in-service professor. He had all the reputation, status, and money, but it seemed that he could not use them, Bo Gang place. Lauder was helpless. It seemed pointless for the more than 300 of them to force their way in. Obviously, they still lacked a more suitable opportunity to contact Mr. Lin in. On the other side, Lin, who had just separated from Philip and returned to the room, was thinking about how to earn more magic gold coins. As a professor at the academy, the salary of three gold coins per month seems to be a lot. It is enough to support a family of civilians in the Sika's empire for a year or two. But it is somewhat beyond the means to spend on learning magic, especially alchemy and potions. This subject can only be described as spending money like running water. Not to mention that he is also considering purchasing the source of magic on the black market, which would require at least hundreds of magic gold coins. This salary is too small in comparison. Recruiting more apprentices is a way out. The more students there are in Olympiad subjects, the more reasons he will have to apply for various funds from Hellam. And then secretly embezzled. Phew. It should be said that those teaching funds are used more rationally. After all, only by improving his strength as a professor can he teach better. In addition, making some novel gadgets for sale is also a good choice. But this requires finding someone to do the work for him. Otherwise it will only delay the time spent on studying magic. Those halflings might be a good choice. Lin In was thinking to himself. Yesterday's flight experiment over the city square was still fresh in his memory. He could build a steam plane using such crude materials. That girl named Delia's engineering talent was so high. Surprisingly, it met his requirements. It shouldn't be difficult to recruit the other party as his apprentice and assistant. Although Delia has no magic talent, 
She has received Hiram's promise. Is it difficult to fly into the sky without using magic? While Lennon was thinking about it, he picked up a quill and wrote, and drew on the open papyrus. This was not studying how to fly into the sky, but preparing for tomorrow's mathematical Olympiad course. It would be difficult to maintain the basis of his status as a professor if he messed up in the first class. Things have to be done one by one. At 8 o'clock the next morning, when Lin, who had put on a new uniform, came to the Psychic Academy again, the place had been tidied up, and the sign had been replaced with Olympiad. Obviously Philip had he reported his subject name. A dozen goblins, only 40 centimeters tall, were holding water-soaked cloth strips and immersed themselves in the wall, doing the final cleaning. These goblins are not as beautiful as the elves in previous fantasy works. On the contrary, they look very ugly. They have wings similar to bat wings on their backs. They are somewhat similar to little devils. Their IQ is only about the level of five or six years old. And they can receive magic. Guidance follows a few simple commands. When Lin Eng came closer, all these small goblins hid behind the wall, sticking out only one head to look at him secretly with their ruby-like eyes, making a series of purring sounds and learn to human language is still too difficult for their intelligence. However, Lin didn't have time to pay attention to these magical creatures, because as soon as he opened the door, dozens of pairs of eyes were already looking over. There were more than 20 wizard apprentices sitting in the very spacious classroom. Since this was a new class, and there were no grading measures, students of all ages were included. Some even looked older than him, and Johnny was among them. Although there were not many people coming to class, Lin was already very satisfied. He was even prepared for the entire classroom to be empty today. Chapter 63 Lin's Bankruptcy Game Good morning everyone. I am the new Mathematical Olympiad Professor at Aida Magic Academy. You can call me Lin. Under the gazes of all the students who were either surprised or suspicious, Lin In stood on the podium, using his hand as a pen and pure magic power as ink, and wrote his name in the void. Then the quiet classroom immediately became noisy. Professor Lin In, I heard that you came from the other side of the Sea of Mist. Can you tell us what it's like outside? Professor Phillips said you think this continent is spherical. So why don't the people underneath it fall? It was probably because Lin looked too young. About the same age as them. So the wizard apprentices were not as restrained as they were with the other professors. Chattering and asking various questions. For example, how he passed through the Sea of Mist. Defeated the Maelstrom. And what kind of magic he used to destroy half of the harbor city. He even mentioned his free fall experiment. Obviously. In just one and a half days, his deeds have spread. These wizard apprentices who came to attend the class are not looking forward to this course, but purely to this new professor from the Sea of Mist. Just feeling extremely curious, faced with this series of questions, Lin didn't know which one to answer first. At this moment, Johnny sitting next to him suddenly asked, Professor Lin, what is the Mathematical Olympiad? Lin and breathed a sigh of relief and then explained, Good question. Mathematical Olympiad is a subject that studies complex concepts such as quantity, structure, change, and space. You can use it to measure the circumference of the planet under your feet, explore the movement of stars, and analyze cosmological constants. Mathematical Olympiad almost covers everything. Everything you see is the most important tool for understanding the truth and understanding the world. While speaking, Lin In used the principle of sound wave transmission to increase his volume which made everyone's eardrums buzz and successfully silenced the originally noisy classroom again. Every apprentice present felt a little fascinated when they heard those extremely high-level terms coming out of Lennon's mouth. Many people even realized that they were taking a very special magic course. However, Lennon, who had finished drawing the cake, changed his words and continued to speak. Of course, these advanced mathematical knowledge are still too far away from you. Now you must start with the simplest addition. Subtraction multiplication and division. Isn't that just counting? The apprentice leaning in the front row couldn't help but interrupted. We have already learned these in basic courses. The prerequisite for learning magic is to be literate and understand the most basic principles of calculation. Therefore, Aida Academy usually provides basic knowledge for children born in poor families for a period of time, teaching them literacy, numeracy, and basic recognition, magic symbols or something. After learning multiplication and division, can we master some kind of powerful magic? Another wizard apprentice asked curiously. No. Lin shook his head. Seeing his denial, the expressions on the faces of all the students suddenly became very disappointed. Some even suspected that Lin In had just said that the Mathematical Olympiad was so miraculous that he was just fooling them into taking this course. 
Isn't this mathematical Olympiad course the same as the basic course? It's not difficult to count. It only took me more than a month to master it. A young man who looked about 15 years old and had freckles on his face, he asked proudly, looking up. Oh, really? Are you sure? Lin asked with a smile and then clapped his hands, attracting everyone's attention. Although he can release Magic Barrage to show these people the powerful power of combining magic and mathematical Olympiad, Lenin knows that if he wants to continue the mathematical Olympiad class, he must let these people know that even pure mathematics is still has unimaginable power. In that case, let's make a bet. A smile appeared on Lenin's lips. He stretched out his hand and snapped his fingers. Under the influence of Mage's hand, the four desks in front of him floated. Then, they are pieced together to form a larger square table. Immediately afterwards, the quilt placed on the desk was automatically stained with ink, and the large square table was divided into six rows horizontally and vertically, for a total of 36 squares. The rules are very simple. Place one copper coin in the first square, two in the second square, four in the third, eight in the fourth, and so on. Lenin looked around, looking at every apprentice in the classroom. He spoke in an extremely seductive tone. If someone can fill these squares with the corresponding coins, I will immediately write an application to explain to the Wizards Council that he has completed the practice of the Olympiad with full marks and give him another bottle of magic source of. Professor, is this true? Are you kidding? Pierce, another tall and thin apprentice in his 20s, stood up suddenly and asked excitedly, What is the source of magic? That is the most important thing for a wizard apprentice to be promoted to a formal wizard. And it is worth hundreds, even hundreds of magic gold coins. And it's not something you can buy with money. For a scumbag like him, who has yet to complete any subject in his 20s, Lennon's two promises are particularly important. Of course, with my personality as a guarantee, Lin nodded and said without hesitation. Hearing Lennon's decisive words, Pierce hesitated for a moment. His life experience told him that there could not be such a cheap thing in the world. Either the professor in front of him was fooling him, or there was something wrong with it. Pierce started to do some rough mental calculations, but soon he could no longer calculate. He could only roughly estimate that it would take 63 copper coins to fill the first six cells in the first row, which didn't seem to be a lot. Does anyone want to give it a try? There is only one spot, Lin said seductively again. I'm here. The young man with freckles on his face stood up impatiently after interrupting him. Pierce looked at Alok who stood up and suddenly felt regretful. He shouldn't have hesitated. He didn't even have the courage to fight. No wonder he couldn't be promoted to an official wizard. What's your name? Lin asked curiously. I am a lot. Professor, the wizard said loudly. It turns out it's your boy's name. Alok. Lin nodded. Yesterday, he happened to accept a favor from the other party's father and asked him to pay more attention to this boy. Isn't this opportunity coming? Alok. Right. I must first remind you that you cannot give up this bet. Since you have played it, you must fill up the entire square. And the money you put in will be used for the research of this subject. Funds! This is the price you pay in exchange for my promise and the source of magic. Lin and kindly reminded me. Of course it's no problem, Alok said, patting his chest. Although he couldn't calculate how many copper coins it would take to fill these squares, he was very clear about the value of one copper coin and a bottle of source of magic. This is a gap of millions of times. No matter what, millions of copper coins can fill the 36 squares. No, maybe only two to 30,000 copper coins are enough and the source of magic power is something that even money can't buy. Then please! Lin pointed to the square table with a signature smile on his face, indicating that Alok could start his performance. Alok didn't show any stage fright. He took out his money bag and placed the first copper coin on the first square. Then came two, four, eight, and sixteen, thirty-two. By the time it was placed on the sixth square, the copper coins in his hand had been used up and the seventh square required 64 copper coins. Alok held a silver coin in his hand. He hesitated for a while, and did not put it down directly. Instead, he turned to look at the students, who were watching the show, and said very proudly, Can anyone lend me some copper coins? When I fill up this square, I will pay them back in double tomorrow. Encouraged by Alok, the wizard apprentices present donated generously, and took out their own money bags without worrying that the other party would not be able to pay back. Pears, who was still regretting it, even took out all his savings, six gold coins. Soon the borrowed coins were piled all over the table, with only Johnny watching with no intention of taking the money. 
Gianni, aren't you going to make some money? Lin asked curiously. Or have you already calculated the result? The silver-gray-haired girl rolled her eyes at him. Although she couldn't calculate how many copper coins it would take to fill the 36 squares, she knew that Lennon's brain was definitely fine, and he couldn't come up with a bottle of source of magic. A look on the side looked full of confidence. All the apprentices' funds were put together, and they already had more than 20 gold coins, and more than 200 copper coins and silver coins. No matter what, they could fill in these squares. With this thought in mind, a look grabbed a handful of coins and filled in the second row of squares after spending a total of 40 silver and 95 coppers. One-third of the squares on the square table have been filled. Easy. Too easy. Most of the apprentices have begun to regret why they did not stand up first. Even Johnny, who had great confidence in Lin, began to waver. Could this square table really be filled? Alok was even more energetic and piled 40 silver coins and 96 copper coins into the 13th grid. However, when he continued to fill in, he vaguely noticed something was wrong because the last one in the third row on the square grid. A full 13 gold coins need to be placed. That's probably it. Like. Seem. Isn't it a bit much? Alok's expression became hesitant, and he no longer had enough money to fill in another square. You can write the amount directly with a pen, and then we'll do the math together. Lin and reminded him nonchalantly, not intending to embarrass the other party. Alok looked at the remaining half of the square, gritted his teeth, took the quill on the side, and started filling in line by line. 200. Number 300. As long as the total amount he spent was less than 300 magic gold coins, his father should be able to forgive him. After all, the source of magic cannot be bought with money. However, Alok, who had this idea, only filled in four boxes when he found that his budget had been used up and he still had to spend a lot of money. Under Lin's kind gaze, Alok's hand when writing the numbers was shaking constantly. The numbers were so huge that he had to use pen and paper for auxiliary calculations starting from the third line. But Alok preferred not to be able to calculate. His heart clenched tightly with every number he wrote down. When he wrote the fifth line, he was almost crying. Alok had already silently calculated his family's assets in his mind, and then discovered something that horrified him. It seems their family is bankrupt. No, this is no longer a problem that bankruptcy can solve because it takes a full 53,687 magic gold coins to fill the last one in the fifth row. Alok's mind went blank and he fainted. Even if he became an official wizard in the future, he would not be able to earn so much money even if he worked non-stop for hundreds of years. And there is still a whole row on the square table that is not filled. Alok! Alok! Alok suddenly fell to the ground, startling everyone present. And Lin was no exception. He didn't want to scare people to death, when the class started for the first time. After using his shallow medical knowledge to check, Lin quickly found that the other party was not seriously injured. He immediately made an ice cube and pressed it on his forehead, which quickly awoke him from the cold. Alok was in a daze. He seemed to have had a dream just now. He dreamed that he played a game with the professor and then owed a debt that he could never repay in his lifetime. When he opened his eyes, he discovered a fact that he didn't want to face this didn't seem to be a dream, but real. Now that you're awake, Let's fill in the last square as agreed. Lin patted Alok on the shoulder and said encouragingly. Alok had an expression uglier than crying on his face. But he had to sit in his seat. In the end, he could only completely lose his temper and comfort himself in his heart. He couldn't afford 50,000 magic gold coins. So even if he increased it to two what's the difference between 100,000 and 500,000? There really is a difference. The long list of numbers caused Alok's brain to collapse. After filling in the last square, Alok had to count the units one by one with his fingers. One, ten, one hundred, one thousand, ten thousand, one hundred thousand, one million, ten million, one hundred million. Alok couldn't bear to count anymore. But Lin revealed the answer directly. It's thirty-four billion three hundred and fifty-nine million seven hundred and thirty-eight thousand three hundred and sixty-eight copper coins. Upon hearing this terrifying number, the students present were all dizzy. They looked at the long, square table in front of them. It was unimaginable that 33.3 billion copper coins could be accommodated in this small square. Johnny also had an expression of disbelief on her face. Although she could imagine that it would take a lot of copper coins to fill the squares, she never expected it to be so terrifying, let alone a loak. This amount of money could not be raised even by selling the entire Aida seaport. A mere square game instantly made a group of wizard apprentices experience the horror called exponential growth. 
Lenin looked at the students who were silent and still immersed in the huge numbers and spoke solemnly. This is the power of the arcana. If someone can convert the power of the arcana into magic, it will be a powerful force that can destroy this planet and even the entire universe. This is no joke. Theoretically, after folding a piece of paper in half 103 times, its theoretical thickness exceeds the diameter of the observable universe. As long as anything can maintain an exponential growth of two, it will soon overwhelm the entire universe. Chapter 64 Basic Principles of Magic and Analysis of Elemental Magic Lenin used magic as ink to write out the formula represented by the grid game, then looked at the apprentices, who had not yet recovered from the exponentially increasing terror, and said loudly, Why don't you write this formula down? Johnny and others hurriedly opened the page, picked up a quill pen, and copied down the formulas that they couldn't understand at all. The dumbfounded alok on the side was the best example. That is what will happen if you don't learn the mathematical Olympiad. Professor Lin In Alok looked at Lin In and shouted tremblingly. His eyes filled with tears, and he almost burst into tears. Alok, I just heard you say that you are good at math. Lin asked. I'm not. I didn't. Don't talk nonsense. Alok shook his head hurriedly and wanted to deny it. But Lin waved his hand and continued to speak. Well, as long as you can accurately calculate the total of these 36 squares of copper coins before class tomorrow, then this bet will be over. Of course, you only have one chance to speak. Lenin glanced at the large amount of coins piled on the square table with a little pity, but had no intention of accepting them. First of all, it was impossible for the other party to get the money. And secondly, it would be a bit too scary for him to let all the apprentices spend all their savings in just one game. Who would dare to come to his mathematical Olympiad class in the future? Alok stared blankly at the floating magic fluorescence, completely unable to understand what these arithmetic symbols were. He even began to doubt whether he could count. Pierce, who was still envious of Alok before, immediately became gloating about his misfortune. Fortunately, he hesitated. Otherwise, he would be the one making a fool of himself now. Unexpectedly, Lin In changed his words, looked at everyone present, and continued to speak. Same for you. If I remember correctly, when Alok borrowed money from you, he said, if he can fill all the squares, he will pay back double. It's a pity that Alok failed to do this. So the promise is invalid. Not only will you not be able to give more gold coins, but the money you suppressed before will continue to be left with me. Lin In reached out and picked up a few coins. Hirakata said playfully, looking at the gold, silver and copper coins on the table. Hearing this, the Mathematical Olympiad classroom suddenly burst into mourning. Pierce and the others angrily kicked Alok. This kid is actually cheating. Lin raised his voice a few points and pointed at the exponential summation formula floating in the sky. There is an easy way to add exponential operations. If it were me, I would be able to calculate the sum of them in 10 seconds if I knew the last number. The task I give you after class is to find patterns and solve the formulas I wrote. When you get the answer, you can get the money back. Lenin looked around at the students who were holding quill pens and bowing their heads to calculate, and nodded with satisfaction. Only this kind of personal experience can make people truly feel the charm of the mathematical Olympiad. In addition, he is also using this game to find out the mathematical level of these apprentices. Judging from Alok's performance, they have already learned the most basic algorithms. Maybe they can start teaching them from slightly more difficult formulas next time. The two-hour mathematical Olympiad class ended soon, although they did not learn any new magic. All the students, driven by the desire to get their deposits back, maintained a high degree of enthusiasm and even couldn't wait to share what they saw and heard in the class with others. In just one day, the reputation of Professor Lin's square game has spread. In order to let more people understand the charm of exponential growth, Lin In moved the square plate directly to the door of Aida College and changed the square into a total of 49 squares with 7 rows and 7 verticals. A sign was erected on it, and the rules of the bet were rewritten. If anyone can fill these squares with the corresponding copper coins, he will give away the alchemical formula used to destroy Harbor Town. That's right. You only need to start with one copper coin and fill it up according to the rule that the copper coins in the next grid are twice as much as the previous one. After filling in the money, you can even get it back. He doesn't have to pay a penny. Receive. At this time, not only the wizard apprentices, but also several professors in the college were tempted. Is there such a good thing? This kind of alchemical formula that requires a lot of preparation to explode with powerful power may seem troublesome. But it can produce special miraculous effects in some special occasions. 
You must know that the power of this thing is comparable to five-ring or even six-ring magic. In the evening, while the students were leaving school or returning to their dormitories, Professor Kevin sneaked up to the combined square tables and studied the rules on the square plates. Does the number in each square double the previous one? Kevin touched his chin and thought about it in his mind. Just as he was thinking about it, a familiar voice came from behind. Don't forget it. It's absolutely impossible to fill these squares. Do you know how much savings I have? Professor Philip? Kevin asked slightly dissatisfied. And he knew many good friends. Anyway, the money is only used to fill in the grid. And you can take it back after filling it in. The worst is not to worry about it anymore borrow some. Could it be that these squares are really as rumored? And that even all the wealth of the entire Ayata Harbor cannot be filled? Kevin scoffed at this statement. This rumor was simply too outrageous. Do you know how many copper coins are needed to fill in the last square of these seven rows and seven columns? Philip said helplessly. It's 281 trillion. 2 million and 81 million copper coins. That's quite a lot. Kevin was somewhat surprised. But after a pause, he suddenly realized that the unit Philip mentioned seemed to be 10,000. 100 million? Wait, are you sure you're not mistaken? Kevin was completely confused. This was the first time he heard that there was a unit of trillions. Of course not. I have verified it myself, Philip said angrily. He was a little surprised when he heard the apprentices talk about it before. And then it took him a full nine pieces of manuscript paper to finish all the calculations. Because those numbers were so big. Long. Kevin silently did the math in his head. Although it was just the simplest multiplication. The amount became larger the further he calculated it. Mental calculation alone was no longer sustainable. So he could only make a rough estimate first. Based on the experience of the previous columns. The amount will increase about ten times every three to four squares. There are 49 grids in total. That is, at least a hundred trillion times. Kevin couldn't help but take a breath. This kind of growth is really terrifying. Not to mention the Aida seaport. Even if the entire continent was emptied, it would be impossible to raise so much money. Fortunately, he deliberately chose a time when no one was around to try it out secretly. Otherwise, he would probably make a fool of himself in front of the students. Kevin secretly rejoiced in his heart and then discovered that in addition to the rows of squares on the square table in front of him, there were also some strange characters carved on it. When Q is not equal to 1, SN equals A1, 1Q caret N, forward slash, 1Q. What are these runes? Some kind of magic symbols? Kevin asked in confusion. This seems to be the formula for the summation of a geometric sequence? It should be called this. Right, Philip said uncertainly. Professor Lin said that as long as the last number is calculated, he can calculate the squares of these squares in 10 seconds. How much do the copper coins add up to? Can such a large amount of data really be calculated within 10 seconds? Kevin frowned. Master Hurlam seems to have solved the meaning of this arcane mathematical formula, Philip exclaimed. In just one afternoon, you are truly worthy of being a great wizard. Did the master tell you what these mathematical Olympiad symbols mean? Kevin asked eagerly. After doing the exponential calculation, he found that this so-called mathematical Olympiad seemed quite interesting. No. Philip shook his head regretfully. Master Herlam only asked me to come over and add a small reward to this game. Whoever can solve the meaning of this formula first will get 20 magic gold coins. Award. As he spoke, Philip took out the gold coins and used magic to fix them on the square table. At this moment, the person everyone is talking about, Lin In, the new professor of the Mathematical Olympiad class, is sitting leisurely on the sofa in the room, eating the dinner brought by the goblin while checking the basic magic borrowed from the college library. Principle. Elemental magic analysis. Although the professor's life at Eta College is very comfortable and does not feel the slightest crisis, Lin In will not slack off because of this. Everything in the wizarding land is unfamiliar to him. Once he encounters any trouble, the only thing he can rely on is his own strength. In addition, as a professor, he also had to acquire some basic magic knowledge. However, these two books on the principles of magic written by legendary wizards made Lin's head look over the top. Because the books were filled with a large number of such as Serlu, NZC, Keys, and so on, he was completely confused about the vocabulary. So he could only verify it bit by bit based on the descriptions of these nouns in the book. After spending more than three hours analyzing it, and combining it with his own understanding of magic after time travel. Lin Eng could barely understand the first half of the book. First of all, his previous guess was not wrong. Wizards did release magic by manipulating, influencing, 
and mimicking elements. However, the official wizard's ability is very limited. Not all elements can be controlled. And the accuracy is not enough. At least it cannot crush molecules or atoms. It can only perform simple arrangements and combinations. Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Lennon silently thought about the four elements he had controlled. And several guesses emerged in his mind. First, the difficulty of element manipulation may be related to the element cycle. For example, official wizards can only control the short-term elements in the first three rows of the periodic table, but cannot control the long-term elements in the fourth to seventh rows. The second is determined by the number of nuclear charges in the element. The third is to divide them by metal and non-metal elements. On this point, Lin had done experiments before, trying to use zero-ring magic, primary material deconstruction, to disintegrate the steel sword in his hand. It was clear that he failed. No matter how hard Lin tried, the sword remained motionless. This means that with the ability of a wizard apprentice or even a formal wizard, there is no way to directly affect the metal elements. Of course, this is not necessarily true for great wizards and legendary wizards. Because according to the basic principles of magic, records, basic material deconstruction technique also has two advanced magics. They are four-ring magic, high-level material deconstruction, and seven-ring magic, great disintegration. It just so happens that the fourth and seventh rings are the dividing line between being promoted to a great wizard and a legendary wizard. While thinking about it, Len asked 071 to record these contents in the research file, and then turned to the second half of Basic Principles of Magic, which contained even more mysterious descriptions of magic. This legendary wizard regards magic as the origin of the entire universe the most basic thing that makes up all matter, and the real power of creation. The origin? Lin In frowned. Based on his observations these days, magic seems to exist in every corner of the world. But unlike elements, he can only perceive but cannot truly see unless it is only by using magic like magic missile can the magic materialize in a short time. Forget it. This is obviously not something he can study clearly at his current level. Lin In touched the pain in his head decided to put this problem aside for now, and then open, detailed explanation of elemental magic, fireball, corrosion, loud and curse, touch of ice, level fire demon's hand, pyroblast, toxic field, the entire elemental magic analysis, records a total of 17 kinds of magic from the first to the third ring, Lennon's eyes glanced at the so-called second and third ring magics for a few times, and then he stopped paying attention, instead, he focused on the first ring magics. With the help of the power of his brain, although he can complete magic mimicry as a wizard apprentice, something that only a formal wizard can do, he is limited to learning and using one ring magic. For example, the principle of the three ring magic poison field is to use magic power to convert it into some kind of toxic gas, which may be chlorine or fluorine. In short, it is not an element that he can obtain in a short time. If it cannot be analyzed, it cannot be converted and used. His mental power is far from enough to cover such a large range. At close range, it is better to simply reduce or increase the oxygen content in the air, which can achieve a similar effect. With his current abilities, learning and improving one-level magic is the easiest thing to do, and one-ring magic is also divided into ordinary and high-level. The so-called high-level magic is actually a simplification of higher-level magic, or an enhancement of low-level magic. For example, his white phosphorus fireball technique is strictly a first-level high-level magic. However, due to the extremely poisonous and indestructible nature of white phosphorus, it reaches the level of second-level magic in terms of power. And another improved magic, white phosphorus hand of fire demon, has a destructive power close to that of three-ring magic. But Lin is well aware of the limitations of white phosphorus fire. Don't look at him using this thing to kill everyone in the Sika's empire, and even killed Anjuk, who is comparable to a three-ring wizard. Lin In knew very well that this thing was fine for bullying those uneducated bishops. But once it was used against wizards, its power would be greatly reduced. After all, the two important characteristics of white phosphorus fire can be dealt with by formal wizards. Once the information is leaked, it will not be so easy to achieve good results. Therefore, he must learn more magic to increase his trump card. Chapter 65 Ultra Low Temperature Field Lennon's eyes scanned the ten types of one ring magic, and after hesitating for a long time, he chose eyes touch, as the target for improvement. The principle of this magic is also very simple. It is to control the elements in the air to cool down and condense them to interfere with the enemy. Its role in combat is very limited. 
If this thing does not have an advanced magic, ice domain, it will only I'm afraid not many people are willing to learn. Of course, Lin En has no intention of learning, but is planning to transform it based on the principles of this magic, such as changing an element to cast this magic. And the elements he chose were Nitrogen. This element is called Serlu in the Land of Wizards and in Kalu's manuscript. It is even classified as a useless element considering that nitrogen generally does not react with other substances. It is normal for some wizards to simply ignore it. However, Lin In knew that nitrogen was not as useless as the other party said. It could not only be used to make fertilizers and act as a protective gas, but it could also be combined with hydrogen to synthesize another toxic gas. Ammonia. The most important thing is that the boiling point of nitrogen is minus 196 degrees Celsius. Such a terrifying low temperature is enough to freeze most things in a very short period of time. Of course, due to the light and frost effect, the human body can withstand high and low temperatures for a short period of time. But this protection formed by the vapor layer is very weak and will be disintegrated in just two seconds. Then the fragile skin will face the extremely biting ultra-low temperature, and the epidermal cells will quickly die and fall off. And then all the fat, muscles, and blood will solidify instantly. The second reason why Lin An chose nitrogen is that the nitrogen content in the atmosphere is extremely high, accounting for about 70 to 80 percent of the total. This means that he does not need to consume additional magic power to create this element in order to create a large area. Ultra low temperature field. 071. Turn on overload mode. Lin An thought silently in his heart, and then closed his eyes to sense it. In the vast sea of elements, there was no need to look for the active nitrogen element, because it was everywhere and it was easier to control. After about 4 or 5 seconds, the temperature around the body began to drop rapidly, and the nitrogen that was about to liquefy appeared in the form of white mist, spreading in all directions. Click. There was a slight sound in the room, but the tea on the table instantly condensed into ice crystals after the white mist drifted over. Not only that, the surrounding tables, sofas and various decorations were covered with a layer of white frost. A gecko lying on the wall looking for food stared closely at the moth in front of it. Just as it was about to swoop, white mist spread over. And along with a biting chill, the skin, bones, and blood solidified instantly. Living. The gecko, which was still in the flying state, was suspended in the air with its tail as a support point. It had the same treatment as the flapping moth. The two maintained the state at the moment of action and were directly frozen. Two ice sculptures. It's so cold. About a minute later, Lin opened his eyes suddenly, shivering uncontrollably, and then used the fireball technique to light the fireplace in the room. The system prompts in my mind also rang. 5% of the energy has been consumed, and the remaining energy is 53.7%. Does it consume so much? Lin N frowned. Although there is one missing step of magic mimicry, controlling so many elements at the same time does require a lot of computing power. Maybe reducing the control range or just targeting one direction like ice touch would be a good idea. Also, the casting speed just now was a little too slow. In battle, the enemy would not give him a minute to cast the spell. It seemed that he would have to practice more on weekdays. Lenin summarized the advantages and disadvantages of this new magic, looked at the room that looked like an ice crystal world, and couldn't help but pat his forehead. After seeing the gecko stuck to the wall with a stiff body, like an ice sculpture, he walked over with some curiosity. Living creatures frozen at ultra-low temperatures may still have a trace of vitality after thawing if the time is not long. However, before Lin could take even two steps, the gecko's slender tail broke apart due to its inability to support the weight of the body, and the whole body fell to the ground with a clatter, shattering into ice slag on the ground. Well, it's hopeless. Lin and shook his head and used a fire to dispose of the debris on the ground. I shouldn't be doing experiments here! Lin and looked at the frost-covered room and couldn't help but sigh. It seemed that the alchemy workshop had to be established as soon as possible. Otherwise, he wouldn't even have a secret place to practice magic. There are no places. If any ignorant apprentice breaks in the next time you cast a spell, the consequences will be serious. Money. Money. Lenin muttered a few words with emotion, changed out of his robe that was stained with liquid nitrogen, and took his professor badge. He was going out to find money. In the evening, on the west side of Ieta Harbor, in a remote workshop, Darren, the halfling, was playing with the gadget made by Lydia in every possible way boredly it was a T-shaped flying toy made of hollow wood. As long as he put it in his hand and turned it heavily, he could fly directly with the force of the wind. Fly. But why can this thing fly? 
but larger aircraft cannot? Just when Darren was puzzled, the wind chime hanging at the door suddenly rang. Welcome to the halfling workshop. Darren quickly put down the toys in his hand and turned to look at the door. It was Len who walked through the door. It was too eye-catching. He did not wear the professional robe issued by Aida College this time. Nor did he hang up a medal. But Darren quickly recognized that this must be a wizard. Because when we were in the square a few days ago, Len appeared next to the great wizard Haram and had a pleasant conversation with him. Realizing that this was a big customer, Darren immediately got excited, stood up from his chair, rubbed his hands excitedly, and asked respectfully and humbly, Master Wizard, do you need anything? There are many novel and interesting gadgets in the workshop. You can take a look at this fan, which can spin by itself without any magic power. Also, this steamship model, put it in the water, and then pull the rope behind it. It can really move. Chapter 66, Skillful Lydia. There are hand-cranked fans, moving miniature steamships, wooden flying wings, and many proportional and exquisite carriages and house models. Lynn even saw the prototype of a water wheel in the center of the workshop. This is a round wooden wheel with a diameter of about one meter. There is water flowing down from the reservoir above the workshop, driving the wheel to rotate continuously, and also driving the giant fan in front. It rotates slowly to provide a cool breeze for guests entering the workshop. It's really overkill. Lynn shook his head. This thing could be used to irrigate farmland and even generate electricity. But Lydia only wanted to use it to power fans. Darren's heart suddenly rose to his throat when he saw Lynn shaking his head and sighing. Although the gadgets made by Lydia were very interesting, they were definitely not comparable to the alchemy tools of wizards. Fortunately, Lennon didn't mean to show off and spoke directly. I'm not here to buy goods, but to ask you to make something according to the drawings. As he spoke, Lynn picked up the model of the steamship and took a look at it. The model was very exquisite, almost restored to the same proportions, down to every detail from the chimney to the cabin and then to the hull. It was exactly the same as the steamships he had seen at sea. It was just that there was an extra rope behind the cabin. Just pulling it could drive the propeller below to spin. Almost instantly, Lennon guessed its principle, and with a smile on his lips, he asked again, I heard that Lydia has very skillful hands and can always make items exactly as required. Is that true? Of course. I dare say that in this Ayata seaport, no one has better craftsmanship than Lydia. Darren said very confidently, and even many wizards had seen the little craftsmanship made by Lydia. After the gadget was praised a lot, it got the name of Skilled Hand. Is she in the workshop now? Lynn put the model aside. I want to see for myself whether she can meet my requirements. No problem. Lydia is busy in the backyard right now. I'll take you to find her. Darren quickly jumped off the stool, hung up the rest sign, and opened the door to the backyard of the workshop. Lynn followed Darren and walked in and immediately saw the large aircraft he had seen before. The halfling Lydia he was looking for was standing under the aircraft at the moment, holding a hand that was half her body. Such a long hammer smashed several thick iron nails into the wings of the aircraft. After finishing all this, Lydia wiped the sweat on her head, and then pulled the wings hard with her hands. The connection was very strong, but the stability was still a little worse. This is why the aircraft was a little sluggish after landing. The reason why the parts fell apart directly. The halfling girl didn't notice the two people who entered the door at all. She frowned slightly, and her robes were already stained with dirt. But she didn't care at all. Her mind was filled with how to improve the aircraft. At this moment, Lynn's voice suddenly sounded. Since a quadrilateral is not stable enough, why not try to transform it into two triangular structures by adding a beam at diagonally opposite corners? Lydia was stunned for a moment, then immediately turned her head, only to realize that Darren and Lynn were standing next to her. Master Wizard? The halfling girl shouted in surprise. She quickly recognized Lin, who had met briefly in the square before. You can give it a try first. Lin pointed at the wings of the aircraft and said with a smile. Lydia was not afraid of the stage. She pulled up her sleeves, grabbed a piece of wood of suitable size with both hands, and placed it at the diagonal corners on both sides of the wing. Then she picked up the hammer and nails. Clang, clang. Kept knocking. What a lot of strength. Lynn was very surprised to see Lydia, who was only about 1.3 meters tall, easily lift a wooden board larger than herself. The rumors that halflings are born with great strength were indeed not false. This is not biological at all. Lynn and looked at the halfling girl's arms that could only be considered strong and couldn't help but complain in her heart. Then she directed the other party to build brackets everywhere on the aircraft to strengthen the overall structure and also dismantled many incompatible parts. 
The necessary structure reduces the weight of the body itself. Darren also hurried forward to help. After working for a while, the entire aircraft took on a new look. The wide wings on both sides were connected to the fuselage in a triangular structure. Lydia put her hands on the wings and shook them hard a few times. Next, I hit it with a hammer. But there was no deformation at all. This is simply great. The joy on Lydia's face almost overflowed. And then she turned to look at Lynn and asked in confusion. But why is this? She also noticed this difference when making those models on weekdays. But she didn't understand why it happened. Because the three sides of the triangle are connected end to end. It forms a very stable structure. Just do a force analysis and you will know. As Lenin said, he took a few wooden strips and assembled them into a trigonal shape, quadrilaterals and pentagons, and then dragged any of their sides and any corners to demonstrate the force changes of these polygons. Lydia sat on the wing of the aircraft, her bright eyes staring at the wooden stick in Lenin's hand, like a student attending a lecture. For a moment, she forgot that Lynn in front of her was only meeting her for the second time. That's all. However, Lynn's course was not that easy to understand. In the first half, there was a demonstration of wooden bars, and Lydia could still understand it a little. But after that, she was confused by the explanation of center of gravity, wind resistance, and friction. Only two conclusions were drawn. First, the wizard in front of me is very knowledgeable and knows a lot of things. Second, whether the aircraft can fly may be related to these forces. After talking for a while, Lynn smacked his lips. The halfling girl immediately understood, jumped off the wing, ran to the room, fetched a kettle, poured a glass of water, and handed it to Lynn's hand. Go up, then look at the other party eagerly, and ask. Then, Master Wizard, can this aircraft fly now? If you just want to stay in the sky for a while, that's no problem. But if you mean flying freely in the sky, I'm afraid it won't work. Lennon shook his head. The power of this aircraft is too poor. And the shape and structure it's also not very fluid mechanical. The halfling girl looked confused. She could barely understand the power. But what was fluid mechanics? In just half an hour, she heard many high-end words that she had never heard before. Lydia looked like a kitten that saw a stuffed ball, but couldn't scratch it. She looked pitiful. Master Wizard? Darren on the side was a little worried and couldn't help interrupting. Although he also wanted to hear this knowledge, he knew one truth. In the land of wizards, all knowledge is very valuable. As if Lin In had just come to his senses, a smile appeared on his lips. Sorry, it's a professional fault. Not introduced yet. My name is Lin In. I am the new Olympiad mathematics professor at Aida College. Is he the rumored Olympiad professor who scared a student to faint on the first day of class? Darren exclaimed. The corners of Lin's mouth twitched involuntarily and she looked at Darren with a very kind look. If you can't speak, you'd better shut up. Chapter 67 Lynn's Sky Airship Under Lynn's extremely kind gaze, Darren swallowed hard and immediately shut up. Lydia seemed to have remembered something and asked in surprise. Professor Lynn, did Master Haram ask you to come? Have I passed the examination? The purpose of my coming here has nothing to do with Master Haram. Lynn rejected the girl's guess, and then spoke again with the other party's disappointed expression. I'm planning to ask you to make something. As he spoke, Lynn took out a parchment roll from his pocket and handed it over. Lydia reached out and took it, looked at it for a few times, and couldn't help but exclaimed, So beautiful. On the parchment roll is a very large and novel-looking alchemy machine. The top looks like an inverted oval sphere, and the bottom is connected by hanging ropes. It is similar to the hull of a ship. Even the internal structural diagram is very clearly drawn. The overall frame is complicated but not messy. There is a strange sense of beauty. What is this? The latest model of alchemy ship? Lydia asked in surprise. She saw a propeller and a rudder on it, which are only used by ships. This is called an airship. Lynn replied. At first, he actually wanted to build a hot air balloon. This was the simplest way to fly into the sky without magic. But after thinking about it carefully, he gave up on this idea and simply prepared to get it right in one step and build one that could travel long distances. Airship out. The purpose is naturally not just to look good. He has already inquired about it in the past few days. Although some three-ring wizards who are proficient in elements and plasticity can fly in the sky, the consumption is too great. The flying height is limited and the speed is not fast. Only great wizards can stay in the air for a long time. And generally they are not used as a means of rushing. S-Method. The island under their feet is very large 
and has many mines. The entire wizard city is built next to a huge magic mine in the center of the island. Land transportation from various places is actually not easy. For example, if you use a camel beast to load a batch of goods from the Ieta seaport and go around the mountain road to the wizard's land, it will take seven or eight days to travel, and you may encounter monsters on the way. It's different if you start from the air, which can at least shorten the time by half. Although the load capacity of the airship is not large, it is still very cost-effective to transport some important materials or novel gadgets that are not available in the wizarding city. In addition, the steam airship itself is also a commodity. As long as you put two magic crystal cannons on it and add some protective spells, it will become a mobile aerial fortress. It's not easy to sell this thing for thousands of magic gold coins. As for the issue of technology leakage, there is no need to worry in the short term. As long as he can get the steam airship to fly around in the sky, he can apply to the parliament for alchemy patent protection. Yes, there is a protection mechanism for the production formulas of various magic items in the land of wizards. And only in this way can wizards publish the results of their hard work. In fact, in addition to alchemy items, the same is true for high-level magic. Even as a professor in his academy, he can only learn some low-level magic for free. As for the long term, there is no need to worry. What he brought out are just low-level toys. In a few years, after he has figured out the situation in the wizarding land, he will directly build an internal combustion engine. The so-called steam airship will be as good as a snail in the sky. Just as slow. Airship? A ship flying in the sky? Lydia asked impatiently. Yes, that's pretty much what it means. Lynn nodded. Lydia immediately seemed to have found some treasure. Her eyes flashed with excitement. But she soon discovered that there were no wings similar to wings on the airship design. Only a small propeller. The power provided is definitely not enough to levitate the airship. It should only be used to adjust the course. Can this thing really fly? Lydia asked very strangely. Does it require some kind of magic? Of course it can fly, Lynn said with certainty, and then continued to ask with a smile. Do you know why it floats on water? Lydia shook her head in confusion. Isn't it common sense that we can float on water? Lynn explained. Because the same volume of wood is lighter than water. That is to say, the density is less than that of water. The weight of the water it displaces is greater than its own weight. So the buoyancy force is greater than the gravity. You can give it a try. Not only wood has the same properties, anything that floats on the water will fall into the water. And the airship can fly into the sky just like wood floating on the water. As long as the density of the gas in the air chamber is less than the normal atmosphere, it will naturally not be a problem to fly. Lydia listened very seriously and nodded in understanding. Then when we sit on an airship, it's just like sitting on a ship. We use this very light gas to rise into the sky. Right. Your understanding ability is very good. But the knowledge you understand is too little. If you can take a few more of my mathematical Olympiad classes, maybe you can design your own aircraft. Lin and said with emotion. Hearing what Lin said, Lydia's originally happy expression immediately stagnated. And then she looked sad. She had to join Aida Academy to learn this knowledge. But the key is that she had to fly into the sky first before she could pass. Assessment. This looks like an endless loop. If you can make the airship according to the design perfectly, then you can be considered to fly it on its first flight. Lin said with a smile. I remember that your agreement with Master Helram was to fly in the sky without using magic. This can barely meet the requirements. Can I really fly it? Lydia jumped up excitedly. And then hit the frame of the wing. It hurt so much that tears rolled in her eyes. But she still covered her head and looked at Lin eagerly. Kindness. Of course. But let me tell you one thing first. My requirements are very high. Lin in said freely. Although one of his purposes this time is to deceive. Cough. Recruit this halfling girl as his assistant to help him make and sell those novel creations. Thereby saving more time to study magic. But the way of doing things is also very important. If you directly invite someone to your door and say that you want to help someone, it will arouse suspicion and will not achieve very good results. Only by forcing the other party to fight for the opportunity through their own efforts will people cherish it. And they will be more serious about learning Mathematical Olympiad in the future. Chapter 68 The Excited Wizard Apprentices Just as Lenin thought, the extremely high demands did not scare off Lydia. On the contrary, it made the halfling girl high-spirited and read the design drawings very seriously. After learning that some light and tough materials were needed to make an airship, Lydia immediately proposed that the camel leather that had been soaked in water and dry could be used to make the airbag of the airship. This material met the requirements very well, and was usually used on the sails of a large warship. On the Sea of Mist, 
The sail of the battleship they drove was made of camel leather. No matter how big the storm was, it could not be destroyed. It was very durable and reliable. The frame of the airship airbag can be made from the branches of the magic Paulona tree, which has high tinsel, compressive, and bending strengths. Lydia kept talking. In the field of aircraft design, she was far inferior to Lin In. But she was very clear about the characteristics of various materials in other worlds. Lin In silently made a calculation in his mind. If it were made according to the materials mentioned by Lydia, the performance of the airship would definitely be improved a lot. But the same cost would also be extremely high. At least 100 magic gold coins are required. Lin In thought about his little savings. Coughed twice. And interrupted the girl's words. Actually, this airship is just an experimental version. It doesn't use such good materials. It's just about the same. How is that possible? This is the first airship that can fly and turn in the sky. Lydia said with longing. I can only give you 12 magic gold coins as a deposit first. Lennon said a little helplessly. And took out a money bag. Which was one of the few properties he had. The remaining money can only be waited for. There are more students in the Olympiad Mathematics class. So I will apply for some teaching funds from Hellram to fill the gap. Lydia shook her head and did not accept it. The novel knowledge that Lin and explained to her alone was worth more than a hundred magic gold coins. Not to mention that this airship was directly related to whether she could enter the Aida Magic Academy. Just think of the money for making the airship as the tuition for the lecture just now. I will use the best materials to build it and start working on it from now on. Lydia wiped the stains on her face and asked Darren go call the other halflings in the workshop. She will try to complete the production of the airship within a month. Looking at the busy halflings, Lin In wanted to help, but was stopped. The use of magic may leave traces. It would be bad if Master Helram thought that the airship was made using magic. Moreover, Lin was a customer, and there was no reason to let the customer do it himself. In view of this, Lin In, who had nothing to do, could only take charge of the command from the side, watching the halflings who were only half his height running around carrying wood heavier than themselves. The progress of making the airship was faster than Lin imagined. After working all night, one-sixth of the overall frame had been built. If it weren't for the large amount of camel leather used to make the airbags that needed special treatment, it would have cost a lot of money. If there is less time, it may not even take a month to build the airship. However, such rapid progress did not come without a price. The halflings almost fell down from exhaustion, having devoted themselves to their work with all their enthusiasm. Darren was lying on a solid board and snoring. Lydia was even more exaggerated. She slept directly on the frame of the airship hugging a bean tightly, with saliva still at the corner of her mouth, and murmuring from time to time. What? Lin shook his head, and immediately stopped a few halflings who were still preparing to work, moved Lydia and others who had fallen asleep into the house, and let them all have a good rest. After becoming a wizard's apprentice, staying up all night had no impact on Lin's spirit, so after settling Lydia, who fell asleep due to exhaustion, he left the workshop. After a whole day, Lin was somewhat looking forward to whether the wizard apprentices could solve the exponential formula he left behind, pushing the door open and walking into the classroom. A lot of confiscated coins were piled on the desk. What surprised Lin was that the classroom, which seemed a bit empty in the last class, was now packed to the brim. A quick glance revealed that there were as many as 100, 50 or 60 people. If the classroom hadn't been big enough, it would have been impossible to squeeze them all in. Is an exponential game so useful? Good morning. Everyone! Lenin's thoughts were running through her mind, but she didn't show any of them on the surface. However, the student's reaction was more enthusiastic than he expected. Professor Lin In, are there any other mathematical Olympiad questions? I have calculated all the numbers for 36 squares and 49 squares. Looking at the extremely excited wizard apprentices in the classroom, Lin was completely shocked. Are the students at Aida Magic Academy all a bunch of jerks? He actually has such a high enthusiasm for doing math problems. No, something must have happened that I don't know about. Lenin thought this way, but was not in a hurry to confirm. Instead, he turned to look at Alok and asked, It's been a day now. I believe you already have the answer. Right. Alok? Professor, the sum of these 36 squares is 68, 711, 947, 6735. Alok quickly stood up and replied tremblingly. He had confirmed this value many times and counted 20 manuscripts. But in the end, the amount was too big. He only had one chance to answer. If he got one wrong number, he would be doomed. Under Alok's anxious gaze, Lin nodded. Very good. 
Correct answer. Then have you figured out the meaning of the formulas I gave you? Lin asked again. I have already calculated it. The sum of the square numbers is equal to twice the last digit minus one. Alok said confidently. After no longer having tens of billions of debts, he lost confidence was restored again. In order to get the correct result yesterday, he spent all night calculating. And it was through confirming over and over again that he discovered this trick. Lin and nodded again. Without much mathematical foundation. Being able to find this rule in one day was considered to be barely enough. Professor Lin, can I get the bonus? Alok asked expectantly. Pierce and others looked at Alok with envy. That was a total of 20 magic gold coins. Although they had been counting for a long time yesterday, they were not as hardworking as the other party. And they could not find this pattern first. Lin naturally knew that Helram had set a bounty for the formula he wrote. But due to the professor's reserve, he couldn't take it himself. But it's still too far to get the money just based on the few patterns found. Alok, my summation formula is not that simple. You say, if I slightly modify the rules of the grid game, for example, the number of the next square must be three times the number of the previous square? Your theory is still applicable? Question mark. Lennon asked with a smile. The proud expression on Alok's face suddenly froze. And he immediately started calculating in the center of his mind. And then picked up the quill to write and draw on the papyrus. What if there is another stipulation that you need to place 17 copper coins in the first grid? Len asked again. Alok was completely collapsed. And his mind was filled with a huge number of numbers. This is so difficult. He can't figure it out at all. Chapter 69. How many mathematical Olympiad questions did you do to achieve today's achievements? Lennon knocked Alok from heaven to H, L with just two short words. The students present could not help but shudder. Mathematics Olympiad is an extremely precise course. We need to find the rules from a large number of extremely complicated data operations, and then summarize them into corresponding formulas, thereby simplifying the algorithm and improving the efficiency of the entire operation. Lennon looked around the classroom. Everyone inside paused and spoke again. Of course, the law summarized by a lock is not wrong. But the scope of application is too small. Since the exponential increase in the square can be two times. It can also be three times. Five times. Or ten times. In this way, the law will change. It doesn't apply anymore. And this exponential summation formula is applicable to all exponential increases that meet the conditions. Len In snapped his fingers. And under the surge of magic power. The complicated formula appeared in front of everyone again. When Q is not equal to 1, SN equals A1, 1Q caret N, forward slash, 1Q. Johnny, Pierce and others stared at the so-called exponential summation formula. They thought hard for a while. And then, they all picked up their quill pins to calculate. They listed the series of 2, 3, and 4 multiples, looking for the rules among them. And then tried to sum them up, plug them into this formula. With Alok's previous summary and derivation through Q is not equal to 1. Pierre soon realized that this symbol should refer to a multiple of increase. But why use 1 to subtract? Pierre bit his finger and inserted the original two-fold growth grid game into it. He ignored the following, 1Q, and directly performed the calculation. He found that it was completely feasible. But the number he got was exactly the opposite. Is a negative number. In other words, is the function of the following formula to convert negative numbers into positive numbers? However, if it were replaced by an exponential growth of three times, the amount would be completely wrong. Pierce's brain was running rapidly. And he had vaguely captured the answer. Almost. Almost. But what is it? Throughout the classroom, people like Pierce were immersed in solving problems, pulling their hair, or scratching their heads. But no one chose to give up. Is the learning atmosphere at Aida Magic Academy that strong? Lin In is a little strange. These people also love learning too much. Most of the class passed quickly. Just when Lin thought there would be no more results today, he raised a hand high. Professor Lin, I have some ideas. It was Johnny who spoke. After receiving the instruction, the girl stood up and spoke. A1 in the summation formula should refer to the number placed in the first square. Q refers to the multiple. And N corresponds to the number of squares. Right. Professor? Absolutely correct. After class, you can go to the entrance of the college to receive your reward. Lennon nodded and responded. Although Johnny's statement was very general. It was indeed accurate. Pierce on the side couldn't help but beat his chest. After Johnny reminded him, he quickly understood why. He was so close to solving it soon. After waving his hand for Johnny to sit down, Lin explained to the apprentices present what a geometric sequence is. 
as well as its general term, summation formula, and then went on to explain how each formula is deduced. The wizard apprentices below all picked up their quills very seriously and wrote down everything Lin and said on the page. Then they tried to change the first item in multiples to verify it repeatedly. The desk was soon full of them. Various manuscript papers. It has to be said that after having the general term formula and the summation formula, the calculation speed is several times faster. And the more complex the calculation formula, the faster the improvement. Seeing these students who were more active in solving the questions, Lennon couldn't help but sigh. It was too easy for him to be a professor. If schools across the Federation were like this, why worry about technology not flourishing? The second mathematical Olympiad class ended soon. Alok and others left the classroom still unsatisfied still discussing the derivation of the summation formula. Gianni, how much has the magic power you can control increased from last night to now? A black-haired witch apprentice caught up, patted Joni on the shoulder, and asked curiously, About 10%? The silver-gray-haired girl thought for a moment and replied casually, That's a little more than me. The black-haired witch apprentice curled his lips, but there was no expression of envy. According to rumors, Eric stayed up all night calculating, and when he woke up the next day, he found that the magic power he could control had increased by about 20%. It was precisely because of this news that the entire Aida Magic Academy exploded. So this morning, all the wizard apprentices who didn't have classes came here and wanted to hear what kind of magical power this so-called Mathematical Olympiad class had. And she was no exception. The conclusion is also obvious. Complex and tedious mathematical calculations can effectively exercise their brain power. This process of logical deduction. Finding and deciphering numerical patterns is also interesting. At least more interesting than boring meditation. Johnny ignored the words of the black-haired witch and looked back in the direction of the classroom. Thinking to himself how many arcane math problems Lin had done in the arcane society in the past six months to achieve what he is today. Doing math problems can actually improve a wizard's control over magic power? Of course. Lin In could clearly hear the discussion among the students. And at the same time, he was somewhat surprised. But if you think about it carefully, it seems normal. The reason why his mental connection with the brain has greatly increased his strength is precisely because the overload mode greatly enhanced his computing power. Or in other words, his mental power. This is extremely important to wizards. Because the amount of magic they can control is closely related to the strength of the wizard's own mental power. What makes Lin feel a little helpless is that this happens to be his knowledge blind spot. At least the process of forming a spell slot is a bit like practicing an action repeatedly to form muscle memory. For example, if you pick up a wine glass from the table with your hands and drink it, if it is done by artificial intelligence, you need to first determine the distance, calculate the angle and strength of holding the water glass, and then analyze the most natural arc to pick up the water glass with your hands and bring it to your mouth. Such a complicated process can be completed instantly under the control of the subconscious mind without any hindrance. The same is true for spell slots. As long as after a long period of practice, a single thought can release extremely complex magic. There is just a premise. That is, the wizard's mental power is strong and can provide enough computing power. Otherwise, the process of casting the spell will be prolonged and flaws will be exposed. Thinking of this, Lin touched his chin and wondered whether he should ask himself some high-level math questions. Maybe it really works? Chapter 70 The Smile of the Olympian Mathematics Professor Half a month passed in an instant, and Lennon had spent the most comfortable time since traveling to this different world. In the morning, I taught a few Olympiad classes at the Yetta Magic Academy. In the afternoon, I went to the Halfling's Workshop to check on the progress of airship production. In the evening, I did some advanced math problems and practiced the newly developed magic, liquid nitrogen ice. Field. I have to say that doing the questions is still somewhat useful. The growth rate of mental power is much faster than before. The only drawback is that when I go out every day, my whole body feels a little neurasthenic. The teaching progress of the Mathematical Olympiad class was also faster than Lin imagined. After just four days, a single exponential summation formula could no longer satisfy the appetites of the wizard apprentices. They are all looking forward to more complex Mathematical Olympiad questions. Lin In had no choice but to use his second killer weapon, which was square root. If exponential growth is difficult for these wizard apprentices, the square root would be a pure nightmare. The students who were originally looking forward to the new content suddenly started wailing. Whenever someone passed by the Mathematical Olympiad classroom, they could always hear some strange words coming out of it. No! I can't drive it! I can't drive it! No way! It's not my fault! There must be something wrong with the formula! 
There is no solution to this problem at all. Within two days of the course, Alok and others said it was too difficult. They couldn't stand it, and they couldn't calculate the square. The so-called long division and continued fraction methods are all used, but more than half of the students are still making slow progress. A new term has been spread in Eda Magic Academy called Professor Olympian Mathematics Smile. It is rumored that once Professor Lin in smiles, no one in the entire classroom can smile again. In this regard, Lin in was very helpless. It was so difficult to even learn the square root. He would have to go crazy when he learned calculus in the future. In the next few days, he could only teach geometry first, considering that everyone's learning progress was different. He even divided into elite classes and ordinary classes. After the new mathematical Olympiad class, Lin In was about to go out, but was blocked by Philip. Professor Lin, in the next two days, the Wizards Council and the Commissioner of Magic Weekly will come to Ieta Harbor. You'd better prepare in advance, Philip warned. Are you here for the law of free fall? Lin In was a little surprised at first, but he quickly came to his senses. Yes, there is also your planet theory. Master Helram has reported these theories but whether to publish them depends on the Commissioner of Magic Weekly. Philip nodded. What about the Wizards Council? What do they send people to do? Lin asked curiously. It shouldn't be the same thing. They are here to assess your wizard level, Philip explained. In the Land of Wizards, the title of an official wizard is not only a symbol of strength, but also a status and privilege. And this status can only be granted by the Wizards Council. Generally speaking, if it is confirmed that an outside wizard will stay in the Land of Wizards for a long time, the council will send someone to confirm the identity and wizard level. In addition, there will be an observation period. If it is determined that the outsider is the wizard will not threaten this place. So he will issue the official wizard's badge and robe to the other party. Seeing that Lin looked worried, Philip quickly spoke to comfort him. You don't need to worry too much about this. You've done a good job in teaching Olympiad mathematics. There will definitely be no problem in passing the observation period. Lin nodded. In fact, what he was worried about was not the observation period. After all, he was not planning to do anything bad in the wizarding land. What really worried him was the official wizard's assessment. When he joined Ieta Academy, Helram did not test his wizard level. Lin thought that the other party had already acquiesced. Unexpectedly, this thing was actually evaluated by the parliament. Even though Lin and has been doing intense exercises for more than half a month, it still takes several days to reach the limit of magic power growth. That is why he has not been anxious about how to obtain the source of magic power. In the land of wizards, how is the wizard's level determined? Lin In asked tentatively. Generally speaking, magic balls are used to test wizards from the first to the third level. And there are basically no mistakes. Of course, if you are a great wizard, then the thing is naturally useless. Philip joked happily. And then he also curiously asked how the levels are assessed in the arcane society. The secret magic society only has scholar levels and no strength ratings. It doesn't matter what your identity is. The only thing worth communicating is knowledge. Lin In said casually. Hearing this, Philip couldn't help but yearn for it. Perhaps only in a place like this. A formal wizard like himself could communicate with a great wizard or even the legendary wizard on an equal footing and express his views and conjectures about the world. Then what are the requirements for joining the arcane society? Philip lowered his voice and asked quietly. According to Lin, the Arcane Society should be just a small group that exchanges knowledge with each other and will not force anyone to join. Members do things they don't want to do. Joining such a society seems to have only advantages and no disadvantages. You must first hand over a piece of novel knowledge to prove your ability. And you also need to be recommended by a higher level person. Lin impatiently added the lie and explained that after he came to the wizard's land, he was temporarily with a secret magic society, lost contact so that Philip could give up the idea. After all, there is no secret magic society in the Sika's empire, so he can't just create one. Right? After some deception, Philip left with some regrets. Lin secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Although the lies he made up to deal with Helram's accusations brought him a lot of convenience. They also brought him a lot of convenience. Caused many hidden dangers. Lin was thinking about countermeasures in his mind while walking towards the half-length workshop, ready to check the progress of the airship. As soon as he stepped through the door, Lin In bumped into Lydia, who was running out in a hurry, judging from the height alone. This was like a dwarf bumping into a giant. But the result was just the opposite. Lin took several steps back to stabilize his body and prevent him from falling to the ground. Lydia didn't seem to have anything wrong at all. 
she excitedly dragged Lin's arm inside. Follow me quickly, Professor Lin. After working overtime day and night for more than half a month, their airship has been completed ahead of schedule. Chapter 71 Secrets These are all secrets. Two days later, a convoy pulled by several strong camel beasts slowly walked on the official road of the seaport city. At the front of the motorcade, inside the luxuriously decorated carriage, an old wizard was staring out the window, looking at the architectural layout of the entire city. Mr. Tick, do you think it is really possible that this continent is a sphere? Beside him, a gorgeously dressed wizard stared at a gold coin tossed in his hand and asked curiously, Roar! I'm afraid no one can truly confirm or refute this conjecture until it is thoroughly verified. It took Tick a long time to look away from the rows of houses of the same length and width, and then continued to speak. It is rumored that in the parliament, there is a legendary wizard who is proficient in elemental science. After learning about this conjecture, he is going to use flying magic to fly high into the sky to confirm whether the continent is round or flat. What's the result? Luo Air asked extremely curiously. Until the time we set off, the adult hadn't come back yet, Tick said, shaking his head. It's been a few days, right? It shouldn't be. Roar couldn't help but shudder, but then rejected the idea. Although he had never really seen the power possessed by the legendary wizard, he also understood that it was definitely powerful beyond imagination. It seems that the safety of these big shots is not the turn of a small role like myself to worry about. Anyway, once this news is released, all the wizards of the Prophecy School will probably make a fuss, Tick said with emotion. Those wizards of the Prophecy School always try to analyze the destiny of the galaxy from the trajectory. The star map widely circulated in the wizard's land is from their hands, and Lin's planet theory undoubtedly completely refutes this theory. Regarding this, Tick is naturally happy to see this happen. In his opinion, the Prophecy School is a waste of parliamentary funds. It will only put forward some vague-sounding words, and then explain them word by word based on the facts after the incident, making it unclear whether this is a prophecy. Success is still a fabricated lie. Roar didn't care much about the thoughts of those prophets, and pondered in his mind another theory mentioned by the wizard named Lin. The law of free fall. The acceleration of an object falling has nothing to do with its weight and mass. When two objects with different masses fall from the same height, they will hit the ground at the same time. Although this theory has been verified by some great wizards, it is still a bit too abnormal and makes people feel unbelievable. Could it be said that if you move a pebble and an entire mountain to the sky, they will fall to the ground at the same time? Roar tried tossing the gold coins and a quill in his hand. There was no doubt that the gold coins with greater mass fell first. While he was deep in thought, the motorcade slowly stopped. What's going on? Roar asked with a hint of dissatisfaction. He probably hadn't arrived at Aida Magic Academy yet. Master Wizard, the road ahead is blocked. The servant driving the camel beast hurriedly explained. Roar opened the curtain and immediately saw countless townspeople gathering in the square, seemingly discussing something. What happened? Tick also asked. He also heard the noisy sounds from the outside world just now. Tick looked forward, taking advantage of the height difference brought by the carriage. The huge and weird alchemy machine in the center of the square soon appeared in front of the two of them. This thing is as high as two floors, and the whole thing is divided into upper and lower parts. The top is an inverted oval sphere. The length is estimated to be more than 20 meters, and the bottom is something similar to a ship, but it looks much smaller, and the overall length is less than an oval sphere, one-third the size, and tied with strong hanging ropes in the middle. Is this the alchemy machine recently developed by Master Halram? It's so big, Roar said with emotion. This is simply bigger than the golems in the Wizarding City. No, I don't think it has anything to do with Lord Haram. Tick retorted after listening to the noisy discussions around him for a while. The ones mentioned most by the townspeople here are Lin, Lydia, and a thing called an airship. Airship? Is that the name of this alchemy machine? So, is it related to the wizard from the Sika's empire again? It's really interesting. Let's walk over and have a look. Rawl got out of the carriage and said with interest. On the other side, in the center of the city square, Lydia and the airship she may have been surrounded by onlookers. Whether they are seven or eight-year-old children or strong farmers, they all want to touch it. This behemoth is taller than a house. A dozen halflings were surrounding the airship like guards, with proud expressions on their faces. This was a treasure they had spent more than half a month working on. A naughty boy secretly climbed onto the sculpture, struggled to straighten up, raised his hand high, and poked at the bottom of the airship airbag, feeling the soft touch and found that he could not puncture the seemingly weak airbag at all. He retracted his hand, 
but his eyes were always fixed on the big airship in front of him. Uh-huh. It's so soft. Several other naughty children also climbed up curiously, touched the airship with their rough hands, and shouted excitedly. Darren was immediately startled and jumped up quickly, trying to drive the other person away. But he was too short and couldn't reach him even if he jumped up. He could only scold him with an embarrassed face. Go! Go! Don't let me break it! I won't be able to afford the compensation if I sell you! Although the airbag made of camel leather is very strong and difficult to scratch with a knife, they have devoted all their energy and savings for this flight experiment and will not allow any mistakes. Uncle Darren! How did you pull such a big thing here? It's called an airship! Can it really fly? The boy in the lead asked with a smile. Not afraid of Darren, who was not as tall as him. The onlookers were also extremely curious. Judging from the appearance, this thing called an airship probably weighed tens of thousands of kilograms. But Lydia and others were able to move this thing from the workshop on the west side to the square. You guys don't understand. This thing just looks big, but it's not heavy at all. No, you can't say that. It should be that it's not heavy when pushed. I heard the wizard say that this is because the lift offsets most of the gravity. Then plus there are pulleys on the bottom. So it's not tiring to move at all. Darren said proudly. His beard raised up. But before he finished speaking, he was stepped on hard by Lydia. Only then did he react. And his expression suddenly changed. As if he was guarding against thieves. Staring at everyone present. He said with a serious expression. Secrets. These are all secrets. Chapter 72 This is definitely a scene worth remembering forever in the history of magic. Darren's words made the townspeople present feel itchy. But there was nothing they could do. They could only speculate on whether this airship could fly, how long it could fly, and whether it would not be able to lift off like the previous aircraft. He fell to the ground when he reached a high altitude. The professors and students of Eda College are also gathering in the center of the square at this moment, staring at the huge airship parked in the center of the square. Even Helram couldn't help but be surprised by its hugeness. After a pause, he turned his head to look at Lynn and spoke. What an exquisite alchemical creation. I heard that this is your handiwork. Professor Lin N? Lin explained with a smile. I only provided a drawing. The production process of the airship was completed by Lydia and the others. It should be said that this airship was built by us together. Although Lin N said this, Helram and others knew that production was only secondary. The design principle of any alchemical creation was the most important. Professor Lin, since you call this thing an airship, are you really planning to let it fly? How much magic power will this consume? Kevin asked curiously. The bigger and heavier the object, the harder it is to fly into the sky. This is almost an iron rule. If you want to send such a huge alchemy instrument to the sky, you will consume countless magic power. I think you're mistaken. It's not magic to make this thing fly. Lin shook his head. Not magic? Hearing this, the professors and students present were stunned for a moment. Could this thing be able to fly on its own? Could this be the aircraft you mentioned last time with a different power source and a redesigned structure? Helram immediately thought of what Lenin said when he first crossed the sea to the land of wizards. He was indeed not on the airship. Feel any magic fluctuations? No. If I must say it, this airship uses another flight method. Lin thought for a while and replied. Helram frowned, thinking about what the so-called other method meant, and then asked with interest. Then how long do you think it can stay in the sky? Ten minutes? One hour? I think it's longer than any number you think. How long it can fly just depends on how long Lydia wants to stay in the sky. Lin replied with a smile. After hearing this, Philip and others immediately lost their composure. Doesn't this mean that if Lydia doesn't want to come down, she can keep flying in the sky? This doesn't make sense, considering that flying is a feat only a few wizards can accomplish. But before anyone could refute, a voice sounded from behind. You mean this airship can continue to stay in the air without consuming any energy? This is impossible and completely inconsistent with the law of conservation of magic. Lennon looked back in surprise and then saw two gorgeously dressed wizards walking towards this side. This is Mr. Tick, a member of the Wizards Council. Philip hurriedly introduced Lin, his tone a little more respectful. Although Tick was a three-ring wizard like him, his alchemy level was very high. In the land of wizards, his status is not much lower than that of ordinary great wizards. As for the other one, Philip looked hesitant. My name is Luo Air. I am the commissioner sent by Magic Weekly. Dot. Luo Air politely replied. Hello, Mr. Tick. Mr. Roar. Lin nodded. He was surprisingly familiar with the name Tick. The one ring magic he had learned was called Tick's farsightedness. Please be less polite. 
You haven't answered my question just now. Tick didn't mean to chat at all, and asked eagerly. If it just means floating. Of course, there is no need to consume additional energy. Lin explained and continued. As for the principle, I can only say, this is a trade secret. The expression on Tick's face paused immediately, and then turned into a look of helplessness. As an alchemist, he certainly knew that there were some things that he shouldn't ask. Professor Lin, the inspection work has been completed, and the Overlook can take off at any time. Lydia trotted over and made a nautical military salute, saying loudly, Then we can start now, Lin said, waving his hands. After receiving the approval, Lydia immediately greeted Darren and others excitedly, began to pour hydrogen into the airship's auxiliary airbag, and tied a strong rope to several pillars in the square to prevent it from flying away early. The airbags above the airship look integrated, but in fact they are divided into two main and auxiliary airbags. When only the main airbag is filled with hydrogen, the lift the airship receives is slightly less than gravity and is at a critical point. Therefore, as long as the auxiliary airbag is also filled with hydrogen, it can fly directly. When landing, you need to reverse the situation and open the auxiliary airbag to let the air flow in, and the airship will fall slowly. As for why it is hydrogen rather than the safer helium, of course, it is because the former is easier to obtain and can be separated directly from water. The most indispensable thing in Eda Harbor is water. While Darren and others were injecting gas into the auxiliary airbag, Lydia had already climbed up the ladder into the cabin of the airship, pulled up the alchemy goggles on her head, and put her hands on the big steering wheel like a ship. He looked very tall, and his face was filled with uncontrollable excitement. Everyone in the square focused their attention. As more and more hydrogen gas was filled in the auxiliary airbag, the huge airship began to shake slowly and levitate little by little. It's great! It can really fly! Really? All our efforts have been in vain! Seeing this scene, several halflings hugged each other excitedly. They had been working day and night for the past half month just for this day. The overlook takes off! Lydia swung her knife to cut off the rope connecting the airship to the column, shouting loudly, in the eyes of countless people who were either excited or shocked. The behemoth in front of them quickly broke away from the shackles of gravity and flew straight into the sky. Amazing! Harim said with emotion as he stared at the airship floating further and further in the sky. Rawl on the side quickly took out his quill, used magic power as ink, and quickly drew everything he saw. This is definitely a scene worth remembering forever in the history of magic. A halfling who didn't know any magic flew into the sky on a huge airship that was taller than two stories. Chapter 73 touched the clouds in the sky. It's unbelievable. This thing actually flies. If the wizard was particularly surprised by the airship rising into the sky, then it was a shock to the onlookers. Because everyone knows Lydia, a halfling who is usually noisy and always likes to do weird things. The most important thing is that she, like all the ordinary townspeople present, does not know magic at all. And now, Lydia was right in front of them, driving something bigger than a house, flying straight into the sky, and doing something that even many wizards couldn't do. Dad, can I fly into the sky in the future? The boy who just climbed up the sculpture and touched the airship looked at the man in gray robe and asked excitedly, What are you thinking about? I'm sure some wizard secretly cast magic on the airship. The man in gray robe simply didn't believe that a halfling could fly on his own. In the land of wizards, all miracles are impossible. It is the power of magic. Who said it was magic? Darren immediately became unhappy when he heard this and corrected him angrily. I guarantee that every part of this airship is made by halflings like us without using any magic. When Lydia comes down from the sky, you can also go to the airship to have a look. As long as you pay 10 silver coins, anyone can fly around in the sky on an airship. I heard from Mr. Lin and that this thing can fly very high, even higher than many clouds. If you have the chance, you might fly. I can touch the clouds in the sky. Darren said very proudly. Can you fly higher than the clouds? The children in the square couldn't help but look up at the sky, looking at the huge airship getting further and further away from them, imagining what it would be like to touch the cloud. It is so white. It must be as soft as sheep's wool. Right? The rest of the townspeople were also a little tempted. Such a huge alchemy machine must be expensive to build. It only costs ten silver coins to fly around in the sky. It doesn't seem to be very expensive. You know that is the sky. At the same time, several hundred meters above the ground, Lydia was standing on a special chair, looking down, looking at the dense crowd in the square getting farther and farther away from her, turning into small dots, and finally the entire harbor. The whole city appeared in front of her. Everything was so small, 
like the wooden model she placed in the workshop. As if they could be crushed with one foot. Is this what it feels like to fly into the sky? It's simply amazing. Lydia looked around, then looked excitedly at the mountains and the vast sea in the distance. Although she had ascended into the sky in a simple aircraft more than ten days ago, the height was only about a few dozen meters, and she did not dare to lose focus at all. Unlike now, the airship can float spontaneously in the air without her control at all, and she can do whatever she wants here. Suddenly, a gust of wind blew by, and the originally stable airship swayed slightly in the wind. People who fly into the sky for the first time often have a sense of unreasonable fear in their hearts. However, Lydia was not afraid at all. Instead, she bravely climbed to the edge of the airship, spread her arms, faced the strong wind, and whimpered. He screamed randomly, venting his excitement. It wasn't until she saw a white cloud floating not far from the airship that Lydia had a bold idea in her mind before she jumped down and sat back down. Holding the rudder, she drove the airship directly towards the cloud. Rushed over. The huge airship hit the cloud's head on and passed through it. Lydia's eyes were shrouded in white. And her cheeks and arms were wet. It felt like she was standing on the beach and being blown by the melodious sea breeze. This must be a happy cloud, Lydia said with a smile. However, while playing around, the halfling girl did not forget the task that Lynn and assigned her. After driving the airship for a while, it hovered over the square again and then pulled the wrench next to it. The wooden board at the bottom of the airship immediately bounced away, and the two balls inside with a mass difference of dozens of times fell from the cabin. But due to the restraints of the ropes, they hovered in the air again, constantly swinging left and right, pulling the airship it slightly tilted. Immediately afterwards, the halfling girl pulled the alchemy goggles to her eyes, stuck her head out, and waited for Lynn's gestures and orders. This eyepiece is the only magic item she carries. A far-sighted magic is solidified on it which makes her eyesight as sharp as a griffin. She can clearly see Professor Lin in in the crowd from a distance of 2,000 meters. It seems that the next issue of Magic Weekly will be a big seller. Ten minutes ago, Roar, who was sitting in the square, drew the picture with great satisfaction and added his own feelings at the bottom. He already had a rough expectation of the newspaper sales. Lin took a closer look and saw three pictures drawn on the papyrus. They were of Lydia boarding the airship, cutting the rope, and flying into the sky. Although time was limited, only a few outlines were drawn. But the picture was already lifelike. The technique of this sketch was no different from that of a humanoid printer. No wonder the other person became the commissioner of Magic Weekly. After a short delay, the airship has already flown high into the sky, looking like a small dot from here. This is too high! Theodore raised his head and looked at the airship that was still climbing into the sky in amazement. At first, he thought that even if it could fly, it would only be a few hundred meters high. But he didn't want to stop it. By the time he knew how to do it, the height of the airship was already over 2,000 meters. Fortunately, the practice of far-sighted magic is not difficult. And most of the wizards present can do it. So they can still see clearly even from such a long distance. The airship stopped after rising to an altitude of 2,500 meters. And then used the thrust of the steam to drive the propeller behind the cabin and slowly move forward. Not only can it fly, but it can also drive very stably. This height is probably beyond the attack range of most magics. Tick looked at the floating airship in the distance, his expression becoming a little solemn. In a sense, this thing is a weapon of war. Two magic crystal cannons are hung on it to carry out long-distance attacks. If 20 airships equipped with magic crystal cannons were to attack the Ayata Harbor, without the great wizard Haram taking action, the entire city would undoubtedly be reduced to ruins. It's such an exquisite design. It's perfect and terrifying. Helram knew this very well. Turned to look at Lin. And asked again. The design of this airship shouldn't have been completed recently. Right. If it was said that half a month ago, Lydia made a crude aircraft that could be seen as a crude experimental product at a glance. Then this airship is now a complete finished product. It is very smooth from taking off to floating to driving. And the exterior design is also very sophisticated. It should be a very complete technology. Yes. This airship was designed by me and several friends from the Arcane Society. It's just that it's difficult to find a suitable place for experimental flight in the Sika's empire. Lin and explained. By the way, the little one praised the wizard's land. The wizard's present nodded in agreement. In the Sika's empire, wizards were hunted down. How could they dare to carry out flying experiments so openly? Since you have never tested it, how can you be sure that it can fly? Tick asked in confusion. Of course, it's because I've done the calculations in advance using mathematical Olympiads. 
Lin said straightforwardly. As long as you know all the data and perform precise calculations, there will be no mistakes. Before conducting this flight experiment, he had roughly verified that the gravity of this planet was almost the same as that of the Earth by weighing objects of different masses. Now the height of the airship's rise is exactly as he predicted. All these data can be deduced and advanced through Olympiad mathematics. Olympiad? Tick murmured this term that he had never understood before. It seems that in addition to issuing official wizard medals this time, it is also necessary to have a good understanding of this thing called Olympiad. He feels that this is very important for alchemy. Should be very important. Kevin, Philip and other professors thought that what Lenin said was a bit too absolute. Could it be that the so-called mathematical Olympiad could really calculate anything? However, there is no way to refute this. Because the airship in front of you is the best proof. On the side, Roar took out his pen again and wrote down Lin's words, preparing to put them in bold and bold as a title on one of the pages of Magic Weekly. Master Heron Ram, can you please use magic to temporarily turn this square into sand? Lenin stared at the sky for a while and suddenly said, Okay, but can you tell me the reason? Helram asked puzzledly. The height is high enough now. I'm going to take this opportunity to do an experiment. If it's flat ground, I'm afraid there will be more noise. Lenin said freely. Experiment? Helram paused for a moment, but quickly realized what Lin was talking about, and immediately used amplification magic to order everyone present to step back 25 meters, leaving a sufficiently spacious space in the middle. Vacancy. A great wizard spoke personally, and no one dared to disobey. The townspeople present moved back one after another, and a circular area with a radius of 25 meters was soon left in the center of the originally crowded square. Helram first released a large magic barrier to avoid accidents and then cast the spell again. The solid floor tiles in front of him quickly cracked under the influence of magic, and were finally broken down into countless fine grains of sand. Lennon took advantage of this moment to turn his head and look at the wizards and townspeople gathered in the square. He used the principle of sound wave transmission to increase his volume. Everyone, I believe that you have all heard more or less about my law of free fall and planet theory in the past half month. I believe that many of you must have doubts about this thinking that it is a ridiculous conjecture and a sensational lie. How can the continent be round? How can a piece of iron and a stone fall to the ground at the same time? But I have to say here, don't be fooled by the appearance of things. The phenomena you see in daily life are just the effects of wind resistance. In fact, if the factor of air resistance is eliminated, the speed of an object's free fall will be different from that there is no correlation whatsoever with weight or shape. Are you questioning Master Yade's theory? A young wizard in the crowd interrupted. It is almost common sense that the falling speed of an object is proportional to its weight and will also be affected by its different shape. There are too many examples in reality to prove that Master Yade's conclusion is correct. Then let's make a bet. Lin raised his voice a bit. In 10 minutes, I will ask Lydia to lower the airship to about 40 meters and then drop an iron ball with two volumes and very different masses from a high altitude at the same time. Their weights differ dozens of times, but I bet the two balls will hit the ground at the same moment and the interval will never exceed one second. The bet is tentatively set at three magic gold coins. And anyone can participate, Lin said with a smile. The purchasing power of three magic gold coins is equivalent to 50,000 to 60,000 yuan in the previous life. It is not a small amount for a wizard, but it is not to the point of physical pain. The young wizard threw the three gold coins over without much thought. If Lin was not lying, according to Master Yade's theory, the heavier iron ball must fall much faster than the small ball. There are not a few people who think like him. So in just a few minutes, more than 20 wizards participated in this bet. And Roar was no exception. He had deep doubts about this theory. Many townspeople are also ready to take action. But not many dare to participate in the wizard's bet. What about you? Are you going to give it a try? Lin In turned to look at the students in the Mathematical Olympiad class behind him and asked jokingly. Pierce and others hurriedly shook their heads. And Alok couldn't help but shudder the last time the professor opened a gambling game. He almost lost a wealth comparable to the entire Ayata Harbor. In the blink of an eye, 69 magic gold coins were obtained. Lin In was also a little emotional. Sure enough, you can never get rich by just collecting wages. However, he used the airship to conduct free fall experiments not only to make money, but more importantly to vindicate his theory. Although on the first day, he came to Ayata Harbor. He relied on the vacuum field created by Helram in the academy to confirm this but it is too difficult to create a vacuum environment. And only great wizards can do it. Therefore, this conclusion is limited to small-scale dissemination. 
and most people are more willing to believe everything they see before their eyes. So Lin In is going to take advantage of today to completely confirm this theory with an experiment that no one can refute. Chapter 74 You and I are one step closer to the truth. While everyone was watching, the airship began to slowly descend and soon hovered 40 meters above the square. All the wizards in the square and the townspeople with good eyesight could see the two spheres hanging at the bottom of the airship. The former was about half a meter in diameter, made entirely of metal, and was pulled by a thick cowhide rope. The rope was so tight that it seemed like it would break at the next moment. The other sphere is only one-third of the size of the former. And even the naked, I can see the huge gap in quality between the two. Lin waited until the sea breeze gradually weakened, and the airship truly hovered steadily before picking up a red flag and waving it a few times. In the airship above, Lydia, who was lying on the edge on a stool, quickly waved the flag in response. It's begun, Lin said. The eyes of everyone present were now focused on the two spheres suspended at the bottom of the airship. As another wrench was pulled down by Lydia, the two ropes were immediately cut off. The two iron balls fell at the same moment. The bigger one is faster. The bigger one is faster. The young wizard shouted excitedly. Under the influence of farsighted magic, he could clearly and accurately see that the moment the rope broke, the bigger one was bigger. The iron ball fell first. However, the excitement on the wizard's face was stuck in his face the next second. Because after the big iron ball landed, it did not surpass him in speed as he expected, but instead kept pace with the small iron ball. Very close distance. Rather than saying that the big iron ball fell faster, it is better to explain that the rope binding the big iron ball collapsed tighter. So it fell a moment faster. Lin was not worried from beginning to end because he had carefully calculated the data of the two iron balls. Although the mass of the big ball was greater, it also had a larger windward surface and would receive more wind resistance. Sure enough, the second second after falling, the heights of the large and small iron balls were still almost the same. This is impossible. This shouldn't be right. The faces of the wizards who saw this scene were filled with expressions of disbelief. Some even wondered whether it was Lin who secretly applied the slow-falling technique on the big iron ball to create such a surprising effect. Just as he was thinking this, a huge iron ball weighing half a ton hit the square directly. In an instant, the entire square seemed to shake. The huge impact force caused the big iron ball to be deeply embedded in the sand at the moment it fell. The surrounding quicksand exploded under the force at the moment it fell. Like a ball, continuous grains of sand scattered in all directions, like stone rain. An invisible magic barrier surrounded the central part of the square and the sand and stones hit the barrier constantly, making crackling sounds. Out of trust in the great wizard, not many people paid attention to the flying sand and stones, and they all stared intently at the two balls in the center of the square. The heavy iron ball had smashed deeply into the center of the square. The display sand and stones formed an impact crater with a radius of about three meters, and the surrounding fine sand continued to accumulate inside. Under the other small iron ball, the impact crater was only a few dozen centimeters in size, and it was quickly filled with sand and gravel. Just like what Lennon said just now, the two spheres with a mass difference of dozens of times crossed a distance of 40 meters and reached the ground almost at the same time. But, how is this possible? Shouldn't the heavier one hit the ground first? Professor Halram, can you please confirm this? The young wizard asked eagerly. The great wizard did not answer, but turned to look at Lin. Seeing him nodding, he removed the magic barrier. The wizard immediately ran over not minding that his ankles were stuck in the sand. He squatted down and picked up the small iron ball with a diameter of only a palm with one hand and threw it away. It's really light, the wizard said solemnly and roughly estimated that the weight of the ball was only about 20 kilograms and there was no trace of magic on it. Is there something wrong with the bigger iron ball? The wizard who did not believe in evil immediately put the ball down and squatted down to lift the half meter diameter iron ball. However, no matter how hard he tried, he could not move the ball out of the sand. His how much does this thing weigh? The young wizard couldn't help but be speechless. And then, he was sure that the other party did not cut corners. If anyone still has doubts, you can go up and confirm. Lin In said nonchalantly. With Lin In's approval, the wizards and even the townspeople who had doubts about this experiment stepped into the sand one after another and used their own hands to personally test the weight difference between the two spheres. As they saw visually, the gap between the two was dozens of times and only a few shaping wizards could lift it. In the end, Harem used Mage's hand to pull the thing out of the sand and weighed it in his hand. About half a ton. Harem pondered for a moment 
and made a relatively accurate judgment. Philip, Kevin, Theodore and others looked at each other, unable to hide their shock. The dozens of times difference in quality between the two that Lynn just said was too conservative. This is already a full 25 times. There's a gap. But, it's so strange. Why is this happening? Roar looked at Lynn in confusion. He didn't care about the three gold coins he lost, but was very surprised by this phenomenon that violated common sense. He saw with his own eyes the horrific damage caused by the big iron balls when they fell to the ground. Its weight could be imagined. But the falling speed of the two iron balls was exactly the same as one. This is not magic at all. Let's make a hypothesis and find out. Lennon looked at the puzzled eyes in the square. And his tone became a little more intense. According to Master Yade's theory, the falling speed of an object is directly proportional to its weight. Is this correct? Roar and others nodded. Lin changed his voice and pointed at the two spheres. Then if I tie this small iron ball and the big iron ball together with a rope and then throw it down from a high altitude, do you think it will fall faster or slower? Of course it's faster because the overall weight has increased. Roar replied without thinking. But the next second, several wizards retorted. No, it should be slower. The mass of the small ball is much lower than that of the big ball. And its falling speed is also much slower. So it will inevitably slow down the falling speed of the iron ball. If it takes 4 seconds for the big iron ball to fall and 9 seconds for the small ball. Then if they are tied together and dropped at the same time. The final landing time should be between 4 and 9 seconds. Before Lin could even reply. Wizards from the two groups were already arguing. Johnny. Alok and others were listening and felt that what both sides said seemed to make sense but they were contradictory. The answer is, almost no change. Lin-In interrupted the quarrel. How could there be no change? Philip frowned and scolded, but he stopped as soon as he finished speaking, because the falling experiment just now proved this. The falling speed of the object has nothing to do with the weight. At least it is far less than they expected. Mr. Roar, can you give me a blank piece of paper? Lin knew that many people present still had doubts. So he looked at Roar and asked, of course. Rawl took out a piece of paper from his arms and handed it to Lin. Very curious about what he wanted to do. Lin turned to look at the townspeople, holding the page high. Can someone give me a book that's a little wider than this piece of paper? Amidst the commotion, a child contributed the storybook he had brought with him. Lin and activated the mage's hand and sent the piece of paper and the storybook up to a height of two meters, letting them fall together. The pages slowly floated in the air, and it took four seconds for them to fall to the ground while the storybook fell to the ground in just one second. What are you doing? Philip asked in confusion. Doesn't this phenomenon just refute his theory? Lin didn't answer, but gently placed the pages on top of the cover of the storybook, then raised them up into the air again with the cover facing up, and said jokingly, Come on! Guess! If they are dropped at the same time, who will land first? Do you still need to guess? There is no doubt that the pages are floating in the air, and the book is the first to hit the ground. Philip said decisively. This time, both groups recognized Philip's point of view, because Lin did not tie the two together, so they could not be regarded as a whole. Then it must be that paper is slower and books are faster. Then you have to see clearly next time. Lin and shook his head and directly lifted the magic. The next moment, what shocked everyone present was that the paper pages did not float as everyone imagined, but just stuck to the cover of the book and fell together. The whole process only took a short second. And the thin paper pages and the heavy book landed at the same time. The entire square fell into deathly silence. And they couldn't even think of why this happened. The reality undoubtedly shattered everyone's intuition again. Unless, really like what Lin said, the falling speed has little to do with the weight. Is it eliminating the air resistance? Haram said thoughtfully. Of course he could tell. Because Lin pasted the paper pages on the book. So the thin paper did not need to face the resistance of the air. And of course, it would follow the air resistance. The books fell together. Luo Air, who did not believe in evil, tried again according to Lin's method just now. But there was still no change in the result. Even the wizards, who had been the most vocal in the past, had to consider an issue. Master Yade's theory might really be wrong. Your wisdom is commendable. Master Hal Lam. It is precisely because the books bear the air resistance instead of the pages that they will fall together. Lin and first boasted of Hal Lam very naturally. And then said looking at the wizards, who had not yet recovered from the two falling experiments. He spoke again. When I was in the arcane society, I once heard a master say that this world is extremely magical, and sometimes some phenomena even surpass my knowledge. 
and the process of wizards exploring the truth is like a few blind men trying to buy touching a dragon. You can recreate its image in your mind. Those who touched the legs thought the dragon was like a cylinder. And those who touched its wings thought the dragon was like a disc. Flat and long. But there is no doubt that all these conclusions are one-sided. Perhaps one day, another wizard will stand in this square and overturn this law of free fall with a rigorous and irrefutable experiment. But I will never be angry about it. On the contrary, I welcome anyone question it or prove it repeatedly through experiments. Because every mistake that is corrected means that you and I are one step closer to the truth. Lin and Sonora's voice continued to echo in the square. And after a very brief silence, bursts of thunderous applause resounded. Tick. Philip and others were shocked by the two free fall experiments that exceeded their imagination. And also admired Lin's mind. You must know that the dispute over ideas in the land of wizards is no joke. Sometimes, the two schools of thought will even fight to prove whose theory is correct. But Lin In actually did the opposite, and welcomed everyone to repeatedly verify his theory through experiments. This kind of mind is really admirable. The townspeople present also clapped together. Those knowledgeable people were sincere. But some people were confused. A short halfling looked at De, whose palms beside him were almost red. Lewin asked quietly, Do you understand what they're saying? Darren? Isn't this simple? Master Yade's theory is wrong. And Mr. Len's theory is right. Darren had a disdainful expression on his face. But he was actually very guilty. He could barely get a general idea of wind resistance and gravity. But he had no idea why paper and a book could fall to the ground at the same time. But since the wizards all applauded, he might as well follow suit. Wrong. Amidst the warm applause, the huge airship slowly landed on the sand. The lively halfling girl climbed down from the airship on the ladder. When she saw everyone applauding to welcome her, her eyes narrowed with joy. Stand up. The Overlook's first test flight was successful. All the internal devices of the airship are normal. Captain Lydia asks for further instructions. Lydia trotted all the way to Lin In, pretended to salute, and said proudly, There are no further instructions for now. Let's just get here today. Lin replied with a smile. Lydia was immediately free from the captain's state, and talked about her experience in the sky with great excitement. How she drove the airship and hit a white cloud as well as the mountains in the distance, and a glance the endless sea is in sight. Chapter 75 Magic Level Assessment Lydia talked about her flying experience with great joy, which made all the apprentices and townspeople get ready to take action. Will hitting the clouds in the sky really be as refreshing as being blown by the sea breeze? They all wanted to experience this wonderful feeling. Ten silver coins don't seem very expensive. The halfling girl chattered a lot. After seeing her am, she remembered the purpose of the flight, and asked with an anxious expression. Master Helm, this should be considered a success. Right. I stayed in the sky for a long time without using any magic. Helm stared at Lydia, hesitated for a while, and did not reply. My mathematical Olympiad class does not require magical talent. Even an ordinary person can gain a lot of knowledge from it. Lennon also spoke up at this time. In that case, let's give it a try. Helm said noncommittally. Awesome. Lydia jumped up happily, turned around and hugged several halflings. Darren cried bitterly, unable to contain his excitement. I knew you could do it. Lydia! Great! The halflings will soon have a wizard of their own. Overly excited, Darren and others decided to get drunk after going back tonight. Some of the wizards and students gathered in the square looked at the noisy Lydia and others and couldn't help but frowned. This was the first time that a halfling with no magical talent was admitted to school. And it was also against the wizards parliamentary regulations. However, due to the shock brought by the flight experiment and Helram's approval, no one dared to refute it openly. After a burst of noise, Harem cast a spell to restore the ground that had turned into sand, and ordered several wizards to maintain order in the square. Then he returned to Aida College with a group of professors and students, preparing to entertain the two distinguished guests from the wizarding city, Lydia and others who stayed in the square. While happy, did not forget to take advantage of the popularity to sell airship tickets. According to Lin Un's previous pricing, a ticket to board the airship costs 10 silver coins. The price is neither high nor low, and most townspeople can afford it with just a grit of teeth. In view of this, many people are willing to spend money to board an airship and take a walk in the sky on the alchemy machine that is taller than a building. In just half an hour, Lydia has sold more than 600 so-called tickets. Adhering to the concept of buying first, sitting first, Everyone's name is recorded. And it is impossible to evade fares. This airship is quite spacious inside. And it is not a problem to carry ten people at a time. 
It flies in the sky for about an hour at a time. And can fly at least 10 times a day. But even so, it will take several days to complete. In just a short time, they got more than 60 magic gold coins. Darren and others were laughing from ear to ear. You must know that Lin In was willing to give them one-tenth of the ticket sales money as operating expenses. With such popularity, it is not easy for them to distribute dozens of magic gold coins every month. This is much more cost-effective than buying coolies to make those gadgets in the workshop. While Darren and others were immersed in the fantasy of a better life. Hellram, Tick, Roar, and a group of professors had arrived at the front hall of Aida College. Groups of goblins flew in from the window and placed plates of hot food on the square table in front of everyone. Roasted tomatoes, mashed potatoes, white bread, the tail bone of a herbivorous lizard, the backbone of a camel beast, the front legs of a fire lion, and many strange ingredients that Lin could not recognize at all. Lin carefully cut off a small piece of front leg meat and put it into his mouth. He felt that this thing seemed to be more delicious than beef, although it was far from delicious due to the lack of seasoning. In the land of wizards, this is already an extremely rich meal. Professor Lin, I have to thank you for allowing me to see such interesting aerial airships and falling experiments as soon as I arrived at Ieta Harbor. I'm afraid there will be no shortage of news in Magic Weekly. In the next month, Lul Urge raised his wine glass, looked at Lin in, and said jokingly, Mr. Roar is so complimentary. I have to ask you to be merciful when writing the manuscript and try to be tactful when expressing your opinions. Lin took the first step to raise the glass and drank it all, and said politely, He naturally knows how powerful a pen is. The other party only needs to express his views more radically in Magic Weekly to cause him a lot of trouble. That's not okay. I have to report everything I see truthfully. This is the most basic ethics as an editor of Magic Weekly. Roar shook his head and said very smoothly, Lin In was speechless. He never believed that a media person had such a thing as integrity. This thing didn't exist at all. However, since the other party was unwilling to make a guarantee, there was nothing he could do. By the way, Professor Lin, I still have a question. Roar stopped shaking the wine glass and asked curiously, What level of wizard are you? Hearing this, everyone present looked over, curious about this question. Theodore, Kevin and others who knew the inside story all guessed that Lin must be a three-ring wizard. After all, the other party killed an archbishop destroyed half the town and a full 3,000-person guard. Even with the help of some kind of alchemy item that needs to be prepared in advance is already extremely powerful. But the only thing that made them doubtful was that Lin looked too young. Perhaps less than 20 years old. You must know that the most famous genius in the Land of Wizards, star of the magic world, August, was also promoted to a three-ring wizard when he was approaching his 20th birthday. Under the gaze of countless pairs of eyes, Lin slowly drank the red wine in the glass, and spoke very calmly. I'll wait until Mr. Tick determines the wizard level for me. The detection method in the wizard's land may be different from that of the arcane society. When the professor saw that Lin and was keeping quiet, they became even more curious. However, they could still afford to wait. It wouldn't take long to have a meal. Right? Lin and slowly put down the wine glass in his hand. His face remained calm, but he felt faintly worried in his heart. Although he has never personally admitted that he is an official wizard, and he used the name of Scholar when he was introduced. There is no doubt that everyone present regards him as an official wizard. If something goes wrong during the test, it will be troublesome.